Okay. I think this is Disney shutting the feed down. It could be Disney. It could be well. Anything right now is that instead of connecting, it says uh, the only option is end stream. So that's that's something. Um, hmm. Still gotta hit go we live did it, on the, the classic. Just uh, just go blue. If that button goes blue. Come on, you can do it. Connecting streaming software to go live. I did already, piece of shit. <laughs> now it says excellent connection. Just go blue. It, it went when we blue. say excellent blue. connection, blue. we mean for blue. us. Seriously, I hate, I actually hate technical issues like this where it's solved for no reason. Oh, it's solved? Uh, yeah, That's I good. Know. I mean, solved is good, I will, I will say that. But just fucking hell. This is like, what was the problem? It's like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's fine now though. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, did we do it? We did it. We are now live. Yay. The ritual has been ooh, performed. Ooh, Connection ooh, has been established. Enhance. I've hacked the mainframe. Stop I'm hacking in. the mainframe. Computer enhance. We need the Typing mainframe. Sounds. The meme frame. Now, computer, I need incriminating <laughs> photos of Markiplier to blackmail him with. <laughs> the computer's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't want why. Uh... Black faced. Oh no. How could you, Mark? Now, Mark, you're going to help me get monetized. <laughs> <laughs> He's tied down to a chair in a room. You're going to get me monetized, Mark. Get you're going to give me Susan's phone number. They probably have that, like the super higher up YouTube. <laughs> oh, no doubt about it, dude. I think Susan's like Mr. House from Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> yes! You know, this, this oh, my thing. God! computer somewhere holographically projected into a room right. public even though there's people here already hello random people who got in early you cheaters coming from twitter poor, that sounds poor... like something a prostitute would say cheaters coming from twitter <laughs> no hello people who got in early <laughs> people who slipped in god damn it do you think like do you think there's a Black Friday sale for brothels? No, no, it's a Cyber Monday sort of thing. Actually, I did back. Monday. Let's check. We're going to the Bunny Ranch. Um, God, I've never had such a short title on EFAB before, but I figured that. Hey, you know what? Why not? I could just you know put the, the other guests in the title, I guess. You know where? Um, you know where all the the gay prostitutes work, right? Homo Lulu. No, a brothel. <laughs> All the boys love Homo Lulu. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, Homo Lulu versus brothel. I don't know. Bro, I think I'll... <laughs> Unlisted gang. No, public gang. Gang, gang, gang. Here. Um. So yeah. Thanks, thanks all for, for arriving. Sorry that it's so delayed, you know? Everything gets delayed, so we try and just aim for early starts, and then it doesn't come across as delayed. That's the genius of EFAP. And, like I said, got the Christmas spirit alive and Great. well. Um, Christmas. It's probably worth mentioning. Uh, Rags and myself, we've actually recorded th another three whole things Christmas-related, uh, we, we, and, and, and we've recorded a Christmas EFAP. Right, so you can expect that to pop out when you know all of us like hanging out with people who love us and stuff. You guys will be able to see <laughs> a video. <laughs> It'll be all, all neat. We actually played some um, uh, champed up. Well, I don't know people who tolerate us. Yes, uh, wouldn't want to say you know, love is a strong word, as they say in that song. Uh, but we're here today. You're so vain. No, the one where they're like, uh. No, wait, is sorry, I going backwards? I, I'm sorry, I thought that song was about me. It wasn't... I, didn't... <laughs> I, I actually remembered a song wrong. That's what threw me off. I was like, no, wait, that's not how the song goes. Fuck. It's okay, no one noticed. Um, and now that we're having a very voice. important discussion about this song from Carly Simon, but uh, there's a group on right now, Rags, for the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, if you're in on it with me. There was no Black Friday sale. It was the best I could do. There you go. At least it's not like Blue Friday or something. All right, there's room for anybody else in the chat who wants to come with me to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Moonlight Bunny Ranch. view the website. Ranch. Well, you wanted to know about, like, Black Friday hookers. Black Friday hookers. 
buy one get one free <laughs> I'm looking oh, into it. Uh, that's not an option, but oh. we can't get a luxury car <laughs> service. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's something. We, we talking limos or monster trucks? Yeah, or... uh, the limo. You could see Bunny of the Month. She's called Air Force Amy. She has been seen on HBO's The Cat House. Meow. Yeah. She also starred in The West Wing. She did. Yeah, she was an you know uncredited. Airport attendant. Ooh, Air Force Amy is uh, not doing it for me. It's really Scott. more of an airport Amy. It's not quite. <laughs> she works at the Starbucks and Terminal 4. How old is she? Let me get. Ooh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? You don't, you, that's not a very she's nice got, thing to ask. Airport Amy. Got, she gets. Uh, Dolly she said, if I got to pay, I need some information. I mean, uh, Oh, and she's with Corey Feldman. And also a, a venti caramel latte. Uh, the meal is on the house, by the way. <laughs> Wait, uh, I was trying to look for Capital Opinions fucking Twitter, and I, I typed in Capital Onions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of results I'm expecting. Everyone's got an onion. Wait, are you looking for my Twitter? Because I don't use Twitter. Oh, you fucking... Wait, I found someone called Capital Opinions with your avatar, though. Is that not you? Oh, that's me. I just don't use it. I don't tweet. <laughs> Jesus but Christ, the story is this roller coaster of truth. <laughs> How am I supposed to tell people in a tweet who's here if they don't have a From Twitter? From a certain point of oh, view, just, I'm yeah, not just... on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, you can at me, that's fine. They just, you know, don't follow me because you're not going to get anything God. out of it. Following me could lead to you being very upset with my views on the world. Good get banned by proxy because of the mom dad oh. i'm a communist you will definitely be banned by carlos maz if you follow me uh word to the wise if you care oh, for no. tweets i don't want to be banned by gay wonk i don't think you can say that <laughs> listen he can call himself that but you can't say it exactly that's how it works now he's oppressed poor guy isn't he in like did, wasn't there a post that he says something like you shouldn't listen to people who are that rich? Or rich? Yeah. And the yeah, dude's like summer home loaded. was jaw dropping. <laughs> he's, he's the so fucking good. living room was bigger than my entire apartment. Wait, are I you implying an shit. internet socialist is a fucking scuzzy liar? <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? What? Say it ain't what? so. More guns. More guns. <laughs> More, more tigers. Gun. What do we learn from tigers? Tiger that guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Oh my god, I've done it. That's, that's got, I got three of the Twitter handles I need. Who's who's the last we can one? Get the gay, the communist to fight. The only other. thing that can stop a bad guy with a tiger is a good guy with a tiger. Exactly. Have you not seen He Man, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Exotic, twenty twenty four. The only thing that could stop a big naked man with a sword is another big naked man with a sword. Sounds reasonable to me. Fight fire Maybe with skull fire. face on. What kind of sword are we talking about here? Hmm. The metally sharp bit thing. Oh, oh, that one. Metallic. All I know swords I said are the metally, same. but I meant metallic. Right, Shad? All swords are the same? All, All sorts he's of the same, there, somewhere. regardless of context. I feel like he'd be upset, <laughs> you know, if he said that. <laughs> he, by the way, has, has has been hot taking Mandalorian season two. You know, he's. Uh, I th I think all of that effort we put into ripping into season one finally got to him. And he was like, you know what, season two, not as fun, not as good. You you you've been watching that Gundam, or are you are you anti? No. Wow, <clears throat> not even a true. I'm not man. anti anything. Like I saw some of season one, and I was like, that's cool. And then I kind of just forgot about it. Well, then I made the mistake of talking about Boba Fett's costume inaccuracies. Like, if it's the same fucking armor, which it obviously looks like it is, judging by the dented helmet and the shit paint job. Like, hire someone who at least remembers what the fuck Boba is supposed to look like. It's as if the production team said to themselves, hmm, we got two helmets here. Huh, I don't know which movies they're from. I got an idea. Let's just paint it to look like both. Okay, good. Oh, oh my, my God, God is this great. helmet from a Mandalorian? So like, oh. I'll, I'll be completely honest. I do get confused by this sort of stuff because I'm like, wait, don't you just look at the old movie and then get someone to be like, oh. So they don't even need to look at the old movie. They have access to the goddamn original shit. <laughs> I give my left nut. Get the helmet. 
like exactly. A, it's like posing in real if life. If I could get my hands on the original Boba helmet, oh my god, it'd be a license to print money. Yeah, I think so. The collectors <laughs> would lose their minds, including me. I mean, so so what happens on like? Do they just not give a shit? Because I, I most just... people don't. They does or, no. Which is it? no. Y'all are don't. assuming that Disney has any knowledge of Star Wars whatsoever. That's true. I mean, if you were to find Walt Disney's frozen head and you ask him about Star Wars, I highly doubt you get an his answer. Cryogenically frozen body. <laughs> I bet they go down the there. And I don't they, think like, you'd get an answer head. regardless of what you asked him. It had lightsabers in it. it what did. else That's is there true, to know? Did. That's pretty much how they think. They're like, uh, when they had that storyboard for the Star Wars uh, Old Republic, some bullshit, and the storyboard was like dinosaurs, lightsabers, gender <laughs> diversity. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> have you, wait, yeah, uh, John, have you been watching it? Uh, Mando? Yeah. No, not the second season. I saw the first one. Dude, okay. the enthusiasm for season two seems so, like, dour with a lot of people. It's just like, nah, it's there, oh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like dour thing. people who give a shit. For the normal <laughs> person, it's goddamn amazing. Yeah. Oh my god, remember that scene where the stormtrooper stood in the middle of a hallway and then they got shot and they fell down? Oh my god, that was so which amazing. One? Shot at Boba. <laughs> well, like, uh, the Disney presentation, they, they did, like, like Mando was clearly, like, this, this sort of touchstone of, like, yeah, Mando has done amazingly. And now we're gonna have a spin-off for Mando, and you got all these other shows that are like Man. You guys like Mando, right? This is like, I, I, I mean, hmm. <laughs> Mando literally popped off for them, and they didn't expect it, and now they're running with the shit. Why wouldn't they have running expected that to it. work? You know, like, to me, I'm just like, oh yeah, people will love it, because it's like the fucking, it's the, the cool guy uh, characters in Star Wars, jetpacking, shooting, bounty hunting. And well, attached... people didn't like our characters from the sequels, what if we have no characters? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> put a helmet on him, don't have him say too much. <laughs> just shoot <laughs> things. It's like, we did it, just we found the formula. A fucking idiot. All That's the, the neutral mask couldn't thing, handle too. how amazing Ray was. So I guess we'll give them their little space western to shut them up. And maybe friends. they they're secretly they fucking hate how well Mandalorian's doing. I'm a hundred percent sure of it. There's yeah. no way Kathleen Kennedy isn't sitting there seething. <laughs> no way. A friend of mine got upset with me because uh, I had watched the season one finale and he hadn't. And I was telling him about it, but I was trying to keep it spoiler free, except I told them that uh, his helmet comes off. So I was, I was, I was describing a beat of the episode. He's like, OK, so he takes his helmet off. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, t you told me that. Oh, <laughs> don't tell me that. Like, I was just like, dude, you think that you're you think they're going to cast somebody like uh, what's his name? Pena Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal, right? And <laughs> they're not. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. 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 well known as uh, uh, yeah. uh, what? What? What's his name? Pena. <laughs> <laughs> he has a big Michael Game Pena of Thrones that they made him famous. Right? Pedro, you're fired. We're hiring Inya. She's the yeah. Mandalorian now. I was like, you think you're gonna cast somebody like that and never gonna fucking reveal their face? Like, why? I don't even understand why you would cast like. Why don't you just get a, like an expert stunt guy to like do well, the body acting and stuff? If you're not ever going to take the helmet off, but I, I, how can we I assume that, that would never happen. Famous people to yeah. play the Mandalorian, we can't help ourselves. <laughs> well, I think like it's in, you know, these people's contracts. Their face has to be shown. It's for marketing as well as branding bullshit. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there's that rumor, right, that he's like going to be phased out of Mandalorian because he's too pushy about wanting to be seen, or he doesn't like the Good, helmet. Fuck him. I'll take the role. Well, I'll voice act the Mandalorian. <laughs> I mean, thing. literally anybody could be the Mandalorian. Like, literally anybody. I think anybody he brings is. absolutely nothing to the to the person. Whenever he's yeah. walking around in any scene, I'm always, like, suspicious. It's of, the like, is that even him? How, do like, <laughs> how, how much would y'all hire this guy to walk around kind of awkwardly in a helmet that he clearly can't see out of? Well, yeah. Actually, you can see pretty good out of those helmets. Just, well... Okay, I'm, from certain angles, you can see out of it pretty good. Compared to a Stormtrooper helmet, though, it's a lot more vision. If you stand That's in my why TV, Stormtroopers vision, keep I can getting see shot. Fine. Do you, does he, like, when you look, I'm trying to picture wearing the mask and then looking down the, the, the set to slip. The visor. Just, yeah, just being like, try to look at stuff and awkwardly moving yeah, around. Like, Stormtroopers yeah. can't kill him, but stairs. <laughs> 
That's why he doesn't have stairs in his ship. He has a ladder. Doesn't he? he has a ladder. Oh, I guess, yeah, it's not stairs, so. Climbers I do really down. wonder how many, like, pickup shots and reshoots there were, where it's like, oh, Pedro, we need you. It's like, oh, can't you just, like, get the janitor to put the helmet on him? Get him I was like, him. I literally do absolutely nothing except walk around awkwardly. <laughs> Anybody ah, could be the Mandalorian. I would love that job. Give it to me. It sounds perfect. <laughs> yeah. Janitor. We need you to One... walk over there awkwardly for a million dollars a year. You got it, baby. I'm going to walk <laughs> these shoes off, honey. Yeah. <laughs> One of the grips. You're Mando now. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Can you I tell people? Like Pedro's in his trailer, stoned as fuck. Can't move. <laughs> You kick Pedro out, but leave the drugs for me. <laughs> That's how Hollywood works, Paige. You're out. Vio con Dios. Y mi hermano. Uh, uh, I do know a little Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly picture, like, they, they would do that semi-regularly. Especially if it means they don't have to deal with him being, like, you know, angry on set or whatever. Yeah. How could you be angry? It's the Does dream gig. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing, I don't know if he knows, but, like, this is incredibly potentially lucrative for him, right? Like, because if he's on board, they probably wouldn't kill Mando for ages just to draw that uh -huh. series out as long as possible. And it's only halfway through season two. We've already, like, plugged in all these bonus Star Wars characters that are, like, they're clearly desperate is what I mean. No, they're, that's what they're worried about season three. They're running out of characters. They're running out of things to reference, so they're fucked. Well... Oh god! The, 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 who knows how much more? Well, they did throw kill in. the expanded universe in all of the wisdom of Kennedy. I just um, like I, th I think it was Jay who was asking me like, what do you think they're gonna do in terms of returning uh, characters? And it's just like you throw out Maul. But it's like, wait, that's not possible. He's he's dead at that point. It's like, hmm. Yeah, well, well, they brought yeah, back. We know Maul. what happens to dead characters in this series. No yeah, one's I mean, ever truly gone. We so uh, uh, Qui Gon Jinn hasn't come back. For those who don't know, uh, <laughs> here they know Cap Capital. You you, you watch uh, you you watch Mandalorian or I watched your coverage of it. Oh well, and that's more good than good lad. Enough for me. So the um, <laughs> the sniper, that's the right way to watch the show. There was like there was a bounty in season one. It was a sniper, and she's um she's like killed before the end of the episode by getting shot in the stomach with a a blaster and left for dead for. You know, many hours. Well, no, left as dead. Left as dead would be more accurate. Yeah, she is dead, and you're like, oh, okay. And um, someone walks up to a body at the end of the episode, and you're like, oh my god. And there was plenty of speculation that that was that was Boba Fett or um, the fucking uh, Gus. I can't remember his actual name. Gideon. <laughs> Gus. Um, Moff Gideon. <laughs> and and it didn't. But it was just like the 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 speculation at the time was that the body was left despite having a huge bounty on her dead or alive, and it was just like what a stupid thing to do. But hey, this person might be able to pick up that bounty. And we speculated at the beginning of our episode that that's how Bo uh, Boba Fett got like. His resources was he would have sold that body, I guess. And it's just like, oh, okay. No, turns out when he found her body, he fashioned a mechanical stomach for her. He made her a cyborg. <laughs> He's like wow, a, a dude. So she's alive. You could get more of Phoenix <clears throat> Strand, the incredible, amazing sniper from the Gunslinger. She, she's like literally got mechanics that spread to be like it looks like it would replace all of her like large and small Literally. intestine kidneys liver like it's just all mechanics <sighs> and it like was a done... new hand sure but like yeah a new internal organs really and, and it was he was like he's he's wearing like rags um not not what? rags but rags you know <laughs> what? and and he has a stick and he made that for her in the desert i just like it's like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> feel like you really push it and it's just it, you come back to that quote from good old luke in the trailer for rise of skywalker uh when they just before they announced the emperor officially is coming back it's like no one's ever really gone it's like, no one's ever true. really frog <laughs> no one's ever really gone and you might be like okay but if they vaporize someone you're know, like they did that twice and he still came back <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is off the Phoenix table. Strand didn't even have the power of the dark side. Mm -hmm. and she came back, so everything's off the table. She didn't even have access <laughs> to dark magic or cloning or secrets only the Empire knew. You know, she just <laughs> Star Wars is great, isn't it? Oh, it's so Star good. Star Wars. I can't like 
who knows who's coming back for Mando season three? You know, and they'll they'll put all over promotional stuff, and we're like, oh my god, you have to see this episode because this character comes back, and they do the thing that they do, and you're like, oh, <gasps> oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, I would really enjoy Gundam you voicing the Mandalorian. Just that accent would be hilarious. Coming you know out what? You this. just gave me an idea. I'm gonna like take the Mandalorian episodes and take key points in it and just voice over the shit. <laughs> Do it. Because <laughs> his lines are so stale, dull. You know, everything yeah. he says is so plain. You're right. It's yeah, time there's no a character. hero that sounded as obnoxious as me. Spider Man's oh. gotta go. That's why we have Kamala Khan or whatever her name is. Yay. <laughs> she's uh she's gonna be in captain marvel 2 right uh that's what they announced or was it it's hard to yeah keep track. they have like one million properties which is probably something we, we could talk about for a little bit um that was a million properties that was something that presentation we got uh when they said because fringy sent me a message about it he was like oh 10 new star wars shows i was like okay it's a bit hyperbolic he's like no that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> it's like Wait, what? Oh my god. Did they not I didn't watch it. Did they announce any new movies for Star Wars or is it all shows? It's, uh, they, they didn't announce any new movies, just confirmed that Taika Waititi's one is on the way. Um and everyone's like, Where the fuck's the Ryan Johnson trilogy, huh? <laughs> You've huh? been promising uh -huh. it for years. Where is Thank it? Thank God they got rid of that. If they'd made a Ryan Johnson trilogy, I don't think I would have made it through the year. I mean, I just <laughs> like We saw how well The Last Jedi went over and how much money it lost us between these films and uh decided to give him his own trilogy because we're Disney. God, I mean, if I, I were hate um, the new Disney movies, if I were them, it I just, just seems genuinely. like a bad choice. Like I say that as if J.J. Abrams isn't a bad choice or something, but it's just like, look what, oh, look God. what happened. Like, why would you want to do that again? Because mm -hmm. they don't care. But they like, don't give a rat's fuck. They care about they money, though, right? They a rat's fuck. Anything. Oh my goodness. A rat's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you've been to New York, you you know that it's not an incredible fuck, but there's fucking. a lot of them. <laughs> mm, they get around. Uh. I, I just don't get why um you would make that choice at this point because uh, if it's money focused, Ryan Johnson does not seem like the the good investment at this point. Virtue signaling. Um yeah, I mean he'll probably generate another movie where they can uh, be like Margot see... Robbie will direct the next Star Wars film. Oh man, <laughs> that's they the thing. Patty with... Jenkins doing the Rogue Squadron movie now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, if it's at all like Wonder Woman, it'll be uh, it'll be something. <laughs> we actually Wonder Woman was oh. do, yeah. Did we mention that on EFAP yet? We we actually watched it ready for um, 1984. Uh, Wonder Woman got a lot worse on my second watch through. I I hated yep. it. This it was, was my first time watching fucking it. Movie. I fucking hated it. The um, the first thing I bring up with anyone talking about this is like, why do you do... so just 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 off the top of my head, right? I don't mean to go on this topic for too long. You have, um, uh, what's his name? Chris Pine is like stealing some secrets from, you know, German base. Is it in Germany? I can't remember. No, I think it's actually in Turkey or something like that. Yeah, or it's, it's funny. He got somewhere else. The Ottomans. Yeah, yeah he, it's um, the Ottoman Empire. He tries to run away. He blows up some stuff. And he, so that's like the flashback that we see. And he ends up in like, is it the Mediterranean? I can't remember which, uh, the Mandalorian. Oh, no. Uh, he ends up in some, some ocean near, their secret base, they were Condon's secret base, and like, <laughs> like he's going by plane, and they're by ship, and they're like right next to him, almost. Like how the hell did they so keep up with one, you? The planes weren't as fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and so he he gets through, he lads, and she's like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" And he's like, mm. "And then the Germans start coming through the the thing, and they immediately start shooting at these women cosplaying as Xena. Like, why? Why what? would they do this? <laughs> it was so funny to watch. It's like the they bad just guys hate fire. women. We have to establish that. Also, to be I don't real care with which you, world war it is. The Germans have to be evil. They just shoot. If I was a German soldier, and all of a sudden these like fucking Valkyrie-looking chicks were running over their ridge, I'd probably shoot first and ask questions <laughs> later. Especially if they had swords. I don't know yes, if you've been you stabbed can't see before. What got from that far. Well, the thing but is, but I'm not interested to be hit with a sword. If you're as good a good a shot as they are, th there's this like, uh, this, what are they called? Amazonians. She's like swinging from a cliffside to the other, and a German <laughs> shoulder shoulder fucking hell uh, fires one shot, and it like nails her right in the chest as she's like swinging from left to right across this whole cliffside. It's just like, whoa, that guy is fucking legendary. But all the rest. Yeah, all the rest of the Germans, they couldn't hit the broad side of a Cliff? fucking, yeah, the broad side of a of a broad brow. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, we'll we'll have coverage of Wonder Woman, EFAP, uh, for those who are very scared that we're, um, 
we're going to be ripping into it. Rest assured we will be. Um, but this is the image, the wonderful image of what, what the future holds for Star Wars. Uh, no, and, she's and Emperor things. Palpatine. Oh, no, it's Kathleen Kennedy. Well, this is, the, is this every, real? This is, yeah, this is it. This Cal is it. Emperor Palpatine. How, how evil does she look? <laughs> Someone photoshop her and give her a robe. Seriously. <laughs> so so zoom in on her face for me. Oh. I want to get a close is, shot. Is that Kathleen Kennedy? She looks like Eloise Cole, the grief clown. <laughs> grief clown? <laughs> Someone had a very dark childhood here. <laughs> what, Lando? What the fuck do you mean, Lando? Oh, I was gonna say, man. Have you... So the funny thing about this as well is, like, you look at all this Star Wars stuff, and then it's just Indiana Jones at the bottom, right? You're like, oh no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Indiana. It's Jones a crossover. He's in the Star Wars universe now. No, they already did Aliens, so you know. Harrison Ford needs to sit his ass down. When he could have been Indiana Jones, he didn't want to be Indiana Jones. Motherfucker waited till he married a younger woman and had some kids, and I used to prove to them he's hip still. Get the fuck out of here, Grandpa. <laughs> I'm Indiana <laughs> Jones. Indiana Jones in the last bout with Metamucil. Come with them making another Indy one. Indiana Jones and turning up the oxygen tank. Everybody's just like, they're going to ruin it. They're going to ruin it. Indiana like, Jones in they... the last retirement center. Oh, I read Bad Jones Batch as Bad Bitch at first. A lot of people read it as Bad Bitch first. Star oh, Wars. Bad oh, bitch. Bad Batch. Okay. Now, people <laughs> often ask me, you know, if, uh, if, if a really old Indiana Jones is going to work out. And I just, eh, it depends. Look at our president, Alex. Do you think Joe Biden could survive a temple, let alone a flight down the stairs? Well, we just found this huge <laughs> box of votes for Indiana Jones. If he, if he harvests, <laughs> I didn't say that, Mama Susan. That was rags. If he harvests uh, the souls of the young, I feel like he might be able to. You know, Corn Pop on... was a bad dude. Um. Yeah, the, obviously this isn't just Star Wars, as, as, as Star Wars goes says. It's Lucasfilm IPs. I know. It's just that, like you walk, you look at it, and you're like, oh, Soka. And Orlando droid Mandalorian that you just see the Indiana Jones logo and you're like, oh no, not you too. <laughs> Please run. <laughs> and there's a lot of people like, wait, Willow? And it's like, yep, they're doing stuff with the Willow movie that the uh, fuck what was that? Yeah. There's no way they can make Willow good. The, the, it's uh I guess they're making a TV show. I, I, or... No, uh Well, they're making TV shows for fucking everything, man. It's, it's... Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, this is kind of funny, do you know about any of this? So, like, do you know what the Obi-Wan Kenobi show is already confirmed? Uh, yeah. Aiden Christensen mm -hmm. coming back as Darth, Darth Vader. Vader yeah, that don't yeah, make, right heard. after David Prowse died. It's I like am sure, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm absolutely sure that Disney writing has the competence to handle that character moment. Like, a lot of, I've seen a lot of hype for it, it's like, oh, yeah, fuck, it's gonna be awesome, it's like, guys... <laughs> what? Well, those are consumers. You can't get through to them. Yes. Oh, the concern levels. Um, of course, Mandalorian will probably get like sixty seasons before they finally let it die. Uh, they'll wait till like it starts to die. Then they kill life it. support. I mean, everyone's still wondering if they're gonna kill him like in earlier on and just fucking go with Boba instead. Which, by the way, I'm on board with. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't be against it if Boba wasn't fuck. looking so plump. You, yeah, um, I, I wonder if it looked like actually... Vince Neil doing cosplay. No, no, he's terrible. back. Boba's back in the game now, I guess. He, he's he'll shed those pounds. Just give him some blue food and he'll be fine. Well, I've heard the actor <laughs> give is, him like, some blue cocaine. Put him on the blue diet. Uh, Tamira Morrison, right? Like, he's like super happy to be back. So, there's a good chance if they were like, hey, you can be in it more if you lose weight, he'll be like, fucking fine. <laughs> Let's well, do it. I'm losing <laughs> weight then. Guess I'll eat some salads. <laughs> that was pretty good. Might crunch down on some nuts. Not too much. Um. Yeah, and we're getting like thank God, oh, thank God for this. We're getting I the Andor get series. Heroin. Cassian Andor from Rogue One. If anyone remembers that person, he's getting a series. Nope. Thank goodness. Well, that's good. It was funny in the promotional stuff. I can stuff, sleep well at night. He's he's like oh you know it's so it's so good to be able to explore this character to be able to just see the world from another point and it's just like what are you, who who I don't want to see <laughs> Disney I don't want to see Disney's dark dank nasty shithole world where everything is dirty and nasty and scummy oh that's you get more I have more no of interest that. in the Star Wars universe because Andor is all it's about, all just like, gonna be scuzzy bars and dirty alleys they're probably gonna oh, fucking stand. Vader will probably be an Andor too. Just any any timeline that Vader is currently alive in, they'll probably just throw him in. Mm-hmm. God. Oh, and yeah, like really gone. 
once once all this like announcement shit happened, I was like, I don't even know that I can see all of this. Like, I don't even have the time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. This is insane. Well, it wasn't for you. It was for the investors, so they didn't freak out. Oh, Look yeah. at all we've got going on, investors. Calm down. It's okay. Don't That'd worry. The great, theme right? parks are closed. We'll make back the billions. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Indiana <laughs> Jones. You know that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, Indy. Well, I was about to take out my stock until you let me know Harrison Ford was going to drag his ass out of bed to be Indiana fucking Jones. I, I picture that they'll just, it'll be like a, they need to introduce a new younger person to be able to make a TV show with in the Indiana Jones They already movie. tried with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, that's, that's not happening, is it? <laughs> he's, and now he's, he's canceled for supposedly beating his girlfriend. Oh, damn. Wait, that's, really? Uh, wait, is that new? Like, I... Yeah, it's real new. It's... I hate my Twitter, man. They tell me everything they they know I don't want to see, so they can trick me into killing myself. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you don't need to live, Gundam. Look how horrible the world is. You're right. I really don't want to know what Zoe Quinn's up to. Where's the gun? Well, if we I, can't ban you. Maybe we can get you to kill yourself. I think that's you two's plan. How about you ban yourself from life? A big element of convincing people of that, you just look to that bottom left, you're like, don't you want to see Star Wars a droid story? Yeah, what no. the fuck is that? That's apparently a... She, I remember Whoa, her announcing there. it. She's like, there's a brand new droid who will be helped along by our two known droid characters, C-3PO and R2. No. You're like, why? What? Uh, stop. Like, I honest to God thought you were joking that no, That's whole the thing. Time All of it now. came across <laughs> the fucking joke. A lot of it. It's like Lando TV show. You're like, why? No. <laughs> Isn't he like 86? Well, I guess maybe they'll be doing it with Donald Glover. I didn't catch who's in it. Um... Oh. No, no Glover for me. He's oh, lame. It, was, it was so awkward as well because like in, in the video she's like, from the the creative team or the writer behind Dear White People. It's like, wh oh, why would... God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, said, oh, God. Yeah. Because they said, oh, Lando. Lando, that's Lando's got a black, black in it. So... <laughs> yeah. so let's give it Lando's to someone. Lando's not only black, he is a robosexual. My God. <laughs> Oh That's my so God! Hey man, don't judge That's people, so next okay? level. <laughs> so we're gonna give Lando to the guy who did Dear White People because it's he's about. So, he's so progressive. He is a sexuality that we can't even have yet in our universe. It's like, wait up, Lando! Jesus, <laughs> we gotta get these definitions. <laughs> Lando out. leading the way. And um, yeah, like, like I, I was because I was watching it with Fringy, and I was like, why the fuck would they have written it that way? Like, for people who don't even know what Dear White People is, how weird of a sentence is that? From the people who wrote Dear White People, you're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> if you're like the, yeah the I watched like, the trailer like, what does that mean? White People and tuned out. So, and, and, and then, yeah, um, Ahsoka, that's probably the best news for, for people who like her. You get a TV yeah. show, she's going to be using her lightsabers, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Brian. she's going to be using her two white lightsabers, it's so cool. Technically, I think she's supposed to be a great Jedi since she's not part of the light side of the Force or the dark side. Well, she little was happy bit of Star to Wars put on the jacket little... in Episode Five, so. and and she well, she didn't seem to talk about that in Mandalorian at all. Like she was referred to as the Jedi didn't for like, the whole episode. In Mandalorian. Well, she's been under a lot of controversy recently on Twitter. They call her a turf. Oh, Rosario Dawson, yeah, she, um... yeah. So, I I mean. The fact that she's still got a show, the fact that Gina Carano is still, I guess, connected to Mandalorian, apparently that they're going to have to get complain louder and louder in order to get uh, people booed from these different things. It's just... Um... The only arc of Star Wars is Disney slowly but surely learning that 99% of normal people don't agree with their weird progressive shit. Yeah, especially the Twitter people. You know, that's what they listen to. And that they're a small minority, the Twitter people. I just want to be a fly on the wall and watch Pedro Pascal and fucking... Uh, Gina Carano argue on set, even though that probably never happens because he's never on set. I just want to see it happen. God, what a job! <laughs> it's a tough. I one. honestly, I don't even know how a super fan is meant to look at this image and get excited and not just be baffled and paralyzed and just like, I don't know what to watch first. Like it's it's too much content. You greatly underestimate the consumer. <laughs> we have great power. We can watch all of it because it, it, it's funny. All of the coverage of this I saw on Twitter was basically negative, and I know that like I've been a it is bubble in and of itself in Twitter, but uh, so few people were talking about this image or, or the the concept of all these properties coming at once as a good thing. It was usually just eh, I like that one. <laughs> like we'll, we'll have that yeah. one. But... It's like we're at a candy store now, and you're picking out which you know little. 
Little Which piece little of candy with like. broken glass do you want, little yeah, rat? Like, I guess I'll have I'll have that <laughs> M and M. I guess. Oh, that, and that one's got one, LSD. Yeah, one that one. I'll have that LSD. On that one's got hobo's piss mixed on it. Hey, I feel it has magical healing properties. <gasps> Crocs with sock cereal. They made a cereal for that. Nice. I think it says Shit, more about the person if holes. they do that. You know. Um, I really liked. Jay's tweet, he uh, he put out this, uh, so this, first of all, this is the screenshot, um, right, and, oh boy, uh, the tagline with it was the guy saying, uh, we, we've put out, uh, you know, properties that have a level of quality that is second to none, and like, the most uh, clear uh, image is Mulan, um, you're like, you fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but every single one of those is a remake of something that was better. So second yes. to none is just like fuck the old shit. That's that's hilarious, yeah. And you got um isn't Maleficent like the only one that I've that's the only one out of yeah, these five that's a that doesn't reimagining. Take on. And he's fucking standing in front of it. Because like I didn't watch uh Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lady and the Tramp, or Maleficent. It's just you you only ever hear bad things pretty much. Uh, um I, I did saw watch... Maleficent. I don't remember shit about it though. Oh, it was so bad. We watched uh, the that old one and the new one back-to-back. -back. Oh, don't, I wouldn't recommend that experience. So, I recommend the first half of that experience. Yeah. Who would watch those back-to-back? -back? There must be great gobs of money in it. Because I can't think of any other reason why. I mean... The I, love of the craft. I, I, I genuinely <laughs> hadn't seen Mulan in so long that I was, like, worried that the original wasn't going to hold up. But it fucking did. Uh, yeah, some good shit. And I think uh, Mulan did have Be a Man. Now that's a tune. Be or I'll make you a man or some shit. Oh, yeah, man. It's all sequence. It's, great. it's a fun It's a fun movie. And then the second one is like this hilarious nonsense. Uh, don't wear armor. It's oppressive. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> part of the best. Armor, right. armor is oppressing my mortality. <laughs> Mulan was the one film that I thought. Oh, like that might actually warrant a live action reboot because like it's grounded and it's about combat, like man versus man. The rest of it were like like the Lion King. Did I don't say man versus live man. Action. Wow. Yeah. wow. Oh, whoops, sorry. Wow. Ansel Ham. I'm Banned. Cancel Ham. Exclusionary. Sorry about that. <laughs> Men don't deserve rights. I identify as a Mushu. You can't call me. <laughs> Is it bad that when you said Mushu, I immediately thought of uh, food smooshed? Food, yeah. Food smooshed. <laughs> Um, so then, yeah, I guess the last image, because I don't want to spend, you know, forever on this whole thing, like when, when they were, like, the ending with, with, with it zooming out with Bob Iger in the center, and it just, it reveals more and more and more, you start to notice that a lot of these, <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. Holy shit, it's like the Matrix of evil. And the thing he oh, says yeah. is something like, we aim to produce 100 new titles each year, it's just like, oh. Huh? Wow, man! I should have used that screenshot in my video. That's yeah, uh, it sums more, it all up so well. Hey, quantity is the important thing here. Okay. Well, <laughs> the sad element I think is that you can notice with some of these that they're referencing a lot of properties they don't, they didn't create, they just bought. Bought. Yeah. And, and it's and they refer like to them as like, oh, these wonderful. Like they talk about the Simpsons being like, oh, this wonderful thing that's a that that Disney and. Simpsons have managed to create, and it's like, fuck off, like, <laughs> Simpsons has nothing to do with you. You just yeah. paid for it. And it's, yeah, it's a little, it's a little eldritchy, you know, and you're just like, ah, <laughs> getting a little spooky. I, um, I, I tweeted that out with this obviously suitable image to describe ex experiences, uh, <laughs> and I find it amusing that, like, this is a common <laughs> sentiment that is growing, like, Everyone's yeah. like, Disney, you're getting awful big. <laughs> you yeah. need to shed some weight there. Um, cause I think they will shed weight when it comes to the comic book distribution for Marvel and shit. Yeah, you reckon like, that's going to just downsize and stuff? Because clearly they're I'm cranking sure. TV. TV seems to be the, the new cool thing now. Yeah, because if you make another Star Wars movie, people might not go see it. But it's like, ooh, a show that's somehow different and new and exciting. Yeah, and it seems man, to be less that's risk because involved. the Mandalorian, though. You reckon? Like, is it entirely that, or is it like a combo of lots of shows hmm. just doing well and series being respected as being like, I don't know. Uh... Yeah, 
Didn't they announce an alien show too? If they did they another did. alien they movie, the R word around Disney. They they are doing an alien TV series. Yeah, restrained. Yeah. Oh my god. Fringy, no, Fringy posted fact. that. That's the something that I hadn't even seen in the presentation. I don't know when they slipped that out, but an alien <laughs> yeah. TV show? Like, what What are we, what's happening? Help. Yeah, because if they announce another alien movie, people, no one's going to go see that shit. That franchise is dead, unfortunately. Much like Star Wars. <laughs> as far as movies go. Yeah. But at no, least, like, like, a lot of people team, really like The Mandalorian. Strange like, machine. Like, if you look at review websites, Mandalorian is, like, rated pretty well. Like, no one likes, well, yeah. like, not not to the same effect that anyone likes uh, Alien Covenant or any shit like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's because, well, obviously, Alien pales in comparison to Star Wars as far as, like, reach and accessibility and marketability. Isn't, like, Star Wars uh, in the top 10, at least, or top 15 for the most grossing IPs in the world? Oh, How probably. do you think Rising, Alien's yeah. on the list? No, definitely not, but I just, like, you know, they're going to do a show of that because no one would go see another shitty Alien movie, but shows, ooh, maybe the show could be good somehow. I think it's because uh, of the main reason that theaters are in the fucking dumps right now, and yeah, that's, that's why Disney's throwing all their eggs in one basket with fucking Disney+. Plus. And I think they're, like, flinging shit on the wall to see what sticks, <laughs> and they're probably most likely have, like, a fucking a checklist on the wall, like, okay, we need gender diversity. We need more female roles, gender inclusivity. Now we can work on characters and stories. No, fuck. They're never going to say that. <laughs> they're no, never going to say, like, let's okay, work on characters gotta, and stories. We have to reference okay. old material. Well, I was backs. trying to be, like, you know, positive. That's the type of guy I'm a very positive, as you can tell. <laughs> it's crazy because, like, I'm ready to kill myself. Um, oh, is it, was it episode four or five or whatever? But, like, we were watching Mandalorian, and, and Fringy just asked, like, what? Like, what is Mandalorian's perspective on anything? And I was just like, oh. oh my <laughs> god, you got a point. It's just fucking any topic. What is his perspective? You'll shoot like, it. Maybe. What's his perspective his... on droids? What's his perspective <laughs> on the helmet? And you're like, well, I guess it, he wears it and he doesn't take it off. Well, that's part of the lore of Mandalorians. No, well, they, made it's... Up, they made that up for the show. Yeah, I, I I get conflicting information on exactly what the origin of that is, but I I, I wouldn't even care if it was uh if it was a part of their law from ages. I think it's dumb as fuck. Like, and and how how does the rule work when you need to eat something and he lifts it just up to his top lip? Like, how far up does the helmet have to be before he's broken the rule? Mm. Like, don't well, I think they, wait, they don't have straws in the future. What if he needs to blow his nose? <laughs> but how am I supposed to drink my blue liquid? I don't think they can do straws because it'll be too silly. <laughs> no, it's gonna make him look bad. We can't do that. It would have made of... perfect sense to me. I mean, don't a lot cool of don't it. ask, don't tell rules when it comes to masks in movies in general. I think I unless genuinely... it's a Marvel movie, then your mask just doesn't even need to be on. Da, 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 They'll CGI. Right. It'll be fine. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I have to protect my identity. I'm Spider Man. Mask comes <clears> off. <throat> what the fuck are you doing, Tom Holland? Tom Holland, who's that? I am just Spider-Man. <laughs> Thomas <Bullshit>. Holland. <laughs> oh my god! I find it funny that uh, Wally, which I really like, is satirizing <laughs> basically exactly what Disney is doing right now with its what's the company in that movie by and large or something. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, basically like, Disney. <laughs> someone tweeted at me the other day, like there's this, I guess, website called uh, Ideas dot Wiki or some shit where people just post what they want as ideas. Fucking, I almost had a heart attack. I was in a call with uh, Fringy and Jay, and, and someone had sent me this block of information that looked like it was from a website, not from this stupid site that's nothing. But it was like, J.J. Abrams will be uh, remaking Wally in the 2020 live action video. And I was like, whoa, 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 no whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> like, please, God, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, and someone had posted it like, ah, oh, this will be awesome. It's like, what the fuck? No, why? Don't give them ideas, no. you retard. I hope he was ripped off the internet immediately. I would have flagged him for all sorts of wild shit. Just he make... kills kittens, <laughs> he fucks koalas, get this guy off. Or even he worse. He said mean stuff about Markiplier. He, oh yes, <laughs> we gotta get rid of people who aren't friendly to Markiplier. He's a national treasure. Also, Jay Longbone, how you doing? What's up? Do you tell the people, we watched fucking Batman and Robin yesterday, it was great, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was. <laughs> great movie. <laughs> it's a good it's Christmas a... film.
Yeah, it's a staple in our household. Me, I would watch it with my dad and sisters. We would staple just like, my side. crack up. Yeah, we would just crack up at all the, the ice puns. Because dad, my father loves Arnold, so watching him do this shit was. I don't know, uh, it was I don't just know why anyone would for him. Because I, uh, yeah, we've just been talking about how Disney's this horrifying creature is consuming everything. Uh, the, the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> ja, we've got the Jar Jar Binks poster I've got over here. I just posted. Uh, what about Arnold Schwarzenegger well, reprising? Lost a lot of money during Corona. Jumping into a Star Wars movie with with Arnold Schwarzenegger as Jar Jar Binks. I think that could work. Probably get it. <laughs> I don't see why not. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gold Hog. <laughs> Mr. Gold Hog. Oh, wait, Arnold is Binks. Come on, he's too old. You know, like when he runs, Jar Jar Binks and makes like noise. It's just like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Icky, icky. The movie we need. I wish my eyes would stay erect. Well, this this is the shit where it's like, if you're gonna go ahead and make droid a Star Wars story, can we have some fun shit now? Like droid, a droid shit. wars, droid. Droid. Couldn't even give I it a name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We haven't figured that out yet. I honestly think that some of this shit, like, it's not even past you know pre-production. They have no idea. Mm. Oh yeah, they're still like just have the, uh, the artwork for it. Obi Wan Kenobi show, uh, this, this, that started filming, right? They probably haven't even written all the episodes. Like this, is the kind of production level Jackson I assume. Jackson Kennedy's like, Obi Wan Kenobi was he was he in the originals? Oh, the good, yeah, make a movie about him. When they have um, Obi Wan Kenobi and Vader like meet up in that show, everyone's gonna be so fucking pissed in terms of continuity. It's like what? But it's like, yeah, but you want to see it, don't you? You want to see them both activate their lightsabers. You want to see them throw stuff at each other with the force. It better be as good as like the last Star Wars movie, and I don't mean the recent ones, but Revenge of the Sith. There's no denying that the lightsaber battle in that shit was amazing. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, like, mm -hmm. have you seen Chad break that, it yeah. down? This is like, oh, they actually like, they actually cared. Uh, is is where I was going with that, where um, you know, like it, the new films. I are think you telling are, me Ryan Johnson didn't care about the throne root? I think scene? what he cared about. Is that about, what you're trying well, to tell me? What he, what he yeah. cared about the was fight for, at the end of the sequel trilogy with the fight at the end of Revenge of the Sith. You know, like wow, one of these had effort and work into it. One of these was choreographed. Whoa! <laughs> like they, one of these was made by someone who cared. The creator. I like. I honestly think when they film a lot of the uh, the sequel trilogy ones, they're like, "Do you think it'd be cool right now?" If we did this, this, this with the lightsaber, and this one else is like, that is really cool, but do like, do a flip, and then it, it, use the force to hold the lightsaber in midair. That's, that's cool. And, and also, a, a huge wave of water is going to splash across. This is so fucking cool. <laughs> I say that as if the prequels didn't have a lava, like, storm uh, in in the end of the final fight, but I mean, it's, they still did the choreography, so <laughs> they could have their lava sprayed all over the place, I guess. You know my favorite part about that fight now? I didn't notice it the first time I watched it, but I can't remember who pointed it out, but, like, when they're fighting in the river of lava, there's, like, a raft with two aliens on it, <laughs> and they just kind of, like, swim in between, uh, uh what's his name, Obi-Wan and um, Anakin? While they're like standing off, and the two aliens are just looking at them, like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> it, it's like a tiny little beat, but it's so fucking funny once you notice it. I can't unsee it now. <laughs> it's like, it's like watching two chill. bums fight in the middle of the street. <laughs> this is not a safe place to have this battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get out of the lava. What are you guys doing? Well, I guess they should get out of the lava too. Lava's not good. I suppose people want us to it's mention. Very hot. Uh, uh, Last of Us 2 sweeping the game awards. I I, I know there's of course it's, it's the contentious come as a surprise topic. To nobody. Uh, I yeah I, I I'm with Rags on that. I I figured that this would happen. It wasn't a surprise at all. Um, the I was surprised. Really? What would you what were you expecting? Like, what do oh, you like think you was going to win? I honestly thought that our votes mattered at least in gaming, but I was wrong. <laughs> at least in gaming. <laughs> at least in gaming. Yeah, I don't have any bad experiences with. With voting shenanigans recently, so I, um, it, it it's surprising to me though that like uh, everybody wants to like almost just like fuck the game awards. You never trust. It's like where were you? Where were you? Like where have you been for the last ten years? The mm. awards are always kind of to me, and it's just like yeah, well, you know. We were all yeah. used to them being bad, but not so blatantly in your face. Fuck you about it. Well, what did you not like about the Last of Us Two? What's what's wrong with the game from your perspective? Hmm. Listen, I don't care. In the sense, of, <laughs> like they kill off Joel, which I thought was the weirdest thing. 
but I guess it's an interesting move. It's a plot twist you don't see coming. I think but then, like, saw it coming. But why the fuck did she save the other bitch at the end? That's what I didn't get. <laughs> like, you see her hung up. Uh, spoiler alerts. You see the bitch hung up, and it's like, if that was me, and she killed, like, the guy who's like my father, go, fuck you, bitch, starve to death. Die, you strawny bitch, die! You know, that would have been me. It says she cuts them down. They had this fight, which was also dumb. Like, why would you cut her down to fight her? You could have left her to die. Yeah, I shouldn't even be ruining this for people because I could go on no, all day. No, you shouldn't. Ruining it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, the thing that bothered me the most was Neil Druckmann and everybody involved with it being so smug about it and rude to anyone who didn't like it. And then it became this whole political bullshit where if you didn't support the game, you were a hater, a biggest, and a foe. That's what yeah. bothered me yeah, the yeah. most about anything. Because uh, we, we've had a few uh, EFAPs about that particular game, going in detail about all of the issues we have like with the structure. It's not, it's not, you know, not simply, I didn't like that they, they had these choices in the story. It's more so like execution and stuff. But uh, is it, I can't remember which video it is, but I'm pretty sure Neil Druckmann almost said like people who take uh, oh, issue with God, the ending, um, they just don't understand that they, they, it's you know they have a different perspective. You're like, <laughs> they just don't get the vision, because uh, of course, the idea of like why didn't she kill her? It's like, oh, don't you see? It's like you try and spin a thematic sort of uh, through line, but the um, I think it's it's the same with TLJ where we have, whatever one you draw, there's going to be something in the narrative that really fucks with um, the what I would call like some kind of message they're trying to deliver. Uh, like the the cycles of violence being some well I don't even know why I'm I'm going into this because it's like yeah it won what were you expecting of course it won it's it's uh it's another step in the I guess uh, journey that we're all making in the gaming industry that mechanics are less and less important it's it's more about the, like telling the deep and, and meaningful stories this is what film went through at one point like it wasn't taken yes. seriously at all gaming has totally followed Hollywood in my opinion and so yeah you, to earn that sort of like uh, respect or uh, being taken seriously, you you make stories like this. They're like, oh, so mean, so deep. I mean, and it's all meaningless when you think about it, because you know, with the whole riots and protests, what happened? Everybody turned into the cheek. There, it's like the second people could turn around and fuck something up, they did it. Nobody just said. Are you saying these people don't have principles? What? Well, how could you ever suggest such a? Thing? Well, I'm not saying that, Mama Susan. That was rags again, putting words. <laughs> wow, in my rags mouth. the fuck? Trying to get us banned with your opinions. Violence. Speaking as I'm just like, who actually like liked the game, <laughs> we were all I, just bad. I, speaking as somebody who actually liked the game, I agree that it sh it didn't do enough new gameplay wise. Like it was just the same thing again. You didn't bunch like of the dogs. Like, co collision errors and like a issues with the AI, which wasn't anything special. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Gameplay was just very humdrum. We've seen this before. So did you play Ghost? I, of I did enjoy it. But it just wasn't anything new, and it should have evolved. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't play that. It looks cool, though. That's something to play. I genuinely liked it a lot. That was the one everyone wanted to get the awards, I think. Uh, it was the ongoing battle. But yeah, nothing else really to say on that. Because like, I just... It won. Here we go. And uh, and Disney have won. They're going to... And Jeff right. Keighley has won. They've all won. And we will be here to complain. Disney is slowly but surely attempting to recreate the end of Revenge of the Sith in real life. I I mean, dude, with that image, uh, someone <laughs> when I tweeted this one out, someone posted the image of Anakin approaching the Jedi Temple with all the stormtroopers. It's like, oh my god, same energy. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, they were Phase Three clones. More Star Wars nerdism, ah. <laughs> and not just any clones. The Five Hundred First Legion. Fucking legends. The ones who, uh, didn't the, the group in real life, the, the 501st people, they, they provided props for the Mandalorian because they ran out? I don't know. I was kicked out of the Legion. Damn it. For Damn. alcohol? Your opinions? Nah, that would have been cooler. But yeah, my opinions definitely don't coincide with uh, what's going on. Do you, I mean, you, gotta, a, you have to like Star Wars now, and it's all great? Do you reckon they'll make a Veda TV show? It's kind of a thing. Veda season one, a Star Wars story. Oh no. He's like really sad. I really miss my son. <laughs> like, see, he was always a good guy, really. Like, he just. <laughs> a little hot. 
And then someone's like, Vader, and he goes, what? And strangles them and throws them around the room. It's like, yeah, people are going to love this. Also, activate the lightsaber and then turn it off, just so that uh, people need to see Activate it. the lightsaber and just cut the floor and then turn it off. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe they can make a show where it's just Vader's life as a fourth ghost. Yeah, he's just walking around. I think around. a Vader ghost, show a Star could Wars be interesting story. because it would give you more in-depth knowledge of Vader himself and why he was the way he was. Because his whole life as Darth Vader was nothing but pain. Even breathing hurt him. So it could be interesting to see, like, his disability and how it affected his mental state and made him the fucked up piece of shit he was. Well, are you, are you, are you, calling, are you calling Vader disabled? Wow. No, he was obviously handy-capable with the ass whoopings he handed out <laughs> after Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, if I was a rebel and they locked me in a tube with Vader, where's the fucking princess? I'll take you there, my lord. I, think the... I saw what you did to the last guy with the cone head. There's a lot of uh, examples of like I think how they could nail it with a lot of these, but it's just like it's them, and you're like, oh god, they're gonna do something real bad. You're gonna fuck it up. Yeah. <sighs> I guess we'll see. All you could do now when you're a fan of stuff is hope to God it isn't ruined. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird world we're in. <laughs> Where is fill in the blank franchise? Is it alive? Is it safe? <laughs> <laughs> Neither yeah, die a hero uh, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Because they've already confirmed Predator's getting another movie already. It's like, didn't we learn from the many <laughs> other times that yeah. Predator has failed? I I thought that like I don't even know that it was viable in terms of like if they did a really good Predator movie. I don't even know how much reach it has anymore. But they're like, yeah, fuck it, we're just gonna keep trying. Predator, that's a monster thing. We can do stuff with that. People will like it. If I was at the board wanna... meeting and they pitched me the last Predator movie and they were like, it's starring Olivia Munn from G4, I'd go fire this man immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of my sight before I kill his entire family. This is disgusting. Like, in some, like, in the guy from the black comedy duo, I don't even know the names. Abbott and Costello? He's... Close enough. <laughs> they were on Mad yeah. TV for oh, a hot Key and minute. Peel. Key That's it. One of those guys, Key or Peel. Like it's key. Olivia Munn, Key and, key key. and Peel. No, no, no. Wow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck, just do Predator the way it's meant to be. He's a horrific hunting monster. You don't know where the fuck he's coming from. And the only way you can survive is if you're ripped a fuck like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because Carl Mayweather lost an arm in that first film. That's how it should be done. Not like this comedy bullshit with a bunch of flunkies from television that you honestly don't give a fuck about. And the film doesn't come off as scary. It comes off as another pile of shit in an autistic kid that somehow can figure out alien technology. Meanwhile, our government can't figure out the shit they found. Yes, I believe in aliens. <laughs> but good God almighty, it makes no sense. Have you ever dealt with an autistic kid? Nothing personal. Anybody's got autistic kids. But I highly doubt he's going to figure out an alien Rubik's Cube. I'm a functioning adult, and I can't figure out a normal human Rubik's Cube. Um, anyway, yeah, Predator, I don't feel like I want to watch well, you're that not you're right. They're the future of humanity. It's the, ne no, the next it's not, evolution. No, it's not Predator. This is a spinoff series. Fredator. Fredator. Ooh. He's all right. <laughs> he's fine. You know, he's just doing his best. Going through the motions every day, going to work, killing, coming back home. See, I think that would be better than what we got. The idea of like predator? a businessman predator who's doing his day to day. He's just like in the office. <laughs> He's trying to come up with out. new weapons to kill <laughs> enemies. And it's like a sitcom, and it always ends with "Oh, predator!" And then they all look at the they, they shrug and look at the screen, or they jump, and then midair it still frames, and then the credits roll. And the next door neighbor is played by Logan Paul. Yeah, Jeez. this episode of Predator was filmed in front of a live audience. Yeah. Predator, Not you got more the new though. quarterly <laughs> reports, and he's like, "Oh God, dude, I just I don't have enough time. I can't. Yeah. With, with the wife, and I just I can't." <laughs> Ends with him killing himself. It's like a dramatic fucking turn. You're like, "Oh, yeah. what? don't you get it? It's an allegory." Like, I I I, I guess. <laughs> just don't know why you chose this. <laughs> <laughs> whatever floats your boat um so if you want to hit that link it'll jump you all it'll it'll hyperspace you all into oh. watch together because there's uh there's a fun little video oh god i'm hyperspacing i gotta hold on to something oh i know right? what's the video i don't feel like being depressed today it's from wisecrack <laughs> a channel uh, the poor thing I remember when I first heard of Wisecrack, people were like oh this channel's really awesome they, they do all kinds of cool things and i remember like seeing like Does one or two videos exist? I was like, oh neat 
They talk about philosophisms. Yeah, they, and, and, and then, like, as time went on, more and more people were sending me videos like, do you see what they fucking said about this thing? And I'm like, oh no. Oh wait, Wisecrack, I remember them. Yeah. So, um, funny enough, because what we've just been ranting about for the past, like, hour or whatever is how much Disney is fucking everything over, kinda. And, uh, you could say that all those things connect to what we call culture. And this video is called How Disney Ruined Culture. So, you might even say we find we would find this quite agreeable, right? Right. You excited? Is everyone? I'm very yeah. excited. Wait, this video definitely. is from film. <laughs> well, you know. I have a feeling the implication is we're it? not going to agree with this. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't seen uh, more than, I guess, a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, I should probably say, like, Capital Opinions is the reason I found this. Uh, I was I was just pondering on his channel about like oh what what is he up to what's happening it's like oh he's covered this video and uh, it, it it takes an interesting turn as as uh, I'm I'm guessing did someone send it to you or do you watch uh, Wisecrack and you were like hey no I just I saw it in a recommended thing and okay so yeah so obviously Wisecrack is making a video about how Disney ruined culture now I want you all to imagine what you think their reasoning is going to be like why. What what is Disney doing that ruins culture? You might have a couple things in mind, but I bet you won't guess what their actual reasoning is going to be. I'm very it's definitely excited. ruined dating. I was messing around with a chick who was attracted to Simba from the Lion King, the animated series. How the fuck am I supposed to compete with that? <laughs> oh, it's a cartoon lion, dude. You can wear a furry outfit as Simba. It wasn't the same, and I did offer. <laughs> oh, I like the idea that you said it wasn't the same. Like you did try. <laughs> <laughs> you try anything came once. Came in the room, right? I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it was you, you go, "Wow!" Is this doing it for you? I don't know. <laughs> Is it doing it for you, baby? <laughs> It's the king of the jungle. Uh, we got five in here. Is anyone anyone missing? I am popping in. I just had to step away for just a second, but I'm here now. We can begin. We All right, can... here we go. So yeah, uh, as as you just pointed out, like like what what what? what just quick roundtable. What do you think the the point is going to be? How is Disney ruining culture? Kathleen Kennedy. All right. Uh, they're not making enough new shows. <laughs> Those fools. They're not being progressive fast enough. And J Lomo? Wait. Oh my god. Uh... I have I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm blank on this. Well it's oh, come just... on, you can do it. How is Disney really that person say... around me in a firefight? they they have this thumbnail at the bottom, why we worship asshole characters, but it's a picture of Rick, I guess. The spike, the blue spiky haired one, and I'm like, but I thought he was a bad person, and he's not worshipped. Well, uh, they mix that up all the time. They think that because people enjoy Rick, that people think he's a good person. It's like, oh, like Cartman. It's it's pretty fucking yeah. clear in the show that he is a horrible person a lot of the time. He even like makes it clear that he's just like, yeah, you know, you don't have to operate really any differently because everything's meaningless. It's like, okay. Um, I love Rick. I think he's funny <laughs> as fuck, but. The idea that I like anyone who thinks he's awesome worships him, it's like you need to chill. <laughs> you're you're right. It's we're not we're not nobody's going that far. Because they say the same thing about uh Joker from the twenty nineteen one and um Who are the other ones that like always get brought up for this? I guess like Jack Sparrow or something. It's like you realize Jack Sparrow is not someone you should model your life after. Or it's like, like Tyler Durden that? from Fight Club. Oh that's not yeah, Tyler that's, like, Durden classic. was a sage. Fucking thing. Truly the the inspirations of a of an entire generation. <laughs> anyway, more a ten. What's up, Wisecrack? Michael here, and I'm back in a I'm heavily like, wow, sanitized. Wow, I hate it already. <laughs> Stop it. Oh, no. What's an eight minute Cape Cod? Uh, <laughs> is that code? It's what the candidates did with young women. A eight minute Cape Cod. The Time Crisis Universe Wiki. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, I have. Okay. Also, uh, this background is AIDS. Is that because if you order a Cape Cod and it takes eight minutes, your bartender sucks. Oh, it's a drink. Yeah, Cape Cod. Hmm. What's in it? I was literally thinking of Cape Cod. It's just a uh, vodka and cranberry juice. Oh. 
Ah. This sound interesting. Yeah, and I'm with Jay Longbow that his uh, background is AIDS. Having looked at it for a long his time while editing my AIDS. video, it is well, AIDS. You need to have character ADD backstory is AIDS. It. Where are you Dude, from? It's like AIDS. Where your parents? AIDS. There can't be a single pixel that's not eye catching. Yes, that's how YouTube uh, works now. It's vomit. Yeah, no, right. Also, uh, when I was last using Wash Together, not even streaming, um, I was getting like I get low FPS on it for some reason. So, if you guys start seeing low FPS being EFAP chat, uh, hopefully that is an issue that will be solved by the time I stream EFAP next, but you might have to put up with it for this stream. Uh, don't worry, you're not missing out on a lot of those frames. <laughs> Wisecrack Studio, please people, wear your freaking mask. No, anyway, wear today your I uh, fucking uh, sunglasses, because uh, oh. you'll go blind if you're in that office. Yeah, uh, God, that face. You always get so many pauses. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those teeth. He's got a great dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a, I had a, I had a lot of fun with pause frames with this guy. He oh, just, yeah. ooh, he would be great for thumbnails. Maybe that's that like why they hired him. him. You could tell he's got a lust for life, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Disney on my brain, and not just because my nostalgic mom keeps sending me this photo. Aww. Oh my God! It what happened funny. to Wisecrack, bro? <laughs> that's hilarious because it's, so it's like it's him, but. On a kid's body. Will There's hack. something creepy about this. Yeah, it is a little it's creepy. It's like a horror movie. Still! <laughs> yeah, this is a the kind of photo you find in a, the serial killer's uh, semi-abandoned like trailer home. Yeah, like, they piece this the together from other photos, and they're like, this happened, okay. It's dark, I and the there. heroes stumble into it. They have their Dude, flashlights everywhere. figured out why he cut off that lady's head. He never Dude. got to go to Disneyland. Maybe Aww. this actually is one of his mom's old photographs, and he has an aging disorder. <laughs> you guys don't know, okay? <laughs> He's, yeah, everyone's like, why'd you shop that? He's like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, shop, I shopped it. Yeah, oh, yeah I, totally yeah. shopped, yeah, yeah. I didn't look like that when I was 10. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't go to Disney World every year as an adult. No, no, no. He puts and this on his Tinder blink. profile to let women know he's fun and interesting. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm ironically wearing a Disney hat. You're like, do you think it's cute? No. It's like, yeah, I don't either. Like, what? what? This is so gay. <laughs> Mom keeps sending me this photo. Aww. And who can blame me? They basically own or license everything I love and everything I hate. Bottom. And that's not to mention the new season of The Mandalorian because they own Star Wars. Also X-Men. Okay. That's right. They own the X-People. And just take a gander at the, the top people? grossing so films last year and you'll be greeted well, by Well, X-Men is actually triggering on Twitter right now. It is? Oh, yeah, it's it's something going on. I was reading is it some a trans crap. thing? Well, I don't know. Is yeah, there a well, new uh, thing coming out? Like a new X-Men movie? or? Probably. I don't know. But um, if you remember when... Isn't it from the trailer for Dark Fate where she was like, we, we, we should call ourselves X-Women because the men do nothing around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. They probably the only reason they were they they, they, probably, they probably could encounter some problems with X Men. Like, oh, should we call it X People? I don't know. Like, we don't want to fucking annoy everybody. People. We're trying to be and inclusive. Just, yeah. Take a gander at the top-grossing films last year, and you'll be greeted by one name and one name only. Except for See, Sony Warner Bros. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Like a gander. One name and one name only, guys. That's right. I you didn't look at the graphic. It's, this was all in post. He didn't actually. He's... Except for all the other ones. Forget the he other ones. Spend all of our money on the... all this shit, and he's just a face. Yeah, we, <laughs> we spend all of their money on the fucking Willy Wonka Pablo Picasso studio, so they didn't have any <laughs> any money left over for an editor. I didn't realize it was a very rare ball. piece. It was when Picasso was on LSD after the running of the Bulls. He was on his insufferable faggot phase. Hey, <laughs> uh, we're screwed now. Mama Susan, it was rags again. <laughs> it was he rags said I'll piss the girl your mom. Make him go to bed. <laughs> I can picture Susan at home watching the stream right now like, that's another one. Tick. <laughs> like, oh. He figures another Gundam would the be dog. there when the F-bomb drops. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I had no idea that Jumanji did this well. It's like, good for you, I guess. Uh, people, people like... Uh, times before Corona, am I right? Yeah. Adventure movies. Remember films about being outside? We don't even have that anymore. <laughs> um, it's weird when you dream about being outside and then you wake up. Yeah. 
I can't could... think about going outside because there's this weird light at my window half the time. It's just <laughs> fucking blinding me. I can't think straight. Dude, oh. that should be the name of the movie that comes out about being I outside. Think straight. Being outside. And everyone's being like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Grocery Disney Pictures normally. presents Look at being outside. In Seattle. It's like it's commentated by Morgan Freeman. He's like, this is a blade of grass. You're like, oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen it's one so, so beautiful. Ugh. They're gonna make a movie, uh, Eternal Sunshine, uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Maskless Face. <laughs> there's something there. The workshop that one a bit. There's, yeah, there's some, there's something there. I enjoy uh, that this was an easy walk inable sort of moment for him in this video to just be like Disney's clearly like dominating, but instead it's like you don't see any other names. Like, why, why, why did you show us? The only you on this screen is Disney. <laughs> They're at the top grossing films last year, and you'll be greeted by one name and one name only. See, from Endgame Sony. to Aladdin, from Frozen 2 to Toy Story 4, Disney made seven of the top ten highest grossing films of 2019. What a shame. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Toy Story 4, I hate it. <laughs> Toy Story 4 is horse shit. Boo, Toy Story 4. And while this feat is impressive, even for the big mouse, it's not exactly something new. In fact, many of the top 50 highest grossing films of all time were either stuff. made by or later bought by Disney. Now, maybe for some of you, this doesn't matter as long as you get that Marvel cinematic goodness injected into your eyeballs a few times a year. See, and at, this point, again. at this point, you're like, hmm. Where is he going right now? Like, what is the point? Yeah. Of it? Do you, you feel like he's still on board, kind of. You're like, all right, I'm, I'm following. Where, where, where are we going? And I right. totally get it. But what if I told you that Disney's ever broadening artistic reach is actually bad for culture? And not just because actually they made the bad. worst Star Wars. Is there, Wars. A, is there, is there <laughs> an assumption that it wasn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're gonna present like, no, no, the guys, other actually, it's bad. <laughs> so I don't even, yeah. yeah, I don't know anybody who considers Disney's buying of everything and remaking everything to be like oh this is awesome it's like who thinks that i don't think that anybody anymore yeah i know consumers think it's that really becoming umbrella i don't even know the hey people. guys if i said maybe it's uh, actually friend. good that one company owns every single thing in the world i had a friend who was excited disney bought like marvel and some other shit and he's like now we can get even better avengers movie mm. <laughs> all these characters are going to be together spider-man it's I'm just like i don't care Hey man, look, if they've bought Fox, it's time to have Spider-Man battle Alien, I think. You have the one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that, yeah. No, make uh, Alien fight Camilla Khan. Let's give her that character once and <laughs> for all. Worst Star War. How? Let's find out in this wisecrack edition on how Disney ruined culture. Also, wow, I mean, you, you just you, you expect, like, you're really gonna prove in 20 minutes that they did it? Alright, this is gonna be exciting, because you'd have to establish, like, what it was prior, and then how they've destroyed it. Which is, uh... You know what's real sad? This is what happens when a channel that's actually good gets too popular. Mm. Like, Wisecrack used to be good. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was saying. I remember them being an awesome channel, but I don't know when that was anymore. It's like, it must have been... It's like something shifted, and now we have this horrible, homogenized garbage with a dude who looks exactly like that other bald white guy with glowing white teeth <laughs> that does top ten same. countdowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they get, Fuck, man. And, and you assume they have like a selection of presenters who only read scripts because they have no idea what they're even talking about. They don't what care. Bathing is or <laughs> hey, they, that's probably in the contract. You know, they got to look presentable to some degree. Otherwise, people might think that they're like hobos. At least wear a shirt and a hat. Yeah, uh, stand in our bright whack ass studio. Let's see those beautiful pearly white teeth you paid for. And then the other part is that uh, they'll have a team of editors, right? That. <laughs> Right. Might, it might even be to the point where there's like three editors who made this video and that none of them had anything to do with the writing or the presentation, like, like the, the commentator himself or whatever. They it's paid like... for like great editors, but they want them to edit like the average person so it's relatable and accessible. That's how I, how it went down. Like, right. have, you, have you noticed that like uh, people have been pointing out as a trend on YouTube that a lot of creators are just moving this direction to make more stuff? They'll just hire lots of people to, you know, do all of the parts oh, yeah. of the job. Yeah. This I've talked to like that. YouTubers that pay for other people to edit for them, which is it's, yeah. it's pretty neat to have uh, John here as well because like you're a one man show almost, right? Oh, yeah, it's it. editing was part of the. Job. I've always edited all my own stuff, and to be honest, I insist on it because I'm very like particular about exact the exact duration of every single shot and everything. Yeah, I feel yeah, I so, like, feel the same way in terms of uh, if I'm not editing my video, it feels like it's going to lose a lot of. Uh, 
flavor I would get character, worried. you know? Get worried and I don't think that they exactly. can find anyone who's mentally deranged as I am. <laughs> in the sense of, like, editing a video, and then they think, like, there was a clip from Three's Company in 1974 that would fit this moment perfectly on Twitter, and then I blow hours trying to find something that doesn't exist on the internet. Yeah. Oh, and for just reference, for one meme. Um, I'm cool with someone editing the the EFAP recordings we do, but not my mainline videos is what I mean. Like the that's why they take so long. Because this is the thing. I actually think it's like a, a gradual progress. Progress. I don't know what's happened in the past two days. I keep fucking screwing up words. I, I I feel like I need more sleep. I don't know what it is, but the uh the idea that you you slowly integrate more and more people to take care of more and more parts of the video until it eventually you know ship a theseus style it's just like you're like wait is, which which of that is even you anymore like which parts and you're yeah. like um i wrote the title right <laughs> it's pretty yeah, eye-catching yeah. you're like uh. and uh you'll get loads more from the person but i i think a lot of times people be like i don't know something's different not the same shit anymore well, yep. the new YouTube algorithm, if you want to do well, you need to shit out videos. And, uh, yeah. Maybe I should just adapt to the times, but it's kind of hard doing it by yourself. But so much of people's, like, personality and ethos is in their editing, too. You know, yeah. so when you hire a new editor who doesn't really fit or gel with what you were doing and what people liked in the first place, you know, you can go downhill yeah. pretty I feel quickly. like that's true, but I also suffer from that already because most people like my more crazy and insane things in the sense of me saying what I really feel and making the jokes I want to joke or make I should say and now it's kind of like with the current YouTube I sit and I'll make some jokes I'm like I might have to edit this one out this might offend someone with a club foot son of a right. bitch <laughs> yeah, yeah. speaking of uh, you being completely honest you gotta, I don't want any dead people calling in we, we uh, yeah seriously we, we ask a question here every once in a while and uh, you're a new guest you, you gotta answer it too just uh which do you think is better, Gundam? Uh, Halloween or Christmas? God, they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Halloween used to be cool when you could go out with chicks and they'd be dressed all, you know, slutty, let's face it. Yeah. I'm going to be like an Indian princess, but a sexy Indian princess. Like, sure, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christmas can be cool if you have a family that loves you and sends you stuff. <laughs> So most of my Christmases, I got nothing. So for me, Christmas is about as nothing as Halloween. Because I wasn't allowed to trick-or-treat as a kid either. So I don't have any fond memories. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave with Christmas. You not as a kid? No. Really? Why not? Yeah, I had a very regimented childhood. This is what happens when, like, you try to raise a soldier. You end up with a complete and utter insane rebel. Huh. D did you ever go trick-or-treating at all? No. No? Not once. I was allowed to look out the window and see the other children trick-or-treat. Fuck. That just makes sucks, me sad. Dude. My mother used to say shit like, oh, you, you want a trick or treat? Where are you going to go? You don't have any friends. Wow. <laughs> You're going to go over to Yadzit's house over and over again. You're going to go to your run friend's house over and over. My <laughs> God. If you go out trick or treating, someone's going to put drugs in your candy. And before yeah. you know it, you're going to be sucking dick for smack, little mister. It is yeah. kind of like, wait, wait, my where's God. the problem? I don't understand. <laughs> And I grew up in a bad area, so there yep, were yep, people that actually put razor blades in candy bars for kids and shit. Uh, yeah. They laced it with um, laxatives one time. This lady just decided she was sick of kids, so she gave us all laxatives. I missed out on it. <laughs> so that was a big <laughs> <shit. laughs> That was a plus. <laughs> They're making our kids poop a lot. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that lady was taking. She's just like, I'm putting laxatives in their fucking candy. Fuck these little bastards. I just uh, I hope I, when they get home they want to shit. I know, like she's probably <laughs> hoping the kids would shit themselves while they're out trick or treating. I I just picture being like, "Fuck you, that ma'am." That costume very on, scary. Uh, <laughs> th throwing yeah, a that's such bed that's cover, such cut shame. two holes out. You can be a ghost, easy. <laughs> now I'm a poo ghost. Oh no! Trick trick or treating is such a unique experience for kids, and it's that's a shame that you couldn't. Yeah, man. Experience that. Like, it's once you're once you're not a, a kid anymore, like it's over. There's no going back. So, like, fuck. Maybe if it made dating it's such suck. a shame to miss out on it. Yeah. yeah. Like the thing that was the worst is like chicks would always, yeah. You know, oh my god, you didn't trick or treat. We're gonna go trick or treating. I'm like, we're fucking in our twenties. We're gonna look like <laughs> assholes trick or treating. I want you to. You have can dress up as Mandalorian, thing. your favorite. Though that yeah. might have done it for me if Mando existed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I could have been given He exists full... in our hearts. Yeah. Boba. You're right, Rags. Um I need to remember that. Disney exists in our hearts.
So I guess no I should... one's Let's ever really gone. Guys. No one's ever really not yet unexisted. I guess I should rephrase the question. Which one do you think is worse? <laughs> Ooh, that's a fucking tough one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I remember going to school for Christmas, and I, I hated school too. The teacher be like, "What did you kids get for what Christmas?" And I'm like, "God, no, <laughs> God, don't ask this question." Yeah. And everybody would talk about all the shit they got for Christmas. I'm like, "Oh my God, that's like more gifts than I've gotten in my entire life accumulated." And like, "What did you get, Gundam?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> fuck you." My that's mother what gave I got. me some. <laughs> I don't want to say this because it's fucking sad. My mother gave me McDonald's Happy Meal toys for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I got five. Hey, you know some of them are pretty good. So, so I, I, some of them I had, were good. Yeah, I was I excited hypothesis. to go to McDonald's. No, we've been having this Christmas Halloween thing for a while, and I've, I've hypothesized to Mahler on multiple occasions that there, there seems to be a link between people who who don't like Christmas and having horrible childhoods. Mm. So it's turning out that uh, it might have been right. Right. Oh, that like makes, you never makes hung sense. out with drug dealers as a kid. Yeah. Uh, too good for drug dealers rags. That's that's what we call them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my drug toity. dealers my drug dealers were the people passing out the candies on Halloween. Caught chocolate yeah, that's with my drug. Safe. Rags would see high safe. class drug dealers, like briefcase suit in a really tall building. No, just whoever's at the next house. And then they're like, which would you like? Like, hmm. And they're all like I properly like labeled Butterfinger and priced. And Reese's. I put laxatives in the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, it was like a multiple choice. It's like you can have laxatives along with any of them if you wish. It's it's all like an yeah. opt-in thing. It's, a, it's very progressive. Um, yeah, I I guess is the answer then just they both suck. You can be the they first. They both definitely suck. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a top one. <laughs> you can be Maybe the first Christmas person sucks a little bit more because unique as hell. Christmas sucks a little bit more because people talk about it like it's this great thing. So I get more annoyed doing Christmas. <laughs> Oh shit. Where's your Christmas tree? What the fuck you mean, where's my tree? It's only me and a dog and a closeted homosexual cat. <laughs> what do I need a tree for? For the cat. Yeah. What what so what what clued you in? That my cat was gay? Yeah. Oh, he despises women for some reason. <laughs> Whenever they come over. <laughs> He's very ornery. How often? So like do women if he doesn't get over? his food when he wants it, he will then meow as loud as he can. Repeat it. Well, He'll whiny. then open up the yeah. bedroom door, and then he will jump on the bed and scream at the top of his lungs, then leave. And if I don't uh, bring him any food then, he will claw up furniture and piss on something I love. So he pissed on the power uh, cable for my PC. Wow. He was sending a message. He knew. Well, I spend more time sitting in this shit than a little hates bit, women. honest to God. Hates women, <laughs> whines. Thinks everything's theirs. It might be gay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just all those boxes lining up. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, you hates Christmas slightly more than Halloween. I guess that puts you closer to one side than the other, you know? Just, I, 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 I'm not trying to steal a W there or anything. What? Yeah, here on <laughs> yeah EFAP, pretty much. Yeah, uh, here on EFAP, uh, I don't think his opinions on holidays should be. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, don't, I, I think they're fair interesting. and relevant. I, I think everyone's entitled to the. If fair. everybody enjoys like Christmas or whatever, go right ahead. It's just it doesn't <laughs> do shit for me. Like I had one Christmas where my retarded uncle, I could say that here, right? Susan took his shit under the Christmas tree. <laughs> like that Wait, was what? my best Why Christmas did he do memory. That? Was that a gift? He was retarded. He's... Oh, that's why he did it. He could. He took down his like underwear. Not his underwear, his like big adult pajamas. And he looked like Baba Booey from the Howard Stern show and he had a mullet. <laughs> well. And he's like, I make poopies now. And then he just pulled down his diapers and shit under the tree. And everybody in the house pretended like it wasn't happening. How do you do that? Wouldn't it smell? That just, that's just Uncle uh, that's just Uncle Carl. Just let him <laughs> drop his little stocking <laughs> stuffer. Don't pay him any attention. He's looking for attention. If you, you look know? at him, you'll do it more. Look away. Look away. You don't want to watch him shit anyway. Someone said based yeah. uncle. Based <laughs> uncle. <laughs> you, are there any holidays that you like, or are you just miserable? It is no holiday for me, honest to God. It is no uh, holiday for me. <laughs> there's no holidays. Oh, Every so day sad. is an unholiday. Uh, one long year I like to call helluary. I, I imagine once they announce the apocalypse is on its way, you'll be like, ooh, when? Like, what day is that? Like, uh, fuck it. Like, the apocalypse will come when I finally get mine. Like, I become a millionaire. The day it happens. 
I'm a millionaire. I did it. And then like on the news today, meteor headed towards Earth and there's nothing we can do. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have already made it to Mars. Fuck. And Mark applies with them so he can continue to entertain the humans of the future. And I was like, I knew this world was cruel, but this is too much, Lord. Yeah, I mean, fuck. All of us dead. I did call it a Yule Log chat when he took a shit. I was like, oh, that brings a new meaning to the Yule Log. And then my grandfather started speaking Spanish because he didn't speak English at all. And then he hand you a dollar and your grandmother goes, your grandfather loves you. And then my father pulled me aside. He's like, no one thought you were coming. That's why we didn't get you any gifts. Oh. And I'm like, okay. Like well, at least I got show to see a grown man about shit. All of this. You should I'm waiting for Netflix to grow a brain and give me a show rather than like, I don't know, Lily Sings or the other TikTok girl they gave a show to. They have no material. My whole life's a material. So true. <laughs> Um, I shall I shall make a, a show of my memoirs. The life and times of a douchebag. So That's anyway, Disney title. ruining culture. Got a nice ring to it. Look up Yule Cat. No. I don't think I want to. Yeah, whatever someone says look up something, he's like, hmm. <laughs> Yule log, more like Yule dog. I agree, Jay, that great. my uh, P.O. box is basically Christmas. Like... Getting stuff from people sent to my P.O. box is the weirdest thing. It's amazing, but it's also weird because I keep thinking one day it's going to happen where Ashton Kutcher is going to come to my house. And he's go, are you stupid, bro? You thought people actually like you? And he'd take the stuff that was given <laughs> to me in my YouTube channel, be deleted, and I'd be arrested for hate crimes. <laughs> well, yeah, give it, give it some time. <laughs> like, maybe, you know. It's, it's not always over. tomorrow. I won't well, feel safe until Ashton Kutcher's dead. <laughs> <laughs> What's, that? what's the what's the weirdest thing you've gotten in a P.O. box? Uh, I got shit in the mail. Oh. <laughs> so you got it. I wasn't that mad at it. I was a little mad they got it on my hand. Oh, fuck. But otherwise, I respected that hand. level of commitment. Yeah. To be that angry at someone to shit in like an envelope and then strategically put it in a box. That is <laughs> wow. Strategically put in a box. Yeah, because I was thrown off. You don't expect I've heard it to shit be in a, in a box. box. Like, well, actually, what do you expect a shit to be in? It wouldn't be an envelope, right? It would be in a box, but when I did see it or a log <laughs> immediately, I was thrown off. Oh, it, I was sent, like, a, was a woman's torso. Like, Wait. this weird sex toy. You were sent, and like, it's like, oily, like, too. For, like, for a boob job or something? No, it's like a, a, it's a woman's torso you have sex with. That one was weird. And it's got like slime on it stuff. I don't fucking know what a slimy <laughs> torso you have sex with. What? No, I don't you have just, sex you with rub, it. You rub your cock against it, or <laughs> no? Of course not. Someone already beat me to it. I'm not gay. Ah, uh, it all uh, makes what sense. What else did I get? Uh, someone sent me a double-ended dildo, which oh, I use as like who's a the dog lucky guy? Toy. A dog toy. So, yeah, Fluffy loves it. You know, you throw the dildo, and she runs out and gets it, and she bites the shit out of it. It's her favorite toy. Is that the, was a good does one. The <laughs> does the closeted homosexual cat want to get in on that? Or no, he's definitely not interested. He's not into interspecies erotica rags. Yeah, jeez. Mm. <laughs> oh, I just assumed because they were gay, they were they were hypersexual. So mm. you see a dildo. No, it's that's just like, definitely wow. not true. Uh, I don't even know how to segue back to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no way. It's not possible. To do it. Uh. And I guess spoilers ahead for films you absolutely saw if you were ever a child. But before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Wondershare. Yeah. Raise Shadow oh. We've all been picking up new hobbies since early Ray March. Shadow Legends if you're thinking about starting me. your own channel, then it's you should Filmora. check it out. Wondershare Filmora is a simple to use video editing. Wait, Filmora? Oh, okay. I bet you that you doesn't work. You want to add gay wings to your fucking scooter video <laughs> in downtown yeah. LA? Then yes. Filmora. Go skate. God bless you. Red. Go skate here program, which is comparable and more affordable than that. Other all big sounds like a good idea for someone that lives Filmora in LA. Rags is making a joke, but I was like, that sounds like something that would be done. It's, yeah. it's no joke. It, yeah, my my observations about reality are often indistinguishable from my humor. If I was gay, <laughs> I'd be doing that too. If I was gay, I wouldn't. I people saying why is the video with low FPS? I said I don't know why this is happening. I'm hoping Mahler's to fix computer it next can time. barely handle this stream. Yeah, like streaming a YouTube video. Oh, Mala video. ruined EFAP. That's the video we're covering. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like you guys have never skate heared before. It's really fun. We haven't what? Skate heared. Skate heared. 
skate here. That's oh, what it said. Skate heard? Oh, that's the joke I made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wait, you're bouncing it off. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> Just for simple edits either, since it includes advanced features like chroma keying, video stabilization. Advanced and features like duration. chroma keying? Where could you get where else could you get that? Well, paint doesn't have chroma keying yet, maybe. I'm thinking yeah. like maybe it's a auto chroma key or something like that. I'd Whoa. be interested in something that easy. What if um what if you have you know how you have Microsoft Flight Simulator? And then they made the 2020 version. What if paint is going to get, it's the next big thing to get the huge overhaul. Oh, and it becomes like incredible. <laughs> My, yeah. Microsoft paint 2021. It's good. They're right. going to be like all Linus tech tips and, uh, and all these other channels. <laughs> they're going to do like, um, uh, like benchmarks for what, if, if your GPU could run paint 2021. And he's like, it's going to be how paint amazing. changed the world. And you're like, what? Yeah. How wow, paint what? ruined <laughs> culture. <laughs> Flipping. Here at Wisecrack, until recently, we haven't been able to shoot in our regular studio with oh, fancy no. cameras and lights. But editing with Wondershare Filmora, we could kind of. Why would you make a backup issues. studio that looks like this? Because Shut that's up, the thing gorgeous. to do. It's so quirky and colorful. It reminds me of things. There's like a hand with are, a ball. Uh, are they aware marks. that they can take the cameras and lights home? You know, they don't need to stay in that building. You can shoot at home with the nice cameras if you want. No, you like, don't they're not bolted to the floor. Filmora saved them. Like, they were, <laughs> they were dead without this program. The Thank new God. update includes some awesome key features, like color match, keyframing, motion tracking, and audio ducking. Quack. I feel like this is going to be like editing on <laughs> Shotcut or uh, Pinnacle Studio or Sony Vegas. What were they editing on before? iMovie? Programs. Movie Maker, that's what I started on. Movie Maker, that's, that's the first thing I used to. Really far back. Yeah. Movie, movie Maker is that program, that, I love it when it gets bad, it's like, it's the program that just got worse with every update. Like, it actually, <laughs> they just kept making it have less features. Like, why did you do this? It's just like, oh. Yeah. Why are people not using our programs? All, we're, we're removing all the features. That's what people like. <laughs> you can do this more. So you can create professional looking video. Yay. The best part is that the interface is user friendly, so you don't have to worry about spending Ow. too much time Googling tutorials. Click the link in the description to check it out for yourself. If you comment on our pinned comment, you can win a license to get the software free, free, license. so let us know you got what a license you would for that film, Mora. Now, back to the show. In you the know past... it's no good if it's free then. Did it. Now back like to the how show. He, without any change at all in inflection or tone or pacing, straight. And now back to the show. He's a yeah. pro. He's a pro, he is. Just this saying. guy knows what he's doing. Lots of experience on this guy. He knows what's up. Yeah. A few decades, Disney has gone from an industry giant to an absolute behemoth, acquiring everything from wow. the Muppets to Pixar to Marvel to oh, Star God, Wars to most Muppets. recently 20... Not the Muppets. <laughs> oh, God, no. We're never going to get another Gonzo in space or whatever. Oh. Gonzo and Gonzo's Stalls. love for chickens was interspecies erotica, by the way. Yeah. That was a what closeted Gonzo? homosexual chick. Was Gonzo? He's a, uh, you know. Yeah, Who's Gonzo? Knows. Is he safe? <laughs> like no. Gonzo was the like first non-binary celebrity. First century. Of course, Disney's game of hungry, hungry hippos, but for intellectual property, goes way back to the beginning. According Someone to the company's really hard on that joke that wasn't funny at all. Yeah, they, look, they <laughs> tracking put all the, all the, balls, the balls with the yeah. logos. Yeah, it's a lot of work. They worked. Yeah. They that must have taken an hour to do. They would have achieved they were the, just oh, for nothing. They would have achieved yeah. the same thing with just having the hungry hungry hippos. That was it. That's all they needed. They well, this is the content YouTube wants. Ugh. Hungry hungry hippos edits. I want to. I want the hungry hungry hippos cinematic universe. <laughs> do we know oh, the names? names? Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know. They probably it, do. Inky blinky that sort of shit. Okay, so <laughs> four hippopotamuses in the original version of the game. There was Lizzie hippo. Henry Hippo, Homer Hippo, and Whoa. Harry Hippo. A later edition of the game place, replaces the purple hippo, Lizzie, with a pink one named Happy. Wow. <laughs> Dude, Lizzie got, got depressed, was taken away, and brought back as a different color and called Happy. You're like, she's happy now. You understand? You're like, <laughs> okay. I don't know. It, <laughs> yeah, I assume so. I, I, I guess Happy's a girl still. Mm. Not very I like how Hungry correct. Hungry Hippos is... They're not part of a broader universe. It's like the Hungry Hungry Hippos universe. There's so many directions you can go with. There must have been a crossover with like Toy Story. 
Yeah, the <laughs> the cinematic. And I'd also world. like to point out, the Hungry Hungry Hippos is a really shitty game. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. there's no skill involved in it whatsoever, except mashing a lever, and it's just loud and obnoxious. But it's cool because the hippos eat the things. Well, it came out at a time when there was nothing else to do. Uh, bowl in a cup. Yeah. Let me see yes. what Unhungry Hippos <laughs> came out. Hungry Hippos came out in 1978. 19... Oh. oh, that was a long time ago. It Led Zeppelin was, was still on the radio. Oh my that god, was... that Homer predates Simpsons Homer then. Oh my god, was that the... That was right after Star Wars, Hungry Hippos came out. Do you think there's a connection? It's all connected, yep. My god. Everything. Coincidence? Someone... You decide. I Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> goes way back to the beginning. According to the company's own telling, founder Walt Disney moved to Los Angeles almost a hundred years ago with, and I quote, a lot of hopes, but little else. How wholesome. Four years later- What? <laughs> I, I, guess, I, I, uh, I don't know, I guess. Like you could interpret that with, yeah, I had hopes, but everything was shit. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> How wholesome. Nope, not advertiser friendly. Disney got his first taste of success with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. The only catch, when Disney tried to make another round of these cartoons, he found out that his distributor had gone behind his back and poached all of his animators. Worse, upon reading the fine print of his contract, Disney realized he didn't even own the rights to Oswald. His distributor did. And thus, like a super villain's origin story, his distributor was found dead, chopped up in a body bag. <laughs> a week later, <laughs> it dumped in a ravine. It was still completely unrelated. It. Completely related. Walt, his distributor did. And thus, like a super villain's origin story, our intrepid young Walt vows to never get No, that's not a super villain. Oh, that could be anyone's origin story, really. I mean... Walt Disney's career begins working for machinima.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea that Again. they've set up. So he made something. It was essentially taken from him. And so he made sure in future that things wouldn't be taken from him. Super villain. <laughs> You're like, oh, wait, what? Right? <laughs> so now he vowed, he vowed to make a He's company that would Thanos. own all of the art. Yeah. They stole from me. Oh, yeah. Well, now everything will be mine in the future. Everything will belong to Disney. He's, he, he's going to buy that distributor. That was the whole point. He wants to buy that person. Like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> or as Disney.com puts it, he saw to it that he owned everything that he made. What is wrong with that? <laughs> well, you do. Well, yeah. He, you should own everything that you make. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think and I don't want to have an Andrew Ryan tangent here, but that seems all right to me. The I feel like they they were going a different direction. I, you know, you'd think they were going to go with he wanted to own everything. It's like, oh no, but it was just <laughs> everything he made. It's like, oh well, okay, that's fine. After that, Disney set up <laughs> shop in a studio oh, God, that is right. five minutes away from Wisecrack headquarters and is now a high end grocery store. Here, he created his most iconic character. From then on, Disney became a veritable creative. I think it really adds to the production value of this video that he drove to that parking lot for that five second <laughs> bit. And I think yeah. I think it adds a lot. It shows that he cares. Yeah, because it wasn't even he a even humble brought, brag. He even brought his embarrassing shirt with him. <laughs> Gone to any fucking place he wanted. Who are we kidding? We won't know. We're not gonna look it up. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to yeah, he could well, be cause... at like some Starbucks or Whole Foods out there. And no, no, no relation whatsoever. They were whatsoever. probably a Panera Bread, and they're like, "Hey, Terry, why don't we like film a little extra something?" <laughs> Say Walt Disney was curious. Here. I'm curious if you like blurred out the everything um, that he made. After that, Disney set up oh. shop in a studio that is five minutes away from Wisecrack Ooh. headquarters and is now a high-end grocery store. He did not. No, he didn't. Um, I also store. find it amusing, like if he, this was a friend of yours and you, he like needed to drive down here to record this, and you were just like, "Why are you doing this?" It's like, "Oh, because this is where like." Walt Disney created Mickey Mouse. And you're like, okay, but why, like, why is this in the video? What does this add? And he's just like, oh my mm. god. <laughs> I didn't like, even notice his backwards baseball cap now. <laughs> my dealer's over there. I can get some acid while you're filming, bro. Yeah. This dude is so fucking cool with his cap <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Listen, let's cut him some slack, Rags. He's obviously going bald at a young age. Well, it makes it <sighs> yeah, more but, obvious. But, yes, but, I know, but. It... <laughs> Because of the big, the big five head he's got there is accented by the, uh, by, by the hat. I'm pretty sure he once had flowing, beautiful, luscious hair, and now he has to live in a world where he has to grow the hair on his face. It's a hard transition. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man. 
here. We don't mean this, by the way, Susan. We're just observing. Yes. You know, actually, though, if you yeah. if you take his head and you turn it upside down and you crop it just right, it's a happy face. <laughs> oh my god. With a beard. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Anyway, you See, slice it's a happy man. With you the, it's a happy that. face with a beard. You see, guys, it's not all bleak. See? <laughs> this is the kind of quality <laughs> content that you come to eat out for. And the chat has made it a point that he is not wearing a mask outside. Oh, oh shit. he's a bad man. Yeah. He's a bad man. You, you put in the bottom right corner. This was recorded before. I recorded this a year ago. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> chill. I didn't know when it'd be relevant, but I decided to record it anyway. Didn't even know what he's the video was going to be about. It's like, but you're wearing the same shit. He's like, yeah, coincidence. Weird. I don't know. What a, what a world. <laughs> Character. Hey, From if I like on, a shirt, just... I usually buy more than one. <laughs> I'm no, he did this like... all in one day. This is why it's kind of, they did this all in one day. They they cranked this thing out. Oh, yeah. about a... And grocery oh, he got store. a team of people. Here, he created his most iconic yeah, character. They have a team of From then wearers. on, Disney became a veritable creative and financial powerhouse. Ooh. By 1937, it would break all box office records with the release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. They made $36 at the box office. It's a new <laughs> record. We, uh... Back then, $36 was millions and millions of dollars. By hey, that's a lot standards. of money for you people. That's Whoa! Say, look, look at this <laughs> bitch's face. I, I still like this, though, because it's, it's all, like... Wait, so how Disney ruined culture? It's like, we haven't got there yet? It's like, no, not yet. He's still getting there. We're almost We're laying there. the groundwork. Yeah. It still genuinely surprises me how old uh, Snow White is. Like he was, She's, all, she's like, probably in like her 20s. I've, 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 <laughs> I've, <laughs> I feel surprising. like most people think it was made in like the 50s or the 40s or the earliest. But like the 30s. No, this man, was, was a long yeah, 1937. Yeah. This is this right was, before Hitler. Mm -hmm. During Hitler, thirty-seven. Actually, right, Hitler, thirty-seven. Hitler, uh, he's 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 uh, he's rubbing his hands together. He's like, yeah, hey, yes, yes, yes. It's all well, doing. He's like, we gotta stop the communist. Henry Ford is like the Jew, the world's most international problem. Buy my book. It was and a my different cards. time. <laughs> Adolf Hitler had a portrait of Henry Ford in his office. For God's sakes, I like the 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 dwarf face. It's so floopy. Wait, like. It's like his <laughs> forehead is faster than his chin. I don't know. It's just like it moves through the world quicker. <laughs> Early on, success was predicated on a simple formula. Find an existing story, make it as cute and wholesome as possible to maximize your potential audience, and then dive into your Scrooge McDuck-sized money pool. People love Sounds referencing like this every time they talk about people having lots of money. It's always Scrooge McDuck. Poor guy just yeah. wants to swim in his coins. Leave him alone. You yeah. gotta give it to Scrooge yeah. McDuck. He jumped in there and didn't break his neck. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That shows that he has... He must be incredibly dense to be able to, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, you might think this is fine. After all, pop culture is, by definition, entertainment aimed at the largest possible audience. And Disney definitely... Is it? Let me look that up. Pop culture. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Popular culture um, would just be whatever's let's see. popular, right? Pop culture, modern popular culture transmitted via the mass media and aimed particularly at younger people. So they fucked up. I guess they're going literal, yeah. like popular, therefore. No, but he, he specifically said that it's aimed at the widest possible audience and not that it just happened to appeal to the widest possible audience, you know, because the way he's defining pop culture implies that, like, Oh yeah, we know this is going to appeal to everyone. Let's do it instead That's of like it became really now. popular. Yeah, That's probably why he came to that conclusion. But it's just kind of a—it's a weird way to define pop culture. But it's a—it's mm. a minor point. Yeah, it's modern pop culture. Mod pop cult. That's the, that's yeah, the cool way to say it. The whole mm, by definition yes. thing is a lot like the uh, like one name and one name only. It's like, did you guys proofread this script at all? <laughs> but we had one thing, an aesthetic. <laughs> you know, round faces, saucer eyes, big goofy grins, and if the kids love it, Japanese anime. It's not a but it's not a big goofy grin. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. You no know, round faces, saucer eyes, big goofy grins, saucer and if eyes. the kids love. Saucer eyes? I, don't, I wouldn't call them saucer eyes. Yeah, I just call them eyes. 
Hmm. But how could it be bad? But as we've mentioned before, Disney's reign of cuteness was not a happy accident or mere coincidence. Walt was basically ruthless. Well, of in course, his they to wanted make... to make a show kids would like, so they tried that and did also, it. Also, like cutesy you characters. Sound, you make it sound nefarious. Yeah, and cutesy. Oh, he does like... a lot of that. <laughs> it's all very nefarious. It's like, can you believe this company wanted to just make? cars that people would buy and drive around <laughs> oh, that's why yeah. hitler came up with uh volkswagen to yeah. with the model t You're just trying to take over the world that was step one how nefarious that they wanted to create these products with a bunch of appeal and features and quality to get people to like them i just find this so they want you to think it's like the reverse way to look at it. He's like, oh, look, they did these cute features to manipulate people. And it's like, well, I mean, th that's just, that's cute. That's what we do with, that's what it is. Yeah. Like, this is well before Disney drew his first cartoon. The, he obviously would have known what people think is cute. And people, of the people, like, why would you, what? But yeah, everything does this. Mm. But as we've mentioned before, Disney's reign of cuteness was not a happy accident or mere coincidence. Walt was basically ruthless in his quest to make all things adorable. And in the process- Ruthless to make things adorable. Everything has to be this nefarious, maniacal plot. Basically, Walt Disney sounds like Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> he talk with the, no, with, the, with the baby voice. How do they even do that? The, the fucking Twitch people when they do the baby shit? What is it like? How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's terrifying in this its own way. Yeah, that's what this video is. This video is gargoyle cringe. Yes. <laughs> I I learned, if you want to do baby talk, you replace uh, R's with W's. Ugh. See, that's the thing. <laughs> even, even the idea of impersonating it, I'm like, no, no, stop. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> the last 100 years acquiring stories, adapting them, and ultimately twisting their original artistic intentions beyond recognition. All wow, I'm, sh I'm sure we haven't been doing that for tens of thousands of years. Yep, that's, uh, that's kind of just a norm. Um, yeah. I'd be curious uh, why we would see that as an issue in terms of they're making children's versions of the stories. And yeah, and also like I, everything about his phrasing makes it seem malevolent, twisting the original meaning. Like, no, what if they just want to make their own take on it? <laughs> like, you think when when you think when Thomas Mallory was writing the Once and Future King, he was like, I'm going to twist and manipulate Le Mort d'Arthur so that it could have these influences <laughs> so I could mind control the brainwaves of romanticism. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're making everything sound evil. <laughs> Fucking and also, shot. I want to I point out how bold his claim actually was, because they've spent the last 100 years twisting things beyond their, like, beyond recognition from what they were originally. Like, he's saying that's what his, his knee has, like, basically exclusively done for 100 years. It's um, like, really? They didn't I'd make like anything to... original. They didn't do anything that's actually quite similar to the original source material. They didn't do any of that, did they? I'd like to make a slight correction to my, my last uh, quasi-pseudo joke. It was uh, Thomas Mallory wrote Le Morte d'Arthur. It was T.H. White who wrote The Once and Future King. Because so, yeah, you know uh, someone no one, in the comments. No one in the comments needs to correct me on that. They I've still will. Them. They will have paused yes. already. And they'll, they'll, be like, they'll, they'll pause, they'll write up their comment. <laughs> they've posted it. Then they've proceeded 20 seconds further. And they're like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it up. Fuck yeah, it. it's fine. Because I want everyone to know that I know that. Fucking rags. Getting it wrong again. All of which is to say, is all this cuteness actually super uncute? But to see the Disney well, method in action, let's dissect huh? an early example, Pinocchio. For the uninitiated, the story revolves around the titular puppet who just wants to be a- Oh, that fairy's titular. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. As the magical blue fairy tells him, his wish will be granted if he proves to be brave, truthful, and unselfish. And someday you will be a real boy. A real boy! But Pinocchio's not about that life. He runs away from home, joins a puppet show, and lies to the blue fairy. Well, it's not that he's not about that life, it's that he's been manipulated and he's being tricked by bad influences. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was like almost literally born yesterday, so cut him some slack. I mean, not a lot because he's a puppet, but... Funny he's about born it, yesterday because he born coherent thoughts. I don't know. I, I still, he's still yeah, very childlike. Drug dealers. Very impressionable. <clears throat> I'm not really sure yes. where this guy's going with like Pinocchio in particular, but you're dealing with a really symbolic story here. That if you analyze it on a surface level, 
Like there's a bunch of shit that you can pick apart about the plot where it's just like, and then he goes in the the ocean and, and meets a whale and his dad's in there. Like, what's the deal with that? It's like, that's a very drive down there. What's the deal with that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm with you there. Well, and, and I'm still just like, where? What are you? What are you doing? He's such suspicious. <laughs> like, what, what's what are we? What are we up to here? What where are we going, going with this? Let's, you uh... had a you had a goal to walk in. This was easy, and now it's like getting weird. Wisecrack, just tell me how the Disney is culture. <laughs> it's him off the hook, but Pinocchio doesn't stay out of trouble for long. He's soon whisked away on an all expense trip to the dubiously named pleasure. All expense paid. An all trip? expense trip. All expense hey. trip. That means you had to pay for everything. All expenses don't, are yours, Pinocchio. D don't let this guy do a video on sex trafficking. Because <laughs> 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 he'll make it sound like a paradise. I feel like there's a lot of reasons. Had to sell his nose see that, for matchsticks yeah. to make money. Now, looking back at this, I realized that he went to Neverland Ranch. <laughs> Neat. Island. There, Pinocchio and his resort buddies engage in all sorts of vices, from drinking to smoking to gambling, only to find out that they're turning into donkeys. But with the help of his cricket companion, Pinocchio narrowly escapes, only to learn that his daddy got lost at sea looking for him. It says here he uh, he went looking for you, and uh, uh, he was swallowed by a... Oh, just voila, voila, I say, wah, wah. Why does the dad have a gold felt marker? It's because awesome. he's a f he got loaded when he was a puppeteer. Yeah, all expenses paid. He made puppets for the king. <laughs> a whale. He Pinocchio made sex then... puppets. Oh, oh god, no. that image. <laughs> <laughs> get wood when you get wood. Dude, I think it would be fucking great if uh, the video is called How Disney Killed Culture, and that's just the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new EPAP logo. <laughs> Just a quasi anthropomorphic great. half puppet, half animal lying <laughs> face down in a puddle. Dude, there's so much you can pull out of this. It's like they tried to, to make everything all at once, and all it did was drown. That's good own. animation. <laughs> so fucked up, his hand is on like backwards. <laughs> Wonderful. Sacrifices his little. Actually, it's very possible. I've fallen off a roof looking like that. Yeah, yeah. we've we've all been. Uh, there, well, luckily, the puddle softened your fall. It didn't soften my Man, friend's ball, it broke his arm. Oh no. Oh no. See, if you were a puppet, you could have just been repaired easily. That's Humans, true. You know, they can't heal. I would buy a whale. Pinocchio then sacrifices his little wooden life to save the old man from the literal belly of the whale. But lo and behold, now that Pinocchio is good, he's brought back to life by the blue. Now that he's I'm good. like curious. <laughs> Why are we like going over everything Disney like his mate? This is the thing, it's like, we're getting so close to actually trying to make a point. I don't know when, when does it happen, uh, in this video? Absolutely. No, it, it's, it's really Disney Road Culture by showing that even if you're a small kid and you've made mistakes in the past, you could still do virtuous acts that get repaid in some way. It's very, this is evil, this is ruining they culture. It up. Fucked this it up. video it's lacks funny, focus. That's almost exactly what I said in my video, Rex. <laughs> oh, <isn't laughs> yeah, it? Uh -huh. yeah, no, it's just interesting because I believe yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get into it as he goes. But basically, he thinks this version is entire. It's like one hundred percent cute and wholesome, and uh, apparently, he forgot the part where he's basically sold into like chattel slavery. But uh, well, <laughs> and like when he died and he had to go into the whale and all that stuff. But yeah, it's just all ruthlessly cute and wholesome. That's so all it is. <laughs> May so uh, perhaps we could have a slight tangent, but does Pinocchio qualify as a bundle of sticks? Dare I say? Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> Susan, no! <laughs> <laughs> say the line, <laughs> fairy. Time as a real boy, and everyone lives happily ever after. If only life was that easy. So Jiminy Cricket, who as a cricket died next winter. <laughs> <laughs> but what if I told you that the author of Pinocchio, Carlo Collati, never intended for his story to give children that warm, fuzzy feeling? Wow, what if I told you I don't give a fuck? <laughs> really? <laughs> what, if, what if I told you I don't give a fuck about what Carlo said? <laughs> what, if I, what if I told you I literally don't care about what some dead Italian thought? I just really do not give a fuck. I, I assume he's Italian, but I just, I just don't care. What yeah. do I care about some dead Italian thought? <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, my name is Pokemonizia. <laughs> and that once did.
bought the rights to the story, the company whitewashed Pinocchio to fit the big mouse's cutesy aesthetic. If you have any doubt, then I present to you the original ending of Collodi's Pinocchio. Without oh, no. loss of time, they tied his arms, passed a running noose around his throat, and hung him to the- What's your point? Oh, wow. Okay, well, obviously, <laughs> they weren't going to animate this for their kids. Show. Why they would they put this in the book? Okay, wait, I think I know what, I know, I think I know what their point is. Like, they, they took all these edgy stories and made them all pussified. My God. <laughs> now we can't. Now we can't. Now we, what, now we can't have our kids be all depressed by these stories, by the dark stories. There's so, no way. Yeah, pretty much. Honestly. Instead, we turn these things that no one knew about into timeless classic teaching good morals to children. They ruined culture. <laughs> it's it like the, the first ending they did was uh, coming out from drowning from that pool. He's just dragged to a tree and hanged. You're like, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> like, How uh, the third act of this movie is a really not. dark turn. Wow. <laughs> he like he's he coughs up the water just to realize he's being hacked. Like, aw. <laughs> they they resuscitate him and save him from drowning so that they can subsequently hang him. So, Wait, yeah, if he's made of wood, how the fuck do you hang him? Wow. From you don't, it, you, you from don't it, even you know. know. You, if you hang him from a tree, uh Maybe he just doesn't die, he just hangs up there forever I was, until... Yeah, I was actually gonna go that direction, it's like he's <laughs> left there for thousands of years, <laughs> he can't move, he's just like, oh god. He goes mad. Yeah, he's bored to death hanging up there, that's the execution. And, so uh, what if this... Like, oh, is this guy... Down, please. Is this guy gonna make a video about, like, how DC comics are ruining... Or the DC movies are ruining comics by changing the tones and stuff of superheroes, like, Superman and stuff? Are we gonna get that? Are they gonna be consistent? Like every time no. you take an old thing and adapt it into sort of a a new style or or change around the details of it and kind of turn it into your own thing. The funny thing is that ruining is... culture, or is that an explanation of how culture flourishes? That things change yep. and evolve and grow. I don't know. A lot of things going on now does not feel like a step forward. If I had to read one more gender pronoun, I might lose my goddamn mind. Well, I guess that's the no, difference, see... right? Like whether or not it's well written is actually the focus, not whether or not it's tonally dumbed down or hype uh, cranked up like that's not really it would just be nice if things fucking made sense that, that just, why don't we try that crazy idea right now i think if like... they hung pinocchio it would have stuck in my memory more than the way it did <laughs> would, uh, whatever the fuck I, after not gonna lie afterwards. not gonna lie i want to see that vision yeah in, me in too the... get the animating in the case of adapting a previous work like it depends what you do with it like you can make something better or worse and like you, you can take the original idea or intent and enhance it. Um, it just depends depends what you do, but, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing to like reboot or rejuven rejuvenate something or whatever. I think an important element was well, is what Rags was just like. Who even knew this story? Like, who who I mean, out maybe, there was like, oh my god, you wrote Pokemon bad, po Pinocchio maybe, bad. Maybe maybe everybody knew about Carlos Col Colgate's whatever fucking. Just a puppet story. Maybe everyone knew about it, and then Disney came in, and it, but I, I don't know. But if they did, that doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. but why do, why are people more keen Star on the Wars. new version? I mean, yeah, I think you know maybe there's something there. Why do they find it more appealing? Mm -hmm. Something's going on. Why, uh, yeah, and it's not Branch like the old story disappeared. The old story wasn't erased from history. Yeah, you you can just go Google original story and you'll well, find it. Well, I will it. say, like, when that uh, Pocahontas movie came out, I did have a chick talk to me about how sweet it was and how it was a great film and she needed to find a love like Pocahontas and John Smith. And I'm like, girl, uh, Pocahontas was raped by that dude. It wasn't some fantastic love story. And she was 30. So there's, uh, there's probably people who didn't bother to check in. I mean, the yeah, I'm sure out there right. there are idiots who think that a Disney movie is a reflection of reality. But I don't know <laughs> right. if we we're going to save them anyway. <laughs> I love the idea you're watching Pinocchio. They kind Pinocchio. of run the world in the shell rags. <laughs> they're watching Pinocchio. They're like, oh, this is such a wholesome story. They're it's the like, majority. No, the we're the minority. Hanged. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? I mean the, the, like that Pinocchio story, there's such dark shit that in there in the original one. But then Disney comes along and said, okay, well, let's just extract the good fluffiness from that and then try to tell a story that like leaves the dark stuff behind but it, the good stuff made into a movie in its own right doesn't have to necessarily be bad in the mere fact that it exists and then Walt and Disney also said in thing. passing I'm going to screw over that dirty wop and the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> we could have, uh, you know one day adapt Pinocchio again and go real get Tarantino to do it We'll, we'll see oh yeah, I, Tarantino, you know. Pinocchio—that'd right. be crazy. I, Call it strings. 
fucking hang him by his own strings by the end of it. That'd be great. Before you know it, John Travolta oh. shows up for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> A tempestuous northerly wind began to blow and roar angrily, and it beat the puppet from side to side, <laughs> making him swing back. <laughs> His eyes are so fucking dead. <laughs> he looks like a psycho talking about this shit. Oh man, that was a that was a red pill if I ever got one. He's like, you need to know of the story of Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take can't it wait back, for... Rise Crack is doing good stuff. Island, <laughs> like the matter of a bell ringing for a wedding. And the swinging gave him atrocious spasms. It's really bad. Dr. His Meatball breath and failed chat, him, you're an idiot. And he could That's say no more. Hey, dude, eyes. can you blink, please? Oh, there, <laughs> there you <is>. go. <laughs> Opened his mouth, stretched his legs, and gave a long shudder, and hung stiff and insensible. Oh, that was... Wow, this okay. guy's a great rider. I hope he's okay. Okay. This, this looks like the kind of person who'd get PTSD from shooting a Glock. Yeah, it would, it would be like he's oh, so a open. journalist. Yeah, he's a, he's a journalist. Yeah. Does he right? Be honest. You have to put in a video game at the end of that, and it'll probably still be true. Like this is terrifying. Make him play Killing Floor. You right? Colodi had Pinocchio gruesomely hanged. This it's inspired so much angry fan mail that his editor demanded he bring the puppet back to life and continue the series, which he begrudgingly did. In Colodi's defense, though, Pinocchio. Yeah, why would anyone ever change that ending? Oh, it's, I mean, it's so it's just so great. <laughs> they, uh, they like everyone really liked the story except for the editor. Like, you know the ending? Do you mind? Like, you know the ending where um... you fucking hang the puppet? Um, like, uh, maybe you got some demons to sort out, but we we kind of <laughs> need to make this little guy marketable. You could, you know, make it so he comes back. People like the I cute stuff. Can you do more that. of the cute stuff? Can you and have the, a cute the hanging? fucking creator sitting there with his cup of vodka and his coffee and his cigarette? La mort, my friend. This is my art. And once again, they're like... <laughs> and Walt Disney, Walt Disney comes in. He's like, the story's great, I'll buy it. Please adapt and Get it. these smelly wops out of here. <laughs> in the rest of it was the character <laughs> of uh, the puppet that he's hanged at the end. They, they remove the hanging scene, they're like, how's it looking now? And he's like, well, this is the first image we've gotten back from the anime. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the, that's the, that's what they put on the VHS. <laughs> that's just the cover. <laughs> Pinocchio. No. I never knew Pinocchio was so edgy. It's changed my respect for the whole story. Yeah. Pinocchio's metal, odd as it sounds. Pinocchio, bro. Yeah, let's let's keep in mind also that the original audience of the story didn't even like his grim dark ending, and yet Wisecrack is gonna argue that like Disney did like an awful thing and is ruining culture by changing the ending. I mean... Let me show you how the original thing was. Why like, Disney was bad for changing it? And I'm like, I don't know. You have an odd strategy, Wisecrack, but I, mean, I don't know. Like, uh, look how just shitty people are today. Maybe if they saw Pinocchio die in a tree, they might think twice about being a prick on fucking Twitter no, and canceling it. people. It's so subversive. My expectations were subverted. This is just in Pinocchio's character to get hanged like this in a in violent storm. <laughs> it's just oh, because life isn't hanged. fair. It's fucking true. Oh, being hanged was pretty much <laughs> Pinocchio directed by Ryan Johnson. <laughs> oh, God. He wouldn't just hang him. Would have him drown in piss. Catch a fire randomly. <laughs> While he's acting, stop. While he's up. hanging, he just he's, he's struck he's, by a bolt of lightning. He's, he's, he's swings in the flames so hard they rub against each other, and since his legs are sticks, it creates fire and he burns. <laughs> it's thematic about his struggles making things worse. It's such a wonderful story. He brings oh my God! It makes so much sense. The series, which he begrudgingly did. In Colodi's defense, though, Pinocchio being hanged was pretty much par for the course. <laughs> That's great. That's a quote right there. This is so funny out of context. Uh, you know, Pinocchio being hanged is par for the course. Puppets getting hanged is like wet bread. After Pinocchio's vicious tweets, he was hung. <laughs> just par for the course. They canceled Pinocchio at the Big Oak. We technically <laughs> hang people every day on Twitter when they're canceled. Up, oh, we don't need her to be Siri. She says something I don't like about coronavirus. Cancel her. Hang her. 
I think the yeah, we might bring back hangings, you know? I don't know why not. Like, it's, it's kind of a fun... You know, like, people talking about how with the end of theatres, like, social events are going further down and down with COVID and stuff. I think, like, hangings might bring people back together. And then we'll, like, <laughs> gradually go back to the guillotine. It's just, yeah, I see this. It would be oh. so much cheaper tax-wise. Like, think about it. A rope? Boom. And How much money are we saving? Rotten okay. fruit and veg? I mean, you have a place to get rid of it. This is a good thing that's going to happen. I'm proud of us. It's hard to Pinocchio see Pinocchio travels the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Oh, Pinocchio, you are always up to something, little buddy. <laughs> I love opium. Was... That's my kind of Pinocchio. It's intended to be a tongue-in-cheek, albeit bleak, morality tale. The simple <laughs> moral? Be good or suffer. Throughout this, be good. What a fucking animation! <laughs> Is he here. wrong though? They used to beat the hell out of their kids back then. Be good or suffer. Like, yeah, you could die from a beating back then. Yeah, I mean, you and know. That was okay. And they decided to tell that same story with a few edits. Actually, I want to add that to the quotes too. Be kind or suffer. It's fucking <laughs> Be good or suffer. The, the theme. Yeah, it's pretty much see. what Mama Susan tells us. <laughs> yeah, be kind, you know, it's, it's, it's generally suffer. more. It's, it's, it's hard to figure out exactly what they mean by it, but uh, it's, you, I think you can get there eventually. Someone pointed out that being crushed by an anvil isn't exactly suffering because you die in an instant. <laughs> Good point. Well, that coyote seems to have been suffering for years. <laughs> He's hit so many anvils. Like, what's going on? In the story, we see a mean-spirited and rude Pinocchio. A stand did you add a picnic basket to the picture? Why? Why? In a bag? Why did you well, add the you said he was traveling the Ho Chi Minh Trail, so he has to carry his goods. Right. He's bartering. Oh, well, I think you mean our goods, comrade. Yes. Oh, my fault. I'm still on that communism hey, 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 our fault. <laughs> oh, well, I don't mind sharing the blame. Yeah, that works out. And in for all we misbehaving children. Robbed, starved, stabbed. Oh, and also, his legs get sawed off. But Jesus, we're not wait. supposed to feel especially sorry for him. His he actions robbed cause all and of stabbed? Oh, as if that had my wasn't enough. Whoa. What could he have possibly done that made him deserve that where I wouldn't feel bad? Is he like a mass murdering yeah, psychopath? <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> he nah, did he's, nice. he's bad. He's rude. He's a total so. dick. You're not supposed to some feel bad for him. Twitter posts. Even though he's supposed to be the protagonist you're meant to identify with, he's rude, so you're not supposed to feel bad when his legs get sawed off. Have you ever dealt with a really <laughs> shitty kid? I would write this sort of story too now that I think about it. <laughs> I like the idea that when writing it, they're like, he was stabbed, he was robbed, also fucking cut his legs off, I guess. Like, well, <laughs> All right, the leg cutting off I can't relate to, but the stabbing and robbing sounded like my childhood, man. Like, Sir, he's gonna die anyway. It's like, no, he's a puppet. Take the legs. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, cruel. Oh, cruel. Suffering. Behaving children. Robbed, starved, stabbed. And also, his legs get sawed off. But we're not supposed to feel especially sorry for him. His actions cause all of his suffering. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, Colodi also heaped on the psychological abuse, <laughs> making Pinocchio at one point think he had killed Geppetto and the Blue Fairy, which wow. I didn't even know. I don't know how you, let alone kill the Blue Fairy, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Simple as popping her with a Glock, but I feel nah. I got a puppet accidentally thinking you killed both of them. Jeez, what's this puppet been up to? Dude, what was the context? Well, he said he had psychological damage. He was doing opium on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. You really are like th this is there's so much effort here to make me be like, yeah, this is so much superior to the classic Pinocchio movie, you know? And I'm it's I bad. feel Pinocchio is more complex now. Yeah, uh, this was this was the th they're right. Disney ruined it. It was possible, and while you and I. I don't know if Disney does this, but I would feel a lot better about their adaptations if they had in the credits, like based on the short story or the original story by such and such. And just so like to prevent people from like looking at Pinocchio and saying, oh, Disney invented Pino Pinocchio, like as if like nothing ever came before it. Like uh, they should take the opportunity to say like, no, this was based on this original thing that actually has a lot more wisdom in it, you know. We've taken all the bad stuff out of it, but you know, <laughs> we've just the bad stuff life. actually has a role to play. This is the thing: if they if they said like, "Go check out this story," they would probably need a whole bunch of like, but it, warning. <laughs> no, I, I, I do take issue with the idea that they took all the bad stuff out because, like, if you remember Pinocchio, there's a whole lot of rather horrifying things that happen, like from a child's perspective. 
you know, like right. turning into a donkey and being sold into slavery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess not everything. That was an overstatement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anything. No, like but that's what wisecrack. Right. Yeah, I, I know you don't mean that, but that's what wisecrack legitimately means. That's the right. main point. <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre. The yakuza robbed him, stabbed him, and cut off his legs. <laughs> Pinocchio was hanging out with Kiryu in the 80s. Oh, God. (laughs) Growing up in a media diet full of high-saturated Disney cuteness might find this story repulsive. It's pretty run-of-the-mill if you're familiar with old German folklore. More recently, we've seen similarly gothic tones in children's Yeah, I was like, how come one- why was- why is one better than the other, necessarily? Yeah, the Germans didn't fuck around. It ruined culture because it's not like old German folklore. No wonder the Germans mm. damn near took over the world. This is what they were giving their kids. Yeah, yeah geez. Power them up. Look at what like the kids watch today and how pussify they are. Yeah, yeah our kids being a journalist yeah, talking about his son life. scaring him. Our kids need more hangings. There I said our it. Kids- <laughs> <laughs> if you fuck up on the wrong side of East LA, you're gonna be stabbed and robbed. It's still true to this day. Germans back then were invading Europe. Our kids are like hanging themselves because they got misgendered on Twitter. Like, fucking Pretty hell. much. Well, that's not what I meant by bringing back hangings. Damn it. It's all backfiring. No. It's just, you know, just, <laughs> just get encouraged to 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 hang your oppressors. That's that's the idea behind Pinocchio, right? Because he got revenge in Pinocchio 2. <laughs> Pinocchio 2. First blood. This time he's pissed. <laughs> books like Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Now, let's be fair. Maybe you don't want your kid's bedtime story ending in gruesome death, but there's still something... Maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe you don't, but you're. have you considered your ruining culture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine a, a parent buys the original for their kid, and they're going through it, they're reading it to him as a bedtime story, and they get to the end, and they have to like, and then Pinocchio took the rowboat, and he went to a happy <laughs> island full of other puppets, and he lived happily forever. All right, good night, Jimmy. Uh, puppet wife, puppet <laughs> kids, it was great. Yeah. Don't Google this. <laughs> I don't think Jimmy <laughs> was. And then Pinocchio started dealing opium. Happily ever. <laughs> oh. Pinocchio. He got himself new gold legs. Sweet. That's, and that's, that's really interesting. You know, like the amount of negativity that's in like a lot of these old like folklore stories. But then when you're reading a, a kid, like, reading a story to a kid at bedtime. You want to leave them on like an uplifting note where they can actually yeah. go to sleep and not just you know, be like, like sitting there like, in the dark, oh, wide eyed, like, oh my God, the world is a terrible place. I think, yeah, generally, I think there's a, probably a decent reason why we stopped teaching young children's stories that were really super dark and everything. Because right. we're like, well, huh. they could have died by the time they had 30 back then. I am. We got it. We have to supercharge your moral education because you're gonna die in a week. So we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> you might yeah, die. Just to make them work in factories too. I'm reading you this bedtime story because you might not wake up for a random reason. So listen up. <laughs> Let me tell you about polio, Timmy. <laughs> you need to understand. Polokio, polokio. But that, you know, they kept the stories, but technology advanced. It's like, Mom, will I die? It's like, no, actually, you're going to be fine. So I'm not going to read this you're gonna at all. You're going to live forever unless your social credit score is too low. Yeah. Then we cancel you for good. <laughs> we Welcome to Cyberpunk 2020. Yay. Unsettling about the way a media giant like Disney can take a beloved fairy tale, purge it of its original intentions, and thus rewrite the narrative. No, you, our- no like just because you change how the story ends doesn't mean you've purged it of its intentions. You think there's only That's... one way to convey a theme or a moral? Yes. Right. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, the way they frame this is so malicious. Like, <laughs> no, mm-hmm. yeah. the, the puppet's gotta fucking die, okay? I mean, By yeah. hanging in a storm. And besides, it pretty much sums up capitalism. Like the mainstream version of Pinocchio is cleaned up and friendly, so more people like it, enjoy it, and buy it. The real story is dark, sad, and realistic as to how the world really is. But then again, they weren't trying to sell you a story; they were trying to get you pumped up for picking cotton tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) No, I, I, like. I don't agree that the uh, original is how the world is, and the Pinocchio, the Disney one, isn't. Just the Disney one offers the possibility of redemption, and the original doesn't. Mm. Like, yeah, but there's a much redemption today. There's, you know, there's bits and bobs here and there. You can... John Johnny Depp is still fuck. Let's face it. Well, <sighs> like it's more or less the same moral, except in the end, 
like you can change your you can become a better person in the original it's like nah just don't be bad or you die <laughs> don't be bad especially if you being bad is don't the result make bad of choices or you die i want to highlight by the making way. bad choices it's like don't get tricked by people the uh or you're gonna suffer and it's like I'm, i hope i don't get tricked by people then Yo, well you know what don't trust people who look like this that's what the, that's what the film's trying to say yeah, you see a fucking cop, I mean, a fox rolling up on you in a cape, but you know something's wrong. <laughs> you, see a fuck, you see a fucking cop, pick up you see your a cop. <laughs> You see a fucking cop, stop, drop, and put but your hand behind be your head, you live a little longer. Um, yeah, so I've been shaken up by a few cops in my time, so I know. Like the idea that, you know, they didn't have the hanging scene. It's like they've clearly got the breaking his neck scene right here, so. Clearly. <laughs> hmm, yeah. <laughs> Said, you have some. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't die like the other children. Are you made of wood? <laughs> You'll yes. make a fantastic donkey boy. You'll never get tired. Wait, are you talking, Fox? Ignore me. Come over here. We're going to Neverland Ranch. <laughs> a collective memory. Instead of saying faithful to Colodi's artistic intention, Disney did what it would continue to do for decades buy a story, bleach it in a caustic. I never got the whole hat thing in bed. Why would you wear more clothes to bed? <laughs> well, back then, they didn't have heaters, bro. You so you had to wear yeah. a hat to keep your head warm. It is warmer, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that of yeah. cuteness and to contention, Disney did what it would continue to do for I think most homes for back then only had a fireplace. You didn't have one in your room unless you are like Scrooge McDuck. And you had a you had a gold fireplace. Yeah. So you literally had to dress like you were going outside to keep from freezing to death overnight. <laughs> Decades. Buy a story. Ah, the good old days. it in a caustic vat of cuteness uh, and people were better then. Buy a story. The, the vat of cuteness. Yeah. It's like, it's like sort of cute, but like, calm down. Uh, this is what I mean. I'm, I'm getting a little lost with this. It's like, it's not like we're dealing with, you know, hyper insane cute stuff where everything's like bubbly and uh, soft edges everywhere. Like, because there's um, this scary shit in, uh, in Disney movies, especially the classic ones. Oh, yeah. Um,. Yeah, this his is... whole MO in this video is, oh, there's nothing dark in the Disney versions, and to make that argument, I'm going to ignore all the dark things in the Disney versions. Wait, a I was minute. sitting here yeah. thinking, like, uh, he's going to talk about how they've just basically ruined IPs, but it's this. Well, yeah, it's that's what I mean. It's so weird. It's like he, they're cutesifying everything. You're like, what? Well, yeah. this video is going to turn into like the last Wisecrack video, which is a 20 minute video that doesn't really explain anything approaching the point and gets everything wrong. Yeah, it's always fun. I think that their MO almost... uh, on YouTube was to find a point no one else is making and prove it to be some degree of true, and they, they've gotten so lost lately. <laughs> it's like, yeah. This is like, where did you, why, why did you say this? Out in exchange for yeah. cold, hard cash. Gone were the dark, satiric overtones, and in their place were syrupy lines like this. Thank you, m'lady. He deserved to be a real boy. As for Pinocchio himself, <laughs> that is pretty gay. <laughs> pretty gay. <laughs> as he tipped his fedora I, why to would a he, fucking star. Why do you use that as yeah. like an example of look what they did? You're like, okay. <laughs> right, yeah. Fedora. We also, there's like a very stereotypically black cricket outside. Thank you, m'lady. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't okay. remove the satiric undertones or overtones or whatever he said they're just different in this movie like it has a happy ending but all the same like trials and tribulations are also dark and also satiric and also have morals to convey to children so like i'm curious admit, if, in, this video isn't fine. if in like a hundred years you know a new company like this a martian company from like called dobney and it, it just takes over everything and it gets <laughs> all dobney. of this chinese stuff company too, and it remakes Pinocchio, because they're remaking Pinocchio again. Like, what if Why? they remake it and it's even more sanitized? Would you then be like, you've ruined Disney's message? You've ruined it. And it's like, no, they ruined yeah, the other one. No, no they ruined Turns out, like, the original Pinocchio was based on, like, a story some friend told him about a puppet he used to play with. It's like, you ruined that guy's story with your <laughs> stupid story. Yeah. Like Braggers was saying earlier, I mean, you, like, just because you deviate from, like, the original execution, that doesn't the new themes have deteriorated at all. I mean, one of my favorite things that not just Disney, but ever is uh, the Fox and the Hound, uh, which is a Disney cartoon. And I'm sure that's based off of an original short story that was probably much darker. But like, I fucking love that movie. 
and that's one of the like it's so impactful and it's such a grounded story about what it means to grow up and like uh the the roles that we play and like we like because they they're kind of like they grow up into these roles where they're conditioned to hate each other even though they're childhood friends like there's really powerful there's really powerful message there to absorb as a kid and that's that's a very valuable film to watch you know i would say the same thing about pinocchio honestly right you know i agree i agree pinocchio is great i just have a soft spot in particular for the fox and the hound because that was one of the first things i i ever saw man i've seen both those films i can't tell you shit about them or pinocchio it's like mm. I'm seeing it again. I'm like, oh, he went to Neverland Ranch. <laughs> my adult oh, yeah. the fox, he's a drug dealer. That makes sense. Yeah, so. I didn't realize how much I actually really liked Pinocchio until Wisecrack started shitting all over it. I was like, wait a minute, that movie's actually really good. And I watched it again, Dude, and it's t- still good. Telling me it's such a wholesome movie when you see that. You're like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Pinocchio's at the strip club. <laughs> Himself, he went from being a total Pinocchio to the naive club piece stealing of pine. Yo, bitch. Oh my god, he really is. Look at him. It's like, this is my <laughs> guy like deep. that. Thank you, my lady. He deserved to be a real boy. As for Pinocchio himself, he went from being a total frat bro to the naive piece of pine we know and love today. In the process, his character- him for that? Why, why? What is with this? <laughs> why is he trying to frame everything in the most just un dishonest and illy suited way possible the most uncharitable way to ever phrase anything and they have to go with it bro what's exactly. your issue with pinocchio why why you sh- like what did he do to you when you were younger you like, go, this piece of go shit. back to being a frat bro <laughs> <laughs> who got his legs cut off Hashtag i like it better when it was grim why? dark like a Zack snyder movie <laughs> i want to see that now <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I can already see the opening shot. His head is like hunched over. He's a silhouette, and it slowly raises up. It's like they never took me seriously. <laughs> it opens. Oh, it opens... and it's a Jesus metaphor now. Oh yeah. A, no. I just, what we did, the, the Pinocchio remake. It opens like Halo Reach with a helmet on a scarred and charred landscape, but it's Pinocchio's head. <laughs> it's Pinocchio's hat. How it happened. No, we're going dark. <laughs> we're going all the way. I also, we're uh, as a direct comparison as well with that lost image of like, oh god, that's creepy. It's like, yeah, well, look how creepy the original was. It's like, I mean, he looks kind of lame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be clearly lying. Yeah, look at him. He's got a big old boner from lying. What a piece of shit. Also, I really like the idea of the Zack Snyder Pinocchio starting with him hanging from the tree, and then narration comes like, yep, that's me. Bet you're wondering how I ended up here. <laughs> it's already writing itself. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, because this guy is like, this this audience, they're all like interested, I guess, in what he has to say, but he's like ranting about the, the bleaching of Pinocchio, and everyone's like, uh... All right. I don't even think he's ranting. He's going through it so friendly and casually. Oh, this is one of the top comments on the Wisecrack like actual video is someone who said like, "Why Disney is ruining that I liked." Like they didn't like they liked it before he actually made any of the arguments. Like he hates he's hating on Disney. I like it. Like that's what a lot of the people in the comment section were like. Mm. Mm Hmm design underwent similar changes, with Walt Disney scrapping the angular designs found in Collodi's story for a character model that can best be described as, what would happen if Mickey Mouse had a baby with a tree? What? <laughs> what? What'd you get there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, babies and trees right now, I can't... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to process there. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I feel Pinocchio is summing it up in terms of a facial response to that statement. You're like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. What's sad is that the animation for Pinocchio is stellar. Yeah. I mean, compared yeah. to the shit we see today. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a great looking movie. Honestly, when did it come out? Pinocchio. Probably in 1940. 1940, and it still looks. Pretty fucking Stick great. Back before yeah, Tumblr, ev- artists had to have talent. Like oh. everything today is that 2D motion tweening shit, like yeah. that you see in a lot of macromedia flash stuff. And when I say 2D, I mean like obviously it was 2D back then, but there was a three dimensionality to the way it was all drawn and animated, as opposed to now, 
where everything looks fucking flat as fuck. And now they've got layers with the backgrounds and how they would do things, and you can have one on top of the other. And there was a lot. It seemed like the the scenes had a lot more depth to them. And yes, they weren't just on a. It, it's not like I was looking at paint. Not to, mm. not even twenty twenty one paint, like twenty twenty paint, like the yeah. shitty one. There, the old stuff was just so much more kind of compl a lot of work went into it i know it's but such it a shame precise, nope. mechanical way it's like yeah. when you watch a claymation show but you could still see the little finger indentations on the clay and you're like oh yeah I, that. I like that yeah yeah nobody want the companies don't want to put that kind of work into it anymore it's all just how can we get this done for the cheapest amount of money possible just, everything um, just looks flat as fuck now it sucks I was just thinking about like the construction of this joke. So he was like, "It's he's like a Mickey Mouse, but wooden." Where does wood come from? Trees. Mickey Mouse fucked a tree. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That's funny. No. Like, okay. You can't father. argue that it didn't work just now. Yeah, but the process of designing the joke is funny because of how retarded it is. Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> always in the delivery. They got the wrong Obviously guy to deliver the lie. Yeah. Obviously, Colodi's estate was kind of pissed, with his grandson suing Disney's Italian distributor for infringing on the moral copyright of the story. Oh, the ah, moral that's a thing. Fucking no. mouth. Moral Especially copyright. if it's... Now, I know what... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, let's stop for a second. Look at this. Just <laughs> had to this guy is. So He just he... told me Pinocchio was killed viciously and died spasming on a rope. But I've never seen anyone with such a great smile after delivering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, God. hold on. Let's. Uh, we gotta stop for a second because in that article that he just cited, it says specifically that Kaladi's grandson hadn't even seen the movie yet when he sued Disney for moral copyright. Three. Did you say that? He had a screenshot. That's not. Oh yeah, moral. go back to the skip back and you can see it on the text. It said he hadn't. He had only seen press reports of it. He hadn't seen it. Because it says, before the film was commercially released in Italy, his grandson, uh, for alleged infringement of moral copyright, hadn't even seen the film yet. And it was, yeah, yeah long I'm suing before these guys. Commercial release, huh? Yep. More power so, to him. I would have tried to get my money, too. <laughs> he's just like, can I have some? <laughs> his grandpa's please? writing these sad, depressing stories. You know, he didn't make a, a quarter of what Disney made off of Pinocchio. My Disney figured that's out my that grandpa's legacy. Where's my I... money? My grandpa hanged a puppet and he got nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, he should have got something screen. because they bought the story from him. It wasn't public domain yet, I don't uh, think. Well, then he probably I spent it all on drugs and hookers. I let yeah. company die. And I'll silence anyone who <laughs> gets in my way. <laughs> Good reference. Colodes is They'll make a live action version of that in no time. It's going to be terrible. State was kind of pissed, with his grandson suing Disney's Italian distributor for infringing on the moral copyright of the story. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's an adaptation. Artists are allowed to adapt, and sure. Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> the end. It's over. Thanks, for, thanks to our sponsor. Uh, <laughs> we did it. The video's done. Thanks to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I, I like the, you know, we we're all just like, you can stop right there, please. And he's like, there's another half of the video. And you're like, mm, all right. <laughs> and sure, you know, the, the, are... back, the background's one thing, but then he also decided, he's like, I'm also going to put on a tie dye shirt. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, you couldn't even put on like a more, like, just a black generic kind of shirt with a simple oh, you're right. on it. Like, yeah, a we? solid shirt would actually like, work against the backdrop, but no. Right, yeah. He had to go that extra mile. It's like, no, my shirt also has to be eye-catching as no, fuck to the point where the... Can we cut this guy some slack, for God's sake? <laughs> He's on wisecrack. He has to tell you how Pinocchio was murdered with a smile on his face. He's obviously, his beard is going gray, and he has to fucking appeal to Zoomers who only give a shit about a guy named Jammin from BTS. The man yeah. is doing all he can not to blow his brains out. I salute you, sir. <laughs> He's yeah. just like, today I'm going to wear the tie-dye shirt to just express my positivity. <laughs> goes on the internet, sees this video, and he's like, what is wrong with you people? Like, why can't you just let me exist? God, if he commits Plenty suicide after this, I'm so distancing myself. <laughs> <laughs> no more YouTube. Enough. 
adaptation. Artists are allowed to adapt. And sure, they are. Plenty of great art exists because someone took an existing story and made it their own, sometimes undercutting the original, like Pride and Prejudice, but add zombies. More seriously, some- Undercutting the original by anti-zombies? I don't know. I think. Uh, well, I made six things that were made worse by zombies. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> 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 Something like There Will Be Blood took the first few pages of Upton Sinclair's equally awesome book, Oil, and basically threw away everything else. But nobody would accuse Paul Thomas Anderson of whitewashing oil, and I don't think Pratt and Prejudice and Zombies has somehow cheapened the Jane Austen novel. <laughs> I love that that exists. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I never Rags. saw that. Is it, is it good? I don't know. Great. Okay, so Rags asked earlier, like, why you are allowed to adapt things and make them darker. And that's exactly what Wisecrack is saying. You're allowed to make things darker. You're allowed to make things more edgy. But if you make things more cute and more wholesome or more, like, uplifting, that's bad and that's ruining culture. That I'm seems sure they'll consistent. spend the next 10 minutes explaining why one is acceptable and one isn't. Yeah. To Mainly because I don't... advocate. Robocop. When he gets blown to bits in the original. Yeah. That was not in the remake, and I, I rest my case. The remake is trash. Yeah, as no, soon as I saw Disney that the remake. cop wasn't just blown well, I'm up, gonna, I knew it was important. So I'm going to take the position that the scene in the new one, because I've only seen clips, but the scene in the new one where he's just like the head and the lung <laughs> is far more disturbing than anything in the original by a mile. Um, Let me uh, look hmm. it up again, because I have not seen that shit in a while. Yeah. I would easily say that that has that is that was the most more disturbing uh, thing. thing I found about Alita Battle Angel. Was the same Did he thing. like scream while he was in those little bits? I don't remember that. Oh, probably no, not. He, he no, it it is. I mean, I just uh, the 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 old the old movie is great. I love it, and it's got some of that you know classic violence sort of thing in it. But uh, it wasn't like seeing him just like with the face and the lung and it having the robot parts taken off of him to where you just see what's left of him and he's still awake and alive and everything do you see um do you so, see alita rex no i didn't i didn't actually there's um there's a character in that who gets dismantled into a brain eyes a mouth and ears and she's still like able to move the eyes and it like that was the one part of the film where i was like whoa what the fuck <laughs> you <laughs> Oh, they left him his hand, though. Yeah, he's got a hand. Uh, yeah. I think making stuff edgier than it was before in the original form, whatever that is, is another case of like the story dictating whether or not that's a good idea or not. I think it can be a good idea in some cases where like maybe in the, when the original version was made, like maybe it lacked some teeth where it should have had some more like it should have been a little bit edgier in order to like more effectively convey its its themes but uh most in most cases it's done for the wrong reasons like it's done to appeal to like a, a young teenage audience or whatever I just so. like edginess yeah, i agree sake. with that yeah a, a, and a lot of the creative process can be just hey you know like jurassic park but what about like aliens invade at the same time and you're like um i don't, I don't, I don't know <laughs> why is that Mm -hmm. And they're just like, yeah, I don't know. And then, but someone else is like, what about, um, you know, a, a classic tale, but we see what happened to them 10 years later, just to see how the blah, blah, blah happened. And you're just like, oh, well, I, I don't want you to touch that story. You know, like, there's conversations going on. Ideas spark from, like, combinations of other ideas, like, basically 90 fucking 9% yeah. of the time. And so we just try and sift through and find, like, the ones that like, seem <laughs> more structurally sane, rather than whether or not they're edgy. Yeah. So, like, what if we took Pinocchio about this puppet who is rude and then horrible things happen to him and he dies miserably? And what if we made the possibility that he could actually redeem himself? No, that's not allowed, according to Wisecrack, for some reason. But <laughs> but you can put zombies in Pride and Prejudice. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> not to derail too much, but I just got a, I literally just got a comment on my video reacting to this very video. It says, you're just trying to be a smart ass here. <laughs> Everyone with common sense can criticize your, to, your video too, Mr. Captain. <laughs> Damn, Rex. Apparently I'm Mr. Captain now instead of like Mr. capital, captain. but I'm a captain, captain I guess. Open. I am the captain yeah, now. <laughs> I'm Captain Sir Mr. 
<laughs> That's when you write um, back. Excuse me, it is ma'am. It is ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> ma'am. It is highlighting I'm like sh- it's less to do with the change, more to do with the effect. As in, nobody cares about Pride and Prejudice and zombies, but everyone cares about Pinocchio and not about the original. Like, we'll just argue that then. I don't know why you even brought up whether or not they've changed the story. I yeah, well, the Pride idea is that like, zombies existed. He doesn't yeah. seem to mind the change. He doesn't seem to mind that you changed in the adaptation from what the original was, but you're not allowed to make it more wholesome. You're only allowed to make it darker. Right. I just assumed like, that's a really was... bizarre standard to hold. Like if I wrote my story and I loved it and it was all the thing, and I sold the rights to some guy who made a movie out of it and it was much more successful, no one knows my story exists, then Disney buy it and they make a hugely successful thing that dwarfs that guy's version of my story. And it's just like, it's just ongoing. Is the, is the wrong in the the meaning was lost from my vision or from that guy's vision or the Disney's dominant and in which case is it Disney's fault that like they end up creating the vision that people like the most you know what I mean or like it's, project yeah, Red, which right. gets, it, and yeah. also they didn't even get rid of the morals it's literally the same morals in the Pinocchio story only one offers the possibility of redemption like it's not the meaning hasn't been lost like mm-hmm. I just think that's in- yeah he gets an drowned. Insane. Come on. <laughs> Maybe part of the difference lies in formula and scale. Ooh. PTA hasn't created a billion dollar industry by stripping stories of their content and replacing them with a deranged Daniel Day Lewis. Disney, on the other hand, regularly takes stories like Pinocchio or Sleeping Beauty or hell, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and throws them. Makes them the fucking awesome. Meat. Yeah, so what, the problem is they did it one too many times? Like, that seems weird. You know what I mean? Like, 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 yeah. Can you let me know what the amount of times they're allowed to do it is? Exactly, yeah. Why is That's not very foundational. Hunchback, Hunchback is another good example. That movie is fucking great. <laughs> There's a one. cringe back there. Oh, hell yeah. No, no, yeah. It's, it's a great movie. Yeah, and it's probably Gypsy based on a story hot. that, that had a lot more to it. You're right. Like dark elements that they chose to leave out, because. Uh, but the the cartoon Hunchback of Notre Dame is actually a pretty fucking dark movie. When you yeah. uh, pick apart uh, Frollo, the hanging like and the his falling into lava and the witch hunting and the, uh, yeah, it's it's dark. You're right. That the, one of the all two those Disney aspects where they say hell. They're all very dark elements, but in particular, I find Frodo's ideological possession to be particularly disturbing. Did like you say Frodo? Did, you Frodo? That, did, you did I say Frodo? Frodo? Sorry, I meant Frodo. Oh, no. They're so, they're so Frodo. similar. I meant Frodo. Frodo, no. The rain is corrupting you. Yeah. I like tall women. Mm. <laughs> Fucking Frodo, man. Like, ugh. Frodo. Stay to your own Sitting franchise. There, swinging a sword at, at, at hunchbacks, falling into lava. <laughs> no, John, Frodo. you're wrong. Uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame is nothing but cute. It's ruthlessly cute. Just oh, ignore right, all yes. the stuff that isn't cute. Just ignore it. Yes. Pretend it right. isn't there for the sake of my argument. It's That's cute animation. Frollo. The themes must be cute. <laughs> Nailed it. They've been Frollo doing this to the pretty chire. consistently for the past hundred years. Seriously, if you were to put all the Disney films on a spinning wheel, whatever you'd land on would likely be an adaptation in which the original story has been blanched, artistically ground down, and pumped out as a cute Artistically little... ground down? How could you even say that? With... There's a dancing <sighs> candelabra, you prick! Mm-hmm. How could you possibly say they're artistically ground down? Yeah, Holy, just... especially if it's... Oh fuck! He, he was clearly hoping to slip that in, as if we've yes. gone over how that's true. It's like we have not gone over how that's true. You've not covered that right. at all. Yeah, he well, doesn't prove at all. Going to try and convince me of that? No, exactly. Look, look at this sh- the artistic vision. Get oh, ooh! <laughs> right before he breaks into be our guest. Why the fuck <laughs> wasn't he making this point about the new set of movies where they have? Absolutely artistically ground it down. Like, <sighs> actually, why don't we just spin that wheel and find out? Ah, yes, the 1989 classic, The Little Mermaid. Okay, this is gonna be seven and a half minutes of him explaining how shitty and dark the original was, <laughs> and how they took it and they made an incredible. In artistically- the original. She was staked Film to a plank of wood in the desert at the end. <laughs> like, she fucking dehydrates <laughs> to the point of becoming a jerky stick. You're like, okay, fine. 
goddamn thing we did with Pinocchio, and it's going to make no new points. He's just going to cynically explain in the worst possible way the new one while talking about the old one, but he's still going to make the old one sound like shit, but it's going to help his point somehow through magic. And through he's going to have a wood. golden smile the whole way through. Yeah, while gleefully <laughs> talking about torture. It's like, do you really want to do this? Do you want to go about on about how Little Mermaid was ruined with this version when they're literally about to make the live action adaptation with Ursula played by Melissa McCarthy? Like, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Mermaid was hanged Jesus. zero out of ten. <laughs> I want to make a big joke. <laughs> she comes on the set and she's like, makeup? They're like, no, 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 it's fine. The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made that joke. That's good. Good mate. It's Timeless good. story in which no, it's like mermaid. regardless of how talented she is, Melissa McCarthy, like you picture her in that role and you immediately get a Oh my god. This yeah, movie is oh. going to be like not even what the original uh the the Disney movie was, let alone the uh I can't wait for the, the original story it was based on. Oh god, that chick's going to be in it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Because they're just going to go, like, so comedic with it, and, mm -hmm. like, they're going to half-ass all the original themes, if the original themes are going to be, like, present at all. Ursula's you know, really Ursula's good in the like, animated version. Like, she's so fucking good in that role. Right. Melissa McCarthy. Well, now you're going to have Melissa McCarthy. She's going to be your friendly, funny Ursula, who's just misunderstood. Uh. Fuck that. That sounds Dude, like give it, cancer. Give it a few years and Wisecrack will make the video like, Disney is ruining culture by taking Disney classics and ruining them with yes. the live action video. You're like, wait a minute. Exactly. And that's and what's so mad. And like, should do a radio show. Like, when I started this video originally, started watching it, I was like, yeah, okay, culture by making The Lion King again, except awful now. But no, the like, according to him, the original Lion King is the problem. I'm like, what the fuck are you on? Jesus. That's what I mean. I don't right. know why they thought this video was a good idea at all. It's a cute little Disney sausage. Actually, why don't we just spin that Please wheel don't say and cute little Disney out. sausage. Ah, yes. The 1989 <laughs> classic, The Little Mermaid. A timeless story in which a young mermaid makes a Faustian bargain with a sea witch to gain legs so she can win the hand of a hunky prince. Based on the Hans Christian Derek Andersen tale of the same hot. name, Disney's retelling strips the story of a lot of its darker and more religious overtones. In the Big Mouse's version, it's like even even the way he says "strips it." Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. that they, they ripped it away. They've yeah, maliciously of... taken it. It's like no, they they've adapted it where it doesn't have those super dark elements in it. You don't have to say "stripped." Why do mermaids wear bras? They have <laughs> big old boobies to protect from the male mermaids, mermans. Mermaids. It's a bunch of loaded language. You're right. So a a a male mermaid who is a male man would be a mermail male man. Yes, merman. A male or merail man. Do you think that the, they have their mail in little packets so as to not get all wet? Um, I think they, they, think they laminate their mail. <laughs> They scratch the outsides of shells or something, and they use that to write their letters. I don't know. We're treated to a love story that ends with a happily ever after. The oh, prince no. ultimately realizes that he really digs this mermaid. The mermaid frees herself from the sea witch's curse. The prince harpoons said sea witch, That's and so all fucking is basically... badass. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we get to watch Melissa McCarthy get harpooned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 you know, I might actually just watch it. Just so I can see that. Honestly. I'll show up at the end, like twenty minutes of the film, and that'll be it. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if they try and make her a good guy by the end of the film. Uh, yeah, like Maleficent. Adaptation. Oh, fuck that. And then fuck, we, yeah. we yeah. have the TV yeah. show yeah. Ursula, and it's all about her history yeah. as a kid. That's a good point. I think they'll do exactly that. Yeah. Ursula wasn't so bad. Oh right Jesus! The world. The message, point true love saves all. But the source material... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't nearly as happy or uplifting. That's because Anderson flatly rejected this message. First of all, his story portrays love primarily as suffering. For example, Anderson... Wow, what a great <laughs> <line>. <laughs> oh, wow. Sounds like this guy's had some bad relationships. Let's hear his uh, argument. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I love that. First of all, love is suffering. You're like, 
Yeah, preach. <laughs> <laughs> all it is Stop that all happiness is. 100% just... suffering 0% joy sorry go ahead it's, it's, yeah, it's just like hmm, that's, that's one angle I suppose like, <laughs> like, right. Anderson flatly rejected this message first of all his story portrays love primarily as suffering for example, Anderson's mermaid doesn't just give away her voice in exchange for legs, but also endures the pain of being stabbed every time she takes a step. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, man. Great. I like that he's portraying this like, look how much they've changed the original world. Just said, you're like, I'm sorry, what? Like, what was going on? <laughs> because they're not trying to spin this to be like, yeah, this is fucking great. They're like, they're showing us in detail how horrible it is. And saying it, Disney ruined culture by making it not like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nevertheless, she delights in dancing for the prince and making him happy. Oh, What's God. more, in Anderson's oh, telling the M. She, she, she's just like crying, bloods all over the floor. She's like, "Do you like me yet?" Wrong with you. The prince never returns the mermaid's affection. Instead, he marries a local princess. So, I mean, you know. oh wow, this is really realistic, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> rough years of princess. You should have been you, playing you hard to get. If you bleed all over like, the place. The girl you know goes after the bad boy, goes through all this shit for him, and he totally ditches her for some other broad. Sorry, what's up with this? What's up with this hair right here? Well, that was the style at the time. It's very sexy back then. <laughs> yeah, it's super sexy. <laughs> <laughs> like the neck, but it's clear. <laughs> like, look at it. It does look like hair on its neck, is it? Oh, it God, has, is I, that I mean, hair? Clearly shaved his face, but then he stopped. And <laughs> right <laughs> it shows virility. That? Well, yeah, he's asking the important questions. I don't think he, he was pounding out like, two chicks back then. He walks around with Grooming hair like this. Is suffering. And that's why he thinks yeah, exactly. This is why he thinks that love is suffering because he walks around with this on his fucking face. <laughs> and he's wonderful. <laughs> I do like to picture he, he's this happy go lucky dude. He's like, hey, want to go out with me? She goes, no. And he goes, love is suffering. <laughs> you know how long it would take to shoot up a line with a musket? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Deal. But the reason for this. Anderson wanted the mermaid to be saved, not by love, but by sacrifice. At the start of the story, the mermaid despairs not just because she's half fish, but also because she doesn't have a soul. And... <laughs> Huh? Damn it. Right. <laughs> well, she is a ginger, so... Uh, yeah, start <laughs> Morals are there. Imagine meeting this person. You're like, yeah, you're half fish. Like, I really wish I was a human and that I had a soul. You're like, what? what? <laughs> Why doesn't <laughs> she have a soul? What, now I need did... to interview him. It, it was, was that a thing in the cartoon? She doesn't have a soul? I don't remember, I don't remember that. <laughs> no, I don't really talk about that in the Disney version. <laughs> we don't talk about that. I can provide you legs and a soul. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> Where does she have the power to obtain a soul? I mean, fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's get a soul. In heaven. In fact, the, the soul whole witch. You know, this Ursula person seems nicer by the minute. Providing <laughs> souls to people? It's generous. Also yeah. because she doesn't have a soul and <gasps> won't be able to chill with her prince in heaven. In fact, the whole bargain with the witch revolves around Ariel gaining a soul if she manages to kiss her true love. But as Anderson explained to a friend... Set up that rule. Uh, wow, this guy. Be a, this guy's like Master Mirrors. Kiss your true love. I'm like, wait, what? And I then you almost... can chill with them in heaven even though you married somebody else. I don't get it. I was about They're to like, say, oh, yeah, you uh... can this if you can juggle these three cakes. <laughs> right, so this, this guy's the first neckbeard. Oh, my goodness, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he thinks love is suffering. I was going to say, Jesus. he thinks love is suffering. It all matches. <laughs> Friend, he never wanted the mermaid to gain a soul simply because she fell in love with a straight up hunk. He thought such a no, but that's apparently the deal. It's not like, you know, you wrote the deal. <laughs> like, was just, you, you get a soul if you kiss it. Was like, okay then. He's like, but I don't want to imply that kissing so gets you the soul. It's like, what? But I mean, why'd you make? How it else that are you way? gonna get a soul? Yeah, it's like, is there a soul store? <laughs> what if she was if your true love was a woman would she still get a soul oh wow uh oh mm. you wouldn't want to encourage that no not then that oh. takes souls that's not going to fly in heaven wrong 
In short, Anderson would have despised Disney's ending, in which wow, a kiss care. and a str Okay, yes. fine. <laughs> well, he didn't what? want Ariel to end up with a hot dude because she was shallow. Damn. That's his story. So basically, I'm pretty sure a chick burned him and he wrote The Little Mermaid. <laughs> I know, like, you know, I'm kidding, Mello, but then he turns out to be a pretty cool dude and he's very heroic at the end so like yeah it does you know yeah. just saves and i'm like yeah that's no cool. rags no also <laughs> if this guy has a no. problem with it then he can send me an email I mean, like I, I just don't care <laughs> send you an email <laughs> Hell, with, with, with there's no love <laughs> but what about the little mermaid's family like She's just like, screw them. She's going to go to heaven and they just stop existing. I guess she's like, I've got a soul, so fuck y'all. <laughs> There's so many holes in this story. I mean, that definitely would be an interesting character moment for her. Maybe if she could share the soul. Can you chop it up into pieces and hand it out? Does All it right, make her Clary, Christian by default? Heaven on Monday. Jonathan, you're in heaven on Tuesday. We'll split the soul. I want to be in on Tuesday. Like, Shut up, Grandma. You don't get to have what you want all the time. But they play bridge on Tuesdays. Oh, fine. <laughs> Anybody want to swap with Agnes? All of my friends are there on Tuesday, Steven. Well, technically, if they were all mermaids, none of their friends would be there. So it would be kind of <laughs> shitty, in my opinion. None of Steven's friends are in heaven. You're like, she goes to heaven. It's really boring, like a dentist office sort of uh, waiting room. Just like, yeah, just be yeah. full of people you don't know. Like, and yeah, then there was a guy in? you wanted to marry with his wife. And there's like a guy who's like, I lived a really good life. I got here in that way. And she's like, oh, I made a deal to kiss a guy. I, I don't know. Hmm. I kissed my true love. It's like some weird fish demon gave me an option on it. Uh, weird, huh? Strategic <laughs> boat crash saves the day. See, in Anderson's tale, the mermaid saves the day with a Christ-like sacrifice where she gives up her life and love to save the prince. And lo and behold, I guess that's just Christ-like now. Oh, oh, he's, I guess he just has a fucking monopoly on that thing, even he's though it's so really red-pilled. <laughs> I hate that. Christ-like sacrifice. Like, no, it's not a sacrifice to give up a day and a half to become ruler of the universe. That's not a sacrifice. Quit saying that. <laughs> Quit saying that. <laughs> Dude, while he was on the stake, he was like, this is patented, by the way. Just put that out there, you guys. He, he rolls away the stone from the tomb, and he's like, this is my thing. Don't you fucking yeah. take this away. Oh, you're yeah. sacrificing something for the good of another person? You're just copying Christ. And then, oh, yeah, no okay, one, yeah. I, I won't do it anymore. Never mind. Yeah, yeah but you're you stripping the original story of its content. <laughs> Some guy's writing about zombies for the first time ever. This concept, Jesus is like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... I basically invented zombies, so I'm going to sue you for moral copyright. The guy who invents vampires <laughs> like, oh, so they, they, they get killed, and then they come back a little later. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know about that. Interesting. Guy who also, I just want to. Same thing. I want to. I want to echo Rags's earlier point about how I also don't give a fuck if Hans Christian Andersen doesn't like Disney's version. You know, if he were alive to see it, like, if he doesn't like it, that doesn't really matter because, like for example, Steve uh, Stephen King doesn't like Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Nope. And I couldn't give a shit if he likes it or not because that movie's amazing. Yes, yeah, yeah. uh, I agree. I like it. That's, that's where the problems come up with this try to remain because it's like maybe it's just fine that they don't like it and I like the idea yeah. that they keep appealing to this if he were alive today and he sees the movie imagine his reaction was yeah that was alright <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. the the idea of cell phones would probably kill him again <laughs> dies of a heart attack I just like the idea that he's the first in the cell or whatever and he's like you could meet them online what is this how does this work <laughs> <laughs> that she's rewarded for her good deeds and turned into a gentle spirit. Aww. If she helps mankind for the next 300 years, she'll what? be rewarded with a soul. Wow. Wow. That's <laughs> okay. okay, so she doesn't have a soul, so what is her spirit? Um. Oh my god. Well, yeah, to stretch this story to what we've been told from this, this retelling from this guy, it's like, she was born without a soul and with fish legs, obviously. She makes a deal to get those both. She ends up dying and not completing that deal and then gets a second offer to... Yeah, but she gets to come back without a body as a spirit, but that's not a soul. Yes, <laughs> yes, very different from a soul, obviously. The spirit, the spirit lets you come back without your body to help mankind for 300 years. And, and then you then get a different spirit. <laughs> your, your spirit becomes a soul. And now you can go into heaven. 
What if what else has to be? <laughs> Wait, so is the soul like the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's factory? Like, that's all it is? It's not actually anything else? It's just like a key? You're like, oh, sweet, you got that. <laughs> Someone just said in chat, in quotes, good storytelling is timeless. <laughs> <laughs> Have I mean, they have they done a sequel yet to to Little Mermaid where she has legs and it's like Little Mermaid, Mermaid too Ariel in New York and she yeah, it yeah, plays yeah. like a Sex in the City episode where she buys a bunch of shoes and is banging guys some fucking <laughs> asshole and then at one point Sadly, that very the spirit of me. Ursula is like <laughs> you must not stray from your path they did make a Little Mermaid too but it wasn't as oh good as what God. you just described did, surely. She, did she have legs. Um, I'm looking. It says return to the sea. So I think things didn't work out. Mm. <laughs> this in the Discord. Because uh, we're talking about the dark originals of things. Um, uh, like Michael Jackson. Uh, the Italian writer. Oh, no. G <laughs> 17th century has, a, has the comatose princess being repeatedly raped by the king who comes across um. her and birth to his children all while she's still asleep how the hell does that work um you know that would be great for disney film yeah i mean you throw it right in i think that that would have mass appeal <laughs> no wait little mermaid does have legs i'm <laughs> sifting through it she sings in the water uh, i have got to see this movie you know what i'm gonna be honest i'm listening to this original mermaid story and i don't think it's got a leg to stand on oh but i will say Hooray. it's a good runner up <laughs> oh is it apparently that star wars girl said it's oh, ursula's no. skinny evil sister in the sequel movie oh okay the movie oh. is skinny it's about like uh, her daughter right her daughter's got that's oh, it... girl says Ariel has legs and her daughter wants to be a mermaid. So it's like he, they flipped it. Oh. Flipped it up, up and around. Why the fuck would she want to be a mermaid? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they don't have swim. iPhones. True. <laughs> well, I've got me and mermaid would probably kind of suck compared to being on land. I think land's pretty neat. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna stay at the land. You don't know what the fuck's in that goddamn water. The seaweed is always green now. But people are always like oh, pollution comes of... down i get sick uh. oh hey <laughs> well okay to anderson this is the more natural more divine path though it probably wouldn't have jacked up disney's 1989 stock prices and at this point we could keep <laughs> rambling off examples the real pocahontas <laughs> is go. not a story about the freedom to love who you choose it's about wow. colonists kidnapping a native american woman and murdering her husband no don't call her woman she was like 14 all right get your shit straight <laughs> <laughs> The original Sleeping Beauty is literally about a woman being not. This is YouTube just about colonizes my ad revenue. She... He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? What's so like? It, it's just like, look, wow. they have spooky origins. You're like, all right. This should just be about. Hey, how about? What if we talk about the origins of the, the original versions, the, the dark original versions of these shows, and how they're just different? And that's all they talk about, just how it's different, instead of yeah. how Disney and culture by improving <laughs> everything. <laughs> Honestly, yes, right. that would be a way better video if he was like the you know the the origins of these stories that you had no idea about, and you're like, oh, all yeah, right, I'll click, and then you're like, Disney oh origins are scary. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to I do want to say that like if you're going to make this argument, Pocahontas is probably your best example, only because it's based on real events. Yeah, yeah it's very. You know it's, what I mean, right. based on the. It's very loosely based on historical figures. Exactly. So, like, if you're going to make the point that whitewashing a story like Pocahontas is bad, like, I could maybe hear it out because, you know, it's real events and there's a whole bunch of cultural baggage attached to it. But mm -hmm. fucking Pinocchio? Like, what? where is the cultural baggage there? Like, you what, say like... that. Like, you weren't told the story of the hanged puppet all your life. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> fucking animal. <laughs> you have to respect it. Yeah. Pregnated in her sleep and giving birth to twins, also in her sleep. Now, we're not going to say Disney should be making more films about assault because that'd be then, horrible. What? Oh, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy never seems disturbed by a thing he says. <laughs> because that would be horrible. <laughs> 
murder and death. And killing. That's fine, but just don't don't assault a sleeping woman. Don't do it. Nope. So I need this guy at my funeral. This is so weird is. that we went through all those different examples, and then he's like, "Assault is bad." And you're like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> like that's a, that's a bridge too far, but you know. I hope he's paid well for this. Dude, this is the most serious face he's made throughout the whole video too. This is like, yeah. you need to oh, you need to calm down, okay? Assault bad, stop it. <laughs> the smile's coming up. However, the general See, Disney you, there goes the smile. Grinder, we just got past off any rough and big savory smile. edges comes with consequences. In the case of Pokemon. Kahanas, it's a very shitty history lesson that some people might never question. Wow, okay, so yeah. one, those people are dumb, and we shouldn't base our society around its dumbest people. Two, I don't, I forget what my second one was, but the first one was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you realize that America is run on stupid. I mean, yeah, so I, like, this is the thing, this is the thing. So if you're going to make this argument, Pocahontas is probably the best example. I'm not saying it's a perfect argument, but... Like, it's better than the other ones, but if you say, hypothetically, let's say we all agreed that whitewashing the Pocahontas story was bad for culture, for history, and for all the cultural baggage that has to do with Native Americans and all that, uh, you can't jump from that to Disney has ruined culture, because none of these other Disney movies are like that. So, like, if they focused on Pocahontas and made that argument, you know, whether it's perfect or not, that'd be a decent video, but you can't jump from that to Pinocchio is ruining culture. Right. I think the anthropomorphic hummingbird was historically accurate. Yes. When when the, when the raccoon uses the hummingbird as a sword, I think that's that really happened. That's historically accurate. Well, you that's, know, the, that's the kind of <laughs> shit that went down in the new world before the white man showed up. Disney yeah. is convincing people that mermaids are real. And you're like, I, okay, they're just, <laughs> let's not listen to those people then. Like, <laughs> Ancient aliens agree. <laughs> and I, I, I also want to add that, like, I do think uh, people have this assumption when they watch a movie, like a, a narrative film about historical, based on real events, they kind of have this assumption going into it that it's probably accurate when the assumption should be the other way around. Like, you should assume it's not accurate until you hear that it actually is accurate. But I think a lot of people mm -hmm. do assume that it's accurate until they hear otherwise. When so, it comes to right. movies, I don't believe they're accurate, even if I'm told they're accurate. I'm like, uh... <laughs> yeah. That's the smart but, approach. I don't, I, yeah. I don't think that's what most people think, honestly, which is unfortunate. I, I most people, when they go to a movie like Pocahontas, are not going to be like, yeah, this is historically accurate. Feels like a weird I one. I think that's to, fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's animated too. That really helps separate yeah. it. Yeah, and the Dude. talking tree. But, you know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. was, Dude, I, I picked in that... any movie, when you see that slate come up where it's like based on a true story, you're like, okay. That's right. Not, that, I'll like, take this up. with a grain of salt. Okay. Oh, and you I, should. I do, I do think a lot of people don't take it with a grain of salt, though. Yeah. Especially sure, if it's yeah. live action. We should pour salt on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only answer. Uh, I, 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 it's I, almost I, illogical to ask that people have that much common sense in today's world. Yeah, look right at Twitter. <laughs> all the Confederate statues in the what? I don't know. Where what does that, that have from? to do with anything? Tear down the statues. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just the first of many ways that Disney's storytelling might actually be a major disservice for developing young minds. That's because most of the stories Disney adapts are fairy tales. And while these stories may- Then why did you waste the first 11 minutes of this video? If you're just gonna go, well, maybe it's not historically authentic and some people might be misled by that instead of reading a history book. So- <laughs> I mean, fairy tales are like history. You, they were written in the past. That's history. Yeah, he's got a point yeah. there. Yeah, it's true. They often be dark and complex and vaguely disturbing. They all vaguely that disturbing. Wolf, that wolf is hungry. I and love she, the way the uh, little gnome people look for Snow White or Sleeping Beauty, whoever yeah. the fuck they. <laughs> Each uh, one of them looks look like they're that window. something terrible. Please go for it. That wolf is a tad cockeyed. Yeah, all the better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> also offer children a symbolic template for understanding the world. For example... Wait, so do the Disney versions. What are you talking about? Yeah, why would you say... I would argue that the Disney ones are safer for children because it'll try and deliver the same themes, but in a non-really abrasive way. 
I yes. say it's a, a product of the time. These movies were made when life was easier. The fairy tales are created back when children could just literally vanish and you wouldn't know where the fuck they were till you found them in the, in the belly of a wolf or something. <laughs> so I yeah. think you needed that sort of like a uh, proxy to help the kids. It, at the sense. very least, they're like gateways to ingesting the original stories, right? Like to get kids yeah. interested. Like That's true. Yeah. Like three whole seconds before they get back on their uh, iPad to play Fortnite. <laughs> but like i do want to say like really quickly about pinocchio i i legitimately think the message or the implied message of pinocchio is better for kids than the original because the original mm -hmm. is you're if you if you're a bad kid you're gonna suffer and die and the disney pinocchio is if you're a bad kid you're gonna suffer but also it's never too late to redeem yourself i think that's right. actually a better message for kids definitely give him the yes. carrot not the stick it's a lot more convincing as Star Wars Girl said, the Anne Rice version of Sleeping Beauty is um, a hell of a lot more. Uh, something this guy would have a problem with. I mean, uh, so it's like, I, I assume again that this is more tied to how popular the version gets rather than what the version is. Because uh, there's right. probably a whole bunch of people who've adapted it who just don't even get known about it. It's like. Mm -hmm. um, Example, in a children's cancer clinic, researchers found that patients were able to use fairy tales to express and cope with their anxieties. Okay. One child, for example, identified with the big bad wolf and- Motherfucker, you can't possibly be trying to tell me that, like, <laughs> these work and Disney movies do not with children. You- it's not gonna happen. Exactly. I, uh, Little Red yes. Riding Hood, venting his frustration and anger by drawing an oversized wolf with massive teeth. Another child drew a comically tiny wolf as an expression of confidence and bravery in the face of his struggles. Here, we see how the darkness of fairy tales can actually offer a light to children. You haven't told us which version of the fairy tale they have. <laughs> could have this could have been drawn from any of them, yeah. Red Riding Hood is like, well, that's probably been done a bajillion times. Like, yeah. What if one of yeah. them had like, like, what if one of them was like super fucking sad that the grandma got et? Like, <laughs> got et. Like, what, ha what happened to the grandma? Oh, the wolf ate her. Got like, eaten. Oh, the wolf is cooked her dinner. This isn't yeah, maybe much. like his grandmother died at a young age. So he hears that story and he really upsets him. And you're like, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, I like yeah. the idea, by the Good. way. But, like, you read all this yeah. shit? The kid is like, fucking love that wolf. He's so fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Wisecrack is going to make a video about how you were wolf. <laughs> the wolf's a real hero of this story. I, the wolf I is just misunderstood. Tell me that the kids with cancer. I don't believe him. I want a link to this actual story, to what actually is supposed to happen, because I don't believe him. Oh, so he's going to make a number of claims about studies and research, but he's not going to link any of them in the video description i'll just <laughs> spoil like, that I, for you now like we're, we're a part of the fucking generation that grew up in a lot of these films or at least some of us are um the idea that like you need some darkness in there it's like there was darkness in these fucking movies it's all like relative yeah. to the time as we got over before because the one that um you showed visuals for uh in your response to this i mm -hmm. uh the one that like actually made me go like, oh fuck, I remember that, when Snow White's running through the forest and all the trees turn yes. into like horrifying faces. I was like, oh my yeah, god. Absolutely. This yeah. is... It's horrifying and it's kind of psychedelic. Yeah. It's yeah. really strange. It's very... It's like, nah, it's just... Disney had balls. It's just bleached in the caustic vat of cuteness. That's all yeah. it is. And all it was all cute, done to make faces. money. There's like a little chubby dude running around in a little ghost outfit going, ooh, ooh. And then Snow White was like, <laughs> oh no. <Yeah. laughs> confronting it, adversity. You mentioned, oh, sir, like, you mentioned that scene and I know exactly like, yeah, they, they regardless of how old it is. Points, and, right? And like tear parts of it clothes and shit. Yeah. 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 And I was, I was very young when I saw that, but I always fucking remembered how vivid and terrifying it was. Do you, um, very effective. I, I, I feel like I should ask this more often. Uh, cause I know, uh, who here saw Return to Oz as a kid? Mm, I didn't know. I didn't see I heard that. a song about it. Just a fucking. I always want to reference because we're gonna watch FIFA movies one day. The fucking scene with the woman replacing her own head with several other heads that are all trapped behind glass doors. It's like, why would you show children this? <laughs> it's so <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> of course, the wheel is too. Yeah, I don't know. It's the uh, Return to Oz is fucking great in its own way. But Disney.
often strips these fairy tales of their bite, instead inserting a bland, wholesome narrative, as we saw with Pinocchio well, and Little Mermaid. Well, bland? Little Mermaid. Isn't bland necessarily said... about being a wholesome narrative? Like, He's... Pinocchio ain't bland. The Little Mermaid ain't bland. None of the films you described are bland. Keep saying this I said shit. bland, yeah. but now it doesn't feel like a real word. Bland. Bland. He keeps saying it like the what? It's so easy to argue in reverse. Just like yeah, so these these ones traumatize children of today, while the Disney ones are like edgy just enough to be able to push the fear and danger elements, while also having a wholesome and an important message at the end. So fuck and then you. When you think about it, Disney isn't even that edgy now. Yeah. Well, yeah. The classic uh, Disney is way edgier than current Disney. That's what I expect this video to be. Is that like yeah, the argument would exactly. be that Disney's ruining itself rather than. Whatever the hell argument he's trying to make. And the argument he's actually making is that everything we love about Disney is actually the problem. <laughs> like, it's really yeah. insane. Gotta catch up. In the process, Disney's developed new narratives that are in their own rights potentially quite destructive. As psychologist Susan Darker Smith points out, young Darker Smith. <laughs> Dark like Will Smith. Her name is Darker Smith, the surname. Wow. It's it's like, it's a hybrid of two names or whatever, it's hyphenated. All right. I feel so like, uh, going by the runtime of like this video, I feel like I should know what the fuck he's trying to say at this point. And, uh, <laughs> I don't really. Disney you know, ruined You know, like when you, you analyze a movie sometimes, well, I do this, like, like writing a lot of screenplays. I'm fascinated with like story structure and like Robocop, for example, you pause it like, like 30 minutes in, it's like, okay. Robocop's like going into the city. He's about to fight crime. This is good. This is like a well-structured video. Like I know where it's going. But yeah, like, you I know everything like... you need to in like the first third or quarter of the movie. Yeah, I feel like three quarters into this video, like we should know, <laughs> like what the fuck are you trying to say, and this... what's the resolution, you know, here on out to the end. But like I still don't know what he's trying to say. The point is obvious. ridiculous. Disney ruined yeah. culture by making things cute. Done. <laughs> like okay with characters like Cinderella or Belle from Beauty and the Beast are more likely to end up in abusive relationships as adults. While interviewing what? victims of- oh, <laughs> Citation yes. needed, motherfucker. Yeah, I want Citation! For that you bitch. have no that proof of this shit. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I want to talk about that real quick, because I, I did some research. Oh, so I, I've looked for this study. You cannot find it on the internet. All you can find are references to it. You can find other articles where it says Susan Darker Smith in her research paper found that, uh, you know, people who identify with Disney princesses are more likely to end up in abusive relationships, which is a very bold claim. So you go, oh, let me find that original article. You cannot find it. Like, I, I've tried. Of course. It's not. nowhere. This is why I really enjoy, like, when Aiden Paladin makes a video. Like, there's it's so much citation in the specific yes. studies that are referenced and you could look them up and double check everything. But people like this who just say, oh, this one study was, they said this. So ha ha ha, it's dizzy shit. Exactly. I can't mm. believe I'm You're defending right. Disney. Jesus Christ. No, I, that's what I mean. This, this, <laughs> this video did the opposite fucking job. We, we, that's why I wanted yes. to open how we did. We talked for a while about how Disney suck. And then it's like, let's watch a video about how Disney sucks. Like, okay. And then it's like, wait, what are we doing right now? Like, we're, we're defending it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's all wrong. So I I also want to point out, so the claim is that there is a causal link between identifying with Disney princesses and ending up in abusive relationships, which is a very bold claim. And there are so many possible things that could be wrong with that research in terms of like small sample size and whatever. Yeah. It also neglects the point that maybe it's literally the other way around. Like you are the person who is more likely to end up in abusive relationships because you, you know you have that personality type and also you identify with princess heroes like there is nothing to indicate that one plays a causal role in the other and it's just asserted like it's true and then they move on it's crazy right oh bland <laughs> what a claim Domestic Liking abuse. girly Darker things Smith makes you a handmaiden bitch who's gonna get slapped up by your douchebag husband. It's just fact. <laughs> yeah, facts. Jay Longbone, you're just internalizing your. Like, I, come on, you can't think for yourself. You can't have your own opinions. You know, 
study showed that it, hideous beasts locked in towers are more likely to abuse princesses. <laughs> Bella or Belle from Beauty and the Beast are more likely to end up in abusive relationships as adults. While interviewing oh my victims God, of domestic so abuse, accurate. Darker Smith found that many identified with the heroines of these stories, in which love conquers all, believing that if their love is strong enough, they can change their partner's behavior. Oh my God, what? Patch well, me the he Cinderella, interviewed my ex girlfriend. <laughs> If I give Cinderella. Back, it's like watching Beauty and the Beast with someone just chill, and then they come away from it being like, I can change my man. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'm I'm not gonna lie, it honestly feels rather sexist to me to like write off the Beauty and the Beast story and Cinderella stories as if that's all it is, like abusive relationship fetishism. Like yeah. A weird one, I yeah. feel if it, it feels really dismissive of women, honestly. Of course, the reality it's, uh, it's taming the beast, right? Which women like, but women. You, I get apparently people don't want to acknowledge. Now it is. Yeah. Yep. That if their love is strong enough, they can change their partner's behavior. Of course, the reality is tragically different. Ironically, by peddling a convenient narrative in which all the world's problems can be solved by true love, Disney fails to give children any tools for navigating real life problems. Bullshit. And that was kind yeah, of the whole- Yeah, you know, the, I yeah, these, singular more the parents independent, yeah, these singular independent stories about this one relationship is telling kids that you can save, you can solve any problem with love. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I wanted to say like, <laughs> the original stories help people navigate the difficult f things that happen in life. Cut to hanging puppet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After all that yeah. he just, what does he feel about this is how we're going to win this? Not by destroying what we hate, but saving what we love. Oh. What is it? I wonder what do you have to say about that line? And maybe it's just because we we rewatched Wonder Woman recently, but the Wonder Woman love saves the day. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> and, and it's like, so cheap. <laughs> and it's so cheap even compared to these old Disney movies, which as cute and like family friendly and children oriented as they are, were somehow more nuanced than Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird because well, the... it also existed at a time where we didn't have the shitty culture we have. Yeah. The Disney princesses are often shown to be resilient and clever and crafty. Yes. Um, and uh, very, you know, very virtuous. Um, they don't conquer their problems through strength, but they you know, do this or that. Or they show bravery and they stand up for themselves. So it's just, oh, I, I, I just, uh, it's just a weird link. Um, mm -hmm. that I just can't. I can't quite see. It's mm. a citation mm. would be so great because that would be interesting. If we could explore it. So I've looked for it. I honestly can't find that original study anywhere. All I can see is people citing it in a sentence in their own articles. So I know for a fact. I mean, unless Wisecrack has some access that I, you know, that I don't with the internet, they're just they read some other article where her research is cited in one sentence and they're like yeah that's good enough for us i googled the phrase that, that was quoted directly uh character for character and i didn't find it hmm. yeah so, i looked i spent like because i knew we were going to cover this video today i spent like 20 30 minutes today trying to find this article and i can't find it anywhere wow. So that means, I mean, unless I'm wrong, that means that they couldn't find it either. And so they're citing it, even though they haven't actually seen the original research at all. Yeah. The only thing in this video that had more than 30 minutes applied to it was the fucking hungry, hungry hippos thing. <laughs> Which, yeah, honestly, yeah, okay, so take it ages. Real quick, someone in the in chat has posted the citation. Yes, I found that too. Now Google that and see if you can find the actual article, because you can't. Like, I found, it says, Darker Smith Susan, Fairy Tale Dangers, Counseling Psychotherapy Journal, Yada yada yada. Psychological and behavioral sciences collection. That's great. I found the same citation. You can't find the original anywhere. Oh well. Details to convey the darker and crueler aspects of life, so as to better prepare children for the realities of adulthood. Of course, this all begs the question: Should Disney the mic swapping all the time is like just use the same mic? Just narrate the yeah. whole thing, and you don't you yeah. just have visuals be over your face. You also said bigs. Bigs. Well, bigs, bigs the question. Bigs the question. <laughs> I need my Mandalorian armor 
<laughs> of course, this all Spice begs kangaroo. the question, should Disney care? According to the legendary and incendiary free market economist Milton <laughs> Friedman, Definitely not. He argued that companies don't have the same responsibilities that people do. A person might have a responsibility to be a nice neighbor or recycle, while a company's only responsibility is to make more money. I mean, that, that doesn't mean not ethically. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, this is a weird way to separate it out, because it's like, I mean, it's still headed by people, and those people can still make decisions that are ethical or not. Exactly. That's exactly the point. Yeah. Weird to be yeah. like, it's a company, who fucking cares? It's like, what? what, what, yeah, it's what? Like, <laughs> Honestly, so bringing Milton like Friedman the into this. A problem with now. Bringing Milton Friedman into this honestly feels a lot like this reminds me of Karl Marx. Like, it's, the, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the same yeah, energy. I yes. Right. Put a, a, a lima bean on my fucking EFAP bingo card or whatever. Why is he citing Milton Friedman? It's like, it's okay. <laughs> It's relevant somehow. <laughs> and Friedman's definition of corporate responsibility has pretty much become gospel. In other words, Disney will... Could you, could you give us that definition? Or was that it? Just the, they that they should only care about money. The, the famed economist, that was it? That was all? Okay. Only oh. do what is required to make the most amount of money, regardless of the social consequences. I think... I don't know that... I, like, I don't trust you. So like, Wait, the, so here's the, here's the I point. I don't trust Milton. Disney either. Milton Friedman is saying, you know, companies as a collective don't have more responsibilities. People do, but like people run companies. He's not saying anyone who works at the upper end of a company doesn't have to be a good person because yeah, they still make are... individual decisions. And if we want to go with the whole Disney soulless, even all the way back to these classics being made, it's like, okay, I mean, well, the people who fucking animated this shit poured their life into it. So fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the capitalist raison d'etre of companies the world over. And it explains why I think comp this company's bad. Capitalism's fucking evil. I mean, also, uh, it's not yeah. raison d'etre. It's raison d'etre. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm really bad with pronunciation, but it's <laughs> raison d'etre is not how it's pronounced. <laughs> wow. Uh, I remember watching this behind the scenes thing about to talk about Fox and the Hound again, because I love that movie so much. I was watching a behind the scenes thing. I was really interested. And uh, the, the artists were talking about drawing a certain scene. You know the scene where Todd attacks the bear? They were drawing yep. that frame by frame. And the way they drew it and Todd's face and his facial expressions were specifically, uh, they were energized because they knew how effective the script was. And they were like profoundly affected by how emotional this, the story was overall. And this particular beat in the story, where it's just like that, that influenced their artistry when they were drawing it frame by frame. It's just like this is the part where Todd, like, he he defends his friend and his girlfriend, and like he he like we've known for so much of the story, we've known him as a kid, and now he's like fully grown and attacking this bear. It's a powerful moment in the story, and that influenced the art. Like, the, I, th I just thought that was really cool, you know? And it's like, it shows you how far a, a good script can take you, you know? When this, the script yeah. is good mm -hmm. and a, the whole cast and crew reads it and it's like, fuck, I'm on board with this. There's like an emotional through line that like builds to something really satisfying and meaningful that enhances the work right there. Like just having good material that you're Absolutely. And I Absolutely. Yeah. Because why does crack... Go ahead. Like this wider point that seems to be made right now is we have dark story, then lighter story that has wide appeal. Why did they make this lighter story? Couldn't have been because that was their creative goals. It must have been money. Like, yes. Uh, I mean, right. People it's can't so make a wholesome story. Cynical. Like, okay. Yeah. It's really cynical. Uh, not that you That's shouldn't be cynical. Because like this is you essentially feel like me. This is cynical to me. The, the guy the, is so positive about it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the whole thing, right? Uh, the weird thing is, like, I am this cynical about modern Disney, like uh, the, that I think yeah. that every decision is made for money, not for anything else. Like, it's all core motivation. But like back then, it's like I'm not even going to pretend for a second that a huge amount of love didn't go into these things. Oh yeah, that's the thing that like, that, like when I when I watched this original video, I w I got really angry. I wasn't expecting to because I was kind of on board with the idea that Disney is kind of bad for culture in some ways. 
But the idea that he's just going to be so dismissive of all the animators and storytellers and screenwriters that like poured their like passion and talent into these movies, like they you put so much of themselves into it. Oh yeah, and they're so good and they're so well made and they really put all their passions and talent into it. And he's just like, nah, you just did it for money because you're cynically trying to manipulate people. Wow, yeah. go fuck yourself. Because like the rise of Skywalker and the Force Awakens, they don't they don't seem like for all the work they have into them they're not products of passion you know it's it, it's just yeah. like they just sort of clumsily stumbled through it and this is what happened this is just what the so, result was yeah i'd say the most cynical would actually be tfa and tros specifically like tlj i will actually because this is both the criticism and a compliment i suppose to ryan johnson like the amount of scene of his behind the scenes i believe that he was pouring his everything into making that project and he felt it was really meaningful and i'm just like yeah unfortunately yeah. he poured every fiber was being into that project and he found it meaningful yep that's, <laughs> you, you kind of just like oh that's sad you're like yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why disney op a cuteness factory indeed when disney went dark and then and yeah just because in case people are curious why i would separate them out like when i see jj abrams talk about um the creation of the other two he speaks about it in like the feelings from the audience but not in a way that i i consider to be quite um meaningful rather it's it's like oh this scene where han solo's in it they're gonna love this it's like it's like a scene yeah. assembly line yeah and uh, he mm -hmm. knows what well, he's they doing had to check boxes for shit they genuinely made those movies without any clear idea of what it was really going to be. They just knew female protagonists use the same nostalgic bullshit to get people on board. Black protagonists, like, should he have a character? Mm -hmm. We'll do that later. Like, oh, you never did it. Nobody we'll do it later notes. because the Chinese might not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they regret shrinking him on the poster now. That got so much fucking attention. Like, mm. <laughs> Factory. Indeed, when Disney went dark in the 1970s and 80s, it put out a series of grimmer, edgier films like The Black Cauldron. Oh, so that were good. Yeah, Black Cauldron. Black awesome. Cauldron's fucking great. I really liked it. it unfortunately, it's, it bombed and almost killed the animation studio. However, I really liked it a whole bunch. I thought it was really cool. The Horned King was a he was a scary dude. He didn't fuck around. And they had a cute doggo in it, right? So it's still evil. No, Kurgi. So there was Hen. There was Henwin the pig. And there was Gurgi, who was dogish. Yeah, what, what I'm getting at is like the fact that he that's in there means that it's bland. Okay, nothing, oh. nothing of that. We can't be doing that. Huge box office failures. The important and thing to about... remember is that if you do something good, if you make something good but you don't make a lot of money, then you screwed up. <laughs> I, I, yeah, <laughs> you need to what is go the, back to the drawing the board. What, what did this? I do wrong? What oh yeah, done? I didn't appeal to the masses. Whoops. What's the conclusion he's drawing here because this was unsuccessful? That they tried to be creative and it didn't work, so they gave up and just did it for money? Is that what he's thinking? Like, 70s and going? 80s, it put out a series of grimmer, edgier films like The Black Cauldron that were huge box office failures and nearly brought about the collapse of the great empire of Mouse. The so called Disney Renaissance of the 90s was a major course correction back into the sentimental cuteness that has sustained the company ever since. I don't and know. it's no one. What is so this profit on ruining culture? I. Because whenever we think of Aladdin, Milan, Little Mermaid. I think they destroyed culture. <laughs> these classics of our childhood, these incredible stories that are timeless. This fucking this fucking monkey with his vest and his hat is like it's in destroying culture. Oh yeah, yeah, and Mulan is nothing but sentimental cuteness. Never mind the scene where the village was burned. Yeah. We're just gonna forget that. This is what I'm gonna have. Like, <laughs> like this narrative you just wove. It's like, ah, oh, see, that movie was edgy and it lost money, so they gave up on doing that. It's like, fuck off. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> why couldn't it be that that's just the one of the ones they made? They were like, yeah, th th that's what we wanted to do. It didn't work out. These are also things we wanted to do. Yes. Right. This, after all, has a very particular way of hijacking our brains. And more importantly, hijacking itself. our brains. Studies everything. Okay. Yeah, all of this everything. phrasing is so malicious. Yeah. I can't yes. remember a damn thing about any of these films, and I saw them. You were hijacked. <laughs> How does you it feel to be hijacked? You have the force. It's time to go hang out with Alex Jones. Yay. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Global. Talk about the prequels with Alex Jones. You could you could say this about yeah. everything. It's like everything hijacks you. Like why why do you say it that way? Like jeez, porn right. certainly hijacked my brain. Yeah. Also, this kid, this kid's all right. 
kid's all right. Yeah, he's a fan of potatoes. The kid's like, gonna uh, sear I'll... a potato and then sing Prince Ali, the fabulous he. Like if so. if somebody Back phrases our... uh, if somebody word telling is like a manipulation, I'll agree with that. That is essentially what you're doing, right? Because you're you're setting up people to feel one way, and then it's like through the course of a narrative, it's like, oh, they felt this way, now they feel this way. There's like an emotion juxtaposition and you're taking people on a journey right but that's just like that's what you do like people people pay to go see that they want that emotional catharsis where they're they're in one position you take them to another but uh, but to use language like this where your brain is being hijacked like you're having something fucking plugged into you like the matrix or something or Plus, like uh, it's, it's it's so malevolent the the tone of as cody uh, and Chad just said using. my taste buds getting hijacked by flavor <laughs> like, yeah, you could put it that way, <laughs> right? And and it's it's weird when they when they speak so uh, poorly of hijacking our brains with how these new Disney movies are, while they're showing a scene of Aladdin showing his his selflessness, where he's giving up a part of his. You know, Come his on, food kids, have that stale injured. bread, right? I just I want more films that don't try and do anything emotionally. That's what I want. <laughs> brains. And more importantly, it sells. Studies have shown that cuteness increases our concentration. A useful trick to make kids sure humans right. pay close attention. by me. <laughs> <It'll> <laughs> everybody watches Twitch thoughts for hours. Attention to their adorable young, or you know, pay more attention to a dysfunctional snowman. Even more telling. Uh, okay, <laughs> so what he just did was like, <laughs> you see, humans care for their young, and we have been manipulated into caring about a snowman for through from this. You're like. Um, I don't... Well, he said the snowman was dysfunctional, which made me think he was saying the snowman was retarded. <laughs> the babies are in a very sly way. way. Well, it probably doesn't have a brain or chromosomes. Yeah, it's just snow, really. Hmm. It's snow with a soul, so it already had the Little Mermaid. The snow. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Rolls the off the tongue. I haven't seen Frozen. But I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna take a guess that Wisecrack is representing him in a very uncharitable light. Well, so this is the thing. He's Olaf, right? That's his name, and he's an actual character. It's not just you like him because he's he reminds you of babies. It's like uh. <laughs> this dude better not like Baby Yoda then. Also, yeah, you just posted this. This is a comment on the video. It's like how Disney ruined likes. It's like yeah, that's probably the. Why the, the video is highly approved, despite the content of it being something that I think most people would find disagreeable. This honestly. is yes. one of the, this is a really bad one. This is a really bad one. Would this guy say that any time you care for a fictional character, your brain's being hijacked and you're being tricked into caring for a fictional character? To, uh, hijacked to is a hijacked is a very strong word to use. Not I do think people. there's a degree of emotional relation involved in yeah. that process. You wanna... But uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. Just because... is that manipulation? Well, uh, no, I, I, I think, think it is. is. Well, I, I would say that manipulation is it, it's very it implies a very negative uh, like goal. So when we when we talk about what's manipulative, we usually refer to music in uh, a lot of stuff. We're just like, hey, I know what emotion you're trying to bring out of this right now. Or we'll talk about stuff that's not earned, they're trying to make you feel something. It's like, hey. Like, right. uh, um, and so when it's done correctly, as in they earn something, if someone was to describe that as manipulative, we would probably try and push back and want to use a word that's more, um, I don't know, less less on the negative side, I guess, more complimentary, because yeah. they've right. achieved something. Yeah, so in the essence... definition that's relevant to what he's talking about, manipulate, control or influence a person or situation cleverly, unfairly, or unscrupulous. That's the important part. Hmm. Yeah, like uh, unfairly I think giving way too much credit to yeah, this video. Yeah. I think they just figured, how can we get a clickbaity title to get people to watch? Disney but it's watch 19 it right minutes now. long. Yeah, like, yeah, they they, well, they got a ton of writers. Yeah, there's, a sol there's a solid 46 seconds of information in this, in this video. <laughs> but if all yeah, they it's did just like any other YouTube video. If they just shot on modern Disney, this video would be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my god. Guys, the most useful thing in this video was the Filmora ad. <laughs> but if you think about it, if they shit on modern Disney, there's a shot they won't get a Disney sponsorship as like a 
pre-roll ad sort of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Modern Disney is ashamed of old oh Disney. God. We let's... have to we have to fix what we what we used to be. We can't be like that anymore. Let's go. Well, for Disney a... has to give me an apology for the rise of Skywalker, but I had to <laughs> see a couple of them for classic Disney films on Plus. Let's go. So These someone are in product the... of their time. Someone in the chat said manipulate doesn't ne isn't necessarily nefarious. Well, like neither is the propaganda, except that everyone uses those. It has, yeah, it has, very very nefarious. Nefarious. it has yes. a very negative connotation pretty much universally. Yeah, like that's you true. have to accept yeah. colloquially when you say you've been manipulated, that's never something you go, yay. No, no, yeah, it's all right. I've just been manipulated. Yeah, like, just... Calm down. Yeah. See, when you say that, I think of that guy who loved the Star Wars commercial so much he cried, Dave Butts. Oh, yeah. Eric Butts, right? Something Eric like Butts. that. I know it his doesn't matter. The last, his last name's Butts, and he needs to fucking change it. <laughs> no, he needs to keep it. It's fantastic. It's, it's, how, it's how we identify him, right? Like, he lo oh, there he, he is. looks... I know this is me, but he looks like a Butts. I mean... <laughs> um, I am at, personally, I'm okay with that term manipulation, though, when it comes... Because, like, people are going... Like, they pay to a to see a movie in the theater and they're sitting in a room for two hours and it's like okay i've got to make people feel emotions that like they would normally only experience in like real world real world scenarios where they were actually witnessing tragedy or you know euphoria or whatever i've got to make them feel that but while they're watching this two-dimensional image composed of shots right yeah i, I see you what do you mean, that like, but you wouldn't call people it leave the theater happy though life. right Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's like I said. It's just I probably use a try and use a different word because I wouldn't because it just implies a bunch of questions I think in other people's word. heads. Like, wait, what do you mean yes. manipulate? It's it's well written. You're like, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. No, I, mean, flashing... I, I totally get what you're saying. Like, if somebody told me I would manipulate, pissed off, I'd be like, what? Yeah, <laughs> that like, your bastard. Eye, your... How yeah, could like, he manipulate me? Manipulating your eyes on by flashing these images consecutively very quickly is like, eh, mm. right. Um, and also, let's go full tinfoil here. Uh, what if Disney, in their attempt to remake the older films, are like reaching out to content creators? Like, you need to start getting people on board with the idea that the older ones are shit, right? So, wisecrack. How about you make a video where you say <laughs> that they ruined the original stories they came from? Uh, they're like, you have to pay us a lot for this. Like, this, <laughs> this is kind of weird. <laughs> When volunteers were hooked up to an MRI machine and bombarded with cute images, their nucleus accumbens, also known as the pleasure center of the brain, lit up and started pumping out dopamine. In other words, when viewers saw Mickey Mouse's adorable body bob up and down on screen a hundred years ago, they were unwittingly receiving the <laughs> first micro like doses. It's his beautiful Man, the body old days bobbing must up and down. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> to get off, you had to watch Mickey Mouse. What a dark time. <laughs> hey, don't kink shame. Jeez. This is yeah. the world before liquor and fucking cocaine. Why not both? <laughs> just, just do it all at the same time. When prohibition was going on, people loved to watch Mickey Mouse's little belly go up and down. <laughs> <laughs> But the, this to me, by the way, he feels chicken and the egg sort of situation. He's like, you see, through our understanding of psychology, they created these images to manipulate you. It's like, what if they created the images because they like them? Yes. That's, mm -hmm. oh my God, that's exactly it. Like, right. maybe they just thought this was cute themselves and thought, hey, maybe other people are cute too. Like, maybe they aren't trying to manipulate you into what? Like, giving them money? Like, is this what I mean? It's also odd to me. It's like someone's like, oh, I want to watch some cute stuff. It's like, you want to be manipulated? You're like, well, <laughs> why, why'd you put it that way? Like, why, why? Yeah, if you won't phrase it like that, no. <laughs> also, Just I think like, animated cartoons are new then. So you won't be manipulated. <laughs> it's all going to be fine. Watch the mouse's belly bounce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Like, yes, Mickey, yes. <laughs> Like, Billy, you're enjoying that an awful lot. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone, Dad. You don't understand me. <laughs> activating my pleasure center. Is of Disney branded brain candy. Interestingly enough, the brain phenomenon candy. of cuteness being used for potentially nefarious. That's fucking hilarious. That raccoon on the moose. Yep. Like the hat. Mm -hmm. No, you... look at that moose's expression. That moose don't give a fuck. Rack, seriously, you're being manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> you, what well, you're like saying is not your candy. thoughts. They've injected them in. They want you to. You're like a. You're like a Disney shill now. You've been manipulated. It's like Inception. Yeah.
various purposes. Name. Cultural theorist Joshua Paul Dale called- No, he covered it up, you piece of shit! He puts the bone in the moose's mouth and it's fucking hilarious! And he covered it up with this zombie. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, I was so looking forward to seeing him stick the bone in the. <laughs> a <Fuck>. zombie. <laughs> Dude, I want this. Uh, this face needs to be this. What what emotions come from this square? Like <laughs> the hunger for brains. <laughs> That's a man who's never done cocaine off of a hooker. Or a stripper. This is what no your clue. life looks like without interesting <laughs> drugs. No, no, just your sentence was too long. This is a man who's never done. <laughs> it's, it's, it it looks like there's this somebody the holding a gun up to his face, and he's like, <clears throat> "I want him to have been watching this, and he's excited to see his part." And there was like fucking zombie. It's <laughs> like, wow. I'm like, sorry, Joshua Paul Dale, but geez, even your name's bland. But like, you're you're probably a you're you might be a fine, totally fine guy. I'm just fucked up. I'm, I'm I'm upset about the moose and the bone and the raccoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you did, Joshua. <laughs> Look what you did. I know this wasn't your fault, Joshua. You didn't ask for this. And if you did, what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be in a wisecrack video covering up the f hilarious moose. <laughs> Cultural theorist Joshua Paul Dale calls it the evil cute. And while Dale's evil cute, <laughs> oh evil cute, <laughs> evil cute, oh like good shot to me. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, that's that's good. Oh fuck, I can't even find my mouse. He's like the guy who named it the flashbang. <laughs> evil. Cute. What, what what were those little things I learned about on EFAP? The pocket squares. Oh yeah. I asked. I asked what are, what what's the name of the um. Like the handkerchief that you put in your coat vest, uh, like or your pocket coat square. pocket that stick out. And it's it, it was apparently it's called a pocket square, and I didn't believe him. I was like, "You're fucking with me." Yeah. It's not actually called a pocket square, surely. That's the dumbest, most juvenile thing I've ever heard. But apparently, it's called a pocket square. So who knows? What right. about the moose? I mm -hmm. suspect that it's being referred to as evil cute because there's. Uh... There's a desire to benefit financially over like the work that you put in. <laughs> so like when, uh, like fuck, when when the animators are drawing this frame by frame, I think that they're thinking like, how can I draw this in such a way that it's gonna invoke the maximum amount of emotion out of the audience? It's going or to realistically, be like, I hope I can go home. Yeah, like I family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I just think there's a there's a lot of undeniable love going into like the drawing of each of those frames that make up an animated film. The drawings of the and yeah, to, I agree. to dismiss it all as evil cute is ridiculous. Yeah. Especially because uh what's his name? Joshua Paul Dale, his research isn't about films. You we'll see in a second. We'll let it play. specifically cites gambling machines that use cute cartoon kittens as an example, it's not hard to argue that Disney's precious animated friends might also qualify. In the end, cuteness is just a means for Disney to pad its bottom line, regardless if it's telling stories that are ultimately good for children. And while- <sighs> So I hate it. He doesn't know about does Rags don't know about pocket squares. No, I know what they are. <laughs> I just never, I just never knew what they were specifically called. Okay, yeah. so let's, who would let's, honestly think let's... of pocket squares? It's I so would have simplistic. never thought they were. I know it's so it's so dumb and simple. I would have never thought that they'd be called pocket squares. That yes, would be something that I would smart. ask. No, I would point at them and say those those uh the pocket squares. What what are they called? Like, oh, Sir, that protrusion upon your pocket, dare I may ask what it is? <laughs> I, I, I thought it's it was a pocket like square, a, mate. Like a like a handkerchief or a like a or a breast pocket something or a or it has a French term. But no nope, pocket square. Okay, so let's let, like okay, so what he just said is that Joshua Paul Smith, whatever the fuck his name was, he Paul he Dale. termed yeah he termed evil cute. Like gambling machines that use images of cute kittens to keep people hooked on gambling, and on the phone, wisecracks yeah. and wisecracks point is yeah, animated movies that tell stories that people love and cherish. That's basically the same thing. Well, technically, back in the old days in the theater, Walt Disney walked around with like a hat that he told people to put money in if they wanted to continue enjoying the content. 
Good man. Patreon's early mm. years. Yeah. Same thing. Wow, we've got very little time of this video left. I wonder what else he's gonna say. And cuteness is just a means for Disney to pad its bottom line, regardless if it's telling stories that are ultimately good for children. And wow. Sorry, I got. So, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I'm just thinking about this more. more. So the the he's like trying his best to demonize these stories, and so he realized halfway through that statement maybe that whether or not it's cute for money is irrelevant compared to how well written it is. And he's like. The stories may not be good for children. You're like, whoa, that's, uh, you, you really, really fucking grasp into straws with like, oh, how do, how do we decide that these films are like poorly written or damaging? It's like, well, you know the old ones? There was a kid who thought he identified with the wolf that ate the grandma. Not anymore, though. Honestly, <laughs> this feels like it was made by Vice. <laughs> the it, way it they, does. Like, they, the way they try and generate a fucking point out of desperation. It's like, it, it honestly yeah. feels like this was a challenge. Someone told them this was the point and you have to try and argue it. Yeah, so like, all the artists that like really liked what they were making and thought other people might like it too, nah, it was just a cynical attempt to pad Disney's bottom line. Like, go fuck yourself. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why have you got us defending Disney so hard? This is ridiculous. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> and while you might not be too devastated to hear that Disney sabotaged your favorite 16th century tale about a non- It was not sabotaged. <laughs> it's not it was, they didn't sabotage it. There's so it. much wrong with what he just said. Smug fucking asshole with your bald head and your baseball cap. They didn't yeah. sabotage <laughs> these stories. It was yeah. rag violating community guidelines, Susan, not me. <laughs> they didn't like you can still go read the original. Nothing about the original is sabotaged. Go Literally check nothing. it out. And you know what? It's like, nobody fucking knows about them. You, you say it like, because he says it like jokingly, like, oh, your favorite 60s. It's like, yeah, but that's true, though. Like, no one knows what it's fucking referring to. And if they went to go and find out, they would have a new story to read. Right. Oh, no. Hell on earth. The Disneyfication of storytelling becomes more viscerally upsetting when the big mouth starts. More viscerally nice upsetting. Viscerally upsetting. Viscerally <laughs> Upsetting when you show present someone the Lion King, Mulan, fucking all of them. There's no point in naming them, and then go. These are viscerally upsetting. Like you, you <laughs> automatically like, but with a oh, smile on his face. Also, he's not even bothered. Also, by. it's it's kind of redundant to say viscerally upsetting, but uh, well, he's, he's obviously just trying to flower it up. It's, oh, he's just, trying to pound it home. Oh yeah, he I'm just is. amused because we would all assume first thing he's ever pounded. <laughs> I do. Nice. I. Do, I <laughs> I dislike what uh, reboots and adaptations of old works do in general, where they overwrite the knowledge of like the pre-existing work, whatever it is. Like, like if someone were to, were to come up to me and be like, "Hey, have you seen Fright Night?" I'd be like, "There's that obliga obligatory question of like, are we talking about the 1988 version or are we talking about the 2010s reboot or whatever?" And like, if like they chances are they'd be talking about the 2010 thing. And then I would mention the 1988 one, and then they'd be like surprised. They'd be like, "Oh, there's like a there's an old version." Like I didn't know that. Well, and it's like, dude, it's way better. Like, I know, and that that always isn't uh, isn't necessarily preferable. But like, you get stuff like, isn't the thing a remake and of, of like an even older the thing? And so yes, out there, that's true. Right? Someone's out there like, oh, I hate that I have to distinguish. I'd be like, yeah, but the new one's fucking amazing, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, I get it. It's just like, that's something we have to put up with. And of course, it gets worse when we get past two, when you get into three, right. four, and you're like, okay, okay, chill. Like, we need a pamphlet right. for this now. I, and I'm, I'm not saying the old ones always do it better. Most of the time, I feel like that's the case. Sometimes yeah, the old yeah. ones do it better. Sometimes the new ones do it better. Like uh, that, the, the movie, The Thing, John Carpenter, that was based off an older thing. But that John Carpenter movie is fucking awesome. Everyone should so, see like, it. yes, it's great. Agreed. Screwing around with more iconic cultural works. You catch my drift. Ever since Disney acquired the universe's most beloved franchise, fans have increasingly despaired at the creative choices that result. So this oh, is, is he going to fucking compare? He's going to he's going to say all creative changes are bad. But this is a sequel mm. as well. Yes, those are adaptations. Those are retellings. Those are completely removed. These are direct sequels to original they things. Are continuing the storyline. They are bombing it all the way down into hell. Like it's it's connect. You have to watch the others to understand the scope of this story.
Wait, you guys you guys don't even know what's coming. I'm so excited for you to see this next part. I'm so excited. Oh. I can't for this to be I think over. I know where I think Anna is probably going. Well, because we covered Wisecrack before, the other video they had where they said the same shit. They were like, people are upset about like Star Wars when we've been doing it with King Arthur for ages. It was like, how the fuck did you compare those two? Having oh, it's even better. Spared at the creative choices that resulted. The last trilogy began with sentimental fan service befitting of Disney. It seemed to briefly flirt with no. darkness and complexity in The Last Jedi, suggesting Star Wars wouldn't fall completely into the pits of cuteness. That's quite. When a... did it fall the cuteness, though? That is. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Where do you start? I do. Yeah, like let's let's make it clear what he said first. It's like so when talking about Disney's baseline stories that they adapt, they are dark. <laughs> they created cute versions for mass appeal. Then they tried with one movie that was unsuccessful for animation um, to be darker. <laughs> Didn't work out. So they went back to cuteness. We've established a pattern. Now let us staple it hideously onto the Star Wars sequels. You see, TFA was <laughs> cuteness, TLJ is edgy, and then Tross is back to cuteness? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. oh my god. Jesus Christ, I've never seen someone like, like... I feel like he was told to do this, he lost a bet. Like, there's no way that someone makes this argument. I think he might actually legitimately believe everything he's saying. Jesus. I think he's just a talking mouthpiece, and it was a writer's room of four people that came up with this. Yeah, I don't know. See, Wisecrack recently had a kind of a, I don't know, not a shakeup, but they kind of had to do a reset because their guy, Jared, who used to do like most of their videos or a lot of their videos, he left. And this is the new guy. Like I've I've like checked a couple, you know, like skimmed through a couple of their recent videos. And it's almost all this guy. I think like he's the new face of Wisecrack. <laughs> Can you guys imagine being just in a casual call you playing a video game when your friends is like, man, I hate that Tross went back to being cute. <laughs> I, I just feel like I, I, I have no idea what you're referencing when you say that. Like, I've got, I've got yeah. nothing. If cute means nonsense, sure, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess. Star Wars wouldn't fall completely into the pits of cuteness, and then never was there. This. That's not cute. That cute? It just <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's gruesome. It's it like someone heck? died and then they undied and then the other one died to undie the first died one. It's yeah. What the fuck is happening? It wasn't even cute as near. That was just bad writing. I the galaxy's in despair. Five planets have been destroyed. What the fuck's going on? It's amazing yeah, it's that like, he, he used this as his fucking example of cute. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it couldn't have been a guy, <laughs> guy who did this. Nobody liked this except Raylos. Like that was it. <laughs> no, they didn't. They didn't like it because they thought they were gonna like it at this point, and then Kylo fucking dies, and now they're like, Yeah, no! that's they lost their shit. The Raylos were rioting right before BLM. It was crazy. <laughs> they're all dressed as Kylo and Ray. They're practicing <laughs> practicing their BLM rioting oh, because dude, of their that... Raylo experience. <laughs> that whole Raylo movie. and BLM. This the... isn't the, the tag team you were you thought you'd get, but well. <laughs> that whole movie felt like a Frankenstein monster plot beats where they're just like, oh, yeah, this will be satisfying. Stick this here, put this over there. And uh, just the Spark way it was the edited, it too, it was a fucking headache. My you, God, I don't know how people like that movie. You know how, like, Crazy. sometimes you've been really charitable with someone and they make a point you don't really agree with, but you're willing to try and chisel it into kind of a point you sort of maybe agree with? I can just picture being the most generous person in a conversation ever, hearing them say, it went from cutesy to dark to cutesy in the in the sequel trilogy, and that was its biggest problem, is it didn't commit to going to the depths of cuteness. Again, I'd be stunned. I just got nothing to explain any of that. And then he's like, well, you know what I mean. Like, when Kylo and Ray kiss. No. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm gonna, now, I'm gonna leave a call, I'm gonna bag, I need some food, no. <laughs> I just can't have yeah. all this conversation. It's like, it's all good. It felt really wedged in there. Like, there's nothing organic about it. And that whole fucking ending set piece was stupid. Uh, capped off by that fucking, like, whatever they do to, like, materialize the lightsaber in, like, Kylo's hand or whatever. Like, one person yeah, the imagines the lightsaber line. being Force there. Force Dropbox, yeah. yeah. I get, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. Force Dropbox. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, I, I was like, no. 
like i was i was way done with the movie like way earlier but now i'm just like i'm officially done now like no this is so fucking dumb i cannot be on board with this people have been pointed out in chat it's like the scene where the lighting is all flickering and palpatine's like i've died before then you have that's pretty <laughs> cute bro this is like a cute scene i had a warm fuzzy feeling in my belly <laughs> My belly was bouncing up and down. <laughs> so cute. Just like <laughs> Disney's brain candy. Oh. That's I'm right. Getting my dopamine. Disney quickly course corrected and opted for a sweet conclusion based on a magical kiss, romantic sacrifice, and of course, romantic everyone you care oh, about. I forgot he became one with the force. That means oh, no Oh yeah, sin. I can't believe you're right. I forgot. How do I forget this shit? It's probably because there's too much to remember. Oh my god. It's so he bad. Your brain. A ghost. Your brain oh, rates and... his shit that's traumatizing. That's why you don't remember. He and Anakin could be force ghosts and argue over who has the biggest fucking murder count. <laughs> I mean, Guys, yeah. CLJ was the good one of the yeah. three. Anakin that was the good one. Jeez. <laughs> it tried something while the others were just cutesy. That's, I just, I'm still stuck at anyone trying to categorize to it that way. It tried to be worse than anything that came before it. And it succeeded. It did it? Yeah, it's pretty da, 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 da. How did fuck do you fuck up Star Wars? I don't know how the hell that's done. Well, like, literally. Well, it's what's been done one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven times, eight times. So apparently it's harder it, it's well, harder been to getting, get it right than it is to fuck it up. They've been getting better and better at destroying it as time goes on, so Yeah, they're <laughs> learning. So we can't say that they're not. They're clearly yeah, learning royalty how to now. better destroy it. Ray Skywalker. All of which is to say, there's no property or franchise which Disney won't find a way to wrap its cute little tentacles around. You've not proven this at all. Like, well, to be <laughs> fair, you've just they had BB-8 like, to sell garbage. The, 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 all his sentence needs is, there's no franchise they're not willing to get their tendrils on. Like, you'd be like, yep, true. It's like, to make it cute. You're like, uh... <laughs> tendrils. Hmm? Tendril sounds about right. Tendrils, which yeah. is not just like what you see when you go to Home Depot. It's just, it's really manipulative <laughs> language, you know? Oh, boy. Constantly, all the time. Yeah. Phrasing it in the darkest it possible way. Cute. It's like they have a, like all of the writers have this little board on the wall or a notepad with all of the manipulative words they can use. Mm -hmm. Buzzwords work. Always, yeah, it's like a buzzword list, yeah. I just picture Darth buzzwords over at Disney on like a little whiteboard. There's a little picture of the Star Wars logo with a knife in it and blood everywhere, and they all laugh at it every day for encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> Cutesy guys. So what happens now? Honestly, probably nothing good. As Disney continues to grow. What do you mean probably? We already know. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's so weird to me that he's like, this was the decline's foreshadowing. It's like, no, this is what's been destroyed, actually, but, you know, or at least you could argue. Which it's yeah. almost certainly going to do. It's reasonable to worry that we'll see an expansion of their blanket philosophy of cuteness. And as philosophy Wait. of cuteness, it's not a philosophy. <laughs> yes. The also, the implication channel. is that Disney has a blanket you know, aesthetic or philosophy of cuteness. And are we all just going to pretend that everything Disney makes is equally cute now? Nope. Is that what we're that meant Frollo to do? didn't fall into a, a river of lava after a gargoyle came to life and spooked him <laughs> like a demon? I guess oh, the uh, ending of Infinity War is also equally cute. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Robert Downey Jr. wadded out. When the Hunchback gets fucking pelted with the whole crowd, like, fucking him over and everything. Yeah. Well, they didn't That's... kill him, so it was cutie lip. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if he was hanged, oh. you know, then we'd have yeah, a story. That would, yeah, that would be an adult story with themes that children could learn from. Not this garbage. It's all cute and lame. Ugh, bland. <laughs> Look at how cute this is. F throws on Raylo. You're like, why, why would you? Why? <laughs> Are you trolling me? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> As we've seen in the past, that cuteness probably comes at the expense of story, nuance, and morality. You've not proven that. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking absurd. He literally thinks there is no moral lesson to be had in Pinocchio. Which is fucking crazy. If anything, Pinocchio is a little on the nose in terms of the moral message. Aha! <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of nose there to be on, thank thankfully.
I mean, if anything, Pinocchio is a little too blunt in the message it's trying to convey. But Wisecrack is like, nah, it's not dark. Therefore, there is no moral to be found. Well, in fantasy, mm-hmm. did a study, and there was a kid who thought a werewolf was identifiable or whatever. It was like, I don't know, hospital. Shut up. Children read them. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely got me nervous for the future of a franchise like X-Men. It's hard to imagine Disney signing off on something as subversive as Logan. And yet, Logan has had a, is a result of Deadpool, which was new, way more modern than the shit you've been citing this whole video. Like, I know All he's right. saying, like, Disney will never do this. Like, if it makes money, then by your own fucking logic, they would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as Disney continues to gobble up more and more of the media we love, we're worried that there won't be space for grittier, darker stories. Yes, there is. Pl- there's still plenty of R. I l- we literally just established that like the R-rated model might actually be making a comeback. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, I know. Also, right? like I would like to point out that the title of the video is "How Disney Ruined Culture." And at the end, the best they can do is, we're kind of worried that there might not be enough dark movies. <laughs> we're a little worried that maybe things might not be dark enough for us. It's like, two- wow. And all of this is, by the way, Disney is the only creator of movies and films, apparently. Yeah, like, I get... Like, this has all been about Disney. I get the yeah. concern and the memes and stuff, but it's like, oh, I wasn't, like, serious. Like, there are other people who are still making things, just FYI. <laughs> It's not just like we haven't gotten to that point yet. Most people aren't Disney. (sighs) And also, not everything Disney does is equally cute. Can we drop that bullshit? Yeah, or equally bad. They still, their name is still attached to stuff that's like, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Free tales, if you will. But what do you guys think? Is our loathing for the Disney. I mean. I guess we've expressed what we think. Really loathing Disney. Your video is shit, mate. What are you doing? And this ex- was garbage. Your expressions are always very haunting. I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> like, I bet he has more views than I'll ever get. This is, oh, well, it's wisecrack, so yes. But, like, doesn't this seem androidy to you, a lot of this? Yes. Yeah, this is yeah. assembly line YouTube content that's just yes. empty and vapid. This is the future. They should yeah. do a video called, Are We <laughs> What's Gonna Happen to the Rest of the Platform? Are We Cyborgs? <laughs> oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> are we even real? A meta fucking video where halfway through he's like, this is the future of YouTube, by the way. Like, you get them into the video, then you're like, you shouldn't even enjoy this. I haven't said anything interesting, but this is what's going to happen now, because you suck and you keep watching this. Wow, and it's that'd sponsored be, by Ray that Shadow would be Legends. Subversive. Holy shit. There's the next video, <laughs> capital O, do it. Do it. You could break the world wall, dude. Vapid content with Phil Mora. You... <laughs> <laughs> you could Look how white my teeth are. <laughs> you could be just like me. <laughs> you guys think is our loathing for the disney empire to totally reasonable and warranted? And no enemy i like how he phrased no, that your loathing your loathing is like reasonable but for none of the reasons you gave <laughs> it's like <laughs> well, you, you somehow stumbled onto the right thing but you have no idea how you got there you you have accidentally guessed correctly I honestly, I would label this manipulative. He just made a stupid fucking argument that no one should agree with, and then he ends it with, so do you think I'm being unfair to how Disney is, like, taking over everything? You're like, oh, wait, Gotta I agree with that. Gotta get comment huh. and the engagement. Oh, yeah, of course. I just, it's just reframing his whole video to mean something that we're all on board with. It's like, but none of what you said was that, but okay. Or do we sound like <laughs> sleep quarantined haters? Let us know in the comments. As always, huge thanks to our patrons for your support. Hit that subscribe button like it's a Speaking fairy tale. Speaking of manipulating, yeah. ruin- hit the subscribe button now. Ring the Wait, roll it back bell. because it's a pretty great quote. Oh, roll it back. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I wasn't like listening or whatever, but I feel like I got very little. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Way way that it's. It just felt like a summary of like what Disney used to do. And it's like, okay, I guess it's bad. <laughs> like, okay, I, I thanks hear for that watching. summary, and like... I go, like, oh, uh, maybe I should go rewatch some of these movies. They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Overly quarantined haters. Let us know in the comments. Overly There's always quarantined huge things to... haters. I thought, how would you mean overly quarantined? You started this by saying wear a mask. Maybe he hates and quarantine, he's not but wearing loves masks. when he was at the supermarket. Fuck the too. Constitution. Lock yourself inside. Yes. Yeah, sp- speaking of manipulative, he's like. Are we totally justified for hating all of Disney, or are we just a bunch of haters? It's like, oh, oh also, yeah, how about of neither of those? Like You're that. just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. To our patrons for your support. 
hit that subscribe button like it's a fairy tale you're ready to ruin for buckets of money and just uh, fuck you. yeah yeah yep uh, they ruined those movies they ruined those fairy tales they are ruined now fascinating honestly I just, what, like, what else can you say? He's just like, all right, yeah, okay. What a video. Deconstructed, <laughs> those... proper EFAP style. What a worthless pile of trash. Well, no, maybe some people will be like, oh, Filmora, maybe. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not often that I legitimately say, with complete and total sincerity, the most useful thing in that video was a Filmora commercial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the most memorable part of that. Again, yeah. the quickest yeah. way to gain an audience and lose it. You're like, hey, fuck Disney, right? Yeah, fuck those classic movies. Wait, what? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, fuck everything you actually do love about Disney. You remember when like... they made this memorable scene? And what about <laughs> this memorable scene? Fuck like, these. Oh, yeah, okay, those movies are pretty good, weren't they? Star Wars. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Later. That guy How smiled more in this one video than I've ever smiled. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of smiles. Rape is bad. Here's a smile for you. <laughs> it's so weird. Like of all the horrible things you describe, the death and the, the 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 murder and the killing and the misery. And he's like, the only one that was just not acceptable was yeah, he can't sexually assault a woman while she's unconscious because of a spell. But that other <laughs> stuff is fucking metal. Yeah, well, a spell it, could be a metaphor for for Luna Transipan, but your roof. <laughs> Oh like he, he he won't go so far as to say yeah she should have been raped in the disney oh God. sleeping well, maybe beauty maybe she shouldn't have been put under that spell on that dress is all i'm saying <laughs> what was well, she wearing like in the scene tell us <laughs> i like how you can't tell a story involving a metaphor about woman's awakening without being like yeah you know smeared with this kind of like Oh, it was assault because she wasn't a conscious at the time. She didn't consent to that prince's kiss. It's like, like Never that's mind not really the, the, the point, the, dude. Yeah, that the guy in that story is kind of a representative of her in a way. Like it's right. the masculine side of her. Yes, like, totally. Yeah, fuck dude. all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> How Sleeping Beauty is a beautiful trans allegory. Oh god. <laughs> well hey, that I mean me if it'll make him stop calling it a fucking like that they they ruined a fairy tale for money. I, I, it's, it's so like wow. Yeah. <laughs> they they improved an old fairy tale and thank god they got paid for it. That's my take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you're welcome didn't for that just, video. <laughs> someone one day be like Oh, wisecrack! All they do is rip down classic things for money. Yeah, mm -hmm. they could. Honestly, they're taking money from Filmora and whatever else you know, YouTube ads, just to shit on things that people like. They're ruining culture. Yeah, stop They've ruining ruined culture. It. <laughs> I guess you're right when you said this video would go in a direction you didn't really see coming. No, oh, nobody, yeah. nobody. Uh, I think people have not watched this video and like it. They'll be like, this is good. Disney did rule culture. Anyway, moving on with my yeah. life. Name, name two things you learned from this 20-minute video. That's only one thing every 10 minutes that you've learned, which is a lot for Wisecrack, I know, but... <laughs> well, I learned that Pinocchio actually died a miserable death. I like what you said, <laughs> Pinocchio. <Right. laughs> uh, what else did I learn? Hmm. Uh, raping women who are victims of sleep spell is definitely bad. Definitely. I learned that puppet lives matter. <laughs> I do agree that the puppets' lives do matter. And I think I learned that one day, if I'm successful enough to be able to adapt anything, it's going to be the story of the hanging puppet from the tree. I just want to, I want to see the audience's faces when that Edson <laughs> rolls in. Like, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> you know, ha if you're going to make stuff darker, have at it. But if you want to make anything more wholesome or inspirational, you're ruining everything. Go fuck yourself. And no, I just want to point out that very conveniently, that video about Pinocchio had a lot of strings attached. <laughs> hey. I don't think that's we one get of the it. best ways I get it. to close out that that is the coverage of that video. And we'll, uh, from there, we're, gonna, we're probably going to jump into Super Chats. But Sweet. before such things, I would, I would like to offer if anyone is at the point where they're like, holy shit, it's been four hours, I must leave. Uh, well. Now's your chance. That four hours blew by. I know it did, didn't it? I was like, holy yeah, shit, we're four hours. Yeah, really that was did. a great video to cover. 
Uh, well, we wasn't... missed PlayStation 3 sales at GameStop, and we missed riding between Trump supporters and Antifa. Neat. <laughs> I'm glad we missed those things, honestly. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, I meant to uh, mention as well. Yeah, thanks for uh, grabbing up that video, making me aware of it, because that was a fun one to cover. Holy fuck. That was I good. Didn't know someone had that take. <laughs> Like, Bet you didn't see that shit coming. To cover. <laughs> like, that what take a... exists. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, right. that was my thought. You know, because I, like, like I said in, in my response video that I made, like, there is a lot you can criticize Disney for, but this ain't it. Like, holy yes, shit. Totally. I'm going to save that. I might use that later. Might go this video later. It'll always it'll always be in Vogue because uh, Wisecrack will never change. <laughs> in Vogue? Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> It, it'll always be crack. raison de trois. <laughs> <laughs> you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the generic YouTube channel. Yep. <laughs> it's a matter of hiring more and more people to help make it and losing any sense of an argument. Nail it. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, do uh, you guys want to hang out for, for a while we're going through Super Chats? Or did you wanna, do you want to... I'm down out? to hang out. I can stick around. I'm happy to. This Sweet. I have to urinate. Yes. I also have to urinate. Oh my God. Okay. One was okay, but two. Jesus. I, I can't help it. I gotta shower. do what I gotta do. You say you have to shower? I figure I may as well hop in one. I've been sitting in this hot room forever. Um. Yeah. All right. Wait. Well, does that mean you 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 you, you want to hang around or you uh you need to head off? Oh, well, how long are super chats? Oh. uh... Not something you'll be able to stay for the whole of. <laughs> but <laughs> so, forever so it's that many you uh you'll you're welcome to stay for as long as you want basically all right um all right then i guess i'll get started i, I was gonna say there's a really wholesome first one that kind of summarizes the stream i think uh first one says mola you're gay mm, nice <laughs> so, so to make sure that we uh understand just silently that. nodded mm -hmm. uh who can't Get on, I love you guys. Oh yeah, I think people are really happy that you jumped on here, uh, Gundam. Thanks again, of course, for doing so. It was, uh, it's been fun. Didn't mean to torture you with the video we just saw. Oh yeah, that video really did depress me. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a thing that happens a lot on uh, good old EFAP. We, we, we just don't cover videos that are really um, things that make you feel happy in life. So, you know, take that for what you will. White's crack were loved once, just saying. Is someone pissing and humming? <laughs> nope, I was just humming. No, just uh, humming. Mola, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, can you and Rags finish up EFAPs by reading a passage from the Bible from now on? I think it would really bring us together as a family. I know some great ones from <laughs> Exodus and Genesis that y'all are going to love. <laughs> oh, God. We, <laughs> so the, just I know, a segment yeah. for EFAP that was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> what the Bible really says with Rags and Mola. Uh, Mola, would you ever do ASMR asking for a friend? Well, I can pick a random Bible verse. Here, let's do it. I'll pick a random Bible verse. I'll go to random Bible verse generator dot Idiot. God, and we'll see. <laughs> random yeah. Bible verse generator. No, I didn't mean to do that. Bible verse generator. Okay, our Bible verse for the day. Um... Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 19 20. Uh, I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws, keep my Sabbaths holy, that they may be assigned between us. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Very insightful. All right, let's move along. Sweet. That section Sweet. done. I, I fucking failed this miserably and then I won straight away. This is the duality of melee. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, will I ever do ASMR? I mean, I uh, I don't I don't plan to. You know, it's not really something that I was intending. There's to do. money in it. I'll do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, also, careful not to ruin culture. Oh, hello, hello, hi. So this just says, how can she slap? Rags. Is, someone. Hey, wait. Someone said Rags is super narcissistic. Suddenly. What? Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I didn't want you to... Okay, well, thanks for being on my side here. But it was the <laughs> part that I was... Uh... Um, but yeah, how can she slap? You guys remember that? That's fucking old-ass meme. Slap? Yeah. Slapping. Well, so this is the thing. Metal didn't even know what I was talking about. So who here knows what how can she slap references? 
Oh I do god. not. Oh my god, really? I don't really? know what that means. Yeah. references? Jesus Christ. This is like... How is that even possible? Like, chat. You guys know... How can she slap, right? I feel like I'm on an island. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, I'm pretty sure I can play it because it's copyright free. At least, I remember it being copyright free. Okay. Yeah. We're doing this Dewey again. Dewey wants to know, can Rag step on me? Mm, I know the step reference. On me. I can't believe some people don't know it. it well, technically bad, you got it, Dewey. Step um, on his cock. Wait a minute. I think you're just crazy, Mahler. Assuming everybody knows the thing. Oh yeah, uh, no. and Jay Longbo, you should just, just stay for the meme and then you'll be free, I swear. Alright, where's, where's the room? Alright. Alright, stay for the meme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boop. Boop. Uh. Yeah, so context is a TV show, like a game This video show. is brought to you by Wonder your eyes crack. Shut the fuck up. Mask. Anyway. Eh. Oh my God, he's back. No, that's it. I'm tuning out. <laughs> <laughs> How can she slap? Like you guys know the um. I can't believe you've done this one, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I I feel no. like those two were like inseparable in in memeage when I first saw them. But uh, it's good. I'm gonna add to your meme repertoire. If anyone uh, isn't in the room, jump back in. And, uh, you're in. You're in for a meme. Oh wait, what? Why is it doing that? <gasps> Nipples. Oh, I guess this one is. Is it too old? There might be like restri age restricted, only available on YouTube. What? Okay, so in that case, can all of you boot this up separately, and we can't pause it? <laughs> all right. All right. Let me know when to start. Maybe if I full screen oh, I was it, I won't have to worry about Oh, what the fuck? I know how old I am, YouTube. Don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> how does this look? Uh, let's just see if it catches. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, uh, everyone on zero? Yep. Alright, three, three, two, one, go. <laughs> no context. Are you sure? Sounds like never a guy being this. insulted in what real life. You don't have the words bad hair in your native your... language? Are you in some sort of a time capsule? 60s or oh, no, of... she's speaking English. What is it with those faces? What are you doing? What is that? These guys don't have tongues? No, really, they can't talk. It's like Maybe Tinder in real life. life. Mm. No. Q. They keep hurt gay. It's using the Fight Club soundtrack. Idiot. I don't even know how to frame this, so I'm fascinated. Yeah, no yeah look, I think she's supposed to, like, berate them. No but she, she goes off script a little bit here and something okay. happens. I guess I'm done over here. Thanks, guys. Uh, Isha, I think you uh, didn't show your challenge. There's not one word coming out of their mouth. Actually, the thing is that we don't want to talk with you, actually. That's Why the don't thing. you go and fuck off, then? I don't think that was in the script. Holy shit. Oh shit. How can you slap? How can you slap? How can you slap? How can you slap? Damn, that bitch got what she deserved. You bastard, how did you hit her? I'll fuck your bitch right now. You fucking bastard. That's about it. Remember, guys, this is the patriarchy. Yes, well, so, obviously, it's, um, the how could she slap thing is funny as fuck, but at the same time, it's like, oh god, he probably got beaten to fucking hell, like, uh, because rules are weird. She slaps him, he slaps him back, it's like, what do you expect? Like, <laughs> I will hit you in the gooch. That's so good. So, apparently, <laughs> the comments are all saying that apparently he sued this show and he won. Yeah, he sued fine. for defamation and he won, and apparently the show got cancelled shortly after. Fucking good. Well, that you know what it reminds me of? Actually, there's a scene in, I think it's Angel, where Buffy hits Angel, and then Angel hits her back, and she's like, how could you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this, Get what she uh... fucking deserves, man. Yeah, sue their ass, dude. More power to you. Bitches, like, you're gonna get slapped <laughs> back, man. It's like, you think you just, you, indiscriminately, like, that's the thing. Women just feel like they can hit men. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, because that's toxic masculinity. Women yeah. feel as if they are totally free to to hit men, to physically attack men. Right. Because of patriarchy. And... <laughs> well, fuck. They they have no like 
they don't know whether they're hitting somebody who's potentially unhinged. Like I, I I'm not saying like a man, sh like if a if a man gets hit by a woman, I'm not saying they should hit back. But like you don't know who, like if you're hitting somebody who's potentially not going to take it well, like the consequences are yours. Sorry. Like uh, I'm I'm generally fine with slapping a woman back if she slaps you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. I, mean, I don't think anybody should be hitting anybody, you know. Use oh your... yeah, but we've, we've <laughs> Use your after words. after uh, you know we, we've jumped into step two at this point. It's all it's all over. <laughs> all bets are off. Also, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we're we're approaching the scenario, you know, post first lap. So, if, right. as a man, you Peace know, this was never an option. You, cross. you know, that's just how it is. It's it's stupid, really, to be told that like the average guy has more rights than a woman. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You learn real quick. You hit someone, there's a good chance an ass whomping's coming. You might Chicks get, can do yeah, it, right. and they're like, you're not allowed to touch me. I can beat the shit out of you. I can assault and you, and you gotta duality. take it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I, you can, can see videos off. of women beating the fuck out of a dude, and they're like, wow, he's a pussy. They can drop yeah. off if a dude finger. slaps a woman back, he's a woman beater. He's a pussy. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. The only they thing can you can do correctly is cease to exist, apparently. I mean, I'll, I'll say this. I think there's something to be said for, like, a, a man not hitting a woman under any circumstance, but, like, the, uh... Fuck that. If, like, okay, yeah, really yeah I agree. Well, this is a point of contention. Ball. I acknowledge this is a point of contention, right? But uh, if they're also going to say we want absolute quality across the board, then I'm sorry that the negativity also comes with that. You know, you hit another person, you should expect... The, the possible risk of being hit back. You can't just no, that's not how it works. do you're something right. like that and then assume you're not going to get it back. Women yeah. want freedom without responsibility. Right. You should that, respond that with me. appropriate levels of violence. Hmm. I mean, even if Rags a guy is still you. Mute, I, I, <laughs> even if, Rags, will Rags will stab you with bullets multiple times. I, <laughs> like even if a guy is stronger uh, than a chick, you know, like that 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 Ray Rice situation, a chick will like just keep on hitting you over and over and over and over again until like there's some kind of <laughs> fucking defense put up. Like it's still psychologically draining for someone to keep fucking hitting you, and you can't do anything about it. So like you know, huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I, uh, I suppose if you wanted to jump out. Oh no, mosquitoes back. Uh, that was a heavy How mosquito. How big are they in Welsh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was a, that was a chungus mosquito. We got some big mosquitoes over here. Mm. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, Jay Longbow, if you want to you talk about what you do on channel before you before you hop out, I will leave a link in the chat and in the fixed description of this video on Moolah. Go right ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I make videos on, you know, media, reviews, reactions, and um batwoman the uh, season two is coming out in january Yay. 17th and i'll be doing more reactions for that bullshit so look out for that and um uh, yeah that's about it check cool, it out man. yeah there's all sorts <laughs> i mean they know you pretty well at this point but uh there's always new stuff yeah. go watch it or you're a bigot that's what you Got say it. right correct there you go <laughs> bye. Bye. bye 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 later um alrighty. So yeah, how can she slap has been taught. That's that's wonderful. Last <laughs> attempt of Baka Mitai uh you did was poor. Ah is pronounced like J's ah. Ba someone in, someone in chat telling me about my incorrect pronunciation of Japanese is probably one of the most abhorrent. It's just I'm so apathetic I don't even know how I did it to describe it. <laughs> well, it is a weird duality. Like when an American mispronounces something in Japanese, someone pops up and goes, "Actually, it's like," and you know. But if a Japanese person says anything in English and it's bad, we call it English. Well, yeah, it's we like, just, it's we the think cutest it's funny. thing. And I'm glad they're trying to learn English. Like I think it's very endearing, but the other way around. Oh, no what knows. an uncultured oh, piece of shit! Wow. You don't know that one song from a video game that I didn't know existed either until I heard it that one time. That makes you a lesser human. Clearly. You don't deserve rights. You deserve to be hanged. I'm so gonna build a Twitter mob against you for Baka Mitai. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I is pronounced like the month... 
or the Aunt May. Try again. I, this is not how to get people to pronounce Jeff. Okay. shit. <laughs> He's not getting paid to give a shit. Everyone's oh, like, it's... calm down, Rags. Like, I am calm. I'm like, I'm like, typing things rags. out while I talk about this. this is me. Do you think this is me? This is, do you think this is a high energy Rags right now? Yeah, he like woke up right before it started. I, I, I literally did. Mm -hmm. Yes. See? Same. <laughs> I, yeah. I, cause they we were. Find me up... a person that gives a fuck about anything when they just get up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, grant, granted, that was like five, four hours ago. Yeah. And I'm, I'm awake now, but I just, I am not, I'm not giving you high energy for my. my you just watched that Wisecrack video. You don't have to explain yourself, sir. Just put <laughs> the gun down. It's been through a lot of shit. <laughs> been through a whole bunch. Learned about Pinocchio and Sleeping Beauty. I forever will see Pinocchio hanging from a tree after today. Rags is reading chat hard tonight. I've done it four times in the last. That's like once an hour. We always read chat. What the fuck? Yeah. Do you want me to not pay attention to chat? I don't. I'm. I'm not sure what you want. I'm very confused as to what your collective desires are. Poor Raggleton. Poor me. All I know no is I'm gonna play Pocket Me Tie later. Um, but yeah, they, they, they want you to read out the whole thing, sing the whole thing again, I guess. How do you, how do you feel, Rex? <laughs> I don't think it's happening. Say, Let's how about on. now? What? You know the, the song? Yeah, that, 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 the Japanese yeah, song. So yeah, there you go. Gundam, you do it. <laughs> yeah, he's... I pronounce Japanese horribly, and I played in a Japanese band for oh, years. Doesn't that make You don't want to get a though. mean super chat telling you that you didn't pronounce the double inflected umlau from the rising sun different oh i get that shit all through. the time dude i paint gundam <laughs> model kits <laughs> people are up my ass how can you try it's <laughs> actually <laughs> actually Barbado, pronounced Gundam. <laughs> you keep saying barbados gundam i'm like well i'd rather be in barbados than making this video you are hearing my innermost thought yeah i want to be in no. barbados <laughs> with a hot latin girl who knows how to shake her ass like there's no tomorrow and preferably on my face or lap, if we want to get raw and real. That's where I'm actually at right now. Instead, I'm editing this shit video no one will watch. <laughs> so, speaking of pronunciation, uh -huh. I guess I'm curious how you how you kind of say it, but how do you pronounce the capital of Louisiana? Do you say uh, New Orleans or New Orleans? Uh, New Orleans. Because I pronounce it Baton Rouge. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. there. I see what you did there. Always with the, always with the Zs. Very clever. You fucking got I, I pronounce it Baton Rouge. Baton Rogue? Baton Rogue? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the correct way. I can't wait till coronavirus is over and women will be taken off their tops again. In yeah, in a way. yeah. It tends to be. Um, how would you objectively critique films like Airplane and Blazing Saddles that deliberately break their own internal logic for the sake of comedy? Um, Work. I imagine like similarly to sometimes stuff like Van Helsing, where you're just like, you would appeal to the emotional experience with a lot of the stuff that they do. Um, yeah, like we just watched Batman and Robin. <laughs> it's a fucking incredible movie. And Jingle All the Way. Yeah, like we, it's okay to say that it's an objective flaw by the same criteria and also simultaneously say that was fucking hilarious and I loved it. Yeah. Um... Rex, if Mola fails the pronunciation, scold him. Um, I, I'll scald him with water, hot water. And don't put me in hot water, Jesus. Yo, you'll be yeah. in hot. You're, you're, you're Throw in a kettle hot water at him. With me. Uh, See what I did there? It was about pronunciation instead of scold. I said scald. I'm fucking. Yeah, on, I'm on fire. I I appreciated it, and then I decided to take it to you. Put me in a bath of hot water because it's a strange visual. And hot covers some pretty broad territory when it comes mm -hmm. to just being it because i enjoy being in hot water like it could be a hot spring or a sauna or just a hot shower what if that sounds great boiling hot then we're in trouble oh that sounds oof, i don't yeah. know maybe okay. ariel could handle it we learned a lot about the little mermaid maybe oh, yeah. how disney right. ruined it if she goes down to the bottom of the ocean by those those hot vents and she just fucking she, it's just good for her pores or something mm-hmm <laughs> Maybe she takes off her client. Well, is she's eighteen, right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. No, and you know what? Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, 
You don't have to sing to make up for it either. Also, play Doki Doki Literature Club, Dumbos. Maybe one day. Uh, once again, once again, the request. I got Outer, a lot of requests Outer for Wild that too. And Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah. You can fuck just kill yesterday. <laughs> so I, I, I learned yesterday from Chase <laughs> that Doki Doki is supposed to be like a Japanese onomatopoeia for the beating of a heart. Mm. Oh yeah. Not gonna okay. lie. Not gonna lie. That's really shitty. Mm -hmm. Didn't do a good <laughs> job there, fan. I thought about taking a shit. Doki Doki. Doki Doki. Yeah, like, because it hit, you know, then you get, hopefully you don't get Poseidon's kiss afterwards. But yeah, that, that's to see how the sound of a, a poo going into the blushy splashes. Yeah. And then you take your hot shower. Poseidon's kiss is basically as close as most Americans come to owning a bidet. How do mermaids, like, how do mermaid bathrooms work? They just shit wherever. Yeah. Surely they don't. Yeah, they're they like have, wizards in Hogwarts. Well, they don't have to. They could have, they, they could have designated... Shitting areas. Who would like catch your shit though in the sea? Like another fish would come up and eat it, probably. Oh, I well, they, that's a the problem that solves life. itself. <laughs> the circle of. All right, life. well, that sorts itself out really yeah, well. That's why I like that little fish hung around Ariel all the time. The stupid one. <laughs> Go be, get a fucking light in here. I'm we're gonna lose this challenge now. All thanks to that annoying Pokemon. He's like Ariel, I'm quite peckish. Oh. When's the next dump due? Oof. Oof. <laughs> That's um that's that's very like a juxtaposition with the backdrop of this video game, I'll be honest. Like some people are just gonna be like, that was something that was said. Yeah. You guys remember this mission we have to kill 128 Mario's? Fucking Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, what is the is this like uh is this a World War Two game? It's <laughs> 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 a, a really specific <laughs> achievement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Awarded uh, the Medal well, of Honor for killing making... 128 Mario's. That was making me. <laughs> that was making me crack up. Uh. uh huh. Campia said that mm. Disney destroyed DC with the amount of content they are releasing, so it's quantity over quality now. What if 90% of these shows suck, which they probably will? So when you say uh, destroying only DC, only 90%. I guess they mean Marvel. He's an optimist. Yeah. Hey, I can appreciate an optimist. Yeah, Even mean, though Disney destroyed culture in a post-cultural world, now that Disney is destroyed, <laughs> now the culture it. is gone. So that's that's the I, other thing. Like I, Disney has already ruined culture; it's ruined now. Like, no, then what is culture, happening? It's gone. Can we get it back? <laughs> it's like nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Too late. I can't. Why can't Metroid crawl? Come on. There we go. Yeah. Um. Molly, you were right about the live-action Wally, Mola. Stop saying stuff. You're going to keep predicting and tearing down our good movies. Well, someone sent that to me on Twitter, and I got scared. But it turns out it's not real. Or at least it's not real yeah, yet. Yeah, I sent you the link to the... It's like from, like, the, the thought wiki or something like that. Idea wiki. Where people just post their dreams on the internet. Fuck, thoughts have their own wiki now? It's basically like for affinity stupid. journals, but with yeah. a little bit better editing, I suppose. Yeah, um, as soon as they announce that JJ Abrams is making a live action Wally, I'll fucking. Oh. Instant you mean fab that stream. <laughs> Maybe we should stop talking about it because you know what happened to. You know what happened to Wilford Brimley? True. We don't wanna, we don't wanna, um, or maybe it means that this idea will die. So oh, I feel like it needs more oh. emphasis that a wiki people's thoughts and dreams need no, it's, like it that's really so is. fucking like, it's, stupid i know it's it's very it's very um it's very 13 year old fresh to the internet thing they get attached to right but it's like a like an idea right. wiki or something like that um oh and it God. literally is just you post ideas that you hope will one day come true sort of adorable <laughs> in its own way it checks it out oh this one looks good yeah i i, I don't know i don't know if bill gates and Elon Musk are trawling through the idea wiki and like, oh, that's a good one. Here's a million. I guess, well, JJ Abrams watches EFAP, so we're gonna be careful. I know he's a big yeah. fan. A toaster that lets you keep the bread? Huh, interesting. I don't know. It seems a little redundant, but that's just my opinion. No, it isn't. You, you put bread in the toaster and you wait, and then toast pops out. Mm. Wait, where'd the bread go? Oh, it. Cause, yeah, all right, I'm following, I'm following. Yeah, I, was, I was lost a little bit. So I want a toaster where I could put my bread in, and after I get the toast, I can still have the bread as well. 
Dark mm, science, only the back. Sith knew. <laughs> Wait, Palpatine's so is it toaster. is is it duplicating the bread and heating the duplicate? I'm asking. I, I don't know how it would work. I don't yeah, know. Okay. I'm just I'm just here for the idea. <laughs> I'm not actually right. doing the work. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not, no, I'm not like spitball yeah. on air. The same yeah. thing I like, got more. Like magnets, how do they work? Like we we're just appreciating <laughs> what this stuff is. You know, it's a miracle. <laughs> it was dreamless. <laughs> How do they work? Uh, uh, how far you get back in the day doing clown rap? Oh yeah, that was peak culture before Disney destroyed <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, Demon Souls is the true game of the year. Also, shameless self advert. Check out my Last of Us Two video. I finished it moments before it won Game of the Year. Great timing. That's from uh, Loveless. Yeah, go check it out. One. Oh, um, then it's what was that? Sorry. I'll send it to Neil Druckmann. Yeah, in a tweet. you'll love it. Have you guys checked out Tonald's video, What Would Princess Zelda Order at a Restaurant? That's the one we've got saved. Uh, we will probably, we'll definitely check it out. Probably a rescue. Yeah, you have to cook her. Wait a minute, is she get rescued anywhere near as much as Peach does? Is it like, is she rescued every game or is that... I haven't played all the Zelda games, so I don't, I don't know if... Is that always the goal? I don't know. I was like never beat Ganondorf game. slash save Zelda. The last time I heard from Tonal, I tried to search his channel too, but I couldn't find it. What's his uh, alias on you? Oh, down with thrust. Okay. Non-sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you type that into Google. non <laughs> In brackets. I can let me have the canister. Jace. Oh, that was a really good move by me. Uh... To the tune of Winter Wonderland. What's the tune for Winter Wonderland? Sleigh bells ring. Are oh. you listening? Wow, mm -hmm. I can hear you. Right. Uh, Lacey <laughs> Thing. <laughs> well, we got new lyrics. I don't know if anyone wants to wants to redo it with this. This is from a super chat as well. So it's very creative. <laughs> I'm gonna pass Wait, on that where one. Is it? Let me let me take a look here. I was looking away. Some. Um. Lacy thing, my wife's been missing. I didn't ask for. Lacy thing, my wife's missing. I didn't ask for her permission. I'm wearing her clothes, her silk pantyhose, walking around in women's underwear. Also, hi, rat. Oh. <laughs> walking around in women's underwear. Walking around in women's underwear. Uh, it's an earworm. We'll give them that. Mm hmm. People, when Warner Brothers announced 2021 slate will be on streaming in theaters. No, you monsters, you killed theaters. Disney announcing most of the stuff is only streaming. Oh my gosh, so amazing. I can't wait. Yeah, there's a double standard there, mm, for yeah. sure. Well, what People if we... People are selfish. What if we get uh, TV show theaters? What about that? You can put all the TV mm. shows in theaters. That'll That's next generation. Do you have to watch them all in one sitting? <laughs> you come in for episode <laughs> like by episode. Like a mandatory binge. That'd be so weird, but at the same time, that maybe would be it weird. weird. Who knows? That would be. I don't know. You come weird. once a week for an hour. Yeah, it would be nice. If you're going had, there uh, to watch shows. I feel like you're. Imagine they did like a roundtable option too. Like there's an hour where you, anyone is welcome to to go onto a table and just talk with others about the episode they just saw, to try and generate a sense of community. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> I don't care remember water coolers. Shows. Amy? Remember water coolers? Nope. Yeah. Remember Water World? Kind of remember? Kind of world? <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> Falcon's got like the best I'm dead sound ever. No, wait, that's Fox, sorry. Damn. Oh, I died too. Rip. Uh, tons of people dress up as Star Wars characters for Halloween, but who does Darth Vader dress up for as Hall in Halloween? Damn. He wheezes in a chamber. He oh. walks around in women's underwear. Obviously. <laughs> Next question. Just puts it on top of his suit. It's like, oh, oh yeah, over pretty, the dude. armor. <laughs> <laughs> Tapes two cinnamon rolls to his helmet. Look, I'm Princess Leia. Oh no, my planet. Oh, I'm so yeah. sad. Ooh, boo -hoo. Oh, my planet. Yeah. Oh, my planet. I was fucking there. She did that, I yeah. swear. 
doing that exaggerated walk where the hips go side to side. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Princess Leia. Look at me, I kiss my brother. <laughs> Wait, if they if they didn't burn Vader's body, then he might have survived. Like, oh, shit. like Palpatine did. <laughs> They were... <laughs> Palpatine got vaporized twice. Dude, I'm almost certain they like they have considered cloning Vader and bringing him back. Just like, why not? We can do it. And someone at Lucasfilm is like, maybe that's too far. Maybe. Yeah, where the line is, that's a <laughs> that guy, John, whatever his fucking name is. You know, I just, I'm I'm hoping he stays there. It's like, no, let's not. Let's not do that. Let's come up with something else. Uh, Hail Zack Snyder and the Snyder Cut. Oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Is Getting that Zack still Snyder's not out yet? Pinocchio. <laughs> we need like another half year, I think, and it's coming out, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, tons of people. Oh, wait, I read that one. Uh, speaking of Disney, th Disney, thoughts on the announcements? Also, thought that the latest episode of Mando was the best, though that's not saying much. Hi, Rags. Hi. Well, you'll um we're going to see it tomorrow. Oh, so I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it. Probably shit. But we'll know for sure once we watch it. Yeah. And uh, as for uh, thoughts on the Disney announcements, we actually did that in the opening. <gasps> so there yeah. you go. Oh my goodness. Uh... too much content. I know, right? Not possible. Perfect circle. I found Mola through Rags, Rags through It's a Gundam. Also high Rags. Huge fan of It's a Gundam. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, we're, a, we're a trio of people. It's the perfect stream for you. Trilogies. Everybody loves them. They do. Keep up the awesome work, Gundam. Here's some money to donate to Pokemane. Aw. Nice. <laughs> I think that's really going to put me back in a good race. <laughs> Are you trying, simping bro? for Pokemane? I'd she promised me a Netflix TV show. <laughs> <laughs> She said she knows a guy. She probably knows lots of guys. Yeah, yeah. It's a... I'm going to take her word for it. America needs oh. my childhood tales. Pokimane wouldn't lie to me. I'm I'm her fan. Exactly. It's like we know each other. We're yeah. close. <laughs> I feel like we have this special connection. A deep connection. A deep. Lord Longman. You just don't understand her. It's hard to understand. The womenly wiles. Lord Longman of Mewplington Abbey. Would you consider doing a YouTube audiobook? You velvety voiced massive. I think they've sent this one before. Maybe maybe it's from the ones because um, we've done a catch up on two other streams now, Rags myself. I'll probably let you know which one's at the end of the stream and what's going on, uh, you fappy people. But that one does sound familiar. As for whether or not I do an audiobook, I think I, uh, I was like, yeah, uh, possible, but like not huge. Uh, like, like no desperate desires because I'm busy with other work, but. um. Yeah, it'd be fun. Depends on the book, I guess, right? Oh yeah, that too. What would too. you do an audiobook of? Like something you've written for somebody, somebody else? Um, I mean, I, that's the thing. It would obviously be something that I like, or wouldn't mind doing like a friend's book, like maybe Shad okay. or Drinker. I don't know, that'd be fun if they were okay with it. Right. Can't imagine they wouldn't be. Or fucking maybe some short stories that I find and think are neat. I don't know. You know, could be anything. I see. Uh, hey, you could read your fan fiction. Yeah. Uh, P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Hello, and I appreciate that. I feel like today I need him more than ever. That was a rough one. <laughs> uh, last time you guys went over Nostalgia Critic's bad video, but... Sorry. Last time you guys went over Nostalgia Critic's bad video, but if it was not for him, I would be a fan of your work, Mola. Hmm? Really? <laughs> like, wait, I don't think that... I'm not sure what they're going for in that message, because the way they've written it makes they, it sound like if, if it went for Nostalgia Critic, they'd like me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Nostalgia Critic is that one bastion of sense in this world that's keeping them from falling into the pit of objective art analysis. Oh, no. I think they meant the reverse, because he said strange, huh? Also high rags. Hello! I would like you, but man, those Nostalgia Critic skits... Ooh. <laughs> You're so funny. The way that they go on for so long, if they were shorter, they would be... Oh, it wouldn't be the same if they were, you know, it's appropriately linked. So true. Long skit Basically, bad. the Nostalgia Critic literally gave the MCU the idea for the Avengers movie. 
Oh no. What do you mean with his his yearly amazing videos? The multi collabos of every big tuber at the time. Oh, that was so that was so epic. The way that they would pretend to shoot special effects at each other. Fucking... You know, the filming was so terrible. <laughs> it, nothing personal. <laughs> nothing. But it's like I can feel. <laughs> It's like Dude, I'm by fucking... myself filming painting and I can seem to understand how to do something cinematically. Those they... movies literally look like they were shot on VHS. <laughs> they they might have been. <laughs> they were so bad they killed Spoonie's sanity. <laughs> I can't believe you said that, Rags. Wow, but... Rags. So edgy. No, um... Spoonie no, Spoonie's gonna kill himself. Oh, there you go. He oh, edged oh, you. I Susan, I didn't do it. <laughs> Um, no, no, I'm, I, I say this out of a deep concern because suicide is a serious issue that we need to address as a society and on this platform. Um, they tried to address it oh, in the really fairy it tale of Pinocchio where he hanged himself, but Disney fucked it up. We went hey, over this. puppet lives matter. Exactly. Uh, I think Spoonie may need help because uh, I was looking help. at his Twitter once, and this is like a Christmas or two ago. And apparently he got into a fight with a Christmas tree in a department store. Oh, no. <laughs> Who won? Now, I Who won? hate Christmas. But do you know the level, like, Spoonie had to be on to right hook a tree randomly? It's like, <laughs> my God. Batman and Robin while on a drug-induced journey, and he thought he was fighting Poison Ivy. I, I think, mean, like, his girlfriend left him, and by proxy, he hated Christmas or something. <laughs> this is real old, so I'm not a fully sure what the fuck was going on. I mean, you, you. I guess you've only met friendly Christmas trees. Like I've met a lot of assholes, so you know I can understand it. I can't say I've ever had a problem with Christmas tree. It was doing its thing. I was doing mine. It's a part of the lore of why I choose Halloween over Christmas. I have a it's lot of bad not, experience. It's not the tree's fault. Your uncle pooped under it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. blame the victim here. The tree was still gorgeous, beautiful lights. It held its dignity silently. <laughs> it's really sweet. Yeah. I don't want to draw attention away from the chats, but I feel like we should address before the video ends. Do each of us think that Disney is ruining culture? I'm I think Disney's ruining that. entertainment. Um, homogenizing it, and yeah, definitely. Like this, if it just, I would agree with the sentiment that things are getting more and more. Uh, uh, everything's muddied and murky and spreading all over the place, and it's just hard to even pick out things that are even happening that are new and interesting and innovative creatively. Uh, that's pretty broad, but you probably understand vaguely what I'm trying to say. D Disney worried Yeah, what he's me, saying right? is culture has been trash long before Disney existed. Yeah, I think culture bad was always writing. Shit. <laughs> bad writing is ruining culture, and Disney is a just a big purveyor of bad writing these days. So, you know, really if, they, if they owned almost everything, like they do now, or maybe they own a few more things, but they make really good shit. I don't really care, you know? Right. So uh, they're going to, I mean, I guess it's not just them ruining culture, but if they keep making really bad movies, then, you know, they're not helping. That's for sure. Yeah. I feel like they're, they've lost it. Like they're, they did a good thing. Like the Disney founded the company and they were producing these quality films that I still remember and enjoy. And there's a lot of value to those old Disney movies, the animated films throughout like the past few decades, and more than that. But now recently, they're trying to do too much. They've gotten too big. They own too many properties. They own too many things. They're trying to do too many things at once, and they're kind of half half assing everything because they they're spreading themselves so thin. And I still think. I, I think in, they're on like the downward slope. Right? It's really indicative of their fuck ups that they couldn't get Star Wars right. Like they couldn't even, you know, just do a simple, obvious sort of set of stories. They instead like put into question whether or not Star Wars is viable for making money. It's like, how did you do that? Because right. they're too busy trying to pander to interest groups and follow all this social. I hate to use the term social justice so much, but you know, mm -hmm. that weird audience of people where nothing's ever good enough. Right. Gotta keep you on can't make art about. compromising yourself. Yeah, that's what they don't seem to understand for some weird ass reason. Art and comedy should challenge people's viewpoint. It shouldn't be something that like you can ease into. It should shake you up a little bit, and change your perspective ever so slightly, even for a moment. Maybe the course of humanity isn't charting stars and nebula, 
but understanding yeah. the reaches of the human mind. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> pretty profound, dude. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I do think they think they're shaking up culture and challenging people. Like, I think yeah, Disney thinks TLJ is challenging people. <laughs> hmm. You see, and Styles not... had to evolve. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Bonjour, Rags. Oh, bonjour. J'espère que vous allez tout bien. I'm not reading all of this. You fucking kidding me? Wee <laughs> uh, <laughs> oui, wee oui, baguette. Rags, Frenchman. There you go, Rags. Read that in your best French voice. Oh, j'espère que vous allez tout bien. Edno Molaire. Je ne dis jamais rien de résiste. Uh, <laughs> mais j'ai peur comme si tu le veux. Winky winky. Oh, no. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Mwah. Ah, mwah. It's magnificent. I think the correct term is très bien, Rat. Uh, très bien. Oh, <laughs> did it. I killed all of the Yoshis. As I have been vanquished. Yes, Gundam, you finally made it. A bunch of hearts. Ah, le monsieur Gundam. <laughs> Let me I hope you all well. Not Mahler. I never say anything racist, but I can't start if you want winky face. A winky winky. Who wants to say winky winky racist face? What? Winky winky racist face. Uh... <laughs> oh, dude, we're doing Godzilla vs. King Kang. Oh, oh, yeah, a, few, a few days ago, I watched the 1999 version of Godzilla. Such a piece of shit. Dude, Donkey Kong so, like, literally. Was... Fell off the map twice. I fucking laugh my ass off at all the friends. Because, like, Jean Renault, that guy's in it. Like, oh, yeah. Like, he he makes all these, like... Like, th th there's all these, like, lines of dialogue that reference the fact that he has this French accent. And then the background in one of the shots, like, there's a guy who pops out of a bathroom with, like, a barrel of French roast coffee. I'm like, it's, like... It's just so, like... Aggressively, like making fun of the he's French. I I got a huge kick out of that. It's a very total piece of shit move too. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, sure if you it have. makes fun of the French. Maybe it's actually really great. <laughs> Leave him alone. Oh, like, hey, uh, he he movie. wanted a croissant and then nobody brought it to him, and it was he was just like oh, and I was like, pourquoi no croissant? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't they like chew, they chew bubble gum to try to see more American? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Oh great. yeah, yeah. And that actually works. It's like, okay, go ahead. No <laughs> need to sh no need to show your ID. You're chewing yeah. gum, so you're clearly American. Uh, that's great. It's well known. Um, I demand a paraplegic plays Mando. Hmm. I mean, give it time, maybe. You know. They might what just if we him. make Gundam paraplegic and then you can play Mando? There nah, I need my stuff. <laughs> stuff. Uh, I'm an ableist. I enjoy being able to do things. <laughs> That's what ableism is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess we were all ableists this whole time, if you think about it. Doing anything is ableist because you're mocking people who can't do those things. So, privilege don't, goggles. Don't do anything. Oh. It's about time I had a privilege. Give me a privilege now. <laughs> I'll take one privilege, please. Uh, Matt and they're like, we'll once. allow you to walk out of here using your own limbs. And I go, <laughs> thank you. I'm just imagining Mando now in a wheelchair, like rolling around the corner with the bombs that he's gonna throw in that scene in the hallway. <laughs> Never so, shooting at him, he's just wheeling himself. No, the stormtroopers wouldn't shoot. They'd be like, "Oh, can we? Can we shoot this guy?" Like, I, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I don't think it worked because he'd have robot legs like Maul. Yeah, you couldn't afford him. You got a best car wheelchair <laughs> instead. And he's got like that expensive ass armor he's wearing. Um, met Doug Walker once. Nice guy. Shame about his vids. I'm I'm certain he is incredibly friendly in person. Like he would he would work yeah. hard to be coming across as very friendly. That would be his whole goal. He's got to be rich, right? I don't know. Is he pay? Doesn't he? Is he employing all of those actors in the skits and stuff? And they all make content separately for the channel. So, isn't that over now, though? 
Well, he. Oh wait, he's still going. Yeah, they still got like a whole team. And the whole Why thing is like, Lol will that? dress vaguely to look like the character in the movie and then make a reference, and that is a skit now. I'm like, eh. Oh. The, the team is Channel Awesome, right? So they all work together to create content under one channel. So it was like Team 10 before Jake Paul, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they pioneered it, yeah. Um, <laughs> Operation Cinder is really dumb. Look it up. Also watch Fat Man 2020, the Mel Gibson Santa movie. It's really good. Surprisingly, look into it. Oh. I'm looking forward to that. I heard about that. I mean, Mel Gibson and Santa? That sounds amusing, yeah? Yeah. Oh, God. Channel Awesome is doing just about as bad as I am. I'd hang it up for, with a million subscribers. I mean, yeah. You can't pay anybody with this money. <laughs> I don't know. No, they, I, do it for the, they do it for the love of the craft. Fuck <laughs> the craft. <laughs> I am curious if... Channel Awesome will eventually die out, or if it's it's supported by new young people constantly pooling in. I don't know. Remember how Cracked's YouTube video, I mean YouTube channel, just kind of died for a while. They like they're trying to, you know, uh, resurrect it now. But there was like two solid years where they just didn't make anything on that channel. Which channel? Sorry. Right. Cracked. Oh, Remember crazy. them? Yeah. Uh. When you guys are talking about Mando, aren't you forgetting the full title? Isn't it The Mandalorian? John Favreau learns to write. What do you mean learn? <laughs> he's not. No, he's not learning. He's he's, he's learning. unlearning how to write, if anything. Yeah, he's uh, finding ways to not write, but also, <laughs> quote unquote, telling a story. It's interesting. Uh, no, Mr. Enter Mr. Enter Pickle Rick review today, Don. I have we talked about it before? I don't know. Mr. Ent is that a J thing? Cause it's Pickle Rick? I don't know. Um, but no, we did something a little different instead. The only good thing from the Game Awards was Sephiroth in Smash, and I don't even have a Switch. Do any of you guys care about that? Or I'm not gonna lie to you, no. <laughs> I thought it was like... I... I was like, huh, cool, I guess. I'm not one of these people who's just like, Oh my god! <laughs> Sephiroth! <laughs> oh, I thought it so big! Remember Boba Fett? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like that bothers me. It's a YouTube trend. There's so many of these channels that sit and watch trailers and then act like it's the greatest thing ever yeah. happened. It is yeah. the most disingenuous shit I've ever I'm seen in my come. life. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and just like these people are happier watching a trailer than I am getting laid. Like, good <laughs> lord, it's fucking ridiculous. It is, yeah. Totally. I see that as like they would have felt something genuine. They recorded it. Someone re is reacting to it. Like this is amazing to see that kind of emotion, and then it just feeds back into itself. It's like, wait, so if I overreact, I'll get more reactions to the reaction. All right. I wonder do any of these people feel disgusted with themselves afterwards? Oh, a little. Oh bit, my yeah. God, Scott Roth, I'm so hyped. Video's over. What? Dude. What am I doing? Why are we here? We're only meant to suffer. <laughs> I don't remember what streamer it was, but I'm pretty sure someone like didn't realize they hadn't hit stop streaming or something and um they go from like super over the top happy-go-lucky shit to like their face just drops and they're just yeah. like looking at the screen like with contempt and this is like yeah. whoa. <laughs> that sounds like one of the more like wholesome things i seen a twitch girl forget to turn off her shit and then she had sex with her boyfriend i totally got a video on that oh my god dude pride rock That's dude pride rock <laughs> yeah. yeah dude that's one of my biggest problems with YouTube culture right now is what you said right there is like people are one way on camera and then the camera goes off and then it's just like, okay, I'm a normal person now and I'm super depressed. Like, <laughs> yeah, I get, I get that you don't... super depressed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so true. They get in a controversy and they're like, I've just... been suffering for a long time, you guys. Depression, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that you shouldn't like up like have a little more upbeat of an attitude when you're like on camera and you're like performing for an audience but don't don't have this huge chasm between who you are in front of the camera and off camera you know because it just comes off as disingenuous and... yeah, well, people, well, just want people, a bit can, of honesty, people can right? see it you know as people much as can like see it, it sniper yeah. wolf is one of the most popular youtubers ever 
<laughs> true. Um, people see what they want to see. Yeah. Well, this is the true. thing. I think that there are people out there who are looking for more like, can I find someone who's as depressed as I am, please? <laughs> it's like right. someone's like, <laughs> uh. that was the case. My channel would be huge. Yeah. It'd be me on YouTube Rewind, hanging from a tree like Pinocchio. <laughs> Dude, you hosting YouTube Rewind, it just opens up with you sighing. Like, well. I didn't, didn't want to make, make this video. video. Yeah. YouTube yeah. Rewind 2021, me dressed as Pinocchio, jumping from a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hang this puppet. <laughs> but, but I am the puppet. But life found a way. Yeah. The last this YouTube Rewind James depressed me when I watched corner. it. <laughs> oh, dude, you know that they didn't do YouTube Rewind this year because so dumb with everyone fucking hating it. And then next yeah, time, because like, they said it was for I, COVID or whatever this time, next time they'll be like, you know what? After last time, we realized that the community celebrates itself. They don't need it. We didn't rewind, do a rewind because of COVID. They understand how the internet works, right? They. Uh, what was the reasoning? It was like, oh, we don't want to... Because of COVID. They're like, it's such a hard time, blah, blah, blah. I'm glad. That's the best thing that came out of coronavirus. Yeah, the only thank good you, news, COVID. No YouTube Rewind. <laughs> Yeah. My god, and YouTube Rewind, if there is ever a disconnect from what content creators are <laughs> yeah. and what YouTube wants them to be. Dude, there's a market for, like, talking about how inept YouTube Rewind and, is. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's it, That's how <laughs> terrible it is. People are like, please, release it so I can talk about how horrible you people are. <laughs> like, uh, oh, yeah. That's hot. When the next YouTube Rewind hits, I'm going to hang myself dressed as Pinocchio in response. That's yeah. It's going to be my big move. I think the the last one was like a very generic top ten, like why even bother? Yeah, and they put Suzy Lou in this shit, right? And meanwhile, Suzy Lou is breaking copyrights on YouTube, fragrantly making money. <laughs> she even made a, but she finally got hammered because all the YouTube commentators like came down on her. I skipped it because uh, I was worried I might get dragged into more bullshit. As like, man, I talk about one more woman this week, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and she makes a website dedicated to her breaking, you know, copyright laws. And oh, you could pay God. to watch her watch anime, which I thought was the most retarded shit <laughs> ever. Oh my God. Like, oh, why yes. would I, I know who you're talking about. Naruto? Yes. Yeah. Right. And YouTube's like, she's fit for rewind. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous. I know. I just really love this community. Yeah. I'm, so I'm proud of this community. Proud of this community, yeah. I think before the the top ten one, the year before that, that was the one oh, with like Will was... Smith, and then it started <laughs> off with like the school bus full of the YouTubers oh, and man. like streamers, I... fucking ninja. Yeah. Oh my god, that rewind like killed parts of my soul. Yeah. Like Casey Neistat who do makes me wish I was a mermaid. It, it makes me <laughs> wish I was a mermaid, and when I swam, I got stabbed in the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Casey Neistat wearing an ill-fitting suit, <laughs> dancing with Koreans. What the fuck was this? <laughs> How was that YouTube? Yeah. Oh my god. YouTube Rewind, everything you don't understand that happens on everything YouTube, Everything you don't care about. It's, it's, yeah. well, it's crazy, because, like, I remember, the, I think it was, like, the first Rewind where I was like, I kind of recognize some of these people, but it got, it's got to a point where I, like, I can confidently you know, say I will know, recognize I'm. zero. I'm just, like, no idea who these people are. Yeah, yeah, that was the rewind. I was first exposed to James Charles. And I was like, who's this gay little boy running around? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I never heard about James Charles until there was that weird controversy with mm -hmm. him and that one other Which person. One? Which, Which one? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, I, it's, I didn't know it, but apparently it's one of those, you'd never notice how you're totally disconnected from other circles of YouTube, like mm -hmm. fashion and makeup YouTube. I never ever go there. So there's people with a gajillion, bedillion subs. And you've yeah. never heard their names ever. What's amazing about the beauty YouTube community. We're probably gonna get banned cause I'm saying it. These YouTube. motherfuckers operate like the mafia. Yeah. They have these mm -hmm. game of throne level plots to fuck yes. one another over out of millions of dollars. James Charles fighting with Jeffree Star, Tati Westbrook, James Charles is canceled, Tati and fucking Jeffree Star in a private jet wearing ridiculous motherfucking clothes, looking like Captain Crunch. But the joke's on me. <laughs> <laughs> he had a makeup palette that day that made him millions. It's a hot fucking mess. Shane Dawson's there for God knows what fucking reason. But yeah. Jesus Christ, thank God he got canceled. It gave me a little laugh.
<laughs> no, I'm not gonna get into it because I just put a mark on my head. <laughs> like it just amazes me how terrible some of them are, including stealing shit from other people, literally yeah. stealing makeup palettes and reselling them, and totally yeah. undercutting some small business. And since they are huge YouTubers, kind of like fuck you, you can't touch me. Well, yeah, YouTube, YouTube then uh, says these are the ones to look up to. By the way, yeah. like really YouTube. now. <laughs> He's a, James Charles is being accused of some weird sexual allegations again. And then you go on his Twitter, this motherfucker taking pictures of his ass. Ass nigga. <laughs> You're looking at James' ass. What is going on here? But God forbid I go on YouTube and laugh at Zombie Unicorn. <laughs> yeah. <this> guy's <laughs> Dude, I feel, I feel so out of touch with all of, like the high performers on YouTube. Like you know when you lo load up the YouTube app on your phone and phone and there's like like that uh, what is it like trending tab or like I guess the trending tab yeah the you confusion click on it. tab yeah. whenever I I click that accidentally and I'm like ugh like, <laughs> what is just, this like I touch something like like in a urinal or something I'm just like oh I touched it ugh oh my god I gotta wash my hand. I've always harkened the YouTube trending tab like being caught jerking off the floor and your mother walking in on you. <laughs> it's not what you think. I don't actually watch this, I swear. <laughs> I always that's how I know that sometimes when I when I go to YouTube that that I'm not signed in is because the front page is just covered in fucking worthless garbage. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I know instantly. Wait a second. Oh that's right, I'm not signed in. I gotta sign in. What the fuck yeah. is all this shit? Oh, oh my god, I thought my account got deleted. Yep. Yeah. Which is another reasonable it's... fear to have with people like us. <laughs> it's like, yay, I don't have a yeah. job. <laughs> um, also, where's Elden Ring Miyazaki? I'm gonna hollow. Yeah, I guess there was no news about that. Um, or if there's no, been no news about that for a while. Like, just, just have some patience. It'll be fine, I'm sure. It's on the way. I don't really know anything else about it. Oh wow, Kirby just fucking threw a canister at itself and blew up. Feel bad. Well, Among Us debuted its new ship level on the Game Awards. It's like the most Fuck. popular thing they posted about. I mean, that's very exciting to me. A new ship on Among Us. That's next level. I probably should have played that shit just for like the clout. Oh yeah, that was like a game to play if, if like, people make careers off it, right? It was just like, damn, came out of nowhere. I was invited to do a couple of uh, streams with some higher profile YouTubers and myself, but everybody kept looking for me when I was fucking asleep. Damn. Like, can't we, you know, do this shit when I'm awake or something? Yeah, you gotta be more, you gotta be more <laughs> to be safe fair, with them. Sleeping like... while, sleeping and playing Among Us are pretty much pretty identical. Much the same. Mm -hmm. That's why you gotta come in there with stories and jokes that you pepper in in between the nothing going on. And then you have people yeah. be like, hey, no talking. And you're like, alright. Hey, no talking. You're like, oh, so we're playing Trouble in Terrorist Town, but like shitty. Right. Yeah. People are not ready for those hot takes, but they will be as soon as Among Us is that out, of, shouldn't, out of If fashion. that is a hot take, I'm disappointed in this species. Shouldn't you be already the be amount hot. of things that are hot takes already? <laughs> yeah, but my <laughs> disappointment can be eternal and continual. You know, that's beautiful. And then when Bags way. dies, he'll have to help humankind for 300 years. Oh, and then fuck he'll get off. I don't want to help him. <laughs> I'm going to be a poltergeist and I'm going to haunt really shitty movie directors. <laughs> I would actually be for that. I, I am for this also. Fucking so do it. Yeah. Hey, you want to waste your like 300 years fuck with those assholes. No, it ain't, I ain't wasting. It ain't nothing. a waste. Time I enjoy spending is not time wasted. wasted. Thank you, John Lennon. He's dead. He's haunting someone right now. Oh, Enjoying yeah. it. He's he's doing it. Uh, watch Last Action Hero, you ninjas, or COVID Shum. Oh no, not a COVID Shum. Uh, that's probably a new fat movies one we'll do eventually. Have we'll you get seen there. it? Shum, COVID Shum. Yeah, we'll watch COVID Shum. Uh, it's a really oh, good movie. No. As uh, Last Action Hero, I've definitely seen. It's just been a long time. Right. Yeah. Me too. I just, I know uh, Charles dances in it, and that's, you know, there you go. <laughs> Continue the, he pops up randomly in a lot of what we cover, and that's a good thing, you yeah. know? Right. Uh, check out Renegade Cut's Rick and Morty video, Hi Rags. Hello. Well, see, we've had two of those asked now. If I get, if I put Rags through all of Rick and Morty, which honestly doesn't take that long, because they're really short episodes and short seasons, 
Um, maybe we'll we'll cover some Rick and Morty stuff, you know? Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. I hear it's good. Uh, well, yeah, it what, depends on who you talk to, I guess. What uh, what qualifies a video for like eat fat coverage? Where you um, watch it, and you're just like, what the fuck is this guy thinking? As soon as like? they make like between one and three points in a video I'm checking out that I think we can get a lot of discussion out of, I'm like, well, there you go, that's good enough. Because I want to okay, try and maintain right. as much of a surprise as I can. Because right. uh, like. The way that video went at the end there, that was something else. Uh, yeah. But... So it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad take on something, well, but just like something worthy of discussion, it's right? Kind of, it could um, be a very good overlooked point. It's kind of the same way as movies work. So like, if it's a franchise, like Patrick Willems or Quentin Reviews, or who else is... Uh, well, in the opposite direction, down with Thrust, we'll be like, yeah, we'll just check it out anyway. Like, there's not a concern over whether or not the video will work, because they're just, they're so consistent. You know, and you can interpret what I mean by that. And then right. you have videos that are like from complete randoms. And I'm like, oh, we'll probably want to make sure, for example, that the audio and visuals are actually like not horrifyingly bad. A lot of people mm -hmm. have trouble with sound balancing and it's annoying. I know. What the fuck? <laughs> that irritates the shit out of me when uh, volume's too loud. Especially when it's too loud. If it's too quiet, I'll take too loud over or too quiet over too loud. Yeah, I mean, I got a volume booster, it'll be fine. But when you have random spikes of loudness, you actually want to hit the person who made the video. Yes. Uh, Music so starts. Do, 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 do. I downloaded this Joaquin Crude soundtrack from freechillhoptoons.netcom channel on YouTube, and you yeah. need to hear it. And I, I know it's a pain in the ass. Like, I, I edit, I have audio balance. Like, whenever you have, like, a bunch of, like, music and sound effects stacking in one particular instance, it's like even if you balance everything to like a normalization level of like negative six or something in combination it can send the the master track over zero decibels but even when it does that i'm just like okay i gotta fix that and then i'll like bring everything down by one decibel one thing at a time where it's and try and figure out like what do i bring down yeah. like what's the least important sound effect that I can bring it down by one decibel so it'll have the maximum effect while falling under zero decibels. Like, there's a lot of work that goes The into least it, right? important That's... sound effect is probably going to be a bell. Right. <laughs> I find I hate, that if you're doing that I hate much when it effort, gets neglected. you're probably already yeah. in the clear. Because we're talking about people who shove random clips in and just hope. I think, honestly, one of the biggest things that fucks people over is they look at the timeline, like the audio waveform, and they just try and match them. They don't realize that that's not enough because it's, uh, the, you know, the programs might not be able to best represent exactly how loud or quiet that'll be. The biggest one I noticed this with, and Desk Bullshit has found it as well, is the whenever people use ding sounds in videos, they're always usually, always usually, that's good, usually too loud. Right. Uh, because it's just sort of eyeballed and it's a ding, so it's quick, so you don't even realize when editing how fucking terrible that just sounded. You're just like, eh, whatever. And then sometimes it's right. just like, ding! You're like, ow, oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Which is the worst when they have fucking counters. Like, ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, And you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna just turn the video down. Turn it back up once yes. you're back. So, like, totally. you could tell when some, pe when some people just haven't listened to their video when mm -hmm. they're done with it. Like, they render it, and they're just like, yeah, it's fine. And they just upload it. Fuck it. Close enough. That's good enough, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, that, least, that, that meets a minimum standard requirement, right? <laughs> Dude, fucking drew a Blastoise? Hell yeah. Fuck them up. Fuck up these children. Come on, Blastoise. Blastoise. That was terrible. Um, also, give me uh, just a few minutes. I need to make a phone call real quick, and I will be back. No problem. Mm -hmm. uh, what media? Yeah, well, have... I'm going to run off. I got to get some shit done. That is uh, fair enough, sir. Since you are brand new to the world of EFAP, why don't you tell these people what you do on your channel? And why yeah, they the same shit subscribe. I did here, essentially. Ah. <laughs> you pretty much got a preview. What kind of topics I look at shit, cover? I make a joke, and then I get in trouble for it. Yeah, that's happened a whole bunch. That's actually um, also how I heard more and more about you, was the fucking Pokimane shit. Yeah, that pretty much, uh, I, I'll always say, uh, Pokimane saved me from YouTube <laughs> shadow ban at the time. <laughs> and I'm back in it again, so. It's the circle stuff. of life. You, uh, you qualify as a VTuber, right? I don't know. It certainly doesn't feel like it. Uh, because that's, that's I know I was on the VTube train right before it blew up. Yeah, you gotta you gotta. And I didn't blow. 
get an anime girl. Like that's that's the way you do it, okay? Yeah, people keep requesting me to bring back the animated girl I was using called It's a Waifu. <laughs> but I just can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> I have standards, goddammit. <laughs> Can I keep some of my dignity? Um, but yeah, links are in chat and description. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been fun. And uh, I don't know. I, I hope we, Next we time we'll trash around. Star Wars instead of Raccoon something, whatever right. the channel's called. Oh, right. Wait, why is crack? <laughs> I was saying raccoon so something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see how the mistake was made. And yeah, just, you it know, the nice standard. Nice meeting you, good sir. The standard good to see you guys. Outro is apologies for the video you saw. You know, I wish there was something we could have done about that. But, you know. There's it's no nice. sense in apologizing. It's time they're not getting back. I know. <laughs> but, uh, it was, good, it was, good it was talking fun to hanging you, out with you. Good night, everybody. See you around, sir. Gute Nacht. And then there were four. Uh, what media have you consumed that was better in movie slash TV form as opposed to book form? Fight Club. Uh, I've not um, been able to consume enough adaptations to be able to comment on that, but the oh, The Shining. The Shining is probably the best example there will ever be of something that's way better in movie form than it is as a book. Well, like, I really liked Game of Thrones in book form. I preferred the TV show up to when before it went to real shit. Like, yeah. And uh, part of that has to do with my preference for I really like seeing actors, um, I guess, be vessels for characters uh, versus books where I'm, it's more so an imagination, which is totally like I could see the reverse argument being made, which is totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I love seeing Charles Dance represent Tywin. I love seeing Sean Bean represent uh, Eddard. Like, it's it's. Um, so as long as if the writing is like as good in both, then I probably my medium preference would probably be a uh, the TV show. But yeah, yeah, you know, they, all of them offer different things. Right. But, Fight Club uh, is actually yeah, one of the. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but Fight Club is actually one of the rare examples where the author of the book has actually said that he prefers the movie to his own book. Wow. That like I can't think of any other example of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if the entire thing, but Chuck Palahniuk, who wrote Fight Club, has said that he likes the movie's ending more than his own book. So, that's something. That's kind of impressive, honestly. <laughs> like I never Twilight. read the novelization of Fight Club, but I read the prequel to it. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it was by the same author of Fight Club. Is it a short um, story or like an, like an actual no, book? No, it's a book. It's a novel, hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's the prequel to Fight Club, and then like the Fight Club script was written by a guy named Jim Ools, I think. And uh, it was interesting hearing about his like behind the scenes, like him describing the process of writing the thing, because apparently like he he read the book, I guess, and then he doesn't outline his stuff. Apparently, he just like he gets right into writing the screenplay, and he's just like. Whatever sounds good, that's what goes into the script. <laughs> and it's just like, that's an interesting way to like write a screenplay. Well, you know, he, what he did it and it works. So, you know, that's one of the moments when I realized like every writer has their own process and no process is necessarily bad or good. Hey, Rex. Whatever works for Yo. you, you know. The question was, uh, what media have you consumed that was better in movie slash TV form as opposed to book form? The Da Vinci Code. Hmm. No. Angels and <laughs> no, 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 no. Ange I, I got to mix the angels and demons. And I, I get them confused because uh, Da Vinci Code was a better book than a movie. Angels and demons. I like the movie better than the book. Um, I haven't read the books, but those movies are hilarious. Yeah, so it probably means a lot that. <laughs> um, but I, I like I like the book. It was a it was a ride. Um. Let's see. Um, the Black Cauldron is loosely based off of one of the Predane Chronicle things, but uh, I don't know. Um, some might come to mind, but for the most part, yeah. It, generally, the old adage holds true that the book is better than the movie. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I think, I think, yeah. Exceptions to that are just that. Um, exceptions. Agreed. Um, I, someone mentioned Jurassic Park. However, I really liked the book. Michael Crichton's uh, Jurassic Park, I really liked. Yeah. Um, there are things about things. both that I prefer. You yeah. Know. It, it's really weird, though. It really is kind of like comparing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm thinking of... Maybe there's some older books that I didn't care for. Um, I'm almost certain that if I saw a Grapes of Wrath movie, I'd like it more than the book. I haven't seen more... Uh... I know if I'd seen... There are movie versions of a lot of books I've read and book versions of a lot of movies I've watched that I just haven't seen their counterparts. Um, the Jurassic Park book is miles better. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know if it's miles better. Like they're both good. I never saw the Animal Farm. The movie butchered it. Well, here's the thing. It's not like they're clearly different. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Sword in the Stone. No. Um, so I mentioned Sword in the Stone. So Sword in the Stone is the first book of the Once and Future King, uh, which is. What T.H. Wright White wrote is like Guns of Future King, um, Sword, is Sword in the Stone, uh, The Ill-Made Knight, and stuff like that. The Chevalier Malphite. Uh, but I really liked the books a lot, but I also love The Sword in the Stone. Well, you know, I might, I might say that Sword in the Stone, the Disney movie, is better than the book, though they are very different. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew's Team of Electric Sheep. Hmm... I still think the book's better. Someone said, what about 1984? I haven't actually seen the movie. Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, original version. So I read the book War of the Worlds. It's pretty, it's pretty dry, but it's not bad. Um, Starship Troop is a movie had better music than the book. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack for the book was shit. I turned it up already, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, I haven't read uh, Starship Troopers. Um, let's see. So it was a like Grapes of Wrath does have a movie. I'm sure it would. Haven't read the book yet to compare them. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't like the book at all. Um, I think it's Steinbeck, but I just didn't. Didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, Lord of the Rings books are better. I would say so, but it's almost like the movies are so damn good. Hmm. They're just two different experiences. I, I legitimately would, if someone said the movies are better, I would understand. I really would understand. They, they have such different experiences, too. Dune. Like... Someone brought up Dune. I've read the book, but I have not seen the old movie. I would be curious to, though. Especially oh, with the, the new the one coming David out. David Lynch movie? Yeah, that movie's I a think, mess. Yeah, I've, I've, I have, I've only, I have, I know nothing about it, but I would like to see it. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones, and a lot of it is just me kind of reading chat and seeing if some of them match up. Christopher Tolkien infamously hated Lord of the Rings. Well, he's got shit tasty movies. Um, I Am Legend movie was better than the book. Mm, I can't. I don't think I read I Am Legend. I think it's one I didn't. I don't think that's one of the, I robot. I like the I like the book better than the movie. However, they're very different, very 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 different. And also, one's a short story and one's a movie. Um, of Mice and Men, haven't seen a movie of Mice and Men though. I read the book. I've seen the movie. Oh, Malgovich. Bragg's Dune book worth the read? Yes, I do think it's worth the read. Um. The Lord of the Rings movies are not better. Jackson missed the point of the story real hard. I'm gonna what? put a big doubt on that one. I'm gonna put doubt on that one. I'm gonna put press a big, X to doubt. Press an X on that. Uh, Harry Potter movies are a tad better than the books. Really? No. No, that's what someone in chat said. Just to be clear. Oh. I don't think the Harry Potter movies are kind of shit. That's not what, gonna lie. The only thing stopping me from saying that is rewatching them because I don't have great memories of them being incredible stories or anything. I'm just like, this is Harry Potter. I don't know. Like, <laughs> the books are the books are all right. Um, the second one was my favorite while I was reading through them. Mm -hmm. um, I 
I think they really tapered off in quality though once they hit like four or five ish. Probably five, I think, is when I really I really started to not care that much. Really didn't couldn't get into them anymore. But I did finish. But I would say the books are better. Uh, people saying. Uh, I wouldn't say the quality degrades completely from like number five and onward. I was like, I think is a great book and movie. I think five is a really shaky book and movie. And then there's a there's a bit of a spike in quality with the sixth and seventh books and movies. So like, uh, yeah, I, I I would say the Goblet of Fire is a is a. I really enjoyed that book, and I think yeah, it's a I, solid screen too as well. Yeah. Well, the Pinocchio the book is better because it gets hung. Stupid, <laughs> yeah, we all know the Pinocchio book was superior, okay? Um, you don't need to keep bringing it up, God. Well, the Sorry. Shrek movie? Yeah, I agree. The Shrek movie was definitely better. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's a Shrek book? I don't know. I would <laughs> hope so. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, it, someone it, act actually, this isn't quite a movie, but I would say that the Halo book and the so the halo the, there was a halo the, there was i think the, the first trilogy of halo books novels which were written by i think two different people um mm -hmm. in fact i will double check because it is always going to be a constant recommendation but there were three books um fall of reach uh the flood which is halo yeah. and uh, first strike and they were written by uh eric nyland i think so yeah uh so william c dietz uh, D -I -E -T -Z. He wrote The Flood, yeah. I think. The Flood, yes. And I think that book is really good. Um, those, that, those trilogy, that, the trilogy of books does a phenomenal job building a really excellent sci-fi world. Um, and I would, I mean, like, it is really stellar. Um, I love Halo the game a lot, but damn, that's Same. a good book. They're pretty, they're pretty damn close, honestly. Um, Someone said, uh, someone said the Mind Camp live adaptation. Had <laughs> live <laughs> adaptation. <laughs> it had more action than the book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a soundtrack. Uh, cool. um, there's, there's definitely an, uh, it's like you were saying, it's apples and oranges, the mediums. Like, uh, yeah, the, it's, the, the, there's an the experiences are so different. Yes. I mean, the, the, there's like, ingesting like like pages and pages of prose over one detail in a novel as opposed to just like absorbing one shot in a film mm -hmm. obviously an asymmetrical experience but like a, a picture is worth a thousand words right so like it's it's yeah you, it's just you've got to judge things as a movie and judge things as a book right because the, the experiences are fundamentally I think so different I think uh, one example I just thought of is uh, I think the Shawshank Redemption movie might actually be better than the short story it's based off of. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna say it. It's it's true. The movie's better. I would say that I would say that a movie has a better chance to beat a short story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes short stories can have really good concepts. Yes. But their execution is eh, and so a movie can be like, yeah. I'm taking that concept and I'm just gonna you know, make a movie out of it that just happens to be better. It's interesting because um, a short story is usually not enough to stretch into a feature film, but a novel is usually too much. So, like, novellas tend to make I, would, I don't think I'd agree the with best the first part. adaptations. I what? mean, as long as you have, uh, like, a short story isn't long enough to stretch into a film, like, as long as you have characters and a concept, I think it's, you, you can have plenty of stuff to, to work with. Um, Especially if you want to go for tone and setting and a little bit of world yeah. building for it. Oh, it's um, definitely possible. But I, uh, I've, you know, I've read a decent amount of short stories, and they tend to be kind of light on actual things happening. You know, they can right? Be, yeah. Yeah. Do people still not get that Verhoeven Starship Troopers is a parody of Heinlein's novel? So, mm -hmm. like, the issue is that Verhoeven didn't read the book. And a lot of people think that the movie is, it, it's, it's given a parody style presentation, 
but it unironically shows a really excellent like political and military system and is full of excellent lessons to be and learned people and misremember it. philosophy they're like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People this. People they're do they're forced into it. the military it's like they're not they're not <laughs> It's not a dictatorship, it's a democracy. People are, are held accountable for their military mistakes. Um, you, you serve in, you know, service guarantees citizenship. Military service is not mandatory. Like there's a lot of really excellent, you know, political stuff in there that would unironically be good to have. And there's a lot of good lessons and things, but people, oh, he had boots and a trench coat. So it's about Nazis. Y'all, like, y'all didn't watch the movie recently, did you? Very shallow interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fucking love that movie. I think it should have won an Oscar. It's pretty awesome. I, I, I think it's so good. It should have won. It's an really award. good. Yeah, like, I could see how it would. Yeah. But that's the kind of film that they're not going to give that an Oscar. It's like a, if a right. science fiction movie winning an Oscar. Yes. Yeah, no, sci-fi, aliens, automatically off the board. Yeah. Any award recognition, yeah. Um, um, this ended with high rags, high Gundam, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, hi. I guess he headed off while I was um, uh, taking my call, or giving my call. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he had to head out. But... No, he's a good guest. He, uh, he has my... He, I, I officially will sanction his return. Unite him and Eve. It gets my tent. It gets my my stamp of approval. I'll put my paw pad on ink and I'll Belch. slap that shit down on a submitted form in triple fit. Excellent. Yeah. Um. Oh, Stephen King. I don't think I've read any of his books that I've also seen the movies of. Um. I really love his book, The Stand. I really enjoyed that a lot. But I heard the movie was not nah, good. Yeah, he's, the meme with him show, is that it? most of the adaptations for his stuff is terrible, right? Like, mm -hmm. except for The Shining and a few others. That's the thing, because I've, I haven't read The Shining or actually seen the movie. Um, <laughs> I saw The Mist, but I haven't read the story. Wait, um, you haven't seen The Shining? No, I haven't. It's just one of those uh, I've never seen. You should. It's a good one. Yeah, here it's good. I do hear it's good. I've just never been into horror stuff, but uh, yeah, I need to watch it. I do. That needs to be on our list of things to take a look yes. at. Yes. That's one of my favorite. Well, we movies. were very busy watching all six Resident Evil films, so <laughs> priorities. Yeah, but I don't regret it for a damn no. second. Incredible content. Paul W. S. Anderson and Milojovic should be proud of themselves. They made <laughs> just something so unique, beautiful, even. <laughs> um, they say Tython is in the Outer Rim in Episode Five, but it's a core world. What the fuck? They keep messing up the law. See, I didn't even know that. But it doesn't surprise me that the more you would look into, like, where, what planets are where, I doubt they would get it right. You think that you could fix this by using the the, the wiki, the, the Wikipedia, that a bunch of <laughs> neckbeard autists have been anally attempting, despite all odds and logic, to make sense these last years. Anally attempting they would, they would to fix your up. fucking content. <laughs> like, please let us. <laughs> Poor guys, they um, just wanted to make sense. Someone asked, what's your take on U.S. film remakes on world cinema? Like, Internal Affairs, The Departed Old Boy. I mean, I'm, I'm pro, pro them. If the, if the new one's good, then it's a good movie. And if it's bad, then it draws attention to the good foreign one. Mm, yeah. So, Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly fine with it. And plus, they can be potentially both good, but very different because of just cultural differences. I love watching a lot of, I, I went through a big phase of watching like Japanese, Korean, like kind of like Asian uh, movies about, you know, wars and fighting and samurai and stuff like that. And just the way they make movies is really different and it was really interesting. I mean, my favorite movie is a Korean movie uh, with no English. So it's good. It's different. It's great to see just sort of different styles of how things are presented sometimes. Yeah. All my favorite horror movies are either Japanese, Korean or thailand i paused like, for unrelated thai? reasons but they just is... they just have a way of doing it but i don't know oh, if it's no. cultural or <laughs> like i guess it must be but they're just good at it uh, let's see someone have you do you like anything that is generally considered bad patriot yeah i'm sure um yeah the patriot is considered bad even though it's probably a solid seven out of ten honestly like actually pretty good and mel gibson whether you like him or not is he's an underappreciated actor yeah he really conveys them emotions uh despite being someone that is 
I guess, really hateable for a lot of people. And it's like, yeah, that's totally, I understand. Um, let me see. Uh, good st stuff that I like that is considered bad. Um, I would say one of them, I would say that I generally like Wolfenstein Youngblood, and I think it gets an unfair rap. Ukulele for uh, me. <laughs> Something I think is, like, uh, just, just I think of it higher than it is regarded, is, is what this is, right? Uh, I would say DayZ is on the list. I think it's generally regarded as bad. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I'm sure I, uh... Oh, Blind Mana. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's so shocking that that's actually probably a legit answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. we love Bly Manor; it's a fucking masterpiece. But people like Mandalorian instead because they want to see stormtroopers get shot. Boba is Fett isn't in Bly Manor, dude. Okay. Okay, oh, you I guys say of... you like Bly Manor. You're not joking, right? You're serious about that. Yeah, we love I, it. It's I, insanely I, yeah, good. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean to say like, oh, you really seriously like that because I haven't seen it yet. I'm curious about it. I've heard mixed things about it i've heard some people from some people that it's really great and if it is like i'm i'm They're stoked correct. like yeah like yeah, it's, okay. it's insanely good cool. we we stand okay I'm, I'm gonna check that out I'd love to hear I was perspective thinking on it. earlier when i was making a joke that they should make a force ghost show like a star wars force ghost show that it should be directed by mike flanagan yes <laughs> <laughs> like the haunting of Skywalker Ranch. I love the idea that they stop him at the beginning. They're like, this is a happy thing, by the way. They like being Force Ghosts, okay? And he's like, hmm. <laughs> so a thing I like that most people consider bad, oysters. Fucking the love food? them. The food? Yeah. Yeah, oysters are great. Oysters are insanely good. I love oysters. They're delicious. Even fried, they're pretty darn good. A lot of people, though. A lot of people... A lot of people don't like them, but I would say most of the people who say they don't like them, they never tried them. Yeah, yes. a lot of people I... don't like seafood, and it seems like they just don't like the Even idea of seafood. Even though their ancestors came from the sea. It's like, come on guys, cannibalism. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> ate anything from the ocean that I didn't like. I haven't, I've never ate an animal that I haven't liked so far. Have you ever eaten a no. sloth? I had an ostrich burger once, and I wasn't too impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what my most exotic animal that I eat is. Crocodile? Uh, I've, I've had alligator. Alligator is good, and it actually does sort of taste like chicken. Mm, it's the it's tail, good. right? I think that's yeah, all you tail eat on the alligator. Um, Wait, that's all you eat on the alligator is the tail? I don't know. Yeah. If, you might eat other parts, but maybe the tail is what the primarily, because the tails are fucking big. We don't eat a lot of reptiles in general. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, frog legs. Delicious. Love frog legs. Haven't had them in a while. Need to get my hands on some, and I know I can somewhere. Frog legs are delicious. Can you handle some fringy legs? All right. If that's um, what works for you. Someone asked clam chowder. Clam chowder's all right. Clam chowder's okay. I really, I love it clams. Depends on how you make it. I love shellfish in general. Um, I'm there with you. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. I'm from I'm from Maryland, and we're big into crabs and oysters over there. Someone said, fresh oyster feels like chilled coom. I'm gonna have to take your word on that. I've never, had, <laughs> never, had, never had my coom chilled. Uh, for me, if it's not straight from the tap, I don't yeah, want anything to do with mean, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's chicken feet. I haven't had chicken feet yet. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've never had chicken feet or pig's feet or any feet in general. I've really had feet. The closest I had is, I guess, the tail of an alligator. Oh, I have had feet, crab legs. That's feet, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, sort of, kind yeah. Of. yeah. I'll tell you, anything not? from the ocean, I love. Crab, lobster, <laughs> the whole schmigagle. Oy oysters, mussels, scallops, octopus, eel. It's all delicious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think any of the people who voted for the Game Awards watched your Last of Us 2 playthrough, Mola. Love the latest Mando ep. Laugh so hard it crashed. More fun on the way for Mando, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't have what would be considered a good experience for The Last of Us 2, but hey, everyone's different, and those at the Game Awards can vote how they wish. I will not be taking them seriously regardless. Like, they could have voted in Ghost of Tsushima for everything, and I'd be like, yeah, okay, neat. Yeah, sure. Because that seemed to be, that's the dichotomy, I guess? Like, it's between those two. I think some people were like, no, no, it should be, you know, this other game. It's just like, nah, the war is between those two now. I haven't played uh, Tsushima, by the way. Anyone here played that? I have no. not played Tsushima, no. Not yet, no. 
Hmm. Heard it was good. Rags, do you like shark? Haven't had shark. Um, I've heard that it's often harvested very inhumanely, so I would be hesitant to eat it. Mm. Uh, but maybe I'm just misinformed. But, uh, yeah. And also, chat, I know that frogs are amphibians. Thank you. But they, the they still reptiles, play so. around with water, you know, and that counts. Now, I, I remember that turtles are reptiles because of Fuck. Over the Hedge. I think Paul Giamatti played the turtle in that. And he was very insistent. He is a reptile. He is not an amphibian. Yeah, fucking idiots. Uh, Mola, when are you I'm watching Attack on Titan and Vindland Saga? No plans right now, I'm afraid. Um, from Disney, I'm only excited for WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, and Thor. Sure, I think all of these different properties have potential. Even the Loki TV show, I was like, what, what, what is going on here? Like... The trailer was quite interesting. We'll, we'll check them out. You'll probably see if have coverage for all of this shit, to be honest with you, because uh, we like uh, a lot of the Marvel characters. We want to keep an eye on them, you know? And Taika Waititi, quite the, quite the person who can provide a pretty awesome yeah, movie, so I don't know. We'll I would, see. He is not consistent, but I would say he definitely has the potential. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Look at Pikachu when they froze me in the middle of my move. Pikachu's like, yes! And there's like another habit here. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is cheating. So it's not inherently bad to have a TV show about a particular character, but you, when you they announce that they're going to do a TV show around one particular character or whatever, you immediately get the sense like they're going to spread themselves thin, they're going to have maybe one good season, and then they're going to take it for too long where they do one too many seasons and they kind of lose their steam. And, you know... It's just like, they're not going to build it to a satisfying conclusion where you're like compelled right to the very finish. Uh, like, yeah, it's I just going to, like most fuck. TV shows, it just kind of like dies off in, in a whimper. <laughs> you're just like, okay, I guess it's over now. Yeah. Uh... The man, the myth, the legend, Gundam. Merry friggin' Christmas indeed. Hello, my N words. Hello, chat. And hello, Rags. Hi there. Hello, indeed. Uh, Halloweenies get bent. Still love you, Mola, even if you're wrong about Christmas and Clone Wars. Ooh. Don't put them in the same place. How was Rags supposed Christmas to support that amazing. sentence? Clone Wars, I've, <laughs> I, I have heard that it's not good from people that I am pretty confident in, so... I keep killing myself as Pikachu. This is awkward. I'm like, Because, like, when people tell me Star Wars things are good, I don't believe you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've been uh, led down that Go pathway. to bed, JJ. <laughs> uh, Someone in chat is asking why we don't like Mandalorian. Well, um, <laughs> we have some videos for you, my dude. Yeah, go and hit Moolah on the bottom there, and you'll see yeah. in our past video we've got coverage of episodes one through four already. Five will be on Wednesday, and uh, six, if I'm done by then, will be out on the Friday. We will have watched probably all of them then by a couple days after that, and you'll see them come out. It's gonna be great. Also, Monday will be the I can put on Moolah the the um the Jackbox uh thing we did with Tonal finally, so that'll be fun. I think it'll, you know because not everybody saw that live, so fun for everybody. Uh, this just says Mrs. Sheev. Oh, there's a Mrs. Sheev. I mean, it must have been right. Well, very likely was. For Mrs. Sheev. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, what could possibly go wrong? She has the nerve to say that after the sequel trilogy, are these people not self-aware? Well, no, they're not. If what had happened with the sequel trilogy hadn't happened, we'd probably be looking at way more shit would be out by now. There would probably be two films in a trilogy out by now or some shit, who knows? Uh, yeah. I, they would have kept their momentum. Cause they would have kept printing money. Because this is the thing that a lot of people who... um try and pretend like everything's going great, say, and it's just, you know, like the whole, like, uh, excuse me, Rise of Skywalker made this amount of money, and you're like, yeah, think how much money it could have made. Think how many yeah. more things they could have so, done. Yeah. So, like, um, again, for those of you who don't know, episode one and episode three made pretty <laughs> much the same amount of money. Episode seven made twice as much as episode nine. Hmm. 
Hmm. Meanwhile, so, Endgame broke all the records, right? Yeah. So keep that in mind, the, the, that, that kind of decline. The prequels yeah. made a con pretty consistent amount of money, but there is a huge decline between the first of the sequels and the third. A That's big really difference. Yeah. I mean, granted, <laughs> Rise of Skywalker still made a billion, but The Force Awakens made two. That is a huge decline. So Do you it's think certainly that's worrying. The... Do you think that's the fault of the eighth movie or the marketing of... I think a lot of it is the fault of the eighth, as yeah. well as Solo, as well as just the general storytelling. Right. Um, and yeah, the, the main point I'm making is in regards not to whether or not it's good. That's not the argument I'm saying they make. The argument I'm saying they make is... Uh, Lucasfilm don't think they've done anything badly or wrong. Look at them, they're still making money and they're still moving on with projects. It's like, you have no idea how different everything would be if The Last Jedi well, didn't uh, piss everybody off. They certainly won't admit that they've done anything wrong, but they know that they have fucked up. Yeah. Like, what do you think this whole thing is? Announcing like 12 different shows of every kind of thing under the sun. It is, um... Hmm. Something to, it's something to consider. I this, They don't seem like a company who knows exactly what to do next. Uh, fun fact. Right. Cameron Johnson, Batwoman's very own Luke Fox, is actually a writer and co-director. A co-directed an award-winning animated short, uh, Megovanen... Oh, wait, sorry, this is disconnected. Megovanen Rags. Oh, Megovanen. Mm. And, uh... Yeah, I had no idea that that was the case, and I, I hope he gets either. more things to do in this season, because he is possibly the best actor on the, the cast. I would say he's the best actor, yeah. <laughs> Though that is, that's not a high bar, but I don't want to hold that against <laughs> him. Like, when he's actually given scenes to... Yeah. You know, like, even all of his stupid dumb lines that his character has to give, like, he... Like, acts. Yeah. He gives the shit. Like, obviously, Jacob is clearly the best character, but that's not... That's not even because of the writers, if you know what I mean. Like, they didn't intend for that to happen. Yeah. I get, yeah, the, the show wants us to not think that he's the best character, definitely. Mm, Indiana Jones and... Ah, my hip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he might be looking for, like, a hip replacement and it's in deep in a temple. <laughs> yeah. Don't knock it until you've seen it. It could be really good. Yeah, you never know. The, a Fountain of Youth story would be pretty funny in Indiana Jones. Be so f old. <laughs> <laughs> if I find this relic, I can, I can, I can be a young man again. Please God. <laughs> Please God. <laughs> uh, sucks the Lost of Us two one. Hope this makes you happier. Like I said, man, it's it's not it's the awards that it's whatever. It's, it's it the value of what they represent is is on you know. On, on all of us and how much we talk about how much it means, you know? Like, whatever. What, um... Did, like, what, 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 what won at the Oscars? What got Best Picture uh, last time? It was Parasite, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah see, so yeah, I and guess... It was, and, it was, and it was one of the few times where I was like, Oh, sweet, Which I actually really like, liked that movie. You know... Yeah, I liked it, it was great. Yeah, it was, it was mostly good. I'm alright, but I... I feel like, uh... There were definitely better options, but at this point, I can't complain. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say, like, we... Our response to that was essentially, like, Oh, good! Eh, Something that eh, doesn't, like, suck. make us it doesn't die suck. Uh, Something that's actually a well-made movie, by some measure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of my favorite movies from 2019 weren't nominated at all. I mean, Parasite was one of them, so I was glad that won some things, but, like, there was literally nothing for Uncut Gems, and that movie's amazing. I, I loved that movie. Heard. Yeah, it was great. I meant to see that. I will get to it. Oh, you gotta see it. You're gonna like it. Um, it's one of the few movies where Adam uh, Sandler... So movie isn't rough? Properly. Wait. I, I missed both of what you both said, so... <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so you're saying that Uncut Gems isn't rough? <laughs> I get it. I get it, too. Alright, thank you. <laughs> That's all I need. Uncut Jebs. <laughs> uh, no sequel stuff? No Rose story? No Holdo series? Oh my god, could you imagine a Holdo TV show? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Like, and they have like a young girl to play her and all the heroic acts in her young 
times. You know, that's that would be the movie they make out of spite to the yeah. audience. You'd be like, you don't like it, huh? Hmm. All right. Well, enjoy. <laughs> Um, and as for a sequel series, yeah, everyone was quick to point out. It's like, where's Ryan Johnson's trilogy? What's going on? I thought that was a surefire thing. Yeah, it's weird. Like, you know, there's still a chance it's just it's just coming out later. He's busy with other projects. Yeah, but, he's, uh... yeah he's, he's working hard on Knives Out 2 or whatever. Oh, God. Is that gonna? Is that a thing? Everyone loves Knives Out. It's really annoying. I <laughs> that isn't good. hate that movie. That movie sucks. It, it, it's, uh, it's one of those ones in, in the camp of... Um, so, um, what is the movie? Like Captain Marvel kind of did this too, where like, it convinces people that it's uh, mediocre. It's like it's not even that. Stop! It's really bad. Yeah. Nothing makes fucking sense in that movie. <laughs> oh, Captain Marvel is fucking abysmal. Yeah, and the greatest it, thing it did was convincing people that it was okay. It's like stop saying that. <laughs> it's like oh come on guys, it was a mediocre flick. Like, no. Yeah. I mean, just no, on the fact mediocre alone that you... five out of ten, like need med, mediocre. Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel is like three out of ten. Did you ever the think the fact alone that you have a flawless main character? I'm just like I can't get on board with that. Well, like it's just I don't know which label. movie you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> Captain Marvel. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's funny because Knives no, Out kind of has that too. Yeah, Knives Out is a different kind. Like she makes mistakes, but they reframed as being results of her being so yeah. amazing. You're like ah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> also, that uh, origin story for Captain. Marvel was so fucking stupid and just meaningless. It's hilarious. Like, there's nothing there's nothing to it to like walk away with. Like, like it's just like, oh, there's a, an experimental spaceship engine that exploded and now she has powers. Like, well, okay, great. Like that's it. It's worse than that. She's like uh getting shot down with her newly discovered alien teacher who's like, these aliens are trying to take the thing. And then she crashes and Jude Law's like, hey I'm Jude Law. Uh what's going on? And then she's like, don't come near me. He's like, you, you, it's chill. Like, don't worry. And then she goes, no, fuck you. It blows up the edge. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. What decisions were made here? Like, I don't understand. Right. And through negligence. I think, he did, I think he did attack him in the ship, right? No, yeah, but of course. But you have no idea what the situation is, if you know what I mean. You, you just trust that the mentor is like, you know what? Like, I'm the good one. They're the bad one. And you're like, I don't even... You've been lying to me this whole time. I don't even know what you are. And it's just like, trust me. They're the bad guys. It's like, okay, I'll blow up the engine, I guess. And kill myself. It's like, wow. You really... Yeah. yeah. It's and, so and, and why shallow. this is even the MacGuffin for the film anyway is odd because this is a civilization that moves way faster than the speed of light. But they want to... They really want to get their hands on this light speed engine. You're like, why? Why are you trying to get this technology that's slower than what everyone has I right. understand. It's like it's like anti thematic too uh in terms of like you don't have to have it tie in like your origin your powers you can fall in a vat of toxic waste whatever but a lot of things will try and make the origin of the power relevant in some way to how the character operates this is literally yes. like she shot it and got drenched in goo like what it is the toxic yeah. waste origin but at the same time it has nothing to do with anything, it's just completely random. And then, of course, they um, what do they do? They they she has amnesia. I don't know if they they made her have amnesia. I can't even remember. And then she goes to a different planet, and they replace her blood with pre blood. Captain Marvel is such a fucking weird movie. Like I don't know <laughs> what they were thinking. I don't think it's necessary to have an element of like tragedy specifically, but just something interesting, some kind of depth where you analyze like the origin story and you go oh if that one character hadn't done this thing then then this wouldn't have happened like oh like there's something to that like there's yeah, none um, of that in the captain marvel origin story it's just like thing blew up now she has powers <laughs> and some... she uses powers to kill all enemies that's that's as deep as it goes and it's like really spider-man always being nothing. the he's great power is dropped on him and it's like in the whole message it's like what do you do with great power uh Batman's right. Batman didn't become a superhero separately to the trauma that he experienced as a child. It's kind of where they were going with this, obviously. Like these things are connected. They have um they, they, they fall in and out of each other. Like and of course it's not one hundred percent necessary. It's fascinating to me that they were like, she shot an engine, I don't know. Mm hmm Why do you guys have to have everything explained? <laughs> Stupid. Um Hey, at least the old Republic game is good. 
wait until they remake mm. it. Uh, boom, boom. Hayden is awesome. What are you guys going on about? Uh, Hayden Christensen, the person, is. I have nothing against him whatsoever. The fact that he is coming back to play Vader in a TV show is worrying to me. I don't know why I would have to explain that. Why do? Dude, why I, are y'all not instantly shuddering with horror whenever Disney even whispers the idea of bringing a character back, Vader, especially one like Darth Vader? Vader. Like, come on! You should be terrified. Who knows what they'll do? Dude, I think Hayden Christensen, under different direction, could be pretty good. I like. I don't have, I, any issue I with have him. little. I have little faith in George Lucas as a director alone. I think there's things he's really good at. Look, well, I mean, like, let's be honest. It's not going to be his voice. It's just going to be him in the suit. In which case. It's not really relevant that he's even in it, if that's how they do it. Uh, I didn't know that. Okay. If they're doing, like, flashbacks to the Clone Wars era and Anakin gets to do some stuff, like, I guess, yeah. But, uh, I assume it's all gonna be him in the suit, and I doubt that- I doubt he can pull off a James Earl Jones voice, you know? Just saying, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Fuck, if that's what they're doing, then I wouldn't cast James Hayden Earl Christensen Jones can't even do a James Earl Jones voice True. anymore. He's just too old. Have you heard yes. of Lion King? He's like, he's dying. <sighs> Right. Simba. Simba. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, my concern is not at all with Hayden Christensen, it's with the writing. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I thought Vader wasn't going to get get his foot smooshed, to say the least. Like, that's kind of where I'm going with it. I don't want, it, don't want anything to happen to good old Vader. Mm -hmm. Uh... I initially hoped Hayden would only be in flashbacks, then I realized the writing in those would probably be bad too. Absolutely! Like, why wouldn't you be concerned about that? Guys, the mm. in your head, in your, in your sweet, naive, gentle headspace, the ideal scenario of what you want, it is not going to happen. <laughs> you, must, you must rid yourself of this delusion. Right. Yeah, I honestly see your it as Your dreams like... will never come true. You know, choose pessimism or optimism. It's just like, oh, I just think we should go with the one that just the odds favor. Choose realism. Favor. Yes. Yeah, just go with the one with the odds favor. And how we have times? established a prior, very consistent pattern of Disney's character work, and it mm -hmm. is the doo doo. Yeah. Uh, awesome to see Gundam on here. Not gonna <laughs> lie, the Lucasfilm and Mass Effect announcements made me groan. Oh, Gundam, favorite Gundam series? Oh, I'm sorry, he's already gone. Series. Though. Two. Yeah, we like Series it, 2 of Series Gundam. Is it Bioware handling the new Mass Effect, whatever it is that they announced? I don't know. Like, I, I didn't look at the Game Awards, I didn't look at the into the new Mass Effect announcement, but I'm curious if Bioware is behind it. Um, I think so. I'd imagine so. The company hmm. should be just thankful that it still exists. Right. No clue why EA is keeping the lights on over there. <laughs> like, I'm legitimately <laughs> shocked. Right. Fuck, these hands are bullying Bowser of all people. What's wrong with you? Oh, no. no, 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 no. Uh. The last Starfighter 2 is being made. Some of the original actors seem to be in it. I don't know anything about that. Me neither. My roommate and I played through Andromeda for a bit just because it's so funny, like how bad it is, like hmm. the, like the half-assed way it's all like put together, like the character models and everything and the facial animation. The, the first mission fucking sucks. Like I got so bored. I just, first I mission? Oh yeah, I couldn't play anymore after that. I was, yeah. I I adore Mass Effect one, two, and even three. Yep. And I couldn't get through the fucking opener mission for the new one. I'm like, I, no, I finished it. No, like, I'm done. I'm finished. I don't want to do any more. This is just painful. Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> it's like, what, the, what were they thinking? Holy I'm shit. so disconnected from this world and everything in it. Yeah. I don't care about anything that's happening. None of y'all are interesting. Yeah. And it is big shoes to fill too, because once when yeah. you spend when you spend the original trilogy. Uh, dealing with an enemy like the Reapers, it's hard to top that. Well, you, you just know? gotta be, it's, it's just gotta be a personal story you care about. Figure isn't right. always more, you know, grandiose, JJ. But, no, um, no. A smaller You're... and personal story is the key, and they did, like, that's the worst thing about their game. I agree. Uh, like, I don't, I don't mean the Reapers were a good villain and just the mere fact that they were big. 
but it's a, it's actually a believable scenario to yeah, me. Yeah, they did a good job like representing a... this big existential horrible threat to humanity that actually was shown to be vicious and ruthless and capable of doing it. Like they weren't yeah. stormtroopers. Right. Yeah, so like I like I think they stepped down from that to like like oh a, a bad race of aliens is out for I don't know revenge or something. I don't know what the it's just revenge, like seems uh... so relatively uninteresting. After the Reapers, I'm just like okay, whatever. A bunch of like, aliens. If you don't are, make like, me care off. about individuals or something <laughs> interesting, then you might be out of luck here because I mean, if if you presented me with another. I mean, it's, it's possible. Just give me something to care about. Yes. And you can't do that. Yeah. I agree. Um, and this just says, thank God I'm getting drunk tonight. Hey. Yeah, boy. The current state of humanity makes me want to vomit. I'm going to make my own civilization with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the blackjack. Yeah. That's some um, classic banditisms right there. Classic hookers. Do you think it's a form of fighting the patriarchy that Peach hits Mario with a pan? <laughs> yeah, it's about like, oh, you want me to get in the kitchen, huh? Well, here's your you. kitchen. Right. It's like I use this pan to serve food to the man, but now like, get I'm, served. Now I'm. Now it's a weapon. Yeah. Speaking of which, I also hit him with a tennis racket. Oh. Did she scream like a woman hitting a ball with a tennis racket? <laughs> that was always so weird when I was a kid watching that. I was like, why are they grunting yeah. so Ugh, I was like, are they in pain? Did, <sighs> do they need help? Why is no one helping them? How come everyone's watching the torture session continue? I mean, if you close your eyes, it's kind of like watching a BBC Earth documentary on birds. It's If you close your eyes, it's like <laughs> porn. Really slow, but very deliberate quick thrusts after long intervals. <laughs> <laughs> And then everyone claps politely. And then everyone yeah. claps. Yeah, that's cool. Good form. Good form, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> they already had a Star Wars, Star Wars droid series in 1985. Well, have they got a Star Wars droid series with Disney money and values and writing? I don't think so. Mm, it's going to be cute. It's going to be super cute. They're going to destroy the world with cuteness. <laughs> we have to stop them. Oh. Uh, Ahsoka is a lame character. Imagine having a normal amount of chromosomes and saying that unironically. She is lame. I mean, Rags is strictly talking about the episode he saw her in. Yeah, I've only seen her in this episode, and she was dull and boring. We know basically no, we know basically nothing about her, what she cares about, what she wants, what she's doing. Her actress was incredibly dull. There's nothing there to latch onto or be interested in. She's doing everything that every character is doing, which is being dull. I don't care. I don't know what anybody cares about. <laughs> God, not not especially not the protagonist. No. I would love to get Mando's opinions on like anything. What a slog. Is, is Ahsoka like a, a side character that was first introduced she's in the, Mando? She's the darling waifu of the new Star Wars shit. She was in like the Clone Wars and stuff. Oh, okay. Um. Oh wait, it wasn't even you that said it. It was someone else. <laughs> but, but there you go. You zoned it anyway. I mean, yeah, I, uh, like, I'll be honest, guys, like, uh, going straight from that episode, all she does is really kill people and talk a bit about the Jedi. Um, I don't know why that would be considered, you know, anything beyond just, wow. like, yeah, she does that, okay. Yeah, it's like, okay, yes. Mm-hmm. You go, girl. Um, in the introduction to the investor call, they touted how they were following not just what makes money, but what is popular by social media metrics. They need to l toss those social media metrics. I mean, yeah, that sounds... No shit, yeah. It, it leads you to some conclusions that are a little bit... Yeah. Um, imagine defending Ahsoka. Oh, look at that. We got a war in the Super Chats once again. I'm saying that I... Maybe she's better in the show? Almost certainly she I, is. I'd, I'd assume, yeah, she has to be. Yeah, I would assume that almost certainly she is better in the show, but, um... Yeah, in the move I say in the show as if they're both not shows. <laughs> but, um... I'm sure, I'm sure she's better in the Clone Wars, because in The Mandalorian, she is a waste of my fucking time. Whoa, 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 you saw her slice down a whole bunch of people, though. Yeah, that must have been really tough. 
<laughs> against those people who are fucking moronic. <laughs> like, he must have been real hot. <laughs> um, been a while, but I'm back live, boys. Hello. Don't she, she was 90 de 90... Is that supposed to be degrees? 90 degree assa character assassinated in Mando? Okay, I, so I like a quarter of the way assassinated, or <laughs> she was ninety sure degrees really assassinated. Yeah, like you have to go all the way around the horn to assassinate the character. Like it's a bar that fills up, so you're a quarter of the way there. If they if they're honestly saying she was ninety percent assassinated, it's like damn. I, that's I've not heard that take from any people at all. I guess that she was ninety degree character assass assassinated, not like a one eighty degree loop. I'm like, oh okay. Oh right, right. I don't know why they assassinated her character because she didn't have one. I don't, yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like something... what you see her do in the episode mostly would follow a lot of people's characters, because she just really, she just liberates a town, and she's looking for information on Thrawn. It's like, okay. I haven't seen the second season yet, but I feel like that series, The Mandalorian, needs a stronger main antagonist. Because I it... like that Giancarlo Esposito, but shows keep casting him as this, like, pseudo Gus Fring. He's getting and, Charles the... danced. He's just... He's around. They don't actually right. do anything with him. Yeah, like they they cast him in hoping to like capture that Gus Fring energy, but the writing isn't there. So all he does is just stand there, looking like a badass, but he doesn't actually like. He doesn't look like a badass suit. though. Mm -hmm. he's, re he's relying on the Gus Fring energy genuinely. When people think right. of him as badass, they're thinking about Gus Fring. Yes. Like, the, the writing isn't there sus to substantiate his antagonistic character, whatever he's playing. And, like, in Breaking Bad, it was there. In every other case, including Mandalorian, it's not there. And he's just there to basically stand there and look like a bad guy. Yeah, With that honestly, kind of, like, deadpan expression that he does. Uh, which we... he does fine. That, But, like, the writing, the writing needs work. Yeah. Uh... The only small minority worth listening to is Beetlejuice. He would save Star Wars once and for all. Yeah, he would. He knows what works yeah. in movies, you know? He'll, he'll nail it. Um, he said, uh, I don't, I'm not sure, I can't remember what this is a response to. I can imagine it, I don't wear a helmet everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I can't remember what that's, uh, that's a response to. So. I do not know either. Uh, huge fan of Gundam, love his dry and cynical humor, uh, the use of Wind City heat clips in his older vids. Yeah, yeah Gundam's uh, he was, he was a good guest. We'll have him back some point, assuming he wants to be tortured again. It's really up to him. <laughs> uh, morality is a fiction, there is only indifference. Through anger I gain dark side powers, through loopholes I keep light side powers. Uh, through edginess, my mediocrity is glossed over. The Force makes me special. The Code of the Grey Jedi. <laughs> I can't comment on any of that, but all right. <laughs> uh, Ahsoka's Jedi Apprentice that's overpowered. I, I don't know if people are having a conversation in these Super Chats that don't even include this. Like, I'm starting to get lost. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> We're going to pay you just so we can, you know, argue with each other. Have our own debate. Yeah. You don't need to weigh in, we'll just have it here. I guess this- did she have an apprentice that is overpowered, maybe, in like, one of the shows? I don't know. Um... Through... oh yeah. Hey Mola, I'm only up to the first anniversary, but I just wanted to say thank you for being a longman. I wouldn't survive my retail job without you guys. Also, hi Rags. Hi there! And Jay, watch Lord of the Rings, you massive. One day, you will. And uh... Yeah, good to hear. Good to hear. You got fucking. You got like a year and a third still to go if you're on the first anniversary. Lots of crazy episodes to go through. And, uh, you Your know. wild ride never ends. Mm -hmm. Like keeping people company in their retail jobs because retail can be a nightmare. Uh, Disney's gonna take over the world. Like, eh, maybe. Just, uh, I think we'll know when they start calling theaters Disney's. That's when they're like, uh oh. <laughs> Little do you know, Disney is actually a machination of Diabito. It is growing in size to become his perfect creation. He is diabolical. I mean, 
Looks like we'll just have to keep criticizing it to hopefully stop him, but if Diabetes is successful, then hopefully they'll make movies about it. Yeah, we can only hope. Dude, you're the best movie critic on YouTube that you have Dagkiller or Gundam within a week that you've had on Shad? Oh, just shut up and take my buddy. Oh, yeah, boy. We get the best guests on EFAP, all right? Bar none. So uh, anyone you think is great and hasn't been on yet, they're on the way, okay? gonna happen. Um, but yeah, glad you're having fun with it. Uh, uh, Soviet Womble has entered the video essay arena and he's already showed signs of long. I've heard him reference Mola's vids a few times before. Uh, I don't know. If, I think I know that name. Yeah, I, um... Fuck, what's the series called that he makes? Um... Come in my bum. <laughs> not... Yes, <laughs> but I was thinking of the other one. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I have known his name for fucking ages. Friends of mine, uh... What is it? Someone in chat probably knows. It's like, um... He's doing a series, like, forever on different, uh... Like, comedy videos and stuff. I'm not sure, like, CSGO, I think. Um... But yeah, you know, I'll, uh... See if maybe he wants to call an sometime. Have a little chat. But the idea that he's into the video essay arena? Oh. So much competition. Can he survive? Do, do, do. Why is Fan Four stick on their collage, collage twice? Uh, they ran out of spaces. So they thought they'd repeat their best <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no one's gonna notice. Good news, everyone. The new season of Batwoman just dropped. I think you mean the trailer, because if the new season was out, we'd be scrambling. <laughs> uh, Is Disney's this season three they're on now? No, uh, two. It's on its way in uh, the mid-January. Oh, okay. Stuff. But it's like it's like an old TV show where they have like how many episodes was it in season one? Twenty in season one, but they're supposed to be twenty-two. Yeah. Yeah, Oops. that's like some old-school '90s television kind of yeah, stuff man. right there. The best kind. You get so much more character. <laughs> Like, Batwoman is a woman I truly understand. She's, like, one of the worst superheroes in the history of just anything. It's, it's amazing to watch. <laughs> Do you know, um, uh, I'm assuming you haven't watched it, John? No, um, I haven't. Is it, she, um, is it still Barbara Gore? Like, in the no, show? No, no, it's Kate Kane. Uh, okay. She... She's, she's apparently the comic book Batwoman as well, right? There's like a couple of them or whatever, I don't know. The important thing is, in the show, she does the thing, right? Which happens with a lot of superhero arcs where they don't want to kill anyone, but they kill someone. So how do they yes. deal with this? And she goes right. on a bit of an existential crisis. She's like, oh my god, it's so bad, what have I done? And um, I think she does it for an episode, and she even has like PTSD. And then at the end of the episode, um, because Batman has left this city, by the way. Her, uh, her trusty pal is like, hey, you know, Batman fucked up too, so it's okay. Right, okay. And uh, it's all cured. <laughs> it, it, it so many people off. Oh, like, I guess I'll me. just kill everyone now. It, it, it pissed people off because it was like, yeah, Batman killed, so you can. It's like, there's so yeah. much wrong with what you just said. <laughs> I don't even know what <laughs> just hey, this other person murdered somebody, so you can do it. Oh. I'm glad she figured that out. Oh. I wonder if Peach I, is going to be able to do it. I still don't know how they're going to explain the cast change, like, in the story. Well, she's a different it's character. Like, it's, a, it's a black woman now who just decided to take the mantle, I guess. Yep. <laughs> who's who's also a billionaire. I don't know how it worked. Uh, I guess she's just going to take all of Kate Kane's shit. Okay. That's just, why not? Kate Kane stole it all from Bruce, so... Right. Kinda, it's kinda weird. The, the, the... Did, did she, she stole it from Bruce Wayne? Yep. That's, that's how, that's the canon? Okay, weird. We've got a whole series for Batwoman. <laughs> you should check it out. <laughs> I gotta check this show out. I've been meaning to. I heard it was, I mean, you guys told me it was hilarious schlock. I love it that. Was hilarious the best bad. kind. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you, Mola, for your sequel trilogy analysis. Analyses? Uh, 
where something goes wrong is the best opportunity to understand how it goes right. These movies are quite the wellspring to learn from. Absolutely. Why I like throwing in a bunch of references to things where I'm like, hey, they try to do this in another thing that was actually pretty neat. What's the difference? And how do we, you know, avoid pooping on everything in future? That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Disney reveal of new shows is a lineup of what they're going to ruin next. I'm dreading the Ahsoka series. Uh, only one I'm excited for is the Bad Batch. There you go. Um, we'll probably check out the Ahsoka series. I'm assuming it's going to be Mandalorian, but she's the main character, and so it might actually be more entertaining. Because he's not a character, really. And she is. And she has lightsabers, so you know. They go great. Um, yeah, who knows? Batwoman Season 2 reaction when? Also, hi, Rex. Hey there! Oh, uh, I don't think we're doing a trailer reaction for Batwoman. Um, no, I kind of want to go in go fresh. I'm going to go in right into Episode 1. We'll get that to you as soon as we can, as soon as it comes out. I'm hoping to get Jay Longbone and Az on for that as well. Yeah, they, they are Batwoman aficionados, you yeah? <laughs> know? Mm -hmm. How many of these shows will get cancelled? Um, honestly, I have no idea if if the fact that they've announced all of them, them means in time. That... Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know about Mandalorian. I really do wonder how many seasons they're gonna do that for. Like, um, I also think that there's a good chance they'll kill Mandalorian and have um, Boba be the main character, and they can keep the name, hmm. which I'm okay with. That'd that be interesting. Yeah. Boba is infinitely more interesting than Mando. Uh, good news, everyone. The new season of Batwoman just dropped. Wow, a lot of people wanted to tell us this. <laughs> it's like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> a lot of people. As if you guys wouldn't be, you know, right up to date with all we Batwoman run, news. We run the most passionate <laughs> fan base for Batwoman on the internet, okay? So I think we would be aware of it, guys. Come on. <laughs> We're so passionate, we don't want spoilers from trailers. Who has that kind of dedication? No one. That's who. Uh, I think Disney sees shows as less risk. People tend to have lower standards for shows over movies, especially shows that are live action. Lower standards and going the shotgun method. Yeah, a, a show's less risky, I guess, overall. I think uh, a little bit. Um, but I don't think you can, like, I don't think you can make quite as much money off of a show mm. as you can a movie. You know what I mean? Because with, you know, like The Force Awakens, that, that made like, what, two billion dollars? Like, I don't know, it's hard to tell how much money Mando has made Disney. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you have to look at Disney Plus subscriptions and how much of them are because of Mando, and I'm sure it's made them quite a lot, but... I think, you know, with a show, it's less risk and less reward uh, in terms of money. Uh, live action Wally is a perfect idea. With all the Americans you'd have to hire, our economy will stabilize itself. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, how many of these shows will get cancelled? Oh, wait. Uh, I read that one. Um, armor is oppressive. Wear a mask instead. But will the mask deflect blast bolts? <laughs> I don't know. It will if Mando's wearing it. <laughs> They'll charge mask. face first into every battle. <laughs> well, if Mando's wearing it, it'll never hit the mask. It'll hit all of the armor he's wearing. If Mando had just one knee pad made of Beskar, <laughs> every one of the shots would hit his kneecap. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars parody movie about an army of Palpatines. You say that like it's not a possibility from what we've seen in Mando already. <laughs> <laughs> Disney will do it. Just give him time. The Palpatine's back. Like, where is he? It's like, not he, them. <laughs> <laughs> like that Agent Palpatine. Smith fight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy The Palpatines fuck. are back and they're cuter than ever. The Cyberpunk user score is 2.6? Oh. I know. I was blown away by that. I can't believe. Dang. Well, actually, no. I did hear soul releases. Specifically, the earlier gen ones are complete ass. Like, the frame rate is like a base. Like, like most of the time, it's like. You're lucky if it runs at 20 frames per second. Like, it's unacceptably bad, like the first-gen console releases. Apparently, it's uh, only yeah. remotely I, playable yeah. on PC. 
I mean, again, this is after 50 or 4,200 ratings, and it is, it seems to be an unplayable, low Damn, frame dude. rate, buggy nightmare that looks like shit. I feel right. bad because my version, I've not discovered anything yet, and I'm like, oh, what's, did I just, did I just win the lottery or some shit? Because it happens. Mm -hmm. There's been other games that this has happened with. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm not playing on a poopy console. Um, the uh, I saw Cosmo tweeting out about how his, the PS4 version, I think, was like utter garbage, and then they told him that um, got to, he's got to use the PC version, and then he said that he felt the same way when he swapped to it. Not saying that Cosmonaut is someone that we like to go by, but uh, I'm interested. I really need to play this game. We need to do an EFAP on it. That's that's my perspective. Got to get playing this. I shit. think that is yeah. Jump into the cultural zeitgeist. Well, I have a feeling it was the earlier console of it were just so lazily handled where the, like it obviously it wasn't optimized they were just like they just unchecked a bunch of things like okay take off ray tracing put the resolution at 720 or whatever mm. and then it, hopefully it runs well and then and they put it out and it does it like to the point where like people are unanimously complaining about super low frame rates do you guys think that it's, um if it let's let's pretend a wizard is like hey i know all the answers to this you can trust me okay um if they were to delay, it would be perfectly fixed in four months. Do you think that would be worth delaying? Yes. Yeah. Even after all the delays they've done? Like, I'm not asking yes. from a perspective of um, utility, because I think the answer it answers itself, but just, uh, is it... If the game came out in a very, very good state, people would quickly forget how long they waited for it. Yeah, that's yes, kind of I agree Now, with that. what people do is they think, we waited this long and it has this many problems, Mm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If you I mean, delayed think, it this much already, just like just make it good and then put it out. It's been what yeah. five years since Witcher Three, something like that. Yeah. Like people, like once you get to that point, just take the time you need. Yeah. Totally. People will forget the wait once they sit down with a game and they enjoy it immensely. Yeah. But you put, the you put out a bad game. Accent accentuated if it's bad. Right. People uh, will never agree. forget a bad game. If you put out a bad game, it's just like, well, that was bad, and then that'll go down in history as the bad game. <laughs> like, you well, don't want that. This is the thing, just man. Take, I'm, the, I'm take the time you need to put out something quality. I'm expecting a well. lot of long videos about Cyberpunk's terribleness now. At least based on that uh, initial number, because I don't know yet. I don't know if that's um, a bit of a, like, a you know, so this is funny. Uh, there was, a, like, a bomb of low ratings for The Boys Season 2. This is before Rangs and I had seen any of it, and so we're like, oh, wow, you know, is it, is, it, is it bad? And it's like, no, 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 it's really good. It's just that it was released on a schedule that people didn't like. In, instead of it all at once, it was, like, three episodes at once and then weekly. And I was like, oh. That's a pathetic fucking reason to downvote it. Jesus Christ, like, really? Yeah. And then I watched it, and I was like, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, so, I have mixed feelings about these ratings now. I'm torn on getting it, but I feel like if you're playing it on PC, and you have, like, a, like a high-end GPU, like, 1080, 10-something 10, 10 NVIDIA card, and you get the latest drivers, and you get the patch or whatever, it'll probably run okay. If, like there'll probably be some bugs where it's just like that looks fucking weird and then you reload your save or whatever and then it goes away like I feel like that'll be like that's that's usually what you'll expect where it's it's I don't think it's as quite as terrible the PC release as people are making it out to be yeah the PC is really is rated at a 6.6 .6 right now mm, right so there's still definitely issues and I've heard the suggested specs are optimistic but um, I don't know. I'll uh, I'll see for myself when I start playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be interesting to talk about. Uh, armor is a press. It's Star Wars parody movie. Oh yeah, Gundam. You and Efab are hands down my favorite content creators. I had no idea y'all were doing this today. Lucky me. Wish you guys the best. Hey, hope you had fun with it. I think it was a good one. That video was perfectly suitable for what we do. <laughs> Uh, Happy to oblige. Yeah. Hey, you guys, finally watching a live EFAP while I'm not driving the spiders. Wait, 
we need a comma there. <laughs> <laughs> um, driving. The spiders were right. It's good to see Gundam here, by the way. Dude, your voice still sounds like a Fraggle Rock character. I'll see if your <laughs> poked out brain remembers he does that. Have, he does have quite the voice. Uh, anyway, guys, your massives. Bye. So true. And oh. uh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I hope he does actually like voice over uh, some of those Mando scenes. That could be fun. Oh, dude, it'd be great. You could. His voice <laughs> is kind of hilarious. Like for yeah, yeah. <laughs> just coming across <laughs> it, just like eh. <laughs> 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 Fucking stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just constantly talking to him. So his inner monologue. Like, wonder what I'm gonna have for dinner. Should I That's have it. blue pancakes or should I have blue? <laughs> Burgers. This is Maybe I can have a nice him. blue sirloin and some blue fries, a blue potato. Oh. That scene where he's trying to instruct Baby Yoda how to fix his ship, oh but in gosh. Gundam's voice. <laughs> hey, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just write some new lines for it, too. Did you just fry my ship? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat you. You'll be, uh, yeah, you should, you should look into it. Or someone could just take lines from him in different videos and stuff and try That's and make true. it work. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Um, Yo Gundam, what's your favorite Star Wars EU content non-Disney? I started reading Here to the Empire, and it's already one of my favorites. I love Thrawn as a villain, and it's what Episode 7 should have been. Um, well, we used to say Star Wars EU. Now we say Star Wars EW. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Star Wars, no. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know if he knows uh, or has consumed like EU stuff, but um, he seemed to know some stuff about his Star Wars. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, we can't find out the answer. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see Thrawn turn up in Mandalorian. Uh, really wondering how fans will react to it, and then like I wonder if it'll just be pure love or if it'll be like, no, you ruined him. Rags, when are you coming back, man? Any plans for new videos? Yes, I've been working on a Mando review. It's going to be very, very big. It'll be the most comprehensive review on the first season of Mandalorian on the internet. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work, good sirs. I know you have a long list of potential guests, and you don't know when they might be available, but there are, are there any plans to get uh, Literature Devil, Grinka, fucking hell, Literature Devil, Drinker and or Shad back also high ranks. Hi. Um, we actually yes. spoke to Shad. Was it yesterday? A couple days ago. It yeah. was. It was. It was two, three days ago. Touching base on Mandalorian. He's gonna join us tomorrow when we watch the next episode and probably will for the last yeah. one. And then after Great. that, we'll probably. I don't know what our plans are for um an EFAP relating to Mando season two yet. We might do one and just go over the season. It wouldn't be as long as um when we did before because obviously we have the minis. But uh, if we were to do that, we'd probably have chat on, have a chat about it, you know. Um, as for Drinker, when was the last time Drinker came on? I can't remember. But you know, we'll, we'll 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 grab him up at some point, yeah. And Literature Devil was on for um, Little Hope, which was something. Kind of feel bad putting him through that game. Nobody should have to. That if people fun. people join that. these streams of ours and they expect to enjoy themselves and have a good time, <laughs> and eventually you're just gonna have to let them live with their assumptions. Like we don't make any, <laughs> we, we don't. We're not gonna tell people they're gonna enjoy themselves. We we're, we don't disillusion folks before they join. They expect like, yeah, to have fun. And it's like, why would you expect something like that? It's all terrible. Fools. So yeah, all three of them coming back to the cinema near you. I'm sure. Um, I have Boba's helmet right here. His head is still in it. Is that a disqualifier? I I feel like you might get in some trouble in terms of the smell and um, mm. questions of whose head that was and what did you do to them sort of thing. But no, yeah, overall, people will still pay for that prop, I think. <laughs> to be honest, I don't care. I could go on about it all day. The duality of a Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking why, Fox? Why must you beat me up? Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy's neck and head look weird. Kind of looks like it is floating. Maybe because of the dark background in her outfit. I thought they were going to make a joke like maybe because of her 
dark energy or, or like weird looking floaty <laughs> amorphous difficult to define unpredictable kathleen kennedy's appearance in the star wars franchise have a lot in common yes uh disney was awful to the crochet community when there wasn't baby yoda merch they went after people for selling anything related to him which they have not done for any other properties high ranks ah there that doesn't surprise me because, if I remember the story correctly, for some reason they had no idea that Baby Yoda was merchandisable. Which is like, you're Disney. You merchandise everything. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. I don't know how they didn't see that coming. That's crazy. It just, yeah, it surprises me to this day. And I guess they were pissed that other people were selling shit before they'd sorted it out. It's like, well... I don't know. The market, you know, supply and demand, that's how it goes. Oh, I gotta fight two again? God damn it. For the first time in like four or five years, people finally actually want Star Wars merch. Mm. And they weren't ready for it. Um, I'm more excited for the Sonic show than anything Star Wars. What the hell is going on? I didn't even know that there was a Sonic show. I didn't know show. there was a Sonic show. There's I'm a sure Sonic show? Apparently. I didn't know that. I'm sure it'll be great. Is this CGI? Is this 2D animation? Uh... I wonder if it, yeah, is it like the movie or, yeah, no idea. Suppose we'll find out. I love the Saturday morning cartoon. Why do the, that's the move I was looking for, I think. Oh, jeez. The hands in this game get really touchy. I don't know. The hands get really touchy. Yeah. Hands are touchy, generally. Yeah, but really touchy. <laughs> you don't want that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Walt Disney Co. have never been about originality. All of their greatest hits are sanitized extractions of classic folk and fairy tales. Okay, but if you have someone on one hand complaining that they have taken everything that made those stories what they are, then I guess they made their own shit, didn't they? Mm. Like, you, as much as you can say, oh, well, you know, it, it didn't come from a completely original place. It's like, I don't know. It seems like if you adapt a story and you can remove significant chunks and add new chunks in, uh, you've created something. Uh, to yeah, be honest I would with say you, there's significant work involved in adapting something effectively. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's like, you got to be careful, guys. Like, uh, we're talking, this is kind of everything. Like, everything comes from lots of different places in some way. Yes, everything's derivative. Just derivative. Which isn't a bad thing, right? No. Create some awesome stuff when you clash two things together. But like Star Wars, for example. It's like a huge collection of all different inspirations. Yeah. And, and has inspired a lot of great things that yeah. are not Star Wars. I uh, find it funny that Lucasfilm was placed next to National Geographic and all the other shows were the main event. Shows how important they are. Um, yeah, I, I was confused by the National Geographic thing. I was like, I didn't even know that that was like this. Is it like a major industry sort of <laughs> thing? Is it is a lot of people invested in what National Geographic is up to, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. National Geographic. Home of saggy boobies. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Home of the saggy boobies. Da, 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 da. Never very happy to see that. Oh, science. <laughs> I'm throwing eggs at a hand. Name one other property that allows you to do this. Hmm. Throw hands? Throw eggs at a hand. Oh. I don't know. That's actually a cool way to finish it off. Uh, um, why are you going to do it on EFAB 11166? Nothing more specif specified than that. I'm assuming it's the Plinket reference. That always happens with the 166 thing. Uh, recently watched Inglorious Bastards, and it bothers me so much that in Tavern Scene, the Gestapo didn't recognize Hugo, you know, the infamous Gestapo killer, and yet notices little things like accents and hand gestures. Well, what if he, if he doesn't know his face? He just knows about a guy who's an infamous... Infamous... Infamous it's, Gestapo killer. I think it's plausible that he wouldn't be familiar with that particular person. Most of the like, people you know of, you probably can't remember what they look like, I bet. Hand, something like hand gestures are much more broad and cultural. 
yeah, I think it's a, like, a nice way to, um... It's kind of like if, if someone claims to be a fan of something, but they get a particular detail wrong in such a way that you're like, wait, you should know that. Like, that's the kind of thing that you'd have to know. Right. You're like, oh, who's who, the who's who's Green Mario? And you're like, uh, Luigi. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like you've played all of the Mario games and you love them and you couldn't remember Luigi. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, well, if they're like, yeah, he's, it's not like he's really front and center. You're like, I... <laughs> and then you expose them for the fraud that they are. Uh, top 10 highest grossing franchises. Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Winnie the Pooh, Mickey Mouse, Star Wars, Anpin Man, Disney Princess, Shonen Jump, Mario, MCU. Uh, didn't know that was the case, if it is, but alright. Sure. <laughs> um, for some reason, I imagine a Predator sitcom would be like that Heil Honey, I'm Home Hitler show. <laughs> <laughs> I was always more of a fan of Cosby and Hitler myself. <laughs> So. What a what a crazy pair of roommates mm -hmm. <laughs> having to share an apartment. <laughs> um, this is the room where Rainbow Bright, a victim of the mob, hit a la Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. Uh, which room did that? Where did that come up in the in the video? Was, I don't one? think it did. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it was a joke. I'm not sure. I am struggling to follow. Feels bad now. Hi, Rags. Your opinion on hey. WH Darktide EFAP Gaming? Warhammer Darktide? Well, we know basically nothing about it. We know very little. Uh, we just recently got a gameplay trailer that was... It pretty much looked like Vermintide in Warhammer 40k, which is a good thing. I think, they, I think that, especially with Fat Shark, stick to what you know because you do it well. Um, it looks pretty good, as do many things in trailers, so I am, it's probably the one game I'm actually excited about, uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be good. All right, fingers and, crossed. um, yeah, I guess, we're hoping for EFAP gaming could work, who knows? I, it could, yeah, it absolutely could, um, ping might be an issue, but, uh, I think, uh, I'll be alright. Because chances are, we, because of the way the leveling and the power and stuff works. However, um, I would, I hopefully I'll get maybe access to the um, like alpha closed stuff. Because I know one of the guys from Fat Shark, and uh, I'm on like a, a list of theirs. Because I was very positive about Vermintide one and two, and I'd made videos about them, complaints too, but videos about them as well. So I, so we'll see. Hopefully, and we'll see if the game launches in a decent state. So, who knows? Um, I don't know how to put this into words, but isn't X-Men supposed to define the mutant race and not the literal gender of men? Praise Nostalgia Critic. Yeah, um, it's just that it's clear that there's that's something that poke, they can poke at. Like, X-Men? Don't you think that's problematic? It's like, no. It's like, well, <laughs> it might just be. Um... Glad to see you here, Gundam. When's the puppet crossover with Voxus? Oh, hey, they should totally do that. Voxus is a legend. Uh, hi, hi there, it's Randy the Goblin. I'm back to tell you about all the benefits of giving me gold ingots. This video oh, may give goodness, you cancer. Oh my goodness, Randy the Goblin. This video oh my give, goodness. He's a fucking legend, get Randy the Goblin. He's though. back, he's <laughs> back. <laughs> this video may give you cancer, but for 10 gold ingots, you can get the EFAP disease prevention perk. Like, ah. So, in the future, because this has obviously not been sorted out yet, we will be offering anti-cancer packs that you can purchase as DLC. Oh, Get wow. excited, I suppose. You can take them before each EFAP. So, yeah. <laughs> in preparation for each new video. You wouldn't want to get in trouble with, e with cancer. Nobody likes cancer. <laughs> we don't want Gundam, we want Billy. Oh my god. That's probably a reference that I'm unaware of. Um, Rags, why do you keep pretending like Xmas is your favorite when we all know it's actually Swalloween? 
Uh, first off, I I don't know anything about. I'm not an ornithologist. I have no idea what swallowing's about. If that's some, I know turkeys are generally like the Thanksgiving thing. So I I don't know anything about them. It's lost on me. I'm a Christmas guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's too much good about it. So a very strange comment to make. I, I, have, I have really nothing more else to add to that. Then uh, they end with oh and hi. Oh, hi. And repeal the NFA. Yeah, they could be. Uh, they could do better. That's for sure. Uh, hi, Rags. Hey there. Are you going to live in the United Republic States of America after the secession? Uh, I'm in Arkansas, so I guess we'll find out. Mm. Fucking when enemies heal in this game, I find it illegal. Not cool. Someone give Gundam a hug. Yeah, he was just, you know, he was, he was just getting out that story, and I just believe that Disney should pick it up. We should make yeah, he was out. lying on that, like, <laughs> therapist couch, telling us all about his childhood. <laughs> I mean, how did that make you feel, Gundam? Uh, watch Killer Bean forever, you massives. Oh, perhaps, we'll watch it once, but, one like, calm down. <laughs> Yeah, like, watching the same thing forever, I mean, you're talking about hell at that point. There's a Star Santa Wars joke in hot? there somewhere. Uh, well, do I find sign and Santa outfits hot? Well, if you're not outside in the snow, you're probably going to be sweating up a storm in there, so I'd say so. Well, that looks like a thick old, thick outfit, you know? <laughs> thick I'm curious. Old, thick Nick. I'm Thick with I'm curious thick what Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I want to know what massive means in as it pertains to you guys. Is that just the nickname for like or, or, uh, fans? Or I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. I mean, I yeah, I want to know. So it's one of I those things where know. you have to listen to how it's used and you will much okay. like Tism and you will start to understand. He's got the blues, no context clues. Right. Because you know what? That's kind of what words are these days. Just You have to just kind of listen to how the people are using them. So is, it, is the joke is that it's an adjective for an unknown descriptor? Like a massive something? Kind of like I accidentally the whole thing? That kind I'm of joke? Listen to this guy. No, look I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. But no, you won't let me. <laughs> We're not let me in. You. We're not stopping you from figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. You are free to speculate, but no one will provide the answer. <laughs> Thick Nick. Oh boy, he's oh, that jolly old elf. He's oh man, saying his bag of goodies. Just, just looking yeah, plump this know, year. When he's... All those cookies and milk. That's who. <laughs> <laughs> Santa's Santa's got a present for me. It looks like. Can't wait for him to come down my chimney. Oh no. Uh, hello, Matthew. I, I could use I could use a stocking stuffer. <laughs> Is there any more? Or... <laughs> huh? <laughs> I just I didn't want to interrupt the train. Nothing. I just I just, just can't wait to see his jingle balls. <laughs> so, uh, hello, massives. Have you gentlemen been acquainted with the film Barry Lyndon? Solidly written and beautifully crafted, high ranks. Yes. Oh, hi. That movie's great. Have you seen it? I have not no, seen it. No, I have not. It's a Stanley Kubrick film. It's a period piece. It's good. Sweet. Uh, did you all see that Aiden had an ad for Raid Shadow Legends in her video? I mean... For the newest one? I haven't watched her newest video. If she did, then, well, shame on her, but... Uh, a lot of people do it. It's not like a big deal, but it's like... Eh, uh, hey, Fappers, check out Lord of the Beans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you get a super chat with a recommendation. You're like, you know what? That's fine that you said that. That's fair enough. I'd watch Lord of the Beans. I yeah. mean, um, Bill was a Pinto, right? I I understood that reference. Thank you. But, I knew uh, there's a reason I kept you around. Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, fucking, that was my Clefairy, you asshole. Stole it. Who would you guys vote for? An ape or a fox? Fox. Do you really think so? I feel like an ape would fuck How big fox. is the 
Wait, yeah. when well, you said vote for, you you didn't you didn't give any metrics or anything like that. Oh, for president. Which one to run the country? Yeah. To which one would which one would beat the shit out of the other? <laughs> I mean, no. Which one would yeah, run the country have... better, an ape or a fox? Which would run across the country better, an ape or a fox? The fox. I mean, I like I like apes' foreign policy better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like... Foxes got a better health care plan. Mm -hmm. A starship that shoots lasers. <laughs> However, the ape has a rap song every episode, so it's pretty cool. It's like what you get. I don't actually know one. the Donkey Kong rap, but I know there is one, so it's uh that's pretty cool to have a president who also raps. Oh, the ape one. Excellent. Uh, on behalf of all Chrisnoids, here's some eggnog money from uh, for its a Gundam. Oh well. Does It's a Gundam we, consume eggnog? I don't know. Be better. Eggnog's fucking great. I love eggnog. It's fantastic. Um, Rags, it's been two years and 99 faps. What the hell were you do? What the hell were you on during the Everything Great About TLJ video? Uh, episode 15 slash 16. By the way, I lost the Movie Bob challenge with my friend last week. He threw up in 40 minutes. Oh, damn, really? I don't it's sure. bad enough you have to taste McDonald's twice. Hmm. What the hell were you on during the Everything Great About TLJ video in episode 15, 16? I don't know what they mean by that. Pure they ha probably pure hatred. Revulsion. Hmm. Disgust. But yeah, sorry about that friend, you know. You shouldn't be engaging in that kind of challenge without supervision and basically... That's a lot of food. Mm. Like, when you bought that, when you carried the bag back to your car, like, surely you knew what you were about to do, right? Oh, because maybe they're saying, like, you would... You sounded like you were drugged out on that episode or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe... Maybe you had... Oh, I was... I was on the... I was on the, um... You know, this is public. I don't want to incriminate myself. Not that I did anything that would incriminate me, but... You know how it is. Mm -hmm. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Gotta be careful. Dude, there's something wonderful about uh, Donkey Kong fucking, like, giving a right hook to a Jigglypuff that's giant and it just blasting off the stage and dying. <laughs> wonderful. It's perfect content. Uh, nothing says Merry Christmas like a turd under the Christmas tree. Yeah, it's, you know, everyone has different Christmases, right? Man, if I had a nickel for every time I said that. Yep. Fuck you, Mario. Donkey Kong Fuck can do you, just Mario fine without Kill. you. Do you remember how in Mario Party 4, Donkey Kong was playable, and then in Donkey Kong uh, Mario Party 5, he was just like an NPC? What the hell? I feel like he must have done something yeah. at like, Nintendo. Wait, he must have tweeted something. <laughs> like one of his games did better than a Mario one. He was like, this is pretty neat. It looks like uh, there's a new face at Nintendo. And they were like, wow. I just announced that shit. His agent was like, why did you tweet? Oh, that's gotta be a huge new thing for, like, agents of famous people. Like, keeping an eye on their Twitter accounts. Like, please don't say anything these days. Just anything at all. Yep. And then I learned it, the other day that you you get banned off Twitter for saying the R word. You can? somebody. Yeah, apparently. Wow. I mean... Yeah. I'm just I, I say that word all the time in my well, fucking videos. Yeah, so do we, if if I were to ever to use that word, satiric Twitter, I guess I... I don't even... I feel like I've used it in a tweet recent, actually. I would have stopped doing that then. Last thing I need is to lose that account. Thanks, Twitter. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. Gundam on EFAP. Never thought I'd see the day. Well, you did. Have you guys watched Just Right's video on Mulan? It's actually pretty good. One of the best, including Critical Drinker and JX's videos. Well, let me guess. He actually criticizes it because it's incredibly inconsistent, as well as essentially ruining what the first one achieved. And he didn't have to say at any point, you know, being critical of media can take people's enjoyment away from it. Like, just shut the fuck up. That's stupid, yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> So, yeah, he's not incapable of making good videos. In fact, it was only the last EFAP that I have promoted one of his videos. Said that he, uh, you should check out his one on the Lord of the Rings endings. It makes a really good argument uh, and explains the purpose where a lot of people see the endings as a waste of time. So, uh, yeah, just right. There was a reason 
why a lot of people were invested in his channel and kind of changed their mind when they saw his two CLJ two CLJ videos. There you go. That's close enough English. Uh, hi Rags. Where is your full hey. cover of Ocean Man? Um, I don't technically have the rights to release it. <laughs> yeah, so, so once it goes into I'm public in a, domain, a, it's coming out. I'm in a, a heated legal dispute with the record company. Uh, depending on how that goes, it will either be released uh, or not. I, I can't say now, though. I just don't know. I just know when it comes to le when, on, when there's an ongoing legal matter, I just uh, feel like I shouldn't say much, you know? I don't want to Aquila myself. Mm. You hit Blood on the Rises? Hell of a way to die. Wait, is that a song? You hid Blood on the Rises? Hell of a way to die. That sound familiar to anybody? No. 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 I do not know what that is, I'm afraid. Maybe chat does. I will check with them in a moment. Uh, I hope I hope Jay Longbone breaks wind loudly. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that one of the Twilight movies, Breaking Wind? <laughs> <laughs> it came in two farts, parts, two parts. <laughs> what is it actually well called? Done. Is it Breaking Dawn? Breaking yes. Dawn, yeah. This Part one and two. See, those oh, ones, okay. All right. we I like half things. considered doing to them what we did for Resident Evil, but I'm like, I don't know if it's worth the pain. Like, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, that was probably a smart move. I watched them recently, but they're fucking awful. Because I had, uh, I watched new, I watched 20 minutes of it, and I was like, this is fucking stupid. I got annoyed about how stupid it was. Like, none of the characters were doing anything that made any sense. I just turned it off. I just like, I can't do this anymore. And then, like, since then, I never watched Breaking Dawn or what's the other one with Dakota Fanning. I can't remember the name, but. <laughs> no one but, remembers uh, anymore. <laughs> Dakota Fanning? Wasn't she in that horse movie? Uh, I don't know which which one was that was. Horse movie. Uh, oh, luckily when I it autofills for Dakota Fanning horse movie. Uh, <laughs> Dreamer. What did you say it was? Two thousand five. Hmm. Dreamer. I yeah I have no idea why. It's probably because my sisters watched it hmm. and they, when they were in there, they're both you know they're both little girl well not anymore but. They were both little girls at the time, and you know they, they had a big horse phase. And they just, the horse, but Kurt Russell was in that. Wow. Both of them um, had a horse face. Horse face. Mm-hmm. I well, the horse did. Hmm. <laughs> you would hope. Yeah. Dakota yeah. No one Fanning ever says, "Wow, that human now. has a has a that, that, that horse has a human face." No one ever says that. Wait, is that movie about a horse with Dakota Fanning's face? <laughs> I guess so. Dakota Fanning looks fine. I'd buy that. It's for weird a because a lot of us think of Dakota Fanning and we think of like the little girl, but she's 26 now and she looks pretty good. So you know, I'd well, fuck her. I mean, send her a message, right? <laughs> we're we're we've we've had enough time where I could say without any you know shadow of doubt that um I'd fuck the shit out of uh Dakota Fanning. Yeah. Also, Blood on the Rise <laughs> is apparently a song from. World War Two paratroopers? I think I, I'm not sure what I what I. All right. Oh yeah, I don't. I'm not too familiar with those uh, shanties. Oh my god, it's a Gundam! I adore your videos. Please have a good stream with the guys. I think does Rags have a... We did just that. Let's see, uh, mm -hmm. does Rags have a phase for big horses? Well, stay tuned, and maybe you'll find out. Yes, I asked for this in the last EFAP. Thanks. Well, it was literally because of that, honestly. Yeah, we figured. <laughs> we figured, you know. You have a lot of power now, Super Chatter. You are the only one who can just request a guest and it happens straight away. Be careful. My god. Jay Longbone, please let rip a big wet one, please. What? Why? Jesus Christ. Why? Why? Uh, you know, even if that was what you desperately wanted, this would not be the way to get one. You know, a fart? It's just, it's just not happening this way. Uh, hey, it's a gun. Yeah, just fart, man. <laughs> just, just pretend it's do someone it. else's fart. Do it in fought. the comfort of your own home. Um, in HD. I'm hey, it's picturing a someone constantly like edging themselves 
like hedging himself, going like, please, fart somebody in? fart, please. Fart when he eats like, <laughs> so when you eat fart. beans, is that fart edging? <laughs> <laughs> Hot <laughs> edging and shumming is like they're just things you gotta do to really you know, experience what humans have to offer. When people say we're the far right Nazi incel podcast, this is the kind of topics I. <laughs> I saw that on um, the tweet you put out, uh, John. Someone was like, "Oh, you know, EFAB is not a little bit too conservative." It's like, huh? What? Oh, dude, you must be I saw that. us with another EFAB. Yeah. I was thinking, like, fuck, I bet if, like, I think, I feel, I don't know how, what, I mean, maybe you can correct me, but I feel like a bunch of people think of your podcast as, like, a right-wing podcast, and I'm just like, dude, I don't think pot politics is even on their minds when they're recording Not really. uh, these, no, uh, no, it these isn't. episodes. I right, yeah, pretty fucking I think you're apolitical, and you make an effort not to, to go into one side or the other. Well, yeah, I mean, clearly... Straight Someone the... is confusing us with the emergency food assistance program. <laughs> Which is very, <laughs> very we political. Give our, we give food, but it's more like food for the soul. Yeah. It's more like metaphorical food. Yeah. But I, I mean, it came straight from the um, transparency tube thing. Uh, Mueller and Mueller were on there as partisan right. <laughs> Enough people complained. And he removed it. And he was asked by someone, because they, they shared this in the Discord. They emailed him asking... Uh, why I was removed, and he, he said he checked out the channels, and that they weren't political enough to make a distinction. Wait, like, sorry, oh. who is this you're talking about specifically? Some uh, lizard? One of the people who, I guess, own slash operate the uh, Transparency Tube thing, which is a website that's supposed to, to fucking disastrous results, tell you what the politics of a channel are, whether or not they give it themselves. Oh, okay. That Apparently, sounds... Mueller and yeah. Mueller, we just don't do enough in that regard to be clear on that one. But to be fair... I think that means something because they would label you whatever the fuck they want in an instant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. it's. I would say it's it's relatively hard to pick exactly what our takes will be whenever something political related can come up here. You know, it could be all kinds of things. Yeah, but we would prefer to talk about Star Wars, or you know, <laughs> right. assorted media. And I suspect that regardless of anybody's political affiliation, that if if you felt that somebody out there had something interesting to say or you were a fan of them in some regard, that you would have them on, regardless of whether they fell on one side or the other. And you probably wouldn't. Well, yeah, uh, they use our guests against us. And I'm just like, um, these are people who have never come on because of their politics. It's literally just like, yes. oh, you want to talk about Star Wars? You want to talk about Game of Thrones? You want to talk about, you know, whatever. Right. Um, yeah, I th I feel I've always felt like you're focused on media and not not politics, and so it confuses me when people say you're a white wing podcast. I, I mean, I haven't heard that often. I just heard one or two people say it to me over Twitter. I'm just like, get out of here! They're not a political podcast. That's dumb. I mean, we can be edgy though, and that is usually associated with the right wing rather than the left wing, I guess. Yes, yes, I'm. <laughs> I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> that that pisses me off too. Yeah. It's dumb. You edgy, you must be a right winger. Yeah. Um, every time I look back to see which one to read, it's just, it's the, the let a big wet fart rip. It's just like, why is that there? Why? Pe people are strange, ruthlessly <laughs> adorable, like a baby in an SS uniform. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> That's what Disney's plan is. When, when someone says, um, I like... Like the whole fart things that they keep asking about Jay Longbone. I in my head I can't help but imagine those with the same energy as Jeremy Irons screaming, Let their blood rain from the sky in that D D movie. <laughs> Let the mm -hmm. farts rip from the sky. <laughs> Let the farts rip from her bum. That's another movie we need for fat movies, I think. Just for Jeremy Irons. He's 100% talking in the essayist cadence. A lot of them do. It's uh, at this point, it's probably recommended. Dare I say, there is probably a Skillshare video that goes over how to speak, <laughs> and it's like how to let the blood rain from your sky. <laughs> you need to pause on important words in order for people to understand exactly what you're saying. Here is but what if all this that will let you know when to let a word pop up in text in your video? 
What if all this cuteness is really not cute? Oh my god. What if it's evil? <laughs> evil cute. Evil cute, yeah. Ah. They wrote that, and they were like, yeah, that doesn't need a lot of explanation. People know what we mean. Evil cute. <laughs> Everyone's always talking about evil cute, but is it, no one ever talks about cute evil. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you make money off something, it's evil. Mm -hmm. Evil. Wow, I'm a real shit. Um, Rags, I'm too afraid to correct you. Oh, reference. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we've been checking out comments on the Mandalorian stuff as we go, and there's this, this guy who's very unhappy with our coverage, and he believes that the only reason that we're all shitting on Mandalorian is because none of us <laughs> want to disagree with Rags. <laughs> so we're too spooked by him. Rags is like, Mandalorian shit, right? And we're like, hmm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. That's, that's such a funny take, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever they want to believe. <laughs> like if it helps, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you know you're just tempting people to send in baby talk swooper twats. Oh no. You stop And they're gonna have now. to read them. I'm more than happy wappy to have people send in their money woodies to me. <laughs> Ew, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Ew. Come. Oh my god, I'm holding a hammer and I'm hitting a mouse. This is This is game is violence. Sadism, if you will. Sadism? Sadism. Uh oh, you can't do that. That's bad. You can't do sadism. We learned all about it. I can't do that. The schnism in my dism, dog. When are you gonna do that 20 hour torture game for EFAP gaming? Um, is it invented yet? <laughs> <laughs> I am on board with that. Uh, I bet if Walt were alive today, he would absolutely hate what Disney has become. Uh, yes. Walt? Oh, I thought you meant the Breaking Bad guy. Yeah, Walt Disney would be. <laughs> Rolling if Brian over in Cranston were alive today. He, he, if Brian Cranston were alive today, he'd be rolling over in his cryogenically frozen pod where his body <laughs> has been preserved until it can be resuscitated through the use of Zionist magic. Someone's like, guys, he is alive. I'm going to go ask him right now. Brian Cranston, what do you think of Disney? He's like, I don't Who know. Who are you? <laughs> Why are you in my house? Who are you? Get out of my house. I'm trying to poop. <laughs> the door is closed. God damn it. <laughs> closed, God damn it. He's on a new show on Showtime called Your Honor, which is only one episode in, so it's really good. He was, really? um, he was actually on a, uh, he did a guest episode for a sitcom. He was on an episode of How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Wow, he didn't kill himself. Good job, Mario. Wow. Uh... Do you... Community question. Do you think Walt Disney was a bad guy or just a man of his time? I don't know Walt Disney like at all, so... I don't know if he murdered a whole bunch of children or if he gave a whole bunch of money to charity. You know, those are the two opposing places you could be in. Mm-hmm. So It's, it's yeah. one of those two for sure. I just don't know which one. <laughs> yeah. He, he did something for a lot of people. People are a product of their environment. He might have been surrounded by people who had anti kind of just manifested in his own behavior. His father know. might have been Hitler. Yeah. My god. Maybe. Captain Falcon is the one I'm supposed to be able to nail this with. If I don't, chat's gonna make fun of me, okay? I'm really Captain upset. Captain Falcon. Come on. Show me your moves. Come on. Come on! Yes, I did a chat. See? I'm not the worst thing ever. You got all five coins. My god. So good. Uh, Jordan Robinson goes into detail to explain the symbolism in Pinocchio. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He does. He does a good job on that movie. Uh, yeah, he's he's got a lot of smart stuff to say as long as he's not talking about religion. Dan Fan actually put out a good video about Pinocchio recently that includes some of the changes that they made from the original story and why, including making him more childlike and less impish. Oh. And well, also the hanging thing at the end. Maybe, have, maybe, don't, this maybe I mean. don't have that one. I like how the video just purports immediately. It's like, ah, oh, it's for money. And I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like I can make justification for a lot of these changes that don't involve money, to be honest with you. Yeah. All changes are only made for the pure purpose of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if someone said, ah, oh, but you, why are you making those changes? And I'm like, I guess to make the story a bit more, um, you know, like it can, it can appeal to more people. It's like, so money. It's like, that's... Mm. 
fine. If you want to decide that that's how everything works. Sure, if ahead. there's money involved, that has to be the primary reason always. Sure. Oh, fuck. Stupid Captain Falcon killed himself. I didn't do that chat. It was him. Mm -hmm. Ragu Dafagu. Pinocchio is a massive bundle of sticks. But anyways, guys, hi, Moobles. Hello. How Disney ruined culture. Oh, so they're going to talk about how the sequels killed Star Wars heroes, right? Starts talking about Pinocchio. Face palm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect it, do you? You're like, oh, what's this video going to be about? Pinocchio? You're like, I think, all right. I think the problem with Pinocchio is that I found his performance a little wooden. I, I, I feel like everyone... <laughs> Everyone knew that was coming, surely. I was just waiting for it. I like that. That was good. <laughs> yeah, it's how Disney ruined culture. By the way, The Last Jedi was the good one. <laughs> like, it's the same video. It's like Ugh. a nice slip of that in. I feel like all of the video essayists who came out in full favor of TLJ like to do that. Like, they'll just slip yeah, in a little comment do. here that's like, oh yeah, TLJ, Master They're Battle. bitter. They're so fucking bitter. Oh yeah. I mean, I guess I could say the same reverse, but whenever I reference it in my videos, I'm usually trying to make a point about some of the writing. I'm like, oh yeah, like how Lost of the Jedi like, fucking pissed it all about, you know? That this thing. is a good example that it, a lot of people know about. It's canon on yeah. the Mola channel that that is one of the like biggest mistakes yeah. Disney ever made. It's like, hey, y'all know how that shit didn't make no sense in that Star Wars movie? Yeah, that's a good example. Um... Wait till you see the original Fox and the Hound story. Spoiler, it's a lot darker than the Disney movie. How dark are we talking about? Two liters of baby foxes are gassed. Sorry, two liters. That's spelled. Oh good. my goodness, they've been blended. <laughs> two oh liters. <laughs> they blended baby foxes. This movie's really dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suspected as much. Mm. I haven't I haven't seen the original thing. Yeah, but, whenever you uh, say original it. story, I'm just like, yeah, it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be dark. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, the the wait, where was it? A lot darker than the original. Um, two litters of baby foxes are gassed. Can't imagine why Disney would want to change that for money, obviously. Communist scum. <laughs> Can't I they mean, just tell their fucking scum. story? Yeah. <laughs> God, kind of backwards right. there. Ah. I meant to bring this up earlier, and some people in the chat brought it up. We were talking about, like, child, like, fairy Corn. tales, and, oh. like, the, <laughs> the the dark elements in the original ones, about, how, like, whether you should make them nicer and fluffier for kids when you're telling them stories when they're going to bed. You know, you don't want to tell them a bad story that they're going to stay awake at night, you know, worrying about the world, but maybe that's a good thing. Like, I'm just throwing it out there, like, maybe, like, some, you know, discomforting kids to some degree to make them think about the world and to, to kind of just prepare hint, themselves against hint, potential malevolence. Little... Right. It's like, we, but yeah. we have to have our, we have to have our, our mechanical shark in our peach movie. You just, just, you just, just a little darkness, you know? Yeah. Just a right. little. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, in general, I think kids can often handle darker, heavier subjects than we give them credit for. Well, it's uh, yes, exactly. every time. They you really can, know. yeah. In fact, a lot of kids are fascinated by it because it's not something they normally get, so mm -hmm. they'll gravitate towards it. Yeah. That's why Little Nemo time, is never something I'll forget. Well, yeah, well, that's kind of what I was going to get. I was like, you could traumatize a kid. You could also provide them a really important experience for their life. You, you can't quite know with kids, unfortunately. Yeah, you yeah. could always traumatize a kid, but, you know, yeah. within reason. That doesn't mean every kid's movie needs to be, like, Zack Snyder levels of grim, dark, and cynical. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just insane. But hey, no, I mean, there, there's a line, right, where you can have a level of grim darkness where a kid will look at that and be like, holy shit, and they'll look at you as a parent and be like, that, or, D you know, it's like, that's, like, really grim. Like, that's not what I'm used to. And it's like, yeah, well, that's the world sometimes. Especially and when then... they see adults reacting to it just normally. They're right. like, oh, it's okay. My parents, they're they're all right with this. So, you know, if they're okay with this, I know to be all right with it. Like, like when you, see, especially when you're young, you see your parents panicking or afraid. You're like, shit's going down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, like, Return to Oz uh, would be something that probably wouldn't make it these days in terms of through senses in terms of like wait that's not for kids but 
Um, there's a lot of things like that. Like, people make videos about it. Like, what is the scariest child's content, quote-unquote? And it's like some stuff where you see it and you're like, wow, that made it through, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's <signed laughs> right. on this. Yeah. yeah. Um, because yeah, the wheelers came out a lot scarier, I think, than they realized they would. <laughs> Shocking. Man. Oh, they, they maybe they had a good fucking time filming it. They were having great. They were out there in their wheels yeah. and their costumes and laughing and giggling. I didn't realize to a kid this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Do 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 do. The fairy called him a boy. He's old. Fantastic arguments. We are very familiar with. Uh, have you been good? No. Then perish. Oh. <laughs> Not a nice thing. You know, even even those who have been doing bad, you don't have to perish. Like Pinocchio. Uh, Pijolkino. The puppet that caused all deaths. Yep. So much lore here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Papa Gundam on EFAP? Christmas came early. Hey, it's Christmas all month here, okay? Maybe even longer than that. Um, hey, Mutually, are you still willing to cover content about The Last of Us 2? If so, my buddy showed me a defense analysis video called We Don't Deserve The Last of Us 2 by Jordy the Movie Guy. It was crap. He literally makes the argument that Naughty Dog gives us a choice to either force us to play as Abby or put down the controller if we don't want to. I can't even. Yeah, that's not the kind of choice that I think is okay. worth much of anything in a video game. It's like, yeah. I thought I was being told a story. It's like, no, the point is that you don't want to play. I'm like, I paid for you, you cunt. Fucking yeah. give me my value. <laughs> what the hell? That's bullshit, yeah. That, you can choose not to play the game, come on. Uh, in old times, Cinderella, the stepsisters, cut off parts of their feet to fit into the shoes. Oh. Uh, then, when they get found out, birds eat out their eyes. Is this real? I know the first part of that is definitely true. <laughs> why, do, why do you gotta, why do you gotta be eating out eyes? You know, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm anti that. This is an early Alfred Hitchcock story. Uh, this video is so bad, I feel sorry for Disney. I know, which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? Gundam on EFAP. Like Dark. Anakin. I shouldn't. <laughs> I know I shouldn't. Yeah, I suspected we were going to be really tearing into Disney in this episode. No, we're actually <laughs> you know, just, just realized... tearing into this YouTuber in particular. You said I know I shouldn't. Largely defending Disney. Triggered I know I shouldn't. Them. It triggered uh, in Bruges, where he's like, Do you use this word, dum dums? Dum dums, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you wonder what he's like, I know I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use the sword alcos, yes. <laughs> ah, nooks and crannies. Yes, this is a better word. Yes, nooks and crannies. Was he going on to you about the alcos? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, oh, the dialogue of that movie so is fucking, fucking fantastic. Uh, that's one of my favorite movies. It's so fucking. No offense, Harry. I'm not being funny here, but you're a bit of a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe have some more cunt kids. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> the whole conversation. Yeah. Leave my kids fucking out of it. Why are you talking about my cunt fucking kids? <laughs> I retract the bit about your cunt fucking kids. Then when he brings it up later, he's like, I retracted it, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is a great book. Oh, I didn't even know it was a book. Yeah, me yeah. either. I think it was important to explore the Pride and Prejudice world with zombies. Um, respect... Pride and Prejudice cinematic universe? Yeah, I respect <laughs> the director slash writer's decision. I do. Right. I mean, I guarantee there's no significant thematic benefit from like including no. zombies in a <laughs> oh, Pride I don't and know. Prejudice. I, I think I think I'm gonna give him a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt yeah, on that on. one. There yeah. might be some really big thematic importance. <laughs> of, yeah, I'm adding the zombies to it. Just like in Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it gives it enough of a pulpy quality where I'm just like, I'm down for that in the theater. Like, I'll go and see that. Fine. Put zombies in anything. Like, if you handle it well, sure. 
Seven Psychopaths, also by Mon McDonough, is also great. Yeah, I, I put... My preference of those two. Same for me. Uh, it, it does edge it out, but I love the both of them. Wait, which one do you think is better? I think Seven, seven Psychopaths, Psychopaths is better. What? Dude, that film had me, like, howling. I think I, I do I like think it's more consistently more. funny, and I just like a lot of the. It's there's more locations they go to, so I find it more interesting, and it's. I think it's a more fun of a watch. I I respect your opinion. That sounds like you don't respect his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just I, I disagree, but that's okay. Bruce is nice, but it is no, good. I like the dialogue. Nice. It's really it's, good, but um. It's a fucking fairy I just, tale play. I, <laughs> really like me a variety of locations, and I think there's more. It's more going on that's interesting. I like. I do. I just like the characters more. What about three billboards? I haven't seen it. And I don't plan oh, to show him. I mean, I've, I've I, seen I, three billboards, but not like the movie. I didn't think three billboards. I get feel, out. If, I didn't think it was as good as the other two by far. No, I I agree, but I still enjoyed it. This. I saw the movie. I thought that was all right. Yeah, yeah, it's just the, it's good, but it's not in Bruges good. This is the thing, right. in Bruges and Seven Psychopaths to me are like top tier sort of shit, while Three Billboards, I was like, that was fine. You know, I haven't seen either of those and I've heard they're good, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a point of watching those two. Oh, I don't the, some of the comedy in Seven Psychopaths just hit, hits so perfectly for me. And it's funny I'm saying that because I think in Bruges is funny as hell too. I like the ending more in Seven yeah. Psychopaths. You like what more, sorry? <laughs> I like the ending more in Seven Psychopaths. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about In Bruges' ending is just the way they had the scene play out of of who who's dying, how, and where everyone is. I just think the logistics of it all could be better. Um, because I I like the um most of it, uh, and, and and I like the overall the thematic element they're going for. It's just that I don't believe that Harry would be so shit with a gun, I guess. Um, certainly at the beginning. But uh, Seven Psychopaths, I love the ending in that. It's fucking fabulous. Eh. Um, asked a while back, but could never find the answer, so I'll ask again. Thoughts on Avengers 1? I think Avengers 1 is Good. pretty, pretty strong. Um... Yeah, it's good. I tend to agree with the sentiment that the lighting in that <laughs> film is really fucking stiff and bland. <laughs> like it almost feels like um, like a soap opera TV episode, I guess, is, is what a lot of people go with. It's just everything's very uh, flat. Um, but I think bringing together and uh, bouncing off all of these heroes from separate movies, I think they, uh, they did really well. I think the plot lines and action developments and stuff are all, are all pretty... Pretty, pretty solid. Uh, Age of Ultron is a disaster, though. <laughs> yeah. Pick From a, a writing standpoint, like, that's a lot of characters to juggle at once. And pretty well, I mean, Infinity War had to, more like, to juggle, and they managed to pull it off. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, the scenes in Avengers 1 of just all the characters in a room arguing with each other is some of the best stuff in the whole movie, honestly. Yeah. Really good. Joss Whedon is good at group dynamics. Everything special yes. about you came out of a bottle is such a fucking great line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's great dialogue in there, yeah, between the, all the characters. Like, he understands all the characters uniquely, and, like, great dialogue. Like, it's like, what what would happen if Captain America and Iron Man were in an actual conversation about what each other, what they are as characters? Like, because they differ so much ethically. Like, it's very interesting. I, I like the way it was handled. Like when they're all arguing, like in the room with the staff, mm -hmm. and then it all ends with like this, like that upside down shot with the staff in the foreground. I thought that was that was great because they're all like pissed off at each other. The staff is like the staff's like them. amplifying them all. I think right, right, yeah. It's the mind stone. Yeah. Uh, also, Mary Chrysler. If I don't see you, massives, then. Um, Mary oh Chrysler. yeah, have a great Christmas. Absolutely. I was really stoned when I watched the Robocop remake, and that scene freaked me the fuck out. Uh, I've never felt so Dude, uneasy in a theater it. before. I watched it sober, and it, like, really bothered me. It's funny, I don't remember that one bothering me as much as the, the Alita one. It might have just been 
I don't know, just just how I was feeling at the time. I don't know why that one yeah, didn't. Yeah, I haven't seen much. Alita yet, so what you're describing was does sound like something that would really bother me. But as good as the original RoboCop is, and it's it's a great ride. That is just uh, oof. <laughs> I haven't seen that. It stood out to me as kind of weird because I heard Cameron was working on like Avatar movies, and then that kind of came out. Of I was just like, what, the f what the fuck is Alita? I haven't heard of, like, is that a pre-existing oh. thing? Like, from some kind of comic or manga or something? Yeah, it's, um... I, I'm pretty sure it's a manga. I, I, I'm, actually, I'm not even sure what specifically, but it's one of those. And, uh... People really like it, and I think the movie did, like, please mostly everybody. Um, I can't even remember anymore. I just remember it being placed against Captain Marvel. Yeah, right. there was a big yeah. economy there going. Big eyes. I remember big Very eyes. Big eyes. Just yes. like, hmm. Looks kind of weird, but could be a good movie. I don't know. By making Pinocchio more wholesome, kids identify with him more, and that's in part to make things like the donkey transformation actually more impactful. This is what I mean. You can argue this all day. If we're going strictly from what kids <laughs> find sort of to be inspiring or relatable, it's like I can argue basically anything at that point. Kids can think a lot about a lot of things. Yeah, I agree with that super chat though. It's good. I agree. Well, yeah. If you told me like which one do you think they're going to appeal to more out of the like the darker, older ones and what Disney made in those, I'd be like probably the Disney ones. Right. And it's like, well, yeah, did you do a case study or a test? I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think kids latch on to certain things for all kinds of different reasons. That doesn't take much. I mean, it can just be like uh, an abundance of color. I saw you Terminator know. 2 when I was like seven, and I wanted my own Arnie in my house to look after me. Like the coolest toy <laughs> ever. Yeah. Uh, this fire is in my halfling skin. What is what is happening with that? This fire in my uh, halfling skin. Don't know about that one. It's probably a line from Frollo's song. Or should I say Frodo's song? <laughs> Frodo's song Hellfire. Where yeah, I love when. Yeah, he's yeah he's got the the hots for Esmer Esmeralda, and he's singing yeah. about it. <laughs> As Bro, any what a, Chad what would. What an interesting character. What an evil <laughs> bastard. He often gets overlooked as like a super evil bastard. Yeah. yeah everyone goes straight he's to Hitler. He's also an interesting character. Oh god, I shouldn't have gone this way. Oh well. Um. It's a Gundam who's on EFAP. I can now die happy. Say hi to your future ex-wife for me, Gundam. Oh. Oh. I knew I'd fucking die. Oh well. What are you talking about? That guy's relationship <laughs> material. Yeah. He's always so upbeat and positive. Mm-hmm. Disney has He's the a, fu a future ex-wife, so you're going to marry him and inevitably divorce him. Yes. I mean... <laughs> you know, <laughs> aim, aim and uh, high. Yeah. Disney has the capability to redefine their properties. Just look at the new take of the Sleeping Beauty from the nuanced... From a nuanced with the Maleficent. They have the ca Well, I mean, the statement they have the capability to redefine their properties, yeah. Um... You're gonna have some trouble with something like the Lion King, though. That's not easy to try and change the, uh, sort of mm -hmm. perception everyone has of. You know, like, be like... When you say Lion King, you think of the fucking the redo, right? It's like no, no, I think of the good one. <laughs> Fuck no, yeah. And I don't think you're gonna change that anytime soon. It's just way too Im impactful, and people show their kids this stuff. That's what I was getting at with like remakes, though. In general, people forget the originals, and you say the Lion King, they're just like, oh yeah, the twenties whatever movie. It's like no, no, no the, the animated one. <laughs> I don't even know that that's still, that is happening these days, that mistake. I really hope it isn't, though. I don't think so. I think most well, people still generally think about the originals. No, no, you're right. Since since they started putting the years in, like, after the titles of movies, like, I think that's a trend that st only started in, like, I don't know, the 2000s, 2010s, maybe? Or maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know when they started doing that. I feel like, like, not too long ago, there was an issue where... It's like people would bring up the title of a movie, and it's like, wh which one are you talking about? But now that it's like, 
common practice to accompany the year with the title of a film. It's like, okay, you're talking about that one. Since then, I think that's, that's resolved a bunch of the problems. Um, let's not forget TLM's author Hans Christian Andersen got burned by love all his life and died alone. Might have influenced his storytelling. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I feel like that experience might just drop a, a hint of that sort of thing into your work. Love is suffering. <laughs> it's pain and anguish. It is destruction of the soul. I'm like, okay, alright. That's, that's a perspective. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Rags, Mola, and guests of all EFAPs. I don't always agree with your critiques, but your points make me think more critically about my writing, and I'm I'm a better DM, Pathfinder, as a result. Hey! Hi. We love discussion over here, and if you don't even agree, you know what? Sometimes that's even better. Because there's more discussion. So that, yeah, that's great, you know? People can listen to something they don't agree with, and but it gets them thinking, and it's like, oh, I'm considering my ideas in a way that I had I haven't before. I, I feel like that gets like the value of that is underappreciated. Everyone's yeah. just like, no, I only want to listen to stuff that echoes what I believe. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Ganondorf, he punches for a lot of damage. I like this. Uh, remember there's a version where the mermaid is melted into sea form. What does it mean I to be in C C form? form? This is form. Er, <laughs> form? F oh, surely. I think they probably... C foam. What yeah. are, I, okay. It's I a mean, shade of green. Well, that's terrifying, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, as with all things, balance is needed. Not too much edge or cute, depending on what the story calls for. For example, Revenge of the Sith is super dark, but A New Hope is more upbeat and hopeful than Empire is darker again, and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, tone is obviously going to be determined by what kind of story you're telling, and what, I mean, I know this is kind of pointless to say, well, what but kind what of kind of tone I, I you're going I would say it's for. kind of like the reverse. Like, what, what, what kind, what kind of story you're telling, like, how you tell a story determines the tone, you know, like, uh, the tone's the result? Yes, story dictates everything. That's, that's what I think. I'd say deli when it comes to the tone, tone, I think it's well, delivery. I mean, if story is everything, then yeah, it would, would dictate everything, I guess. Yeah, if it's everything, but I, I'd say it's delivery of the story, not the story itself. Because you can have really dark movies that are delivered comedically. Yeah. Yes, that's and true. I guess vice versa, to a degree. It might be tougher if you've got a comedic movie trying to get dark in it, but you can pull it off. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it could be both. It's weird to be in a position of like... They are taking dark and making it cutesy for money. Weird. Yes. I think that's or most that of the even time if the they case are, when that, that would be bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just incomplete arguments everywhere. It's like, eh? I remember there's a version where the mermaid... Oh, sorry, I read that already. Melted. Uh, since the Disney sequels have been mentioned, I now have to mention that Cinderella 3 is surprisingly fun and good and everyone should watch it. Yeah, I had a Sin cousin who was really, really nervous, and at parties there was a lot of aversion. Alright. <laughs> History Buffs is a channel that reviews films based on their historical uh, accuracy. I have seen some of those videos, I think. I watched his, um, he did one recently. It's not on... a workout channel? It is not. Damn. Getting buffed through history, you know, that'd be neat. Uh, but yeah, I watched it on the one on the, the, the Bohemian Rhapsody. I saw his video on that. It was neat. Oh god, I gotta play his Ness soon. <laughs> Black's playing his Ness. <laughs> uh, meant to say she got melted into sea foam. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. I had an argument with my coworker on why the ST is bad, and when he couldn't counter my points, he said, Why does it matter? It's fake anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> You know what? Okay. You know, ask him that about his next paycheck and say, you know, it's just, I mean, it's not, it doesn't really, it's not really worth anything when you get down to it. So, you know, money is what it. we value it at. So, is that really. It's all subjective. 
I would just be like, I mean, yeah, okay, so the next time you bring up fucking any media, I'm going to say this to you. Are you ready for That's that? That's not real. Yeah, it's not it's real, fucking so. real. Why are you talking about that? Like, oh, you Why are you who... watching it? It's not real. So. The Mandalorian <laughs> episode? It's like, dude, it's not real. Imagine you had that friend who just kept telling you that. Like with wrestling. It's like, it's not real. Oh, I know it's God, not yeah. real. Like. <laughs> yeah. Well, my feelings are real. That's why I'm crying, <laughs> because it was real. Yeah. Oh my god, reference. And not bad line applied horribly. It just makes people laugh, which is probably it does. not the best It's thing. a shame. I, 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 I could have worked, but. Yeah. Um, I am gonna, I'm gonna head out, you guys. I got some company over here at the house, and Very uh, well. yeah. So, um, Mahler, Rags, Capital O. Thank you very much for your company. This was great. Thank you, yeah, chat. Man. Thank you so much for joining um, us. Do you want to do a quick little explanation of what you do over where you are before you leave? Yes. So I'm John Graham slash digital. I do a show called RB and the Chief. I've been doing that since 2007. Um, it's like a live action machinima kind of hybrid thing. Sounds cringe and stupid. Um, I like to think that it's actually pretty cool and funny. Uh, you can be the judge yourself. <laughs> Check it out. I just put out a, I just put out a Halloween special. So uh, if you like Halloween at all, I am very pro Halloween. I, think, I will be honest. Yeah, with Halloween's that. pretty gifty. Cool. I, like I think it's, I think it's pretty funny. Check it out. And uh, thank you very much for. And um, I'm always happy to do this. You guys are great. Have a good time. Oh, on sweet. This. It's fun. I always like to yeah. have you, man. It's been nice fun to meet you. Again. Totally. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'll see you again next time. When I... Yeah. yeah if you ever want to have me on again, just give me a shout. I'm totally happy to do it. We nice will shout. see y'all later. See you, dude. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye bye. 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 And then there were three. All right. Yeah, he's all right. He, I, I put him in our top, our top thirty guests. Top five ten. Our or top ten, top, 10, top five guests. Um. Yeah, he's very chill, John. He's got a whole history with the video games. Lots of opinions. The best kind of guest. Uh, White male? Problem is... Where was I? Hey, character, stop battling while I'm looking at Super Chats. Uh, the problem is that Disney wasn't always terrible and he's attacking it when it was good. It's like, well, yeah, that was like the main confusion I think anyone would have. It's like, wait, why are you targeting that era? What the fuck? Well, I assumed from the title that he'd be talking about New Disney, and I thought it'd be an interesting video. But it was like, no, when Disney was in its golden age, it was ruining culture. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you have interesting oh, yeah, opinions. Yeah. Bold strategy. Let's see if it works out. This man didn't. is trying to make his mark in the world. His thoughts. Well, this is the thing. I think it's a pretty well-rated video, and, and people are happy with it. I'm just like, comment section. How? Do you actually agree with any of this? Have you listened to it? Yeah. Would you just read the title? It's a weird one. Uh, Peter B. Parker is what Luke should have been in TLJ. Uh, so a key difference, uh, at least as I see it, is that they showed us all of the pieces of his life that led him to where he was. It didn't take long. No. Because this is the thing, when we've talked about fixing TLJ and maintaining most of it, like, one of the first things I think about is, like, we might need a flashback sequence at the beginning. Because, fuck me, we got a lot of blanks to fill. And, uh, yeah, Peter P. Parker, they, um, they did it quickly, but they went through how things can change over a long amount of time. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I think, uh, you liked him the most in that film character-wise, right, Rex? I think so. It's, uh, tough. There's a lot of good characters there. But, uh, yeah, I definitely uh, probably like him the most. Have you have you watched it, Capital O? Yes, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty great. It's pretty strong. Everyone should go see it. Into the Spider-Verse, which is getting a sequel, and everyone's concerned, as they should be. I'm concerned. Very concerned. If anyone isn't, they probably don't know who's making it, I guess. <laughs> like, that's all I assume. <laughs> Well, I guess a lot of people might not know, and they just assume, and mm -hmm. I mean, reasonably so, that this smash hit that everyone loved would be made by the same people who made the last one, right? Right? Surely? Yeah. 
That's how it works, right? Unfortunately, not always. Oh fuck, that was risky. Die. There we go. Uh, they probably made the study. A bunch of articles were made about it. It was debunked, retracted, and the articles became a circular reference to other. And that's where that ends. Uh, yeah, I don't think we ever got a strong, specific like example of exactly what they were citing. Um, but I'm sure it exists out there. I'm sure they weren't lying. No, I think they just saw the same thing I saw when I Googled that it was referenced in other articles, and so they just took that at face value. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's possible that it is somewhere on some corner of the internet. And uh, if I find it, I'd, I'd be curious to read it, see if she backs up that claim at all. That uh, Disney princess love stories cause abusive relationships. That's kind of a bold claim, so be interesting to see. I feel like there's going to be so many more variables to account for, but okay. Uh, hello boys, hope you love my new avatar. Uh, couldn't choose, I miss... Sorry. Couldn't choose eye on my old phone. Also have a Christmas eye as well. Despite Halloween being the superior holiday, death to Shad the heretic and his Chrisnoids. Oh my god. Sounds like That sounds like the kind of mindless violence a typical Halloweener would want. Well, see, violence is fun during Halloween, so I'm okay with it. You go ahead, Halloweena. You have your violence. <laughs> Try not to hurt Shad. Go for the Chrismoids. That's fine. Because we, we're going to be watching Manda with him, you know? Um... New title, how Disney successfully made old, unpopular, depressing stories palatable for hundreds of millions of people across uh, many cultures. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's definitely a better, a better video than the one we got. I think that title just matches it. Yeah. How much of what is bad storytelling across media is stupid people versus an idea that Marxists are attacking story media? A lot of stories making characters stupid, racist, and sexist for no reason. Um... So, you're asking how many- how much of it can be accounted for by stupid slash incompetent people versus how much can be accounted for it via Marxists attacking media? Um, I'm always more willing to assume it's to do with incompetence. Yeah, that's just a better assumption to make about everything, especially conspiracy theories. Like, what's the line? Don't attribute to malevolence what you can attribute to incompetence. Well, attribute Something is a like noun. That. Attribute's a verb. No one's safe. Is that background? No I thought that's that's an attribute. Is what I say an attribute is like a is it? thing. Maybe it's a. I, don't know. I think attribute is a noun and attribute is a yeah. verb. Attribute. Is it? You think? I think so, oh, yeah. Right. That's how Fair I enough. use it. I, uh, all right. I uh, reverse that then. You're all right. I'll take that one off your list. You're free to go. I just like you said, no, it is safe. And it's like, neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Well, I guess he wasn't wrong, was he? No. That's the thing. No one is he made safe. his point. Rags, that was a very clever point. I like that. You're welcome. There was some 40 chess. Mm hmm. Uh. Do Doom hijacked the Columbine shooters. Oh! Doom did? Yeah, because uh, wasn't there some narratives about, like, obviously throughout history, video games inspiring violence and stuff, but. Oh, of course, yeah. I, if it hijacks your emotions and thus makes you shoot people, that sentence, you know, I can oh, see how that sentence was formed. Hey guys, I am a uni student and I found the article you guys wanted. It's not a research journal, but rather a magazine-like article published. Um, we had someone link it to us. So, so people have linked it to me too, and the one people keep linking is an article that mentioned the study. Not the study itself, but it's possible he found it. Not sure. Uh, do you want him to just at you with it in uh, like Discord or whatever? Sure. Yeah, if anyone can actually <laughs> find the research paper itself or the study itself and not articles talking about it, you can at me on Discord. 
Or Twitter. I don't use Twitter, but go for it. You gotta get into Twitter. It's where all the cool people are. Oh no, I don't want to do that at all. Twitter is a cesspool. It is a it is a poopy hole filled with tums. You know, for a second there, I kind of interpreted what it was a cesspool, like suspicion pool, which is also true. Mm. Oh, I hit Kirby in the middle of the up B move. Nice. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for, for those who have looked into it as well. Elon Butts. Sorry. Well. <laughs> Don't apologize for it, you know? If you're gonna make a pun like that, you gotta own it. Mm -hmm. You know it had to happen. It's important. I can't remember which way is the best way to go for characters who are heavy and runny. Like an egg. I'm gonna try this one. Oh, balls. 40 seconds of usefulness in a long video must be the quartering. Oh! That's, that's, that's so very cruel. I think, you know... Would you say 40 seconds of usefulness was in the Wisecrack video, or is that a bit excessive? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. How long was the ad? <laughs> I, think was, I think it was two minutes, but it wasn't a particularly well done ad, so... No, it wasn't. Like, I feel yeah. like they just read the script that they're given, and I'm like, no, like, it sounds like a script that you're given. You're not actually trying to convince me to get it. Three, two, yeah, I guess they personalized it a little with the uh, Wisecrack. You know, we've been using this cell. It's helped us during COVID, but, you know, I'm not sure how much I believe that. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's plenty of good options. Uh, no, no, no. I don't no, know, maybe Phil Morris just fucking great. I'll, maybe I'll Google stuff. I'm just familiar with Sony Vegas, so... I don't know. Yeah, I'm inclined that at the, you know, how many subs they have and everything, I'm sure they've been using a better editing program, so I don't know why they're saying in an oh, ad for like a... For money, I think. Oh, you know that uh, thing they yeah. were criticizing Disney for. Because if you're a big channel, you could say, you know, I used to use Filmora, and mm -hmm. it's not the best software that there is, but for the price, it's extremely cost efficient. I, yeah. And you could do pretty much anything you need to, so it's definitely an option that you That's should consider. That's a pretty consider. good pitch, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's like uh, it's like I'm Linus from Linus Tech Tips. I don't have this GPU in my personal computer. That doesn't mean it's the only one I would recommend ever. And if you don't have the one I have, you're wrong. You know. Hmm. Can you, I want to grab you, Mario. Non-sexual, just still. He's freaking out about it. There we go. <clears throat> uh, hey, Rags. Still pooping with the door open, I see. Also, the reactor nope. door was locked. I don't poop with the door open. These are lies. These um. are Jedi lies. <laughs> These are... This is Sunspear propaganda. Have we, I don't have, have none of it. Have we talked about a reactor in this stream at all? Reactor we're door. reactors. That's our job. Oh my god. You, me, we're all the reactor. Um, Re the real reactor is the friends you made along the way. Maybe they're talking about the the reactor door in Mando being locked. The one that the one that had the panel that was that couldn't. They built a base in a volcano and then they installed a panel for the door that couldn't handle the heat of being in a volcano because the Empire is the most incompetent organization that I've ever seen. That isn't cult. So I'm like, I just, Jesus Christ. Um, like everything they do is dumb. But in fairness, the door that leads to the reactor controls is opened because Grief Cogger's like, use this. It's like, oh, okay. That was a good door. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if that's what they were talking about though. It's locked in a very superficial way, I, I would argue. And I just like the fact that you wouldn't like, it doesn't matter, you can get from it uh, to it from the outside. It's a really weird security system to have something accessible from the outside, but locked from the inside. You know, whatever works. Uh, they made people happy. How evil! That's uh, some truth right there. Uh, by the way, sorry for missing the last EFAP. That Count Dankula dude is bloody hilarious. Also, I'll change my That's avatar to the Christmas if you want. I mean, I mean it is Christmas you time, you know? Just I, mean, I feel like you shouldn't have to be encouraged or compelled, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Dankula was uh, some good shit. If you want real history on what happened on Disney Studios, watch Anim Animat's Animation Look Back series. It's the only... Video of his worth watching. The rest is hot garbage. Oh. 
Well, some some people are one hit wonders. Yeah. I love when I mean, awful YouTubers bring in some obscure philosopher that isn't relevant and whose work probably doesn't aid their point. <laughs> that reminds me of Karl Milton Marx. Friedman. <laughs> I mentioned Milton Friedman, therefore I am big smart. Oh, what's the one that Just Right kept doing? Like it's like Friedrich Eng No, who was it? He probably Heidegger. brings up Friedrich Engels. Friedrich Engels. Was it Mihai Cheek sent Mihai? Mm. Was it a Hydra? Yeah, it was. Uh, who was it? I can't remember. But that was a really funny one. Hydra but before we get, but to talk about that, we're gonna have to talk about. <laughs> oh God, it's it's right on the tip of my tongue. Hegel. We have to that's talk about is. this one dead communist who is wrong about literally everything. Hegel. It was, it was that. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Chat. Hegel. What is the point of a gun if it doesn't even fucking get noticed when I hit them with it? What is the point? Maybe it's a Why special are we here gun. just to suffer? Come in my bum. Uh, 16th century culture is sabotaged. You defending it is the proof? Oh. I don't, I don't know. Wait, are you saying that because we were defending adaptations of something that the thing itself is now destroyed that it was adapting. I'm not sure I don't know what about you're, that. I'm not sure what you're after there, yeah. Um, I realize now if I want to kill Dr. Mario uh, unlock Dr. Mario, I gotta fucking kill him with Mario. By completing classic mode, I think that's how you do it. <clears throat> uh, I prefer the Don Bluth idea of storytelling, i.e. show kids whatever you want, long as it's got a happy ending. Um <laughs> I don't know about that logic. Um, Not anything. <laughs> I think you re you remember the journey. I will say that. Kids definitely remember, you know, the journey. Yeah, you know all the two scary bits from Return to Oz are not in the ending, right? So... I guess that's the way you avoid it. I guess. Oh my god, so many Pokemans. Uh, How do you like to play Pokemon? It's fucking hilarious. Look at that moose. Classic. Good evening, all. Hi, Rax. Hi. I'm a classic moose. Hail J. Longbones laugh. Guys, the Batwoman trailer, though. I'm so excited. Uh, and it just it just ends in extra. We are excited to give it just about a month, and you will see season two, episode one, EFAP Mini. It's gonna be great. Uh, poor Peepo, he's such a king, protecting us from such horrendous things. Pouring one out for you, Peepo. Yeah, I brought him back to defend us from Raylo. It's a good lad. Peepo's alright. I mean, he's never done a bad thing to me. Always, always taking care of me, so I just, you know, what can I say? Uh, it's a Gundam, love you and Fluffy. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. Uh, can we call this the it's edgy so it's deep fallacy? Um, those stories might have deeper the boys. things to... Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, the boys will definitely count as that actually, but um, the ones we were talking about in this video, like, I haven't consumed them story-wise, they might actually have a lot of things to say and stuff. Um, but the idea I'm sure that... they probably do, it's just the delivery of them is... A little dark, which is fine, it's just not what Disney was going for. It's so weird that, like, he considers it... They were like, how do we make money? It's like, what if we take sort of, like, beloved fairy tales that are really dark and make them friendly for children? That's a good way to make money. I'd just be like, where did you get this from? Why this, did you assume this, that this is... This constant criticism of capitalism, it shows in the way that they process information and describe things. Like, the idea of... We can simultaneously make a lot of money by giving people a product that's really great and enjoyable that they love. Like it's a symbiotic relationship of the system working healthily as intended. And they somehow try and make that some sort of a nefarious and yeah. mean, cynical yeah. sort of thing. Absolutely. They also really ignore the audience entirely. Like Disney is making oh, yeah, the movies people want to watch. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore the audience. Fuck them. Oh god, no, 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 no. Oh, I drowned as Mary. That's fucking... It's embarrassing. Also, just watched Bone Tomahawk twice, and it's really great, insanely well-written, and John Bruda is easily my favorite character in that film. Uh, why am I blanking on who John Bruda is? 
John Bruder. I'm John curious. is my Bruder. Oh, um, what's his name? Matthew Fox. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought he was awesome, if not a little underutilized, because of how much potential he seemed to have from what we saw of him. IMO. Uh, I like Bone Tomahawk, but holy fuck. Don't watch that film if you're not able to take some, some of the most hideous gore I have ever seen in a movie. Yeah, I ain't seen it. It's not, a uh, not my thing. I mean, it comes Borman. kind of out of nowhere, too. That's another thing that really hits bit, you yeah. pretty hard. I think it's the first time in such a long time that I have, like, very physically cringed while watching something. You know, there was me thinking yeah. I'd seen it all. I hadn't seen it all. Um, the dad jokes in this EFAP are on point. Yeah, they're fucking incredible. There are, I don't, I don't, there haven't been any dad jokes. I mean, I, I, I think they, they have been, and I, I don't see dad, dad jokes as a bad so. thing. My, I'm just flexing my, my paternal nature. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Elan Sliz Bagano has a better character arc than Ray. True. Hmm. I don't even think we need to prove that. That's just we, it's known. Uh, what are your favorite Coen Brothers films? Oof, that's, that's a decent selection right there. Whenever I think of them, first thing that comes to mind is Fargo. Mm hmm Yeah, and that's, you know, you can't go wrong with Fargo. Fargo's pretty great. I, like I also really like, I think it's, uh, dare I say, underrated, but uh, Burn After Reading is really funny. I haven't I like seen that, that since it came out, but I remember liking it a lot. Oh, it's great. Very good. Um... And No Country for Old Men is good. Um, that would definitely them be near the good. top of the list for me. Yeah. Uh, I like Barton Fink a lot. Yeah, there's so many. It's a hard one to choose between. It's like when you say, like, favorite Tarantino film, I'm always like, oh, okay, so with each one, I need to, like, explain what I value so much about it and mm -hmm. how it ranks highly and that at different points in the day, I can choose different ones. So it's just like, nah. <laughs> um, No country for old Jeb. Ah, uh, classic. Um, Rags, where are you on the Kinsey scale? The Kinsey scale? Well, let's Google that. Kinsey scale from the Kinsey Institute. All right. Okay, so I will be... Uh, probably, probably three, honestly. I'm a, I'm a three on the Kinsey scale. Excellent. Um, I guess they only wanted you to answer that. They're very specific. Oh, well, we, we can, uh, here, I will, I will give you a post a picture of the Kinsey scale, and you can tell me where you fall on that scale. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who made this? <laughs> Kinsey. Kinsey, you fucking legend. This makes it- why did it only go to 6? Why wasn't it 10? What's so special about 6? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, I'm like, probably, probably 1 or 2. Uh, I'd say 0 or 1, probably. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah, the Kinsey scale ratings for free. Well, technically, well, not free. <laughs> Super shout out for everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mola. Merry Christmas, guests. Hi, Rags. And Merry Christmas to you, too. Hello. Merry Christmas to all. To all, good Merry. Merry Christmas. In, um,. I like to bring this up every once in a while because I just think it's such a good joke. The, in, in Community, they're dealing with things getting more and more PC in the show. And uh, mm -hmm. there's like a scene where they're like, can we say Merry Christmas rather than Happy Holidays? And then I think they switch it to Happy Holidays, but then there's some reason for why Happy Holidays is also unacceptable. And um, the Dean, who's like obsessed with not offending anybody, eventually decides on... And it's like a relatively big payoff because we, we don't know what he's going to say. And he comes out in celebration and says, Merry Happy! <laughs> <That's it. 
That's the cleanest way to do it, you know? No one's gonna be upset about mm -hmm. that, hopefully. Well, maybe yeah. I have clinical depression and I don't find that so funny. Oh no. I don't like it when people talk about happiness. It upsets me. Uh, hey, I was watching the Shrek films recently, and Shrek the Third was so bad, it was like watching the Nostalgia Critic. Your thoughts? Only I've remembered it as the bad one. I just... Yeah, I... I haven't seen them in a long time. No, sorry, I haven't seen the, the second and third in a long time. I'm fairly familiar with them, because I saw them enough. I'm more familiar with one than two, and I'm looking forward to rewatching them, probably for fat movies. Whenever that gets around. We'll watch the Shrek series, however many that that involves. Is it five? Shrek. No. I, I have no idea. Because there's Rumpels. The third one is like King Arthur or some shit, right? And then fourth one's Rumpelstiltskin, I think. And is it Shrek f Forever After? I'm mixing them, I think. All I know is Yeah, Shrek I think Forever two. After is. F and there's. Uh, five hasn't come out or has. What? Hmm. Is five? Oh, five hasn't been made yet? I I'm, don't know. I'm confused. Rex, I thought you were a Shrek aficionado and you'd answer all these questions instantly. Um, uh, sorry, what, what were the questions? Uh, what's the Shrek series like? Is it five? Is it six? Is it four? Um, I don't know anything after two-ish, three. So, maybe. Mm. I don't know, and there was like TV ones too that they would do, like shorts, and then there was Far, far away idol, but that's not really, it's a little bonus, but, you mm. know. Forever After is full. Alright, alright. Shrek 4 was fine. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've seen that one. Uh, I just remember Rumpelstiltskin was in it. Um... Also, Rags, why are most atheist YouTubers becoming so woke? Also, hi, Rags. Uh, I don't know, I guess that's just, it tends to be, a. Uh... I don't know, I guess they want to be progressive, and so they associate, I guess, religiousness with a, a, a regression lean towards the right yeah. and conservatism, which is probably it. Like, religion is a conservative thing, generally, and so they don't want to be conservative, or they have a big disdain for it. So generally, I guess they're on the left, but, I mean, there's no reason, like, I'm an atheist, but I'm definitely not some progressive lefty. Um, just like, yeah, I just, I, I imagine, don't know. Yeah, like, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's like a bit of a, like, what's the connection between those things? It's like, I have no idea if there is one, necessarily. Uh, I assume they all just, like, split in half, and some went to one sort of team, if you will, some went to another. Uh, I imagine Gundam is a gremlin sitting below a mic talking about how poopy life is. And we love him for it. Talk. He needs to talk to Randy. Hello, all serious... Wait. Hello, all. Serious question. I have been watching since episode one and was wondering if Rags has ever in fact been wrong. And if not, is he actually a spider-sized doggo, like a Goliath spider? No, but sometimes I will, uh, I will give the impression of, uh... Uh, incorrectness to keep people on their toes, yeah, and like, then I will make uh, I'll make a note of it on my uh, my pad here to dispensate with extra goodies and karma. Like it wouldn't be fair to call him being wrong when he's doing it deliberately to try and raise a lot. Yeah, of points, it's so. a ploy. Yeah, it's implied. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, saying wrong things, being wrong. You know, it's it's all kind of part of the part of the oh, show, charm. really. Sometimes I'll throw a bone to people. Hi Rags, I'm driving 1,300 miles from Central Texas to Ohio, and I'm passing through wow. Arkansas. I'll be by to oh. take a pool in your pillowcase. Oh my goodness gracious, what a pool in mean? my pillowcase. I don't actually know. Did he meant to say poo? <laughs> <laughs> a poo in my pillowcase? Well... What an odd thing to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're driving that far, maybe any, any action is worth it just to make sure it was for something. Even pooping in a pillowcase. Um, Gundam is gold and wisecrack is whack. Hashtag free. Mealy? Mealy? That's M E L E E. That's uh, 
at least forties, right? Am I am I retarded right now? No, yeah, it is it is three. Okay, sorry. I it's been so long since I've seen it written, you know, I wasn't paying attention to the opening animations even of this game. Um but also why what do you mean free? It's I'm playing it. It is free. As in not chained. <laughs> uh hashtag save smash and high rags. Hey. Hello. Someone someone in chat said, um, about the atheist thing, they said because they define themselves by what they're opposed to rather than what they're for. So I don't agree with that. Um, atheism is just not a theist. Uh, the, all it is. And it's a, it's a singular issue, and it says nothing more um, about a person at all. You can be an atheist in pretty much anything else, because yeah. it's, it's its own thing. Uh, you can be an atheist and a flat earther, an atheist and a republican, or a democrat, or a communist or anything like that uh, it, it's a it's its own thing and because theism is the norm in our society um, it has been just generally viewed as the not normal thing especially statistically uh, but if someone defines themselves as an atheist and nothing else then that's really weird and tells you pretty much nothing about them at all uh, if if i was to define myself that would be eventually one of the things I'd say, but in and of itself, it's not very meaningful at all. Um, and I doubt that no, I, I would highly doubt that any atheist defines themselves as an atheist because it's just not an, it's not what that's for. That label yeah, doesn't really they make did, sense to use that in that context. If they did, I'd be like, that doesn't tell me much of anything. Yeah, it, it, base, it only tells me one thing. It means that you're not convinced of uh, any gods being real and that's it. There's nothing else. So it's a useless thing um, and besides if you and if you uh if you identify as a christian well that tells me more that's that tells me more about what you don't believe than what you do because every other religion you don't believe and all the things that are opposed to that you don't believe too so i think it's a big deal it's just uh i don't really agree with that phrasing no 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 gundam on efap was exactly what i wanted for christmas also high rags hello hello I pronounce it Police Stick Renegade. Someone said, what I mean is these specific now woke atheists have no identity other than God not real. So there's some that I listen to. Um, Matt Dillahunty in particular, I really like as long as he's not talking about politics. He's really good when it comes to logic and argumentation and stuff like that. But he definitely has an identity outside of his atheism. It's just that's what he's known for. Uh, for being someone who's, you know, who does those debates and, you know, talks about reason and logic and epistemology. But even the people that he has as co-host on the show and debates that I watch, uh, I don't think any of them only are, are, are nothing more than, like, probably they just define themselves as, I'm not convinced of gods. So, yeah, I, I definitely don't see that. If that's your impression, I'm... I guess I'm confused how you picked it up. How can they chat? How can they chat? <laughs> Good reference. How many chucks would a woodchuck fuck if a woodchuck would fuck chucks? Oh, I'm glad we're not talking about fucking wood one. We've got a old Pinocchio. Hmm. Would that be child? Well, never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go into age of consent laws again. Oh yeah, that was a whole thing. <laughs> but what about wooden children? It's completely different. Uh, remember to invite Nerdrotic for Battlefield Earth EFAP movies. One of the best, so bad it's good movies ever. Great material for EFAP movies. Absolutely. Gonna happen. Uh, we've got we've recorded quite a few EFAP movies now ready to go. It's uh, We have no promises for how exactly that's going to be released, though. Uh, Mola, would you ever remake your TLJ critique and add problems found after it was made with better editing quality? Um, I thought about it at one point, and then I realized, like, all effort's gone into something like that. Could have been spent into a brand new series, and so it's probably gonna be... Uh, like, it, to me, that's just, like, that's the answer, you know? And I think most people would prefer if I were to do that. Even if they, they would appreciate, um, like, a, a remaster, I guess, even with additions, but... Yeah, no. Uh, Rags, I know you can't read Super Chats, but I didn't call Mola's attempt poor because he can't pronounce Japanese, but because I literally spelled out the pronunciations Baka Mitai was spelled Bak, no, Baka Mitai. 
Well, if you're getting it wrong, and you, maybe you should give me the letters. Or just paste it in the chat, just so I could see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Because it's possible he did it wrong, and so you're... I guess not saying as he intends you to say? Didn't I say Let's Baka Mitai? Uh, Baka Mitai. Baka mi tai. Yeah. Baka mi tai. I mean, I might have said... That's what we said, right? Baka mi tai at some point? I don't know. I don't... I, I gotta be honest with you. I don't actually care. Yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't, honestly, I just... Got him. Um, it's, it's hard enough to get these people to care about English pronunciation. Exactly. You know what? Truth, right from the rags spout. Or, or tap. However you want to know it. It's... Let's, let's get English right, people, then we'll focus on Japanese, I guess. That's number two, okay? Uh, genuinely appreciative of the hours of entertainment you guys provide. Carry on, lads. No problemo. We have fun checking out these these takes from all these different people, you know? And, and hang out with you guys. The guest a -roonies. Fun on the bun. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us. Uh, do you have a favorite type of keyboard? Um, oh, I thought you meant, you meant like, pianos. Um, <laughs> honestly, I am very ambivalent when it comes to keyboards. There has been plenty that I've liked, plenty that I haven't. I'm a lot more particular when it comes to mice. Um, right now I'm using a Logitech G910, and I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It is pretty good. Um, so that's what I'm currently using. Yeah, because when I started on stuff like this... I had like really low grade peripherals, but as long as they worked, it never actually bothered me that much. So I never got to a point of upgrading to like, uh, it, 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 like it, it, for all I know, um, like a, you know, like high grade mechanical keyboards or something. It's like, oh, you should be, you should be using that. And like, oh yeah, maybe. Uh, but like the one I have is, is your standard keyboard, and it's uh, backlit with like a soft purple. Cause I, I, I like purple. On the, and, and that works out just fine. But it is a cheap keyboard, it is not a an expensive one. Yeah, honestly, neither my... How much is a keyboard? Let me double check. Because my, my mouse is a G600, also a Logitech. And they're only like 35, 40 bucks. And I love them. And I mean, until unless they make an upgraded version, I'll probably just stick with buying this one forever. Uh, but uh, the keyboard is G9, whoop, 9, 10. It is, yeah, let me go to the Amazon. This one is about a hundred bucks. Uh, I really like it though, Looking looks slick. Uh, I like it quite a bit, hasn't been giving me any issues. Um, before this one, I had a G510S because I got it really cheap. There was like a mega sale or I got someone was selling it used or whatever. And I used it for years and I really liked it. The The keys were nice and quiet, but they were uh, took a little bit more effort to put them down. But the keys were nice and quiet, but it was a big keyboard and I really liked it. But one day I accidentally spilled like a soda all over it and i was like fuck and then it got a little sticky and so got it and i don't know maybe there's a way to clean it out sometime but i did have this one for whatever reason this g910 so i've been using that ever since and it's been working pretty darn good it's good for typing good for playing it lights up nicely got great media buttons and it's been pretty durable i'm a i am a fan i like logitech's peripherals there you go uh, if it takes like eight smurfs to give you a hand job, how many would you need for a spit roast? Say that one more time. If it takes ha eight smurfs to give you a hand job, then how many would you need for a spit roast? And would Smurfette be involved? I don't think Smurfs could. <laughs> All right, so you'd have to you'd have to have a series of platforms. <laughs> for Lots of and pulleys. Normally. And... <laughs> Normally when you talk about sexual positions and you have to start the conversation by getting to architecture, something's off, but I assume that only in the most technical sense it's possible, but it wouldn't be anything I'd want to do or engage in, and it wouldn't be worth it, and I doubt you'd get much out of it, honestly. 
Uh, well, at least it ends with also high rags or high wags, uwu. Hi. Also, also, may as well start saying it now. Mola, watch the Mothman prophecies, you not true horror fan. Anyway, last super chat. See you later, boys. Uh, thank you very much. And bye bye. Not impossible. One day I shall perhaps check it out. Mothman prophecies. Uh, they're absolutely ruining culture. They used to adapt, adopt stories and make it impactful for a broad audience. Now they do remakes of their own things. See, that is the argument I would have expected to be in the video. <laughs> but no. Oh my god. When a Pokemon fucks up another Pokemon in this game, it just feels like, you know, this is just some real shit. This is what they were built for. They're doing their thing. Got the notification for this ages ago when I was working. It's still going when I get off work. Oh, yeah, yeah, boy. You know EFAP. Mm-hmm. We're at, uh, where are we? Eight hours? We're it's actually... finished and that makes it okay. Yeah, we, we might actually have, uh, be able to do a normally-ish sized EFAP this time, actually, because we're... Oh my we've god. We've got like 20, 30 left, I think. Something like that. Amazing. Oh. Oh. Uh... Some NC post hiatus highlights. Fury Road haters are closeted gays. Ghostbusters 2016 is acceptable because kids like it. This is from Nostalgia Critic. Uh, Blade 2 villain says a racist thing. Maybe the director is too. And dialogue can be taken many ways, but if the director doesn't make it clear which way he means, he's failed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, oh, that's a... That's my favorite one. I'm telling you, man. The strategy was to get in early. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I uh, really feel like I missed the boat in that respect. <laughs> Hocus Pocus review he made about how fans hate change, but will also hate if you try and do your old stuff again. Uh, we, we've not covered much Nostalgia Critic, but I mean, <laughs> like it's it's not looking great. Uh, he, um, but yeah, he's been going for, like, like was it 11 years? Like, damn. You know? I love the idea that ambiguous dialogue is a failure. That's hysterical <laughs> to me. <laughs> that, is, that is a take. Gonna go ahead and disagree with it. That's my controversial thing today. Yeah. Damn, Rex. French, your French accent is really good slash arousing. Hey! My That's the best who? kind. Your French accent. Oh, I thought you said my friend Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I, cause I, I was thinking, like, I don't have any IRL friends who are Jackson. And I don't know of anyone I know of. It's like, Is he from I mean, like, Jackson? I don't know, but... Uh, like, okay, I got you. You're all good. <laughs> oh my god, bombs. Oh, he's dead. Uh, I love your voice. It's a Gundam. Hey. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot to say hi, Rags. Oh, no. No. But hello. No. Didn't Quinton make his own YouTube rewind? Hi, Rags. Uh, I think he did. so. He did. Uh, first off, hi, he did. It was insanely cringe. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, what do you is, mean oh, a Quinton reviews video? I mean, that kind cringy. of cringe belongs in a furry convention. It was <laughs> no good. That's no good. No good. Ah. Do you think that when you fight three of yourself in arcade mode, it's supposed to represent some kind of mental anguish? I don't know. Oh yeah, it's know. about mental illness, and that means it's deep. Sweet. It's, and... it's your three dark personality traits. And so... Yeah. Well, I'm... they say everyone in your dreams is you, so... Yeah, you're a... What are they? Psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and... Mungo? Homosexuality, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Throw out of sexuality there, yeah. Oh, so I should have homo sinuality. Sorry. Um, it's a duck in Gundam. Yeah, that's true. He was here. Despite you turned up later, you might even think we lied and he's not here at all. I do like that. Uh, that happened with. I think it was Dankula, where someone joined in like six <laughs> hours in. They were like, where is yeah. he? It's like, it's freaking. <laughs> he's not here right now. <laughs> Well, he's a normal-ish, but no, he's not. But he's not, like, weird like that. No. So, yeah. It's a special kind of weird. Yes, that's true. The Sethroth hype is due to 
Squenix? Squenix? It's due to Weebs. Square Enix being stricter than a Catholic high school, making the odds of his appearance being next to zero. This is how the FGC reacts to a new character in general. Alright then. I just, yeah, I, I know fuck all about any of it, so I'm just like, alrighty. Uh, been playing Ghost of Tsushima. How is this not the game of the year? Because The Last of Us 2 is so good. It's so amazing. It's that good. Believe it. Believe the hype. Uh, Muller, have you played Chibi Robo for GameCube? I have not. Well, I have. I good? did. Did we talk about this before? I, don't, I, can't I can't actually say. I can't actually honestly say. I I don't know. You still remember it? <laughs> I, I remember playing it, but I don't know if it was... I enjoyed it, but I don't know if that's because I was a dumb idiot kid hmm. or because it was actually good. Yeah, I like legit do not know. Uh, Jaws is pretty decent as a novel. I wouldn't know. I've not seen it. I've read it. Either of you guys know anything about the Jaws novel? No. No. I didn't even know there was one. What's it about? Jaws. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> and then the shark went, Rawr. I'm having a hard time picturing it in book form, but I'm sure it's good. <laughs> Well, you know what random subject I wanted to bring up? Um, what do you think of this whole um, Buzz Lightyear... Oh, if, I had, if I had a dollar every time I heard that. <laughs> what do you think of Buzz Lightyear prequel movie, but in the sense that it is a film about a guy who is like in a movie, and then the toy in the Toy Story universe is based on that guy? Is oh, so like... Buzz Aldrin? <laughs> well, I mean, um, they'll do whatever the fuck but, they want. Yeah, they, someone, right? someone like that. Is he based on Buzz Aldrin? Yeah, isn't that Buzz? Isn't that where they get that from? Mm. I mean, may maybe the first name, but like, I feel like there's more to a character than their first name. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about his personality is based after anything to do with Buzz Aldrin. Oh no, I just meant the name. Sorry. Yeah, no, you. Maybe. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you're like, probably right. You're, you're... Yeah, you, you, I mean, I could totally believe that's the case. Absolutely. No, like, yeah, I don't know how a bunch of flat earther once. <laughs> I think he did, or no, it wasn't a flat earther. I think it, it was someone who said we never went to the. He was like, oh, "Fuck well, you!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't hit stupid people, but that is funny. But you shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a quote to say. You should hit stupid so, people, but that's funny. That like Buzz Lightyear movie is an animated movie. I think so, but like so, everyone was annoyed that Chris Evans is voicing Buzz instead of Tim Allen. But then I was like, is it's that a that problem? Buzz. Is that a problem if it's not that Buzz? Yeah, it's like, eh, I don't Boy, know. Wait, were, were all of the Buzzes in the store Buzz Lightyear? In what, Toy Story 2? When you weren't say that, all of the Buzzes? You, are you saying were they all voiced by Tim Allen or are you asking something else? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were. But um, this is where my brain is actually of two minds. It's like, if... In the universe of Toy Story, there was a movie released with an actor playing the character Buzz Lightyear, and it was a successful movie, and we are going to see that movie come out on its own. That's their plan. Wouldn't the in-universe toy from that movie probably have the same actor playing the character in the toy's voice lines, if you know what I mean by that? Well, yeah, I, yeah. I think the toy would have the character's voice. Another thing people are saying is like, well... The character is much younger than the toy, so we wouldn't sound necessarily the same. I don't know. I've seen lots of discussion on this. I'm just kind of confused. Wait, um, so is is this character, the Buzz Lightyear toy, is based off of a real astronaut or a fictional character? I, I don't know if they're doing, like, he's a real person in the Toy Story universe or if it's just an action movie in the Toy Story universe. Because mm -hmm. if it's an action movie in the Toy Story universe, I feel like you should go with the actual character's voice. Yeah, if, uh, well, that that's what I thought. Sense. People were like, why would he be Tim Allen well, if he's a different... And wasn't I was like, but it wasn't the there an animated series of Buzz Lightyear? Like a cartoon show? I think of so. Of the Buzz Lightyear in the Buzz Lightyear universe? Which did have Tim Allen's voice, or at least it definitely would have if it was shown in any of the three movies. No, like, it, its own show. Oh, you mean like in... Oh, I haven't heard yeah, of like that. A, a kid's cartoon show that was... Buzz Lightyear, the character in the Buzz Lightyear universe, and there were other like Space Rangers and stuff. Huh. Maybe, maybe this is some weird fucking fever dream. No, that I'm Chad having is. At the moment. Chad is agreeing with you. Well, Star, yeah, but stop, stop. Oh, because yeah. oh, they're scared of you. Yeah, they're scared of me. <laughs> scared of you. <laughs> it's a shame. Sometimes I really, I feel, I feel like a king 
and all my advisors are afraid of disagreeing with me. He's like, no, guys, I really <laughs> need to know if I'm wrong. This is important. You're like, you know that Peter Jackson movie, Lord of the Rings, The Return of Gollum? And all of chat like, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, it was... It was okay. It yeah. was all right, yeah. I mean, I feel... I feel like I could be persuaded either way instantly based on what you said. That's my feelings <laughs> on the film. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure if I... I, Star I, Command. I'm not clear on what if I think it should be Tim Allen yet or not, because I'm not exactly sure of what the movie is. Yeah. Await further bulletins as events warrant. Yes. Um. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Hi, Rags. Look up Operation hey. Cinder and Fat Man because Muller is busy, but don't watch the trailer for Fat Man. Just read the description of the film. Thanks. Or don't even look read up the description, the description of I mean, Fat Man. Wait, but if if the if the value is in seeing this film, like, wouldn't it be better if we didn't read the description? Oh, this is the um, the Mel Gibson it, Santa movie, right? Yeah. Um. What's oh, uh, let's see. To save his declining business, Chris Kringle, also known as Santa Claus, is forced into a partnership with the United States military. Making matters worse, <laughs> um. Chris gets locked into a deadly <laughs> battle of wits against a highly skilled assassin hired by a precocious 12-year-old after receiving a lump of coal in his stocking. <laughs> okay. Oh, this actually sounds great. I'm... We should see that. Oh, <laughs> this is great. This is good. This is really good. I got good news. It's 46% positive from critics, 83 from audiences. Uh -huh. So it'll probably be very good. Or at least incredible. Very entertaining. Yeah. Um... That and Mel Gibson great. is Santa, I mean, you know, that's, that is, that's definitely, yeah, okay, well, <laughs> maybe, um, we can record for it and it'll be released 2021 Christmas, because, um, we'll be lucky if we can even get one EFAP movie's Christmas out this year with, uh, scheduling and stuff, even though we've recorded three, you know how it be, um, but yeah, I don't know, that, that does sound pretty good, that sounds like a, a, a ROM. Also, I just baseball batted Kirby into a fucking mine, and he slammed into it and blasted off into space. That is pretty damn satisfying. Uh, I find it funny that most people can tell which movies are Oscar bait and which ones have no chance. Kind of defeats the purpose of movie awards. Since when has anyone been anything other than cynical about the Oscars, though? <laughs> like, we, yeah, all of these award shows. I mean, we all do that, but I don't even know that we're always right. We just assume that we're going to be, you know. We have a track record of generally being correct about most things. Oh, I just meant like which people in general. Which isn't pride. We have information that would lead to this as a correct conclusion. We can back this up with data. Data. If we're talking good Stephen King adaptations, it was pretty decent. Not super great, but lots of other good stuff. But It Chapter 2 is a mess. I agree with that. I liked it, the first one, but it part two annoyed me. Uh, thoughts on V Vendetta, movie and graphic novel? I liked the movie. I haven't seen it in long enough now that I wouldn't consider it safe to say that it's good. I'd need to see it again. Yeah, I'd need to see it as well. I enjoyed it, but I'd have to see it again. Who knows? I guess I'm going over there. Oh, Ness. That was a big mistake. Okay. Uh, hi, Rags. Hi. I can tell you that the miniseries of The Stand is actually really enjoyable. The cast and crew did an awesome job. Favorite King-based movie. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, do I need to watch Hill House before Bly? No. No. But I would recommend it, I guess. Uh. You, you really don't need to at all, I don't think. I, hmm. It really doesn't matter. The only, there's only one connection I'm thinking about, and honestly, you can do it in either way. So yeah, either one's fine. They are different experiences, though. Uh, yeah. For the Bible readings, Proverbs 31.6. All right. Uh, let's see. Proverbs 31.6. Uh, 31 to 6, right. yeah. Um, give strong drink to the one who is perishing, and wine to those in bitter distress. 
Sweet. You know what? I'll drink to that. Words I can live by. <laughs> there are some. There's a few bangers in there. I never denied it. Uh, Rags, have you tried steamed moose hot? Steamed moose hot. No, I haven't. I How about they got big hearts thing? though? Not because they're nice, but because they're large. But maybe metaphorically, you know, they're just really yeah, nice. Yeah, they're kind. Why we cut creatures. out their hearts and steam them? <laughs> I feel like it's weird to steam a heart. Maybe I'm just uneducated. I don't know. Maybe part of may, the heart seems like something that's very moist all the time. So mm. you didn't you don't want to dry it out. You want to preserve its moisture, kind of while you cook it. So I can imagine a boiled or steamed heart would be advantageous. I don't know, of course, I'm talking straight out of my asshole, but that seems like it follows to me. And when has your asshole failed you? You know, that's a, that's a really good fucking point. <laughs> uh, Rags, if and another guy can't decide who should top, do you have to play rock, paper, scissors or something? Hmm, well the key is, I've never had this issue. Uh, however, you don't want to have someone do something you're not comfortable with. Um, that's, that's very important. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff you can do that's kind of mutual. So maybe you should try some of those things first. Um, where there isn't really a dedicated top or bottom in those scenarios. Um, and then see how you feel as time goes on. Or maybe one of them decides they might, you know, give it a shot and take an interest in it. Or maybe it's all decided, in which case you're just going to have to do alternate things. Um, or you could find some third person to fucking spit roast forever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That seems like a, some ideas for you. Why don't you try those and see how that works? Oh my, spicy one next. Rags, Clone Wars is pretty good. Don't listen to Theo. That condescending prick doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that sounds like spicy. it's that, you see. So it says that's for me, but I feel like that's for Theo. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't I say that was for uh, you. I just said it was spicy. <laughs> Oh well, oh well, well, well the, it said rags is, but um, no, it said Clone yeah, Wars is pretty I'm... good. Don't listen to Theo. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So... I don't know. I I tend to he tends to be pretty accurate with this stuff. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I I I have, I have a large amount of stock in Theo's perspective on things. So, if I were to watch the Clone Wars and conclude that it is good, then yes, you'd be right. But I feel like. That might not be likely. That's all. You know, not not a huge commitment, just saying. Just feels. Yeah, yeah, yes, OCK, yes. Feels over reels. And, uh, poor Theo. I'm sure he would find the, the disdain there to be um, reasonable to some degree, but ultimately his correct nature would, would, would reinforce his position that the Clone Wars is ass balls. Also, that is two games in a row with fucking... The, the enemy is big and they kill themselves. This game has trouble with I that, I think. It. Yeah, the AI is designed for... You get this in Risk of Rain 2 that I'm just casually tinkering around in now. Or if you turn on some modifiers... Enemy... Like, if you turn on Friendly Fire, where you can hurt yourself and your friends, but enemies can also hurt themselves, they have no idea how to address this. They still <laughs> act and do everything as normal. So they'll just fuck each other up sometimes. Uh... I guess the AI... It, same thing when they're metal. When they turn metal. I don't think the AI changes. They'll behave as normal, but now they're metal, which... So, you know, the thing you really notice when they go uh, metal in this game is when they are falling normally and they're more, um, let's say, breathy, uh, or what's floaty, I guess, um, they will often react to the fact that they're falling off the stage Yes. Just a little later. Little, like a, yeah, slightly after they go off the edge, that's when they react to it. And for some reason, they didn't change that when they're metal, and so they will pass the threshold of being able to return way quicker. And so they just don't. Yeah. By the time they do that, that jump in the air, it's already too late because they just yeah. waited too long. Their programming says, well, once you fall off, you wait this many seconds. But the metal modifier makes that... Um, so then when they're uh, metal and huge, you just get them close to the edge, grab them, throw them off, and usually they just go... Bleh! On Muge. Fucking huge. Huge. Uh, you guys should check out the movie Quigley Down Under in your free time. Classic 90s movie starring Tom Selleck and Alec Rickman. Uh, Alan Rickman. Alan sorry. Rickman, yeah. He, I do like Quigley Down Under. That's a fun movie. I like it. I have not seen that. Nifty flick. 
Also, Privyet Ragovic and Molotov. <laughs> ah, Privyet Very nice. Uh, Kid Icarus has turned into a long man. Oh my god. Oh, excellent. Who's Kid Icarus? <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's one of the fucking OG review people. Oh, one yeah? First uh, people I was watching on YouTube for review and shit. Very chill. Reviewed a That's shit cool, ton yo. of games in his time. Maybe we'll get him on EFAP someday. Who knows? Oh, no, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Eh. Okay, we're good. Uh, boop, boop. Rag, stop having opinions about Star Wars. You're scaring Muley. Never. Uh, do we have any different opinions. opinions when it comes to Star Wars? Like, we typically line up. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, we don't have to worry about that all that much. Yeah, I you're just saying most... that so Rags doesn't beat you. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll beat you. I'll smack you around. No. <laughs> I'm gonna remind you that I'm a five on the the Humpty scale or whatever it is. <laughs> Humpty scale. <laughs> Remember, that's SWAT related because Humpty is a, a descendant. Just want to make sure everyone remembers this. It's important lore. Oh wait, that that artwork that we reacted to, I think that's still in the meme fab. It's not out yet, so Ooh. you guys have to wait for that. I will go over that in a moment. Actually, all the shit that we've done EFAP related that's not actually out yet. Um. Everyone I've seen who likes cuties also likes The Last of Us 2 and The Last Jedi. I don't know about you, but I find that really funny. Mm. Weird. <laughs> the weird set of movies to be defending. Well, when was it getting? It is odd. I, it's, it, it's only been lefties who've defended cuties. Just something that I've noticed. I think even they would admit that that's something they've noticed. You know? It's, it's, it's a clear line. It's, it's a weird fucking line. That's the uh, thing, I don't consider myself a conservative, but you gotta have some standards. Your society's gotta have standards. Well, that's the problem with language these days, because I'm assuming when you said, you're like leftist versus left e versus uh, socialist, communist, crazy Yeah, leftist fuck. and lefty I pretty much use interchangeably, but yeah, yeah. someone on the left is regarded as a democrat in this world. Or at least in, when people say it in real life, certainly here in America. But a lefty or a leftist is like a, a someone who's far... For uh, an internet know, far person, left. typically. They're either a socialist or a, a very progressive. They're on the farther left. The farther left. And anyone who disagrees with that is fucking out of touch with reality. In fairness, most people are now because we haven't gone outside for so long. Uh, what is reality that's anymore? That's very true. Reality is what you make of it. Reality can be whatever I want. God. Come. Hey, everyone just got back from seeing my dying dad. Oh, oh, and I'm cheered up to see you guys streaming. Make sure you tell your families that you love them. Well, Sorry I, I to hear hope about things are all right with you. I really hope that things are uh, all right with you yeah. and him, and hope things turn out okay. Uh, but yeah, it's good advice. Absolutely. Value the time you have with your family. Tell them how you feel. Let them know you're there. And I'm happy that we could cheer you up. That's that's really good to hear. I'm glad to hear that, man. It must yeah. be tough for you. So if we can assuage any um, melancholy of yours. That's excellent. Uh, in reference to my super chat defending Ahsoka, I meant in general, not the garbage Mando version. You can tear that apart. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I gotcha. We probably talked about that when the maybe when the first chat was read, but yeah, yeah I believe you. I, I generally hear that she's good in the Clone Wars. Yeah, good that's, to all that's right. what I know. I know um, Theo wasn't thrilled, but you know, that's fair enough. Fuck, Ness, you suck. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Will you guys EFAP the LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special? Heard Ray goes back in time and saves everyone. Great time now for Christmas. We're not That'd gonna be, be able fun to. to watch it. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to. It wouldn't be even if we were to watch it. It wouldn't be out this Christmas. Yeah. But um. I mean, it's Life Day. It's not Christmas, so fuck it. <laughs> we um. There's no reason why we wouldn't watch that at some point though. Give us I a wouldn't little be bit necessarily of opposed to it. Mm. I think it's weird that I can attack a giant hand with a yo-yo. I don't know, hands and yo-yos are, you know... That's what I mean, they're usually a team. Along. Like, the idea that they attack each other. My god, cats and dogs living together. Master! <laughs> I love that that joke in American Dad. Because American Dad is better than Family Guy. It's true. Um, yeah, it is true. When Stan is, like, freaking out uh, about two men raising a child, and he's like... One of the many things he's worried will happen as a result is horses eating each other. <laughs> <laughs> and this is his payoff where he's seen that like that's becoming, I guess, relatively normal or whatever. 
And he's like, it's not, you know, ruining blah, blah, blah. It's not blah, blah, blah. And he looks out the window and goes, and the horses aren't eating each other. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrifying. Though. Oh, you remember that scene from the Brothers Grimm where that horse fucking eats that kid with the spider webs? That shit's terrifying. Um, that sounds f familiar, but for some reason I'm blanking on that. Feel bad, man. We gotta watch that movie sometime. All right, let's do it. It's probably like Van Helsing. Oh, I'd hope so. The best kind of content. No, 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 it's punching this kid. Evil. Eh. Hmm. All right. Uh, Moopa may have called a video essayist a massive F slur. And they said they wouldn't debate him because of it. Sorry, but he deserves to know. Well, John was already gone by the time this was read out, so... Now he'll never know. Now he'll never know. Wait, wasn't Disney... Wasn't... <laughs> it says, wasn't, wait, Disney cremated? <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, Walt. You mean, wait, wasn't? Um, oh, wait, yeah. Uh, you know what? You're right. It's... <laughs> it's hard to believe, but... Literally, a, a piece of something was on my monitor that is right in between. <laughs> uh, that's happened. That's yeah. happened to me. Ah, Looked like weight. So, yeah, Walt Disney yeah. was. Uh, was he cremated? Or, I don't even know the story there. He's cryogenically frozen in a time capsule beneath the headquarters of what used to be Epcot. Is that true? Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they're heard, waiting yeah. for the day where their Disney money can resuscitate him. What was. Uh, what did he get frozen for? Was it literally just because he was too old? Or was he, did he have like, a disease? Well, he was. I think he probably had a disease, or or, or something was going to happen that wasn't curable when he died. Mm. So what they're doing, and um... someone says yeah. it's a myth in chat, but not, now I'm going to have to Google it. It's a myth. Fuck off. No, it isn't. It's real. That's <laughs> totally what happened. <laughs> I thought he was buried under the pyramids, but I guess you know everyone's got a different story to tell. I do like the idea that we actually unlock the technology one day to resuscitate like a, a human being from many years dead, even when just like simply frozen, and he like it works out his whole plan. I'm was... seeing a lot of stuff saying that it, saying that it's actually just a myth and that he was cremated. Well, he was alleged no, a body double was cremated. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get tricked by that sort of stuff, you know? You got it. You see, that's the thing. This, it's the simple shit that'll fool you if you're not paying attention. If you don't see the signs, if you're not checking. If you if you knew Disney like I did, mm -hmm. you wouldn't fall for this. <laughs> Just crazy hand's more annoying. He's harder to... Oh, he did the thing. He's crazy, idiot. man. Oh. Fucking, fucking nutso. Uh oh, I might lose this. Oh, he did the stupid move. Haha, <laughs> you were tough. Wait a minute. How am I running out of time? I didn't even know that was fucking possible. No! He <laughs> had 5 HP! Why does my life suck? Oh no. I generate my value from how well I can defeat hands as a child. A very strange and specific one, but hey. <laughs> I, didn't, I honestly completely forgot you could even run out of time in the hands fight. There's a timer right there, and I just ignored it, because I was like, nobody ever runs out of time on this shit. You just, you either die or kill. Uh, 12 angry men and zombies. Yeah, I think that would be a really, really good subversive take upon the 12 angry men uh, story, you know? 12 angry <laughs> zombies? So they're... Like... <laughs> I was thinking, like, the, the trial gets up to zombies, but, you know, zombie jurors is pretty good, too. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's the whole thing. It's like the dialogue is so incredible. You guys know what uh, vegan zombies eat, right? Um, mm. Dead animals? No, wait, that doesn't make sense. Dead hu- no. Dead trees? <laughs> I got nothing. What is it, Rags? Graves. I get it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. It's alright. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the clown scene in Brave Little Toaster scared me. Yep, that's a common one that gets people. The fucking witch lady in the Pee Wee movie? The peeing movie? The Pee Wee movie. Same thing. Oh, I saved myself with the retarded move. I'm so proud of yes. me. Thanks, retarded move. 
Oh. Come on, pathetic child. And when the even gun violence in this game, what the fuck? Oh, if I had aimed that better, I would have gone. Molly, you finished talking about how can she slap and hitting women while playing Peach's Peril, where Bowser just is beating the shit out of Peach. That is what we call a cosmic coincidence. A wonderful one at that. Milton Friedman disgusts me. It's Hayek all the way. Fair enough. Uh, you need to play Shadow the Edgehog before starting PS2 emulator. Dab Shadow on the Defenders. The Edgehog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we never say that in our in our Shadow discussions? I thought that was implied. Surely it came up. Surely Shadow the Edgehog, we would have said that sometime, right? I mean, Edge of the Hedgehog. I hear that and it feels new. My brain thinks Wait, that's I don't think new I don't think it was ever it. said. It's just it's just one that I considered to be like a way too obvious. You got to like Edge of the Hedgy was already an evolution of it that I thought was funnier. But you know, I appreciate it. I like it the pre-evolved version. It's good. Yeah, it's no, funny. I like it too. I think it works because we just hadn't had it said in so long, you know? Uh, dab on the defenders of that emo clone, and he's a dirty Ewok that shot the Don. Why the fuck would he shoot the Don? Like, as if it wasn't bad enough with everything else. Um, just wanted to thank you for talking. EFAP, good. Well. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we, um, we do, we do that. So, I'm glad that that's, that's a good one. Um, usually, ragatastic. Hmm. Uh, yes. Capitalism ho. What's with Thought oh. Theater going back on the TASM2 debate thingy? He claims now that you guys are missing out on a few things while also claiming that his own case was lackluster, even though he should have prepared for it ahead of time. Eager to say that Spider-Man 2 is bad, though. Just well, to be honest, I do not think... I, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know. I, 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 I don't think he's got anything. I'm pretty sure they'd watched the film three times before they spoke to us. We'd watched it once. At least, you know, I'd, I've seen it before, but not, like, since it came out. I think, like, seven years ago or some shit. Uh, we... I don't, I don't know how you could possibly defend Electro. I think it's impossible. Um, and there's a lot of just derpy stuff in that movie. He He's thought about it longer, looked into more defenses longer, and that's his fight if he wants to fight it, but, uh... Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know how you get past a lot of the stuff we mentioned, which wasn't even probably everything, because eventually we just started skimming through stuff. Yeah. To get towards the end. Uh, Tasm 1 is really bad. Tasm 2 isn't quite as bad, but it's fucking terrible anyway. I'm not even sure, because, like you just said, if I was to re-explore both films with a fine-tooth comb, I'm not even sure which one would turn up worse. It's, uh, it's tough. I, I think I think the first one, I think they'd only get worse the more we looked at them, and I think when we watched them, the first one was the worst one. We, mm. we, we were calling out more stuff about it. So I bet further examination of that one. Like, both of them would just get worse, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, everyone's welcome to change their mind, and uh, I guess he did. But uh, the the, the Spider-Man 2 stuff... That comes from, he's had a lot of time with Southpaw, and Southpaw's been going hardcore depth into it, so it's it's hard not to be sure of a position when you've probably received a lot of argumentation for it, I guess. Ah. I'm alive. Okay. Uh, in an hour, I managed to make a six-page Google, Google Doc that'll fix all big law... Doodle? <laughs> Doodle Gawk. <laughs> it's uh, uh, but a, a Google Doc should just be called a Doogle. I'm fine with that. Um... So in an hour, I managed to make a six-page Google Doc that fixes all the big lore character and immersion problems in TLJ. Ryan is a complete moron. But in fairness, he doesn't think they're problems. So he wouldn't even be trying to fix them, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he set out to do a thing, and he feels he did it. That's nice for him. Not so nice for a lot of other people, though. How do I get that one? Ah! Beautiful. Oh. Sword Art Online Abridged is legit good in its own right. Infinitely quotable, no original SAO required. Also, high rags. Hi! Um, so this is actually the beginning of a mini war again. Because the next one says, I tried watching SOA, uh, SAO Abridged and couldn't bring myself to smile at any point. 
I wanted to like it. Previous super chat lies. Watch Good Rat instead. Oof. Oh man, they're gonna have to. I don't know. I don't even know how we're gonna settle this. Yes. Yeah, uh, Probably we won't. Tough debate. So then the follow up is a uh, previous super chat is lying about the previous super chat. Sao abridged oh is goodness. quite good. Really? And then the wow. response to that is bold faced lie. And then the response to that is continuing to lie. So. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's pretty intense. Don't know how this narrative is going to come to its end, but, uh... SAO abridged, folks. It's either good, or it's not. Who knows? <laughs> uh, first, you've ever caught in a live in a while. Glad I could donate and support you. You've all helped my writing so much these past couple of years. Now I can add Gundam to my story with you guys as cameos. Hey, oh, cool. wow. Yeah. Definitely glad to help. Always good to Keep hear Keep it. it up. Keep making shit. Don't stop. Don't fucking stop, you pieces of shit. He's like, why do you have to be so angry? <laughs> it was Swear to God, if you ever, if you ever fucking st stop writing, I'm gonna... you go a day without typing or writing a letter. I'll know. Find you. I am known by many names: Mountain Slayer, Thunder Lion, the Chocolate Axe. But you, you may call me Tiffany. Tiffany? That's a masculine name. Shouldn't be. It's a woman's name. I don't know what this is a quote of. An interesting super chat. That yeah. was quite a journey. <laughs> All right. Normal sized EFAB. Ha. Remember Mola how a certain someone said Luke didn't have a relationship with Anakin, but had one with just Vader? Yeah, so for anybody in the EFAB audience who didn't know, um, Ryan Johnson on Twitter was asked, why is it that Vader never showed up, or rather Anakin, to Luke in the sequel trilogy, or even prior? And Ryan Johnson said they had tooled with the idea. But of course, Luke's relationship was really... Sense. They had to say no. Yeah. Uh, he thought about it and he was like, well, think about it. Luke's relationship was with Vader, not with Anakin. So really, it doesn't quite fit the moment as much as Yoda does. Uh, like they're like people are acting like they're literally two different people. It's some... Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it so literally. It's a little bit silly. And uh, I would actually argue, even if you were to split them into two, that Luke was always appealing to Anakin, and yes, that absolutely. was like the climax was him reaching his father. So I I find all of this fucking crazy. And to be honest with you, even if I agreed with Ryan, it would be Ben, not Yoda, that should be appearing. I don't understand why. Like like what what yeah. why? I don't know. Yeah, why Yoda? I mean, and Yoda it's... was memeing like. Uh, Yoda's not a memer. He acts like a memer. Once. When he wants to <laughs> check you out and see what you're about. His memes are dreams. Oh, that that set of uh, lines was apparently an SAO abridged quote. Which one? The one about the masculine name. Oh. Hmm. Well, That's out of context, I have no context for it. That yeah, sounds I mean... like anime dialogue to me. There you go. I've spooking. Oh my god, that's like the guy from the thing. This is the way. Uh, Telltale Atheist used to be good until he started saying that Trump supporters are a cult and that you should always trust CNN. He needs some introspect. Is, hmm. is Telltale Atheist like a creator, I guess? I don't know. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I, I guess he's an good. atheist channel, but... Not heard of that yeah. one yourself. I haven't either. Yeah. Sounds like uh... a dumb thing to say, though. Why would you... <laughs> Always trust CNN, but remember, Trump's the cult. Fox... Uh, okay, Venusaur versus... Oh my god, look at the way Venusaur fell. The old Penisaur. <laughs> he's, he's nuzzling the fucking ship. Let's just put it that way. Fox, fuck off. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Chibi Robo is my favorite family trauma sim. Um... Yeah, I d I'm not. All right. Mm. Don't know what that's referring to, honestly. But I, I think, hope you get that sorted out. I think Rich Evans should voice Buzz, not Chris Evans. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. It would be great. Uh, you should get Shadow Versity back on sometime. Watching you interact with Shadow and vice versa is the best. Yeah, I mean, you'll be. We'll be making something with him soon, and. Uh, We'll find a space for him podcast-wise at some point, for sure. Good old shit. 
I don't even want Morla to sing Baka, which 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 was the correct one. Now I'm I'm all self conscious of getting bother. it wrong. <laughs> I think it's I think Doesn't it's Baka matter. Me Tai. Baka Me Tai. I think so. Uh, just to read it out. But thanks for going all out with the performance last time, Raggle. Oh. Uh, oh, that wasn't going all out. <laughs> you only got a fucking clue. You see, he's only using ten percent of his brain. Yeah, like Rags's power levels could blow out the fuses of EFAP. We got to be careful. My, my, I had to, when I moved into this place, I had to soundproof the shower mm -hmm. for the safety of the other residents. There's a whole kinds of legal things involved. But, uh... Yeah, I had to get, I haven't actually told the office, I just had to fucking do it. Uh, but even if the long man inflection with reading Super Chat sometimes makes it seem otherwise, I love you, Dumbos. Aww. Oh. Oh. <laughs> sounded a little... <laughs> Uh, forgive me, Ragnold. I like Mass Effect 3. I like it too. I was gonna say, Rag said that as well. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Rags, look up Operation Cinder. It's important. Thanks. Alright, let me give this a look, I suppose. Uh, Operation Cinder. All right. Operation Cinder was carried out by the Galactic Empire as a means of devastating several Imperial planets in 4 ABY, only a few weeks following the Battle of Endor. The operation was part of the Contingency, a plan devised by Emperor Palpatine to ensure that the Empire and its enemies did not outlive him should he ever perish. The plan was put into action following the Emperor's death during the Battle of Endor. Well, suppose a death. Emperor Imperial forces placed satellites in orbits of planets to form a climate disruption array. Electrical storms and other weather, uh, extreme weather events would begin to ravage targeted planet. Operation Cinder lasted for at least three months after an attack on Naboo, the homeworld of Emperor Chief Palpatine, and a rallying point for many Imperial sympathizers. Other worlds that were targeted included Vardos, Bernan Khan, uh, Cardivant, Abednor, uh, Abednado, uh, Kaminor, and Necronis. By the end of the war in 5 ABY, the secret contingency was clandestinely carried out to rebuild the Empire and the unknown regions though the New Republic was triumphant in Survive the Galactic War. Alright. That was... What do you think? Alright. Hmm. He creates planet storms. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> Two Vader's off the text. <laughs> Red Light Media have the quintessential video for that, okay? Uh, Voodoo that's so hide. funny. Voodoo hide! Watching them <laughs> pr try and stop giggling while reading it is... Emperor Palpatine's, like, surgical reconstruction <laughs> <Yeah>. center. <laughs> <laughs> they named it after him. That's so good. That <laughs> video gives life. I have I think I've seen it, like, three times. It's worth seeing it again and again. It's fucking funny. Yeah. Those poor wiki writers are probably like, it's not... Why are you being like this? <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Um, so yeah, that is actually the end of the Super Chats for this one, and I will now probably start talking about how we recorded, for those who don't know, um, EFAP movies for Jingle All The Way. That was a cast of six people, right, Rex? I want to say it was six, could be five? I think so. I can't remember who specifically anymore, because time and people, there's just so many of them. Of both. Uh, but we recorded that. And we did Home Alone, and we did uh, Batman and Robin. Now, the hopes of any of those getting edited and released on Christmas Day are slim to maybe. It would take a Christmas miracle. We're hoping to get uh, Jingle All The Way done, I think. We've also recorded, um, was it seven or eight hours? Six, hours? Six to eight hours, can't remember. Uh, EFAP for Christmas, already done. We had a couple people on, talked about Jingle all the way, well, the three movies, actually. Played some Jackbox, and then um, 
Rags and I went through the Super Chats for Resident Evil Part 2 and Little Hope. So that's what you can expect to be in those ones. Um, other than that, Mando Episode 6 I'm currently editing. Episode 5 will be out on Wednesday. And Gaming with Downward Thrust, that was live previously, will, will be released on Monday. Wait, Downward Thrust, that was live previously? What happened? Um, it went offline. Oh, I thought you meant Down to Thrust. Down to Thrust was, was alive previously. previously. <laughs> Pre okay, I was about to say, like, oh, no, oh I man, that, I guess that cut on his finger was... Uh, it was more fatal than got, we got corona -ed. Um, I'm trying to think of what else there is. Of course, I'm... So I'm, I'm working on those Mando minis. It's put a pause on the, uh, the boys' coverage uh, that I'm, I'm also working on, but it's just like, give me a sec and you'll have all of us ripping into all of the season so it's a i think it's a good trade-off if you haven't been watching the mando minis you might want to want to keep up because it's um you know well i think they're fun and also it's just uh to stay on top of what what coverage we've been doing for uh mando there's also the meme fap has been recorded we're pros possibly going to be doing another one soonish or not i'm not 100 percent sure on that either but that'll be coming out probably the first saturday of january possibly the second um Another refab is already set for next Saturday. Um, guests and topic. Um, I'm on top of it this time. How wonderful. <laughs> and yeah, I'm working on The Boys Season 2 as my main project and Rags is on Mandalorian Season 1. Um, I think that is everything. Sure, shit. There's still, yeah. There's still more for us to uh, go over Super Chats wise. We're still catching up, but like I said, we'll get through it eventually. We've, we're just uh, looking to find the time and I'll label properly. As they come, so that's uh, I think that's everything. If I've forgotten anything, you know, sorry, but it's just this long yeah, sorry. track off. Much going on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. When are you gonna finish your the video? Yesterday, it's already uploaded. Did you see it? Oh, idiot. Why? <laughs> Uh, you should respond to Steve Shive's five stupid things about the Lord of the Rings. It is yet another video that is very good at critiquing the films. We oh. haven't covered Steve Shive's yet. I can't believe it. I don't even, I don't even know that his videos make it past X amount of views that would get on anyone's radar anymore. Poor Steve Shive's. But yeah, well, um, maybe we'll cover that at some point. Who we knows? Gotta, yeah, I'm totally down for covering Steve Shive's and his fucking cow asshole lips. That's like the main appeal for you. <laughs> I need to see them. I need to see them smack against each other. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, I think that's about it. Um, is there anything else you guys want to want to say? Capital opinions, of course. Thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for having me. It was a splendid time. Um, do you want to do you want to plug away just a little? Oh, sure. Yeah, if you want to watch even more coverage of this particular Wisecrack video, I made a video on it. It's a good time. Check it out. Uh, and if you like reviews of devs and whatever else, and NPC reviews eventually, you should come check out the channel, Capital Opinions. Thanks for having me. All that good stuff. And Merry Crimbus. Yeah. Merry Crimbus to all. Clearly a good guest because the avatar is Christmassy. Yeah, yep. that's the important part. Uh, I put a link already in the description and um, he's now in chat as well. Seriously, go check out his coverage of the video because um, he actually has visuals to support the references he's talking about. Yeah. Oh, can you what? believe it? Who does that? No, and that's what who. black magic is this. Uh, I also call him a cynical Marxist cunt, so that's <gasps> fun. You can, uh, <laughs> Marxist or cynical. And you can enjoy that. <laughs> um, some, some good stuff in that video. Which leads us to a very merry, happy ending for uh, the stream. Thank you all for joining us. It's been fun. And we will see you on Monday, technically. But the next time, right now, we'll see you in a live format. It should probably be next Saturday. And so, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Anything else you want to say? It has been say? fun. This was a good one. That was great. Y'all did good. Y'all did good. We're Excellent job, you. everyone. You did a good job. You did it. So yeah. Eh, good night and goodbye. Good night, everyone. And remember to water your jebs. Do it.